Hey guys welcome to a new video, like comment and subscribe if you enjoy. Without any further interruptions, enjoy the what if. Chapter 1. Nothing has changed 10 years ago, October 10th. Get out of here Kasumi. A six-year-old Naruto shouted running with his twin sister. The two were running away from an angry mob, I'll protect you Kasumi. I'll always be your shield. I won't let them hurt you. Naruto shouted as the two continued running through the forest, where are those masked shinobi that help Gigi-san? No, I'm not leaving you alone. We're twins and we only have each other left. If we're going, we're going to run away, we're running away together. Kasumi screamed out as she looked at her twin brother with determination in her eye with a hint of worry. Just then Naruto saw up ahead a ledge, and it only seemed to go straight down, what do we do? Kasumi asked worried with her eyes scared. She had tears welling up in her eyes, she was scared for Naruto and herself. Naruto saw how nervous his sister was, so he placed a hand on her shoulder, Kasumi-chan you're my precious sister, I'd never let anything happen to you. I know you'd do the same, come on let's go. Naruto grabbed his sister's hand, we'll get out of this. Before Naruto could finish a kunai lodged itself into Naruto's throat as he spat out blood. Naruto. Kasumi's eyes widened which caused Naruto to stumble back. He planted his foot on the ground to stop himself from falling over the cliff. However, the rock under Naruto gave. Kasumi tried to reach out to Naruto to catch him but couldn't move in time. Kasumi suddenly found a kunai lodged into her thigh not letting her move. Just then another one flew into her shoulder and then another into her other leg. Kasumi fell on her hands and knees not able to move. Where's your demon brother huh? An angry Chunin asked as he walked up. I know I got his throat so, oh well I guess that works for us. The Chunin smirked as he saw where the cliff part that broke off. Soon other villagers with torches, swords, knives, and other weapons came into Kasumi's view. Kasumi's eyes widened as her bottom lip quivered in fear, Naruto ni. Ka san, tu san. I'll see you all soon, Kasumi had tears run down her face. She didn't cry or flinch because she was in pain. She cried because they killed her brother. At least that's what she thought. Backquote 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 backquote. Morning Naruto slowly opened his eyes as his vision blurred, his entire body was racking with pain. Naruto slowly sat up looking left and right. Just then his adrenaline kicked in as he shot up looking around, Kasumi. Kasumi, where are you, Kasumi? Naruto stood up looking around to find a way back up. Just then he looked down and found the kunai that was lodged into his throat. Naruto picked it up to defend himself and then began to go find his twin sister, please be safe Kasumi. You heal fast as I do. So, I I know you're fine right? Naruto kept searching a way up, but he heard something faint in the distance, and Naruto, I is that you? Naruto shot his head to the left to find Kasumi's head laying on a rock. Naruto saw the blood that pooled behind her head, and it was all over the rock. Naruto ran over to her, and the scene made him want to throw up. Kasumi had many gashes, cuts, bruises, broken bones, and limbs in not the right angles. Her eyes were shut as a cut ran over her eyelids showing they ran a knife over her eyes, and Naruto, P please tell me T that's you. T tell me why you're alive. Kasumi weakly said begging Kami-sama it was him, and Naruto, I I can't feel my body. Naruto ran and knelt to her side and did his best to hold back his tears and stuttering, K Kasumi, why you're okay? E everything will be okay. Why you? Heal fast. W we heal fast why you'll be okay. I know Gigi will be here as soon, and we can get you tea treated. Naruto has his hands on Kasumi's chest trying to stop the bleeding over her heart. Kasumi smiled but she found she couldn't lift, let alone move a hand, I I know, W we heal fast right. Kasumi began to shake scared as she said, Naruto, I I don't feel well, s something, I isn't right, I I, I I can't feel my body. Kasumi was seeing something that didn't seem right. Naruto tried to be as calm as possible as he said, it's okay I'm here Kasumi. Save your strength, okay. I'm here for you, Gigi-san will get here along with those masked people and take you to the hospital. Kasumi saw a light and smiled it hurt her knowing she had to go. It was her time, Naruto ni, I I see the light, I I can see again. Kasumi let out a soft cough, however, 
she saw a woman standing in front of her with a soft smile on her face. Kasumi knew she wasn't staying, she was beautiful. That had to be their mom. Kasumi's lips began to quiver into a small smile, and Naruto, oh our Ka-san, I think it's our Ka-san. Naruto couldn't believe what he was hearing, was Kasumi dying? She said she was seeing their mother. Who was she? Kasumi. Listen don't. Kasumi. Don't leave me, please. I. Kasumi interrupted him and said, find someone who will love you, I love you so much Naruto. I'll go to hell and back for you. That's what love is fighting the demons to get to heaven. Naruto, please see continue, F for me. Just then the woman Kasumi met began to walk, the woman turned back to her and motioned Kasumi to follow. With that Kasumi began to jog after her, and the two were slowly enveloped in bright white light. Before they were completely enveloped Kasumi said weakly for Naruto to hear, Are you, Arka-san, as Kasumi felt herself leaving her body. She also felt the warmth from her brother pulling her into a hug as he began crying. Kasumi felt her mother pulling her into a hug as well as her mother began to weep for her daughter's life for being cut so short. Kasumi held her mother tight, not even daring to let go, Kasumi made sure to never forget the touch of her surviving brother hugging her as she departed to the afterlife. Naruto's eyes widened as Kasumi stopped talking, she stopped breathing, Kasumi. Kasumi, answer me, Kasumi. Just then a rush of red chakra shot from Kasumi's body and shot into Naruto's seal. Naruto ignored the sudden pain and fought through it. Naruto turned his attention back to Kasumi and shook her, Kasumi. Talk to me, Kasumi, Kasumi, talk to me, answer me, no, no, D don't die on me, K Kasumi, I I don't want to be left alone. Please Kasumi, Naruto felt pain, anger, and sorrow all at the same time. Naruto who had Kasumi's head resting in his lap began to slowly hyperventilate. Naruto's hand was covered in his sister's blood from where he picked her head up with his left hand. Naruto placed his left hand on his face leaving his sister's blood on his face. Naruto's right hand grabbed a clump of his blonde hair as his eyes widened further. His breathing began to increase dramatically, all he could hear was his heartbeat in his head. Just then people off on the side came into view, ah. So that's where they ended up. A -h -a -h -a -h -a -h -a. Let's finish them off. The one Chunin called out as he laughed. There was a total of 30 other villagers. Naruto clenched his fists and ground his teeth. His sister was laying in his lap dead and this bastard, and all these other villagers had the gall to laugh. The only family he had left was stripped from him, robbed from him. His sister's life was robbed from him and her. They took his only family away from him. Naruto turned his head to look at them with his hands still on his head where they were before. However, Naruto's eyes turned red when he saw the chunin holding up a lock of Kasumi's hair like a trophy. The blood of Kasumi's that was in his hair dripped onto his face. And covered his right eye. So, Naruto only saw red as he let out a bestial roar. Naruto was cloaked in a deep red as the chakra took the appearance of a fox. A tail went out from his rear and two fox-like ears adorned his head. Naruto lunged forward as the chunin, and villagers looked at Naruto in fright. Naruto's hand extended outwards as a red chakra claw and ripped into the chunin. The chunin stared at the feral Naruto as he cleaved into the chunin. The chunin looked down as his top torso fell to the ground. He saw his lower bottom in two pieces, he coughed out blood as he loud out a blood-curdling scream. His eyes rolled to the back of his skull as Naruto landed in front of him. Naruto landed on the ground in front of the Chunin's head, he lifted his left paw and slammed it on the Chunin's head smashing it. The other villagers and remaining Chunin looked at him in shock as they slowly backed up. Naruto growled at them, and the head that Naruto popped shot out blood. The blood sprayed onto their faces. Brains squished in between Naruto's hands. Naruto growled out again and let out a bestial roar, I'll kill you all. You hear me, I'll slaughter you all, like that Naruto took off. Backquote 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 a slaughter fest later. When Naruto came to, he weakly had his eyes open. He saw a man with white long spiky hair, he asked, H hey Naruto are you okay? Naruto then noticed Hiruzen walking up next to him worriedly. The two were both breathing heavily as if they were in a long battle. Naruto looked left and right and asked, K Kasumi, 
W. Where is she, Kasumi? Naruto forgot about his fatigue as he turned his left and found Kasumi. Naruto got up from laying on the white-haired man. The gravity-defying white-haired man said, Naruto you need to rest stay. His words fell on deaf doors as Naruto pushed him away. Hiruzen was even pushed to the side whom Naruto ignored. Naruto ran over to a woman with purple hair, and an anbu mask on her face, Kasumi. Naruto looked at her with a pleading look on his face, please tell me she's okay, Naruto stopped as he placed a hand on Kasumi. She was stone cold, the woman hung her head and said, I'm sorry Naruto, I'm so sorry. She passed away a while ago. Not being able to bear it Naruto finally passed out, but not before he let out an ear-piercing blood-curdling scream. A scream that caused chills to roll down Hiruzen's, Neko's, and Inu's back. Naruto's scream also left a pained look on their faces too. Backquote 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 Konoha Hospital Evening. Naruto slowly opened his eyes as he stared up at the white-blue ceiling. Naruto slowly sat up and turned to his right, and to his frown shock Kasumi wasn't there. Naruto however came face to face with a man. The man with waist length, spiky white hair that he usually ties back into a ponytail, with two shoulder length bangs framing his face. There were red lines under his eyes which extended further down his face. It was clear he had a downcast look on his face, he was holding his head in shame. Naruto called out, Hey, where is Kasumi? The man's head slowly lifted from the ground, to only see the painful and anguished look on Naruto's face, W where. Naruto had tears begin running down his face as his hands gripped the sheets, and no, no. Naruto's tears ran down his face. The man sat there as his eyes went back towards the floor. He didn't know what to say, what to do, he knew he wasn't cut out to raising kids. However, it was evident that it didn't matter anymore when you already failed the children of your student. The door soon opened as Hiruzen came walking in as he held his head down. Hiruzen slowly looked up to find Naruto staring at the sheets as tears ran down his cheeks. Hiruzen looked at the empty spot where Kasumi would always recover next to Naruto. Hiruzen placed a hand on his hat and took it off and placed it on the side. Naruto's eyes looked up from the spot, Naruto's gaze slowly met Hiruzen's. There was a tense silence as Inu and Nako walked in, with their masks off. Hiruzen walked over to the left side of Naruto's bed and sat down. Naruto ignored the old man's movement along when he sat down. Hiruzen placed a hand on Naruto's back, s she's, she's gone, t they killed her, they tortured her, t those bastards. Naruto gripped the sheets tighter as the pain and anguish only built up. N Naruto-kun, I. Naruto interrupted Hiruzen. Shut up. This made everyone go dead quiet, Hiruzen had no words on what to say. No one knew what to say, the villagers, hunted Naruto and Kasumi like they were animals. Naruto simply fell off the cliff, with some broken bones, and lucky survived. Kasumi not as much, broken ribs, tibia, fibula both legs, both left and right radial bones, collar bone fracture, several discs in her lumbar spine slipped, broken fingers, toes, torn Achilles heel, internal hemorrhaging, and more. Kasumi was tortured before they threw her off the cliff, s she's dead, because of this damn village, dead because of them. What the hell didn't you tell us? Hiruzen tried to revert back to what he usually says, Naruto, you know I. No more bullshit, Naruto knew this language thanks to the villagers on the language they used, she's dead. Don't you think I deserve some sort of answer? Hiruzen closed his eyes, Naruto, you and your sister were the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yuko. I I thought that. I see, so not telling us would protect us. Keep us safe. Exclamation mark. Bang up job you did there. Couldn't get anyone to help train me and my sister. Naruto was beginning to choke up again. Naruto felt a hole in his heart. Can't you understand how much the villagers hated US? Tried to kill US. You couldn't keep a single Anbu to watch over US. Naruto felt the coldness continue to wash over him, continue to engulf him. He felt alone, he felt lost, defeated, his sister was everything. They were each other's everything. She was torn from him, they were torn from one another. Naruto couldn't even look at Hiruzen as he turned to the white-haired man, who the hell are you? Naruto asked with almost dead tone in his voice. Jiraiya went to speak, 
but his voice was caught as he froze. Jiraiya then went again to speak, and Naruto, I I'm so sorry, I I wasn't there for you or Kei Kasumi. I I'm sorry, so sorry, I'm so sorry. I I have no excuse. Jiraiya moved out of his seat as he knelt onto the ground on his hands and knees. Jiraiya placed his head on the ground as tears ran down his cheeks. Hiruzen went down on his hands and knees pressing his head against the floor. Along with Kakashi and Yugao, Naruto simply asked as his hair covered his face, W who were you, to my two san and ka-san, especially to Kasumi. Naruto's voice was shaky, but yet held a lot of anger behind it. Jiraiya felt his heart sink further, I I was, you two sans as sensei, my student was Minato Namikaze, I am your, and Kasumi's godfather. Here is an added in, I'm sorry Naruto, Kakashi spoke up, and Naruto, I was Minato sensei's student. Yugao lifted her head slowly with tears running down her face, I I was Kashina sensei's student, your Ka-san. Naruto bit his lip as tears began to well up again as the sheets began to flood with Naruto's chakra. The sheets began to tear, water dampened the sheets of the bed and the ground beneath the hospital shook to the core. K Kasumi, Kasumi, Naruto's voice hitched as he fought back the pain that grew further and further in his heart. The Kayubi within Naruto watched the scene unfold, a child who grew up with a sibling. His twin in fact, the two did everything together. Eat, sleep, talk, cry, laugh, run, walk, breathe, and more. For once the Kayubi felt sorrow and empathy for the young Uzumaki. Being torn from your family, in such a cruel way, even got the Kayubi thinking twice about how he felt about the two brats, they call me a demon, just how far can humanity fall to? To unleash their anger and hatred onto mere children. To the point where they torture and then kill her. I witnessed all of it, monsters all of them. The Kayubi swore to himself that once Naruto was ready, he'd do everything he could to help the boy. Naruto closed his eyes, and he lifted his head and slowly opened his eye. Naruto looked at the four, W-Y, why did Kasumi have to die? Why did Kasumi? Naruto lifted his arms to his face to wipe up his tears. Naruto glared up at the adults that were asking for forgiveness for their mistakes. Yet, no matter how much they asked for forgiveness, giving it, or not, it wouldn't bring Kasumi back. Backquote, 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 end of flashback. It was the end of the fourth great shinobi war and Naruto started it off by removing his stub of an arm from Sasuke's chest. Naruto's hand had a spinning Rasengan in the shape of Kakashi's lighting blade with electricity sparks coming off of Naruto's hand. Naruto stood over the dead Uchiha's body as he had his frown on his face. That was Naruto's strongest jutsu and his finished Rasengan. It works like the Resentrican in adding the lighting element instead of wind, but the attack electrocutes your enemy from the inside out while a spinning ball of chakra drilled into you like a drill. Naruto released the jutsu and knelt to Sasuke, you were a good boy Sasuke, a good boy, too bad you became such a shit man. The two clashed with a lighting blade that Kakashi eventually taught Sasuke and Naruto. Naruto took it and learned to create Rasengan and then a version to combine both attacks. Naruto knew Sasuke wanted him to kill him, like how Itachi wanted Sasuke to kill him. Naruto made sure to take Sasuke's eyes and implanted them into his seal on his stomach. This would grant Naruto access to Sasuke's Sharingan and Rinnegan abilities when he wants to. Not only that but Naruto also made sure he took the chakra Hagoromo gave to Sasuke. Naruto went towards the two and where the planets where the other tailed beasts were trapped in. Sakura and Kakashi stood next to Naruto not uttering any words. Sakura looked down in sorrow seeing the body of her dead crush. Naruto stood there as the tree let everyone go and Naruto looked off in the distance. Naruto stared at the rising sun as he said to himself, Kasumi, that's it, I'm done, even saved the world while I was at it. Kakashi came walking up next to Naruto. Sakura stayed back as she wept over Sasuke's body. Naruto had no attachments to people who betray their village. So, he killed him, and he certainly wasn't going to be nice about it. Shinobi did what they were supposed to and that was it. Naruto had no emotion, nothing to say after he saved everyone, I saved everyone Kasumi, are you proud of me? Tu san, ka san, did I do it right? Naruto wanted to be done, he was tired of it all. He hated the people of Konoha, 
most of them he could tolerate and stand. But he would never learn to love that village. They could never do anything to win him back, the old Naruto died long ago. The night Kasumi died, Naruto died. Naruto turned to Sakura and said, Sakura, move. Naruto said it in a demanding tone, it wasn't a question, it wasn't a suggestion, or anything like that. It was a demand. Sakura stood up and stepped back. Naruto's right eye morphed into Sasuke's M's which shocked Kakashi and Sakura as he muttered, Amaterasu. Like that the black flames that burned for seven days and seven nights engulfed the last Uchiha's body. Sakura looked at the burning corpse in shock as Kakashi narrowed his eyes. Naruto was always a flight or fight risk shinobi, the fact he stayed loyal for so long. Was surprising, but Kakashi knew, he knew Naruto was done. He would never fight for Konoha again. Since the death of Kasumi, Naruto devoted his entire shinobi life to her. He trained himself into the ground, and he lost all his desire to become Hokage. He simply wanted to be a shinobi and be granted title in the title of Sanin or something similar. Now that he accomplished what he desired he doesn't know what else to do. It took years until Naruto was ready to forgive Jiraiya for leaving him and his sister. Tsunade was just someone who Naruto somehow got to join Konoha after the Chunin exams when Hiruzen sacrificed his life to take Orochimaru's arms. Eventually time passed, Naruto only ever learned to love Tsunade like a mother. However, when Naruto found out until Jiraiya was killed by pain, Naruto then fell apart, even with everything, Jiraiya was another connection to his family. A connection to his sister, the only person he had left was Tsunade. She stayed by his side even though he didn't want her to. But the loss of Jiraiya hurt him, and, in the end, Naruto completely opened up to Tsunade. He told her all his anger, his hatred, his grief, pain, sorrow, fear, and his dislike for Konoha. Tsunade, understanding her surrogated son's pain, Naruto finally recognized her as a mother. When Jiraiya took him under his tutelage Naruto mastered water walking quickly, it only took him a day to master. Naruto learned the Rasengan within a matter of hours, it took Naruto a total of 8 hours to form a proper Rasengan. It took another 4 to finalize his Rasengan. Naruto also took into sealing and learned to become a seal master like Jiraiya. Within 2 years it took Naruto to become a full seal master like Jiraiya and even surpassed him. Naruto befriended Kurama early and began their relationship building. Thankfully Naruto was able to beat his evil self. When he wanted to fully master Kurama's powers, he had to defeat his evil self. That wasn't easy, that was the longest four weeks for Naruto. Coming to accept that he wanted nothing more to level Konoha itself. He had to accept that he had to protect the people of Konoha. As much as he hated the civilians, accepting that Kasumi wouldn't want him to do this. There were many close times when Naruto wanted to rip the civilians apart. Somehow, from the gods above, he was able to hold back. Even that didn't help Naruto beat his evil self, it was to forgive himself. Ever since Kasumi passing Naruto hated himself for being weak, for letting Kasumi die on his watch. Naruto at the time had to come to terms with himself and forgave himself. He had to understand at that age, there was nothing he could do. He was just physically incapable of stopping everything that happened to them. Since then, he gained access to learn to master Kurama's powers. Just then Naruto was cut from his thoughts, you did it's Naruto, you saved the world. I'm proud of you, Kakashi gave his student an eye smile. Though it hurt to know that Sasuke still planned on killing the cages. Naruto wasn't going to allow that to happen, Tsunade was the current acting Hokage. Naruto did what he had to, as Shinobi of the Leaf. He killed the traitor to the Leaf. There was only one person whose heart was hurting at the loss of the Uchiha. It was only Sakura, she was the only one weeping for Sasuke's passing. Naruto flexed his hand as he saw a tiny flower on the ground come through the soil and bloom. It was a yellow lily, one of Kasumi's favorite flowers. It seems Kasumi gave him something extra as a parting gift. The Mokuden. Backquote 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 backquote. Flashback after the pain fight Naruto was able to talk to pain and got him to change sides, and even got him to resurrect the people who died. Naruto was tired as he walked out of the woods. He was tired, but Kakashi walked up to him, Hey Naruto, do you need me too? 
Kakashi stopped as Naruto walked past him. Kakashi turned to Naruto and placed his hands in his pockets. You did good Naruto, you did well. Naruto smiled a bit. I appreciate it Kakashi-sensei, but I didn't do good, I haven't done anything like that remotely close. Naruto continued to walk back toward the village. Naruto made his way towards the village as he made past the clearing. Naruto saw the villagers all looking at him, with smiles and grins that went from ear to ear. Joys of laughter, cries of joy, the way the rays of sunshine that shined down on their faces. Naruto frowned when the crowd went running toward Naruto. Some even went to pick him up to adore him. Before they did so, he stopped them as he growled at them, shut up. Don't touch me, Naruto swatted them to the side ignoring their cheers and squeals for him. He didn't need it, he needed none of it. Sakura, Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Neji, Hanada, Lee, Shino, Tenten, Kiba, and Akamaru ran up to the scene too. Hanada said, Naruto-kun, they're just trying to thank you for. Naruto cut her off as he said, if they want to thank someone, anyone for saving them. Naruto extended his arm out towards Hokage Mountain where he buried Kasumi. The one place she loved to visit when they were down, go thank her, the one that's six feet under. I just did what she would have wanted from me. Naruto placed his hands in his pockets and left to go check up on Tsunade. Backquote 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 end of flashback time skip four days after the fourth great shinobi war. Naruto found himself traversing through Konoha. Not much has been going on except for rebuilding and healing. Naruto currently didn't have a right arm due to his last power struggle with Sasuke. Though Naruto was all cleared to go by the hospital thanks to Tsunade, Naruto did end up releasing all the other tailed beasts. The only one who stayed was Kurama. Naruto found himself being praised and loved by everyone, but it never filled the hole in his heart. He didn't want the praise, he didn't want the attention. Though people still thanked him and bowed to him, acting how he knew he should simply be modest about his efforts in the war. Naruto knew that if anyone should be thanking anyone, it should be his deceased sister. She was the one who drove him to become so powerful, hell he even learned the Horishin which made Naruto the fastest shinobi around. He did anything and everything to become as strong as he is now. It was all for the sake of his sister, his dedication, his blood, sweat, tears, and love all were for his sister. Nothing could ever replace that hole in his heart, where part of Naruto died that day along with Kasumi. Naruto arrived at his family house, where Minato and Kashina would have raised him and Kasumi. Naruto went into the back and found a shrine that was put up for Minato Namikaze, Kashina Uzumaki, and Kasumi Uzumaki. Kashina wanted Kasumi to become the Uzumaki clan head and Naruto would have been for the Namikaze clan head. Though Kasumi never lived long enough to even learn who her parents were. Naruto knelt in front of Kasumi's grave and put his left arm in the middle as if he was putting his hand into a prayer. Kasumi, Tu San, Ka San, I hope you're all happy together. I know I'm not proud of the things I've done, and probably never went the proper way about things. I hope you're all proud, I did everything for you Kasumi. It was all for you. Knowing he wouldn't get a response Naruto took a tri-prong kunai and stuck it in the soil where his sister was buried. Naruto slowly stood up and turned to leave. Naruto then saw familiar faces standing there, Naruto how are you holding up? It was Ino who asked with a smile on her face. Shikamaru, Choji, Hiba, Neji, Akamaru, Hanada, Shino, Lee, and Tenten were there. You weren't at the party that was thrown for you last night. We came to check you man, you, okay. Kiba walked up placing a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Yeah, just I'm not too much of a party person you know that. So, I went home. Besides, you guys earned it too, we all fought in a war. Naruto tried to play it off which no one bought, everyone knew Naruto. Everyone knew Naruto had a similar trauma as Sasuke did, to kill Sasuke hurt Naruto deeply. Not able to save him. Naruto decided to kill Sasuke. He still wanted his revolution, and in the end, Naruto had to stop him no matter what the price was. You know we're here for you if you need it. Shikamaru was relatively worried for Naruto, everyone was, we know when something is bothering you. Naruto sighed as he rubbed the back of his head, he looked at everyone. Naruto just shook his head, 
You all know why I am the way I am. There is always something bothering me. Naruto moved his head to look up into the sky. I think I'm going to do something different. I'm tired. I am done. I've been planning on this for a while, but I'm just going to go somewhere else, okay? Naruto began to walk again going back into his house. I want to be left alone. I've fulfilled my promise to Kasumi. The world isn't in danger anymore. The nations are at peace, and the Akatsuki are gone. I'm tired. I'm just going to live out the rest of my days peacefully until it's my end. Everyone just stared at the war hero in disbelief and Hinata ran up before Naruto shut the door, Naruto-kun. Please at least let us help you. We're all here for you. We want to help you plus, Naruto turned his head to listen to Hinata. Ino gave Hinata a nudge to help her continue and Hinata nodded her head, Naruto-kun, for a very long time I've. Naruto smiled and held his hand up to stop her and said, Hinata. Naruto stopped going inside and turned and walked back towards Hinata. He walked up to her and placed a hand on her head, I had known how you felt about me for a long time. I'm sure you're a wonderful person, you're beautiful and kind. Your kindness is something I don't deserve, and any guy would be lucky to have you as their husband and a fool to not accept your love. Alas, Naruto smiled. He gave her a genuine smile that everyone has never seen before. Naruto always put up a mask when he had to smile or showed too much emotion, anyone who would say otherwise is a fool who couldn't recognize just how amazing you are. That just so happens to be me, I am one of those fools. So, please don't get attached to a guy like me. Everything I did, all the training and hard work, it was never for Konoha or its people, it was only ever for Kasumi and for the people I cared about. That includes everyone here, but, just understand that. I didn't do it to inspire others, I only ever did it for myself. I'm not a good person Hinata, I've killed lots and taken many lives and failed my late master, Jiraiya. I won't say I don't feel bad about some, but others have enjoyed seeing them die. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed, there are better people out there than me Hinata. I promise you that much, so please find someone better than me. Better than this fool, Naruto hugged her and placed a kiss on her forehead. Thanks for everything Hinata. Thanks for loving me, but I'm not the one for you. I'm not worth it. Naruto turned and placed his hands in his pockets. However, before he shut the door he did say, please would you all leave my property. I'd rather not have to call the Anbu or have myself escort you all out. With that, he disappeared behind the door. Hinata only looked at the ground with a downcast look on her face. Ino walked up placing a hand on her shoulder. Don't give up Hanada, you just need to save Naruto. Naruto saved us, now it's our job to help save him. Hanada tightened her fist and had a determined look appear on her face. Tsunade watched from afar and sighed, Naruto, will you ever let go? Backquote 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 with Naruto. Naruto went towards his parents' library and decided to do some reading. One thing he never liked to do as a kid, but now that he has time and didn't mind seeing what books his parents had. He would probably start divulging into that, I got nothing else better to do until jobs are put back up again. Maybe those pervy books made by Aero Senen wouldn't be too bad either. Guess it helps Kakashi Sensei with the pain of loss. Naruto was afraid of falling in love, he truly was. First, Kasumi, and then Jiraiya. When Naruto learned he lost Jiraiya, that was the final straw for Naruto. Naruto was too afraid to ever love again. Tsunade would be the last person he ever truly loved and cared for like family. Naruto in the library began to pull some books out. Books on Fuinjutsu, clans, jutsus varying by elements, and the history of the first, second, and third great shinobi war. Naruto then asked, Hey Kurama, what is it like, being alone as long as you have been? Kurama stayed quiet for a moment to think, and he said, Many, many, many years. I've only been around long enough as ten tails was split apart. So, maybe a little longer than 1,500 years so. It's a long damn time compared to you mortals. Sigh. I see then, well I won't live too long, I hope. I'd like to see Ka-san, Tu-san and Kasumi-chan, I was thinking of starting my farm. You know, live off in the countryside in some random village. I'd probably have to change my last name and use a henge most of the time. 
Naruto smiled at the idea, live his life on his own as it always has been. How boring, but I'm stuck with you. You sure you want to do that? Kurama asked his warden a bit confused by this sudden change. Kurama understood Naruto's pain, but not the ways he would go about it. Pretty sure. I don't know yet, I'll see when I get there eh? Naruto grabbed the stack of books he had and went into his study. Naruto began to read about different fuinjutsu, clan history, and wars. Backquote 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 five hours later. Slam Naruto closed the book to the third great shinobi war, huh, I guess it was pretty interesting to learn about. Naruto stood up and went towards the shelf and placed those books back and saw another book that caught his eye. It seemed like a relatively old book, but it was read. Naruto read the front as it said, the records of the four cardinal weapons. This makes it sound like some type of holy Jinchuriki weapon or something. Naruto opened the front and read, the waves of apocalyptic catastrophe. What type of book is this? This must be one hell of a fictional book. Naruto continued to scan it, to save the world from them, four heroes will be summoned from another world. Naruto flipped to the next page and then the next, him it says here. Four heroes wield a characteristic weapon. A sword, a spear, a bow, or a shield. Naruto chuckled a bit at the weapons. A shield, that's a little weird considering that a weapon. It's more like armor, right? Kurama asked with interest in the book Naruto was looking at. Naruto read that there is a princess, and each hero had their style and personality. Naruto continued to flip through the pages. There was info on the sword, spear, and bow hero, but once he got to the shield hero chapter it was blank. Naruto saw nothing but blank pages, huh? What crappy book doesn't have the book finished? At least Aero Senen makes sure all his books are done. Just then the entire book began to glow with a golden light, what the hell? Kurama shouted as the pages of the book began to turn quickly. Naruto dropped the book with his left hand as the pages continued to flip. Just then there was a flash of golden light then engulfed Naruto. Suddenly the place around Naruto began to expand and he then came to a stop. Backquote 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 new world. Naruto landed on his feet and found himself in a weird room. Naruto looked up to see a group of people wearing robes. One of them said, we did it. The summoning was a success. Where am I? Naruto asked but was interrupted when a man with a headband interrupted Naruto. The man put his hands together and bowed, Oh brave heroes, please save our world. Excuse me, Naruto turned his head to see three others in the room, you have got to be shitting me. Naruto saw them all holding weapons. A spear, a sword, and a bow. Naruto then found a right arm attached to his body. Naruto turned his head to find a silver pentagon-shaped shield on his right arm. How did I get my arm back? Is it because of this thing? At the center of Naruto's shield was a red orb that seemed to glow. Kurama are you seeing this? No response. Kurama. Hey. Buddy. Naruto shouted internally but got no message. Naruto quickly dove into his mindscape and found no Kurama. However, Naruto did find a large mass of chakra that was Kurama. Where did he go? Naruto would figure this out later and come back to reality. Naruto then asked, what's going on? Naruto noticed the three others. What do you mean by that? The boy asked was holding the bow. There is a long and complicated story behind this, but we've summoned you four cardinal heroes here using an ancient ritual. The man had his hands in the air using them as gestures to explain his reasoning. You mean we're the four cardinal heroes and we're here to help stop the waves of apocalyptic catastrophe? Naruto asked raising a hand wondering if he was right. Naruto also took note of what he had on him. The only thing he had on himself was ink and a brush he had on him. As well as the seals he has on his left and right arm. Those were storage seals for his weapons. The man was happy that Naruto recognized the situation, yes. You're right. We beg you. He bowed and put his hands together in prayer, oh brave heroes. Please help us. The boy with the black hair and sword said, I refuse. Likewise, said the boy with the bow. Then the boy with a spear asks, we can go back to our world, right? He then said, we'll talk about your problems after that. Just then the boy with the sword aimed his tip at them and said, don't you guys feel any guilt at all for bringing us here without our consent? 
The boy with the bow agreed, and if you throw us out as soon as peace is restored, we'd have worked for nothing. The boy with the spear said, how willing are you to accommodate us? How greedy, they're all thinking for themselves, I at least served until I wasn't needed anymore, then again, I only served for myself. Naruto didn't feel like helping but if it meant he could return later he didn't care, think I'd rather go back home. Naruto still felt his chakra within his body, and if he had his chakra, then he was fine, there was very little that could stop him. Just then the spear guys interrupted Naruto, depending on your answer, we might end up becoming your enemies instead. Wow aren't you guys heroes? Naruto could tell they were in it for themselves, and Naruto didn't want to be a hypocrite. He was kinda in the shinobi thing for himself too. Well mainly for Kasumi's sake, so he didn't know how to feel about their actions about this. The man with the strange headband said, F first, we'd like you to have an audience with the king of our country, Melromark. He walked up to them, you can negotiate your reward after that, so please. Fine. The boy with the sword lowered his weapon. The boy with the bow then said, I suppose we could consider their offer. The two had smiles on their faces. Now that their wants were secured, they were happy to help. The boy with the spear was pleased with the answer, not like our demands are gonna change, no matter who we talk to. With that everyone was then escorted to see the king. When they walked Naruto could see the entire change in the landscape. Along with the different houses designs, different from Konoha. Naruto wasn't too sure to be either happy or sad he was gone, he honestly didn't feel anything. This place is completely different from my village, Naruto mentioned when everyone looked at him curiously. What you never been out of the country before? The boy with the bow asked. Now that Naruto got a look at him, he was wearing a fancy outfit. He has short light brown curly hair and dull golden eyes. The boy who had the spear was different looking too. He had long blonde hair that is held back in a ponytail with bangs hanging on the left side of his forehead and bright orange eyes. The swordsman had short black hair that falls flat on his head and kind blue eyes. Naruto shook his head, I'm not from where you people are. I was part of a village called Konoha, where shinobi. Naruto didn't want to give out too much information, let alone tell them how to access Charka. Backquote 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 throne room. So, these men are the four cardinal heroes of ancient legend. The king was someone Naruto has never met before. He seemed to hold a lot of power. I am the king of Melromark, Altcray Melromark 32. Altcray is a confident, older looking man with white hair and a beard. To Naruto could tell he looked regal but condescending. As the king, he wore royal attire which includes a purple robe with white fur on the edges and a crown with violet jewels adorned on it, heroes, name yourselves. So, they each went up. The sword hero lifted his sword and rested in his hands, Amaki Ren, 16 years old, high schooler. Then the spearman went up, I am Kitamura Motoyasu, 21, and a college student. The bowman went up, I suppose I'm next. He walked up holding the bow up. Kawasumi Atsuki, 17 years old, and a high schooler. Naruto had no idea what high school or college was. So, he assumed it wasn't anything near what they learned in the academy. Naruto went up next as he held up his right, which was normal for him. As he only had a missing arm for about five days, Uzumaki Naruto, I'm. Just then the king interrupted him. I see, Naruto narrowed his eyes at the king and stayed quiet. Then his eyes went to Naruto, oh, I'm sorry who are you? Naruto didn't feel very inclined now, but he sighed and said, Uzumaki Naruto, I'm 18, and I'm a, shinobi. Naruto whispered the last part of him being a shinobi. I see, well I supposed I owe you all an explanation. The king looked at them and closed his eyes. He then let a sigh out and began, my country, Melromark, and the entire world is headed towards destruction. There are prophesied, waves, that would lead the world to ruin. This would happen repeatedly calling each attack a, wave. The world will end if these calamities continue, but with the four cardinal heroes we can fight the thwart off. Each country has an ancient dragon hourglass that can predict when a wave will strike. A first wave have already happened, knights and adventurers came together and fought the wave off. It was a miracle that they pulled it off. Each new wave will be stronger than the last. 
If the hourglass's sands keep tricking more waves will keep coming. There's less than a month before the next wave. The king took a breath to take a break he then said, we underestimated the prophesied waves. He hardened his gaze on the heroes, we realized once we experienced one. He closed his eyes showing his defeated look on his face, that only the four cardinal heroes could counter them. And so, we followed the legend and summoned you four. We have no time to lose. We get it now. The swordsman put his sword down by his side. Anyway, surely you didn't summon us expecting us to save you for free. Just then a man off on the side said, of course, once you repel all the waves. He held his hand up rubbing his fingers together saying, you'll be rewarded handsomely. Motoyasu smiled saying, will you, now? Well, as long as we have your word. Then Ren said sternly, we'll work with you provided you don't turn on us. But don't think for a moment you can tame us. Atsuki smiled cockily saying, we can't have you looking down on us. Naruto stayed quiet these guys think they're all high and mighty. They don't know a damn thing about life, there will always be someone bigger and stronger than them. I see okay, then heroes you should all check your statuses. The king mentioned which Naruto took note of when they first arrived. You guys don't see it. Naruto asked surprised but Ren knew, the icon on the bottom left side of your vision. Naruto focused on it as the menu for him came up. Just then Itsuki said, that's worrying. They must all be weak. Backquote. Motoyasu placed a hand on his chin, yeah. No telling if we can fight like this. The old man then said, that is what is known as status magic, an ability exclusive to the heroes. Then Ren asked, then what are we supposed to do? Ren knew he was level one and so was everyone else. The old man who seemed to be the king's advisor said, you must leave on an adventure to develop and upgrade the legendary weapons that you have equipped. Naruto looked at his stats and decided to stay quiet, it looked like he could not use any other weapons. Though it never said can I, Naruto would have to look into this later, so Naruto looked at the palm of his right hand. Somehow, Naruto still had his Horishin mark on his hand, I wonder if the magic repaired my arm and gave it back, along with the Horishin mark. Just the Motoyasu extended his spear out, couldn't we just wield other weapons until these are usable? Ren then said, we can figure that out as we go. He didn't seem keen on working with others, anyways, it looks like we ought to train ourselves. Atsuki held his bow up and said, we'll have to train to level up as much as we can. Naruto then said, it would be proficient and smart of us to form a party then. Then Naruto was interrupted again by the old man, excuse me but you will each recruit an adventure separately. And why is that? Atsuki asked confused. The old man gestured to their weapons and said, it is said that the legendary weapons repel one another by nature. If you work together, it hinders their development. Naruto stayed quiet about this. He even saw the help indicator appear in his vision. The king then said, rest up and set forth tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll gather the best of the best to form your parties. Just then a woman came walking up with them wearing a gown of some sort, we've prepared a room for you all. She bowed and then extended her hand out, please come this way. Backquote 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 later in a room. Everyone was in Motoyasu's room, I guess when you're heroes you get special treatment huh? The girl who showed us here was a cutie pie, too. This guy began to remind Naruto of Jiraiya. Atsuki then piped in, and our dinner was sumptuous, though it did taste unusual. Naruto liked the dinner actually, it was food he wasn't used to eating. Naruto was looking at his stats and was relatively happy with them, but he wondered what the max stats were anyways. It seems his magic point and chakra were separate bars. So, he could learn to use magic and continue to use chakra. That was handy, though it was weird to see numbers labeling how much chakra Naruto had. It was a little strange, Naruto knew he had a lot, but to see him in the tens of thousands was a little insane. Naruto then said, so what is this exactly? I've never played something like this before. Motoyasu crossed his arms over his chest and said, you mean a video game? This is just like Emerald Online. Atsuki looked at Naruto and Motoyasu confused, what are you talking about? This is a world out of a console game. It's called Dimension Web. Then Red argued against Atsuki and said, you're wrong. It's a VRMMO. It's pretty much the same as Brave Start Online. 
Okay then. Motoyasu stood up tapping the edge of his spear onto the floor. Ren, wait you guys have what is called, the RMMO. Naruto said he is from a shinobi village. Yep. Ren nodded his head. You guys know what that means too, right? Motoyasu looked at Naruto and the others. Atsuki then said, I think a sci-fi game is familiar with exploring the concept. Naruto had no idea what they were talking about. Video games, he has never heard of those before, I've never heard of video games before. Okay then let's say who we have on the thousand yen bill. Motoyasu then extended his spear. Everyone except for Naruto shouted different names and began to ask about World War II, and who the Prime Minister of Japan was. For Naruto, they didn't even have paper money. Backquote 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 little later. It seems we're all from a different version of Japan. Atsuki sat down in a chair, he couldn't believe it. But Naruto could, I mean Kagaya could teleport between worlds. Ren then said, looks like it. They sound nothing alike. Naruto sat on the couch and said, so, Japan, never heard of it, but my world could be similar to this Japan. I mean I was part of shinobi villages. You make it sounds like it was during back in the warring states period. Atsuki was intrigued by Naruto's world. So, we're not from different eras. Motoyasu was surprised by this, but it's parallel worlds huh? Yeah, video games never heard of them. I've spent all my life training to become a shinobi. Naruto waved his hands not caring too much. Well, I guess it makes sense. I thought it might be because you're the shield hero. Atsuki thought Naruto might have had some idea, but Naruto had no idea at all. Oh, you too. Motoyasu picked up on this earlier than Naruto. Naruto wanted to know what it was. It's only natural. Ren sighed and closed his eye and then looked at Naruto. What am I missing here? Naruto leaned in wanting to know what the issue of being the shield hero. All right. Motoyasu put an arm around Naruto, and Naruto simply glared at him. Motoyasu backed off. Ren and Itsuki could tell Naruto wasn't someone to be easily trifled with. Calm down man, I'm not going to do anything to ya. Big bro Motoyasu's gonna get you up to speed on the basics. He held his hand out to explain saying, as far as I know, the shielder, is the class that specializes in the shield, then Motoyasu got into Naruto's face saying, is one for losers. No high level gamers play it. Naruto simply shrugged his shoulders, that's fine it doesn't matter there are other ways of training. Naruto didn't have to worry about training, it was more about trying to evolve or upgrade the shield than anything else. Naruto stood up and walked outside to the balcony, I didn't ask to be brought here, why, why though? Couldn't I just live a normal life without anyone bothering me? All I wanted was to be left alone, and now I need to save another world. To get back to my home world. Fan fucking tastic. Naruto made sure no one was around and Naruto held his hand up. Naruto encased chakra into his fist as it began to glow a bit. Naruto saw his chakra meter go down by one. Naruto chuckled at it and then released the attack. Then his meter went back up. Well at least it will be amusing. I guess this is Kasumi's way of telling me I'm not done yet, isn't it? Naruto looked up at the sky as he pictured Kasumi waving to him from the heavens. Backquote 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 next day throne room. Naruto arrived with the other three heroes in the throne room. The doors opened, and Naruto saw a lot of people along with a bunch of adventurers. The king then said, we have gathered brave warriors who will fight the waves with you legendary heroes. Naruto and the other heroes walked up closer to see the adventurers. Naruto scanned them all, they all seemed to have had combat experience. Then Naruto laid his eyes on a redhead, it reminded Naruto of his mother. The girl looked at Naruto and smiled back at him. Naruto, ignoring her, continued to look at the others. Naruto couldn't trust her, he can't trust anybody. Not in this world. The king then shouted, now adventures. Time to begin your journey. Like that they all began to walk toward whoever they wanted to party with. Naruto watched as no one joined his line. He was left alone to travel by himself, and that was fine. He'll just use shadow clones to help him do the work. Naruto wasn't surprised by what the other heroes told him last night. The king then said, I have to admit, I wasn't expecting this. The old man off on the side said, it must be because he doesn't have any charisma. 
Try me, old man, I talk to people who were my enemies trying to kill me. Tell me how that isn't charisma you old fart. Naruto wanted to retort but stayed silent. Just then an advisor came walking up to the king. The kind nodded his head as he stood up. Well, rumors that the shield hero is ignorant of this world have spread around town. Naruto just looked at him confused. I mean, I came from a village. This world is completely new to me. They've played these so-called video games before, but I haven't. I've spent my entire life training. The king flat out ignored Naruto. Legend says the heroes come with a firm understanding of our lands. And they seem to think he doesn't meet those criteria. Naruto then rubbed the back of his head and sighed, I mean come on. You just randomly summon people, maybe your ritual was wrong or something. What? How could you say the ritual was wrong? It's a sacred spell that is very important to our land. The old man off on the side shouted angrily. Okay then, I won't argue that, but guess what? You got me and you'll have to deal with it. Honestly, I didn't even want to be here. I've already done enough for my village, you think I want to do this? Naruto gave everyone a very annoyed look on his face, and he threw his hands into the air. Naruto let his arms fall to his side, prophecies aren't always real either, or life isn't fair now, is it? Naruto sighed and shrugged his shoulders, I don't care, either way, I'll manage just fine on my own. Just then a hand went up, Excuse me Hiro-sama. A hand went up and Naruto and the others turned their heads. Naruto recognized the girl who smiled at him earlier. The girl placed her hand over her chest and said, Would you allow me to join the shield hero? Motoyasu was a little surprised and leaned into her a bit, Are you sure? Yes, she said without hesitation, but Naruto wasn't buying it. She would have to earn his trust. That's not easy for anyone to do. Even though he considered Shizune a friend, he never called her Shizune Nei Chan like she wanted him to. The king sighed and then said, Are there any others who wouldn't mind joining Uzumaki Dono? Naruto then piped up and said, You don't have to, I'm not forcing anyone. I had to teach a lot of the stuff I know on my own. He didn't want to make her feel bad for him. The king accepted this and said, Every month, we shall provide each hero with the funds they require. This time, Uzumaki Dono's payment will be higher than the others. He then gestured to his servants off on the side, here are your initial war chests. Please accept them. The old man from before says, Uzumaki Dono gets 800 silver pieces while everyone else gets 600 silver pieces. So, would Ryo be worthless, it is gold, so I'll have to see. The king then called out saying, use this to procure all necessary equipment and set forth on your journey. Backquote, 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 gates. Naruto was holding the bag of money in his hand, as he was walking up the stairs with the girl following him. Motoyasu, Itsuki, and Ren looked back at him and Motoyasu called out to Naruto, Hey Naruto you take care of her, okay. It's sad we can't help you but good luck with your recruiting. Itsuki said with hope that Naruto would get stronger. See you again when the time comes. Ren said calmly, it eerily reminded Naruto of Sasuke. Yeah, don't worry, I'll be fine. Naruto was wondering if he should use the Sharingan to get intel around here. That way he can learn more about the area. Just then the girl walked up to Naruto and said, Um, shield hero. My name is mine Sophia. It is an honor to fight with you. Naruto shook his head. No, Uzumaki Naruto, but Naruto is just fine. I'm a bit different from what you've seen mine. I am not who you think I am mine for the time being, let's get our armor and weapons. Mine seemed to be a lovely girl with wavy semi-long crimson hair that is tied up in a ponytail with chest-length hair strands hanging on either side, emerald green eyes, a cute face, don't worry, you, might not die. Naruto brought his hand up and bit his thumb. Mine looked at him confused as Naruto rolled up his sleeve. Naruto quickly changed as he was now wearing a black t-shirt with a grey vest along with shinobi sandals and black anew pants. Naruto swiped blood over his forearm and the money pouch disappeared with a puff of smoke. Naruto didn't care if mine saw his more regular abilities. Until he was comfortable with her, he would use more of his basic moves. For now, it was strict taijutsu against his enemies. Whoa what is that? Mine asked Naruto openly surprised by his ability. As I said, 
I'm a shinobi we know how to use different abilities. Though I don't have many, I am a sealer, but I don't use it for fighting. Naruto did his best to lie to her and it was clear he was able to do it without any second thought from the girl. That's amazing. Well, let's go. I'll show you around the castle. Mine then proceeded to show Naruto around. While mine wasn't looking Naruto create seal-less shadow clones that hanged into Kakashi, Jiraiya, Guy, and Asuma and went around gathering intel around and on people. This place is amazing and different from my world. Naruto saw the market. It was full of lively people. It made Naruto wonder if this was what it would have been like if he and his sister wasn't hated. Naruto and Kasumi can walk the streets without worrying about someone trying to stab them in the back, for now let's go find a weapon and armor store. It was relatively peaceful, rather strange since he wasn't in Konoha anymore. Good idea, mine ran out in front of Naruto and brought her hands up excitedly, with the amount of money we have we should be able to buy great gear. I'll take you to a shop I trust then. Naruto had her lead the way as he followed her. The two came to a blacksmith store and walked in, I trust this place wholeheartedly. Quote. Naruto and mine walked in and met a man who was bald, muscular, and had a black beard, welcome. Oh, is this your first time in a weapon shop? You sure know how to pick em. She brought me here, told me this place was great to come to. Naruto said giving the credit to mine. Hum you look familiar, have I seen you before? The blacksmith looked at her confused, which Naruto noted. Mine got behind Naruto and smiled, your shop is quite famous, you know. Why thank you, Naruto notices the shop owner forgot about his suspicions about the girl, anyways what can I do for you too? What is this outfit this man is wearing? You mean you can't tell? Mine moved to the side revealing the shield on Naruto's right arm. You mean you're one of those heroes? He was surprised to see one of them in his store. Hum a shield, eh? You must be a dud then. Say what you want, I don't care, you're not the first or won't be the last person to say that to me. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, Uzumaki Naruto, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The man smiled happily, well if you're a regular, I don't give two hoots if you wield a shield or what. The shipowner chuckled, Naruto could easily tell this man was legit, but he was still having mixed feelings about mine. He could easily transform into his six paths sage mode to sense her emotions. That or use the Sharingan to coerce the info out of mine but it wouldn't end well. He would feel bad if she was trying to help him out. Anyways boss, could we get some equipment? Our budget is about 250 silver. Mine pushed up against Naruto's back but Naruto didn't react at all. He wasn't too sure what she was trying to get at. Even if it comes to girls, he is too soft. Guys he'll be hard as he has to be on. Not saying he won't for women, he'll give them a piece of his mind if they deserve it. The shop owner took out some swords and said, let to right, that's iron, magic iron, magic steel, and silver iron in ascending order of cost. Hum, I was never one for swords how about this? Naruto fished something out of his pocket showing it to the man. Naruto held the kunai hoping nothing would happen, and thankfully nothing did. There were no issues. Are you sure kid? I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. You sure you don't want to try a sword? The shop owner looked at Naruto confused. If you can, try to make more of these, I'll pay you. Naruto handed him a tri-prong kunai that didn't have his Horishin formula, I'll look at a sword at least. Naruto went to pick up a sword and held it in his hands. Naruto went to swing it, however, Electricity sparked from his hands, and the sword shot out of his hands. Naruto saw a warning come up. Legendary weapon rule violation. Holding non-assigned weapon, it seems I can only wield a shield, but why can I wield a kunai? A hero may not hold, with intent to fight, any weapon other than their assigned legendary weapon. Kid where did you get this kunai from? I've never made something like this before. The shop owner was shocked about the sword flying out of Naruto's hand. Back in my home village, I mean I can use these to attack, but I had a different use for these kunai instead of using them as a weapon. I can use it by other means. Naruto thanked Kami he can throw a kunai and use the Horishin that way. As well as use it to attack but other weapons won't work for him. Kunai and his Horishin kunais were just fine to use to attack. Well let me see, 
The shop owner walks over and uses a magnifying glass and inspects his shield, it looks like any other small shield at first glance. He then began to tug at it, doesn't this thing come off? No, but I can move it around on my body. Naruto added as he had it appear on his back and then his front. Then he moved it back to his arm. That's so weird. He brought his hand up to the red gem that is on the shield, I sense a great power amount of power within this thing. He tapped it with his finger, but even my appraisal magic isn't telling me much. He stood up shaking his head, don't worry about it, thanks for showing me something interesting. Want to buy some armor instead? Naruto found himself wearing chain mail that look a bit weird on him. Though the stats were pretty shit, his level was higher than a one so. It would be interesting to see what other armors he could end up wearing, how much is it? Mine asked. The shop owner put his hand up on the doorframe and said, I'll give you a discount. 120 silvers. When we sell it, how much would you buy it back? Mine asked. About 100 silvers. The shop owner replied, Oh, I see once I level up above it, I can get stronger armor. Naruto was beginning to understand this whole video game thing now. Okay, we'll take it. Mine smiled happily, as she pushed Naruto in front of her. Thanks. The shop owner gave them a thumbs up, I'll throw in some innerware to show some gratitude. He was glad he got some constant customers. Then Mine made her way to the front of the shop and placed a hand over her chest, shall we head off to battle now, Hiro-sama? Naruto nodded his head, also, Naruto is fine ya know. Naruto didn't want her calling him Hiro-sama all the time. Backquote 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 later. Naruto found himself in a meadow where orange monsters attacked him. Thanks to his training and chakra enhancement, Naruto dispatched them easily and lied to mine about leveling up. His strength, speed, dexterity, and everything else were already insanely high. Naruto got little to no experience from the battle, but it was something. Naruto also found out that his shield can absorb the skin of the orange balloon monsters he destroyed. Naruto also found a skill tree within his shield. Naruto saw an abundance of abilities, and he smiled when he saw Kyubi mode. There was one through nine tails, nine tails chakra mode, Kurama chakra mode, and even six paths sage mode as well. Naruto was pretty damn stacked. These balloon monsters he put it just added an ability. Let's call it a day and head back to the weapon shop. Mine suggested and Naruto looked at her a bit confused. What for? He tilted his head. Buying more equipment would allow getting farther easier. Mine said as she began to skip away back towards town. Backquote 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 weapon shop. The owner said, sure, you'll be much stronger with good equipment. Yeah, but it's whatever. So, we'll see how much it is then once you ring it up. Naruto added and the shop owner nodded his head waiting for mine to finish up. Soon mine came over and placed the money on the table, how much for this? Mine asked curiously. Well, for all this probably around 600. But since you bought something earlier how about 480? When the owner said that, Naruto nodded his head and paid the man. Naruto didn't argue or anything he went with it. Thank you, Hiro-sama. Mine said happily, to which Naruto nodded his head. Naruto still was iffy on her so he would be cautious. Tonight, she can sleep in a hotel, he'll just sleep in a tree. This isn't the first time he has done this. Backquote 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 the pub. The two were sitting down in a pub and eating dinner. Naruto had a simple meal, he finished relatively quickly and he stood up to leave. However, tomorrow the meadow we fought in was here, right? Yes, mine pointed at the map, tomorrow, we'll be heading to Lofen village, which lies beyond this map. Past Lofen village lies a dungeon for rookie adventurers. That's good. Naruto added he was thinking of sending clones to higher level areas since he gained a bunch of knowledge from his shadow clones. He gathered intel that further west there are stronger monsters to fight. We won't make much money there, but it's the perfect place for you to level up. Mine smiled happily as she clapped her hands tougher, with this new equipment. It should be a walk in the park with you defending me. Thanks for the help. Naruto added as he went to walk away. No worries. Mine reached out and gently grabbed Naruto's hand. Oh, by the way, Hiro-sama, aren't you going to drink your wine? Naruto raised an eyebrow, 
I mean, I'm not much of a drinker. Never liked alcohol that much. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Naruto had some red flags go off when she was asking him to drink. Really, this is pretty good you know. She brought the glass to her lips and took a sip. She lowered her glass onto the table. Then pushed hers against Naruto's, I've loved it if you drink with me. Her glass clinked into his. Like I said I'm good, I'm not much of a drinker. Naruto knew his trust in others was very little. Her asking him to drink with him was hardly really any red flags. Then again, it's not every day a pretty girl like her just decides to join your party. Then again you don't get teleported to another world just randomly after reading a book. I see, I guess it's expected as a hero. Mine relented not wanting to push Naruto. What do you mean? Naruto raised an eyebrow confused at her. This country is matriarchy. No man would ever dare turn down a drink offered by a woman. Mine understood that Naruto wasn't used to their customs. I see, but we don't have a system like that. It's more like a dictatorship than anything, my Ka-san runs the place. It's a harsh way to look at it. But my Ka-san is a good person, and her only interest is what's best for the people. Naruto wondered how Suand and the others were doing. He just randomly disappeared, it was an accident. Maybe I should try summoning the toads. I didn't think about that. Naruto would try it some other time, he wanted to make sure mine was trustworthy. Naruto relented, all right then, I'll concede. Naruto took the wine and took a sip, once he put the drink to his mouth. He began pumping his liver with chakra. Naruto quickly dispatched the alcohol with no issues. Thank you, I enjoy drinking you want to have another. Mine could tell Naruto wasn't anywhere near drunk. I'm good, thanks though, but I will turn in early for tonight. Have a good night I'll make sure your room is paid for. Naruto stood up and went to go into the rooms. Good night, Hiro-sama. Mine waved as he left. Once he got to the room area, he talked to the innkeeper and paid him for Mine's stay. Letting the man know it was a girl with red hair staying for the night. With that Naruto left and found a comfy tree to rest in. With that he let the night lull him to sleep. Backquote 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 morning. Naruto who was sleeping in the tree heard a ruckus below him. Naruto looked down to see a bunch of knights there, what do you guys need? Naruto asked as he looked down. The king has issued a summon from you. The lead knight asked sternly, come with us. What did I do? Naruto raised a confused look at them as they walked up and grabbed him. Naruto could easily escape and take everyone out. But he rather not have an entire nation after his ass, so he went with it. Backquote 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 throne room. Naruto was stripped of his chainmail armor and thrown into the throne room. Naruto looked at the king and asked, what's this all about? Naruto knew something was up. Naruto saw all the glares that came off from everyone. Naruto recognized all the looks he was getting from everyone. I see, mine. Naruto stood and closed his eyes. Okay let's hear it, what did I do? Even his other fellow heroes were glaring at him. I hope me declining your offer for me to drink with you isn't the problem. I don't drink mainly because I can't even get wasted. Naruto scratched his cheek. Like he was some sort of monster. You scumbag. The king narrowed his eyes angrily as Naruto. He placed his hand on his forehead. Mine, you poor adventure, could you please testify once more for us? Mine hid behind Motoyasu, and she had a trembling tone in her voice. T the shield hero barged into my room drunk and pinned me down. She tightened her hold on Motoyasu's back. I see. Naruto said under his breath. Naruto narrowed his eyes at her, there it was, so she was after him all this time, I had one glass of wine that night with mine. Naruto tried to defend himself. He said, the night is still young, and tore my clothes off I somehow escaped and ran to Sir Motoyasu, who happened to be staying in the same inn, for help. Mine said on the verge of tears. Naruto didn't have any emotion on his face, so, this is what this world is like huh? Nothing has changed, it's all the same, am I going to get strung up like a criminal, again? Naruto did what he could to defend himself, oh, the inn we stayed at. Do you even know where I slept, please ask the king's guards. Where was I sleeping, Naruto asked the guards. The guards who arrested him said, your highness we did find him fast asleep in a tree. That doesn't mean he could have left to sleep in the said tree. 
The king yelled back angrily. That doesn't mean that I did rape her. She has no proof that I did such a thing. If I would have done the things, she says I did to her. Naruto glared coldly at them. Even if I did, I certainly wouldn't have left any traces of that possibility. Mine seemed to swallow hard. He wasn't fucking around. Why would I stay at the scene of the crime? Why don't you take some of my semen then? Surely if I raped her there must be traces of my semen on her. Why don't you examine the DNA and see if it's similar? Besides that, what proof does mine have that I tried to force her to do anything? You could ask the innkeeper. I didn't rent a room. I only bought one for mine. Naruto asked as everyone looked at mine for an answer. I'll give you all one last warning. Everyone felt an eerily presence fill the room making everyone begin to sweat. I did not and could not have caused mine to do anything against her will. Naruto grit his teeth. When he thought about Kasumi, I would never do anything like that. Where is the proof that I touched her? Where is it? A knight walked up and knelt on one knee. The knight said, when we searched the shield hero's room um, we found this on his bed. The guard held up a lacy bra. Mine turned away putting her hands to her face, eeekkk. -e what did I just say? I didn't rent a room, so that evidence can't be real. Not only that but can be easily forged and put there. Besides I was in a tree, even if I had a room. I'd make sure there were no traces of mine left. You can even ask the gentleman that let me pay for mine's room. Naruto pointed his thumb out the window towards the inn they stayed at. There you have it, undeniable proof, the king said as everyone stared at Naruto with disgust. Naruto wasn't even given a chance. The king had everyone's silence. Naruto grit his teeth again, how does that evidence work? I didn't rent a room last night, I stayed in a tree. So, there's no way I could have done anything to mine. What in my right mind would I do so anyways? I was on guard about her the entire time. Naruto felt his heart only hurt more and more the longer this unfair trial kept going. He wasn't being given any chance at proving himself innocent. Though, how can he? All they can do is take a woman's word for it. They all seemed to ignore the fact he never bought a room at the inn. The other heroes still looked at him in disgust, it's too bad. Atsuki said with displeasure on his face, I was worried something bad might happen, but I was hoping you'd know better. Ren then added, he thinks a hero can do whatever the hell he wants and get away with it. That's not even the least bit true, but what can I do? I can't even defend myself, this was rigged from the start. Why the hell are you imbeciles even talking about? You were just talking the other day about being this kingdom's enemy. Is anyone here not seeing this? Naruto bit his lip angrily as the air in the room began to thicken more. No one could understand where the strong presence was coming from. Motoyasu then said, you're not the be-all and end-all in this world. He swung his spear back and forth and then aimed the tip at Naruto, know your place. The guards around Naruto aimed their spears at Naruto's neck. This wasn't new to him, this was familiar to Naruto. Though there was a difference this time, he wasn't powerless. Naruto looked at mine one last time. She removed her hands from her face and smiled. She then pulled down the lid of her right eye. Then stuck her tongue out at Naruto as his eyes widen angrily. That made Naruto remember how a woman back in Konoha tricked both Kasumi and him. She was kind, at least on the outside. That was a reason why Naruto stopped trusting others. He never understood why Kasumi tried to trust others. Even though they hurt them, over, and over, and over again. Here it was, plain as day in front of him. Another lie, another bitch, and a woman doing whatever the hell she wants because she has the power to do it. Naruto then said, I know my place, I'm already better than all of you. Like these pompous so-called heroes right here. I'm well above you all. In terms of being a merciful human being, you should be thankful, that I have restraint. Naruto frowned, I should have known. It was all a ruse, yet I kept trying to convince myself that there were some good people in this world. That maybe, just maybe this world was different. Naruto opened his eyes as he stared at mine and the others, betrayed, by everyone he just met. Not even given a second chance to defend himself, it's because they also think I'm weak, they're trying to knock me down to make themselves look better. No one has ever believed in me, but people who have they're not here. I am alone here. I won't listen to help them. 
I won't help them in the waves, if they die then so be it. I fight for myself, and no one else. I fight for me, and me alone. Naruto momentarily looked up and out the window and smiled at the sky. Everyone else in the room was disgusted by Naruto smiling, but he didn't care, I guess I am a monster after all, right, Kasumi. The king placed his hand on his face, as much as I wish I could, you cannot leave either. Only once all four cardinal heroes die can you leave. The king didn't move his hand as the other heroes stared at him in shock, well, you certainly can go home after the war you fight off all the incoming waves. Naruto growled even louder, no, they can all die for all I care. You don't realize who I am. I could easily, decide not to lift a single finger. Even when the situation is dire during the waves. Naruto tightened his fist, if you idiots can't even see reason, and let your own biases cloud your judgment. Then what reason do I have to fight for you? I would have you imprisoned for that, but your punishment is already done. News has already spread, scum or not you're still a hero. The king said upset, you may leave, but know that no one will trust you. Naruto unsealed the money pouch from his wrist surprising everyone, I wonder. Who so easily spread this rumor so quickly, and so with so must haste, as if it was planned. The king and mine seemed to tighten up a little bit. Naruto narrowed his eyes, I'll give you all one last warning, try to fuck with me again. I won't be merciful, I'll cut anyone down who gets in my way. Even if it's one of the three cardinal heroes. Just so you know, I could kill you all without hesitation, and without remorse. Naruto looked at mine not caring if she kept hiding behind Motoyasu, you people are far too late to think you can bring me down. I've had that done many, many years ago. Naruto tightened his fit causing his fists to bleed, you're all going to be begging me when you need your asses to be saved. Naruto took the bag of money he was given from the king. Naruto threw it at Motoyasu to catch, have it. I'll earn the money myself, I don't need your stupid charity. Naruto turned to leave the castle to start a new one. Naruto already figured out he was able to place items. Like when he put a Ryo in his shield it went in, and then spat out some gold to use. Just then Motoyasu came ran up and grabbed Naruto's arm, hey. Wait a second. Naruto turned to face him as his eyes were glowing red with black slits in his eyes. Naruto's whisker marks darkened, and he glared everyone down. There was a heavy killing intent Naruto filled the atmosphere Naruto also noticed the guards still pointing their spears at Naruto, leave me the hell alone. You're all on your own. Besides, I got my training to do. Touch me again, see what happens. Naruto snarled at Motoyasu as he looked at Naruto in shock. Motoyasu found a kunai aimed at his crotch by a shadow clone that Naruto created surprising everyone. Naruto easily shrugged Motoyasu's arm off him and Naruto began to walk away. Before Naruto left, he walked up to the guards. Naruto returned his facial features to normal. Naruto turned back to everyone else in the room, aren't you selfish, only looking after yourself. Motoyasu crossed his arms over his chest. Selfish, you want to know what's selfish? Naruto turned to them as his eyes glowed red with black slits in the middle. Just then figures appeared in the room with a bunch of plum of smoke. Surprising everyone, Naruto ignored the person who was hidden up on the balcony. Naruto had a shadow clone holding a kunai up to everyone's neck. The kings, mains, Motoyasu, Itsuki, and Ren. Everyone had a kunai to their neck, women, maids, and butlers, not one person went without a kunai to their neck. Except for the one woman who was hidden. That was on purpose. You want to know what's selfish? Naruto glared at them, me, not taking your very lives. I can do that easily, in an instant, I can do it now, tomorrow, a week, a month, or a year from now. You wouldn't even know it, look how easily I beat you. My skills, my power, my abilities far surpass you. Naruto released his clones causing them to all disappear, however, I'm not a murderer, nor a rapist, call me what you want. Monster, demon, devil, I'm used to it. Just no. Naruto turned around beginning to leave the throne room. The doors began to close slowly behind him. He slightly turned his head back with his left eye turning into a ripple pattern with a purple glow. You all better begin praying to whatever god you guys follow. Spoilers. Naruto teleported the king to the doors as they closed right in front of Naruto. 
The king turned around in shock as he saw on his throne was on fire with black flames. Not only that the evidence they had on Naruto that he raped mine. The evidence was also on his throne which was burnt to ashes with black flames, I won't be listening. The king roared out with anger, how dare you? If you kill me this kingdom would fall without me. Try it again and I'll have your publicly executed. The king swung his hand from the left to right. Naruto didn't turn around, he didn't care. Backquote, 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 backquote. With Naruto Naruto left the castle not looking back. Naruto consciously put the black flames out once they burnt their targets. Naruto quickly bit his thumb and smeared blood onto his thumb. Naruto unsealed a ninja outfit he had in storage and quickly put it on while walking. Naruto had on a typical Anbu outfit. Naruto wanted everyone to know who he is. If people are going to know who he is, he's going to be known for something he wants to be known for. Not some damn rapist. He would rather be called a demon again. Naruto didn't bother putting on the kitsune mask. Suand offered him to join the Anbu if he wanted to. So, he had the outfit he chose to continue being a shinobi instead of being a farmer in the countryside. Naruto placed the mask on his hip and continued to walk the streets. He already heard them talking about him being a demon. Yeah, nothing has changed. Naruto continued to walk, and he stopped when he noticed a familiar person, hey kid. Naruto turned his head and then found himself slammed up against the wall. The man reared his fist back, I heard what you did to that girl. You deserve a punch in the face. Then do it and be done with it. I couldn't defend myself then, and I won't now. Naruto simply closed his eyes waiting for the punch, he wasn't going to fight the shop owner. He would fight the others though. Then the shop owner saw the look in Naruto's eyes and released him, what's wrong? Not going to pummel me. No, I changed my mind. I can tell you didn't do it. He placed closed his eyes and placed his hand on his hips. Wait a second, he called out to stop Naruto from leaving. The man ushered him to follow him into the back. Once they got into the back, the blacksmith handed Naruto a cloak, consider it a parting gift. You'll never make it out like that, but something tells me you're more than just meets the eye. How much? Naruto asked looking up at him. Nothing but let's call it a clearance sale and say, five copper. He said knowing Naruto wouldn't leave him empty handed. Naruto put the black cloak on and went to leave. Naruto took out a gold coin and tossed it to the man, keep the change. Naruto then began to walk away not looking back. The man watched Naruto leave and leaned on the wall of his shop. He crossed his arms and sighed, I wonder if the kingdom has ruined us. Sure. We have the other heroes, but something tells me. If they piss that kid off again, who knows what he'll do. If anything, I know he didn't do it. The man could tell by looking in Naruto's eye he didn't do it. Backquote, 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 later. Naruto was out training in the meadow. Well, you could call it training. Activating gravity weights Naruto put 40 times the gravity on himself. He fought all day and all night not resting as he dodged the orange balloon monsters. He made sure to not let even one touch him, he punched each one killing them instantly. Naruto found himself catching his breath for a moment, Naruto could go on, but he was training fueled by rage. So, he wore himself out quickly. Naruto looked at his stats, surprisingly he gained 5 levels from that. These gravity seals were literal cheat codes since they worked on his strength endurance, and agility. It made Naruto wonder how strong he could get. Those other idiots never seemed to train a day in their lives. Of course, they were level 1. However, for Naruto, he wasn't a normal level 1. Naruto Uzumaki LV. Hash 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 just because I put 3 hash there doesn't mean he is only level 100 its, so you guys don't know what level he is lol. HP. 10,000 10 thousandths special skill. Auto regeneration, healthy body, 100 per second. MP. 100 one hundredths. Remember, Naruto is not proficient with magic. CP. Chakra points, 1 million one millionths. Special passive. Stamina regeneration, massive stamina pool, 1000 per second. Max speed. Unknown error. Naruto chuckled at his stats, that also didn't consider how quickly his chakra can recover. Along with his healing factor. Naruto saw all of his magic affinities present, his attack, defense, magic damage, magic resistance, 
dexterity, and equipment. Shield, cloak, ragged cape. That was it there was the Anbu stuff, but the magic can't sense it. Maybe there were just things in this world that couldn't sense if it is used with chakra. Naruto summoned a Horishin Kanai to his hand. Naruto saw a bunch of orange balloon monsters approach him. Naruto gripped it and smirked as he ran at them. He tried to wield it, but it shocked itself right out of his hand. Naruto picked back this time channeling his chakra through it. Naruto swung it at some monster balloons wielding the weapon with no problem. So it seems weapons that I infuse with my chakra work and doesn't cause the system to glitch out. Perfect. Now Naruto had a weapon. Once Naruto collected over 40 balloons, he went back into the town to sell them. Naruto overheard the man buying them for one for two copper each. Naruto walked up and placed down 40 of them, I'm here to sell them. The man instantly recognized Naruto and rubbed his hands greedily, I see, 40 huh? How about 5 coppers for 40? The guy shrugged his shoulders chuckling. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he growled as his eyes changed color to red and black slits formed, I see. Naruto lifted his entire cloak and wrapped an arm around the man pulling him closer. They were live balloon monsters, I see, would live ones fetched a better price. Naruto smirked knowing the man merchant would stop screwing with him. Naruto pulled him closer as the balloon monsters didn't continue to eat the man but scared him, I am not trying to rip you off you know. I just want fair market prices all. Naruto frowned at this, the things he had to do to get by. He doesn't want to keep giving his gold away, it would be wasteful. So having smaller means to pay would help. Naruto isn't proud of the methods, hell fucking no he isn't, but does he have a problem doing it if he has to? No, hell no he doesn't, all I want is a continued service, I'll even give you discounts from time to time, but stop trying to screw with me. Naruto released him as the monster balloons dropped to the ground and grabbed back onto Naruto. The merchant who was finally released did narrow his eyes at Naruto and then sighed, as much as I'd like to refuse the goods and money are without sin. He took out the copper and handed it to Naruto. Naruto turned to leave, oh, and if you tell others about me and the way I handle business, that's perfectly fine. I don't want people screwing around with me. Naruto left not even feeling remorse sorry for what he did. Plus, it is less of a hassle. As was stated before, is he proud of his methods? No, but will he do it if he has to? Yeah, he will. As Naruto was leaving, he saw an herb shop and Naruto looked at his shield, he wondered if he could get good money for selling herbs too. Naruto went back to the meadow to rest up for the night he had a long road ahead of him. Backquote 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 next day. Naruto found himself in the forest looking for monsters. However, he found herbs on the ground, and he recognized the herbs from that shop. Naruto picked up the herb and dropped it into his shield. Then he got a notification saying he unlocked new shields. He had an orange small shield, but a new one unlocked. Yellow small shield and leaf shield were unlocked on his skill 3. Naruto saw that there were shields he had within the shield each with skill unlocks. Just then Naruto saw the notification system say, Master Bonus, when a shield is used for a while to achieve a certain level of proficiency it will grant its wielder permanent bonuses. Naruto smirked at this, so mastering a shield, I can keep its abilities even after I switched to another one. Naruto held his arm out, leaf shield. Naruto called out as his shield took a moment to move to the correct skill tree equipment. Then there was a bright glow and Naruto's shield turned into a leaf. Naruto reached back down to pick the herbs again, and once he did the quality of the herbs improved. Naruto saw the status say, foraging skill 1 activated arrow. Naruto smirked at this since he knew he could make a lot of money from these high quality herbs. Naruto made a couple of shadow clones as they had a similar shield equipped and then helped him harvest some herbs. Once Naruto finished, he placed them into a bag and left towards the medicine shop. The man working there said, oh. Wow, this is good stuff. Where did you get this? In the forest right outside the castle. Naruto pointed in the direction even though they were in his shop. Hum, I never knew you could find such fine stuff there. I was sure the quality was more average. I'll buy them here you go. The man placed the money on the table. 36 copper and 1 silver. Naruto thanked him and went to leave but he said, I'll be back some other time with more. I'll do what I can to find better ones. 
Naruto waved to him. Naruto figured he would have to gather a variety number of herbs. Help them improve his shield and his ability to improve herbs. So, afterward, Naruto went to get something to eat, but of course. The food was tasteless, but it was better than nothing. Naruto made sure to mind his own business until three guys came up and recognized Naruto because of his shield. The man chuckled, well, well what do we have here? Shield hero, well, what do you think? We'll join your party. Yeah, yeah, count your lucky stars. The fat one put his hand on Naruto's left shoulder. Naruto didn't move, he didn't look at them even once, okay let's discuss terms then. Okay, sure. The fat one said extending his hand out to shake Naruto's. Your pay will be entirely performed based. I'm sure you guys know what that is. Naruto added he was going to explain it more until they kept blabbing their mouths. Nope. No clue. Their leader who had bandages on his forearms cockily joked. It means you'll be paid according to the loot we get on our adventure. If you die, you don't get paid. If I die you take whatever. If you don't do anything you get nothing. If you get in my way you get nothing. Is that clear? Naruto said sternly as he didn't move his attention away from the food he was eating. Naruto took a bite and then said, I'm leader, so I get at least 45% and I'll split the rest as I see fit. If you don't like it, then screw off. Naruto stood up and began to head outside to leave he knew they were going to follow. Naruto stepped outside as one of them said, well you're going to make sure we're plenty equipped. Naruto continued to walk keeping his back to them. Waiting for them to stab him in the back, you guys have equipment if I'm not mistaken. So, I don't need to do jack squat for you. Huh, whatever just forget it, just hand over your money. The leader with the bandages on his forearms demanded. Geez, if you would have said that before then I didn't have to waste my time with you all. Naruto slowly turned his head to them as his eyes were glowing red with a black slit in the middle. He growled at them, you want some of my money? Then come take it from me. Naruto threatened them as they both screamed and ran away. Once they fled, he watched them leave. Naruto would like to level up more, well maybe he doesn't have to he is already strong. However, he doesn't know what type of monster there will be. So, he'll need help eventually Naruto understands he needs a party if he were to do anything. Even if he can gain tons of experience when it comes to defensive ability. His strength ability will become harder and harder to increase. Naruto noticed that over his entire time he was leveling up or whatever levels he could get. His offensive stat for melee is only 500. Yes, it increases chakra enhancement. However, since his past few levels ups, his strength never went up, and that does concern Naruto. He may be able to take hits and heal them easily, but he needs ways to end his fights eventually. Making sure he can hit hard is important. So doing 500 without any enhancements is fine but he needs to level up his strength. That meant getting someone to help improve his strength. Just then Naruto heard someone behind him, you seem to be having trouble. Naruto turned his head and turned his eyes back to normal. The man had an eerie smile on his face. He was a short, creepy looking little man who wears a circus ringmaster's tuxedo. Glasses with a small chain attached, white alchemist gloves, a long top hat, and a red bow tie with a small diamond brooch in its center. He has a small, old-fashioned handlebar mustache and wears a somewhat sinister, omnipresent grin on his face, what do you want? Naruto asked intrigued by who he is. You're having trouble finding help. But I have just what you need. The man smiled as he ran his thumb on the rim of his hat. If you're offering to give me any, thanks but no thanks. I'll be fine. Naruto was annoyed he couldn't get his strength stat up even with the gravity training. Party members. I'm not offering party members. I have something much more convenient. The man chuckled. Naruto turned around to look at him. What is it? Naruto asked as the man came walking up to him and stopped. Interested, are we? He looked up at Naruto with a conniving smile on his face. Don't get so close, unless you want to lose a hand. Naruto glared at him and the man began to sweat a little bit. You're every bit the man, demon the rumors say you were. The short man chuckled, he liked Naruto but was also afraid of him. Though he couldn't be afraid of potential investors, if my offer interests you, follow me. He turned and began to leave as Naruto sighed and followed him. 
At least he would be saving someone from slavery, if you can call it that. Naruto followed the man to what looked like a circus. They walked in and he said, here we are. Naruto followed the short man into the place. Naruto looks at the man and asks, what makes you think I need a slave? How do I know if they'll even stab me in the back? The fact they cannot lie or betray their master. And this caught Naruto's attention as much as it pained him inside. It did just that, slaves are placed under the effect of a curse. A strong, seal-based curse that can take their very lives. He drew a circle in the ground with his cane, what do you say? Show me what you got. Naruto ordered as the short ringleader chuckled as he led Naruto through his collection. I knew it, you have everything it takes to be a masked wonderful patron. The man only nodded his head happily as that smile never left his face. I see ones that aren't human. Naruto took note that there were human-like but not exactly human. Naruto looked at the slaves and the ringleader said, you can call them human, technically. Naruto though wanted to find out more about this world, tell me more. I don't know much about this world. To me intel is everything. The creatures that look human but aren't called demi-humans. They're mostly used in manual labor or as servants. He continued to walk and talk as if this was normal for him. As much as Naruto hates it, he is in a bind, and he can't afford to slip up. His strength needs to increase, his strength has not increased at all since his past level ups, beastmen are demi-humans whose appearance leans more towards the animal side. They're used as bodyguards or as participants in death matches that are gambled on. I see, though they don't seem to act like humans too much. Naruto could see the animal instinct a lot of them held. Indeed, and since demi-humans are thought to be closer to monsters, life would be hard for them in this country, which practices human supremacy. The man came to a stop when they approached large and bigger cages. As such, they're treated as slaves. Cough 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 Naruto heard the coughing off in the distance and began to follow it. Naruto arrived at the cage and lifted the cover. He found a girl who looked to be a demi-human. The girl is a child with long, unmanaged hair and a dirty cloth gown. Naruto saw the void of life the girl had in her eyes. There was pain, loss, and mystery behind her eyes. Something drew him to this slave. Just then the ringleader called out to Naruto, Sir, this slave here is my recommendation. The pointed at the crate with his cane. The cloth was lifted as a beastman grabbed the bars growling at them, it's a level 75. It's highly capable in battle. How does, 15 gold pieces. I see, showing me your best even though you know I can't afford it, but that's okay. Naruto understood where he was coming from a business standpoint. That's why I picked you. Let me ask you, what kind of slave would you like? The ringmaster asked wondering what Naruto would pick. A demi-human someone I could train and teach. Naruto informed him and he nodded his head. He began to walk back to that girl Naruto saw earlier. Look at me and raise your head. Naruto called out to the girl in the cage. The ringmaster then said, that half raccoon is diseased and has a mental disorder. I'm having a hard time with her myself. Naruto saw the girl cower away from him and Naruto's eyes began to soften as he saw much of himself and his sister in this girl, her previous owner loved his torture, you see. I doubt she'll last long. I'll take her. Naruto quickly let out as the ringmaster looked at him confused. The girl's eyes widen in fear and begin to shake when Naruto said he'd take her. I'm sorry if I seem harsh little one, but I'll do what I can to make your new start, better. Backquote 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 little later. Naruto cut his finger over ink that the ringmaster set up. Naruto paid the eight gold pieces, which the ringmaster happily took. Let's begin. The ringmaster walked over to the little girl. There was already a mark and Naruto watched as a partial circle was drawn. The mark began to glow and the burning sensation began to burn itself on the crest of the little girl. Hey, Naruto didn't like she was in pain. The pain will be dissipated soon. The ringmaster added hoping to calm Naruto's aggression, the slave crest on her chest makes it impossible for her to defy you. Naruto hate the sign in his vision, contract, acquired slave A. Naruto saw her info pull up as well as the party stats. Demi-human. LV. 1 Express. 0 sixteenths max HP, 2100 seventeenths max MP, 4848 max chakra, 
0 over 0 Naruto saw a variety of the girl's abilities, regular speaking or attacking, as well as violations against his orders. Though Naruto noted that the girl for some reason can learn to use chakra. Is it because he uses chakra and the chakra that is in his blood? Now the girl is all yours. Though there is one extra here. Naruto turned and walked up to the girl. Just then the ringmaster said, that's your commission huh? You were going to try to wire it out of me anyways. I knew that. Naruto has dealt with human trafficking traders before. They're illegal in the elemental nations. Well, I guess I should know your name. Naruto waited for her to stop coughing and the girl quickly curled up defensively, our Raftalia. Come on let's go. Naruto reached down and gently grabbed her arm. It was hard, but enough to make sure she got the note to stand and begin walking. The ringmaster watched as Naruto left, I'm looking forward to your next visit. He smiled as he watched Naruto leave. Backquote 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 next day weapon smith. Welcome, oh, it's you. The blacksmith recognized Naruto as he walked up to the counter. Hey, hey, what's with the girl? Naruto placed some money on the table, I need a light sword for her to practice using. Naruto added as Raftalia stood next to Naruto quietly. With that, the man went to fetch some spare clothes and a weapon for the girl. Soon she came walking out of the changing room, s sorry for taking long. The girl nervously said, Well, I need you to draw your knife please. Naruto pulled out an orange balloon monster and held it in front of her, I need you to kill this. And no, the girl was scared, she didn't want to attack it. That's an order Raftalia, attack it. Naruto ordered as the mark on Raftalia's chest began to glow and hurt her. She fell to her knees in pain. Do it, Naruto said again as the sparking stopped and she stood up. She drew her knife and charged at the orange balloon monster. She stabbed it but the monster used its teeth to stop her. Naruto pushed her back, do it again, but push through, you have to kill it. Naruto said again as she nodded her head. The shop owner only had his arms crossed watching in the background. This time she screamed out, ah. She charged forward stabbing the monster and popping it. She flew back and fell on her butt dropping the knife. Naruto saw his express increase by 15 as Raftalia, good hour express went up. Probably because you set her as a companion when forming the pact. Wait, you didn't do that with the lady from before. The shop owner realized Naruto didn't have her as a companion at a party. Naruto didn't know how to, it was automatically done when the pact was made. Naruto only shook his head and he looked down at Raftalia again, listen, from here on out, I'm going to need you to help me. I'll need you to begin fighting monsters alongside me. I won't be able to keep getting stronger as I am now. But with you, I can get stronger, so I'll train you. Let's go. Kid, you're going to die a painless death. The blacksmith placed his hands on his hips. I've been through so much pain, I've stopped feeling it. Naruto turned to him and gave him a look of worry on his face. Sorry, ignore that let's get going. Naruto spoke out as Raftalia picked up her sword and sheathed it while running after Naruto. Been through so much pain, stop feeling it, kid, just what have you been through? I wonder if the king royally screwed us. The blacksmith wondered who Naruto was. Naruto off on the side saw other demi-humans being used as slaves. Naruto felt bad but couldn't do anything. Slaves were allowed, just then he heard the girl's stomach growl, are you hungry? The Raftalia quickly shook her head, no, come on you can't fight on an empty stomach. Naruto turned to leave as Raftalia followed closely. Naruto entered a random pub and sat down ignoring the sign outside. Along with the people inside recognizing him as the demon rapist. But more the demon than anything, that was something Naruto would rather be known for. Naruto looked up at him, the most expensive lunch for one, as well as what the kid is having over there for her. Naruto placed a golden coin down, Naruto not long ago placed a Ryu on his shield. It transferred his currency into this world's currency. One Ryu is worth about 8 gold, so that helps a lot. The waiter was shocked by how much Naruto put down and didn't even question it. Raftalia looked at Naruto confused, why? Why? What? Naruto looked at her a bit confused by her question. Raftalia moved her hands to her thighs and said, why, why would you get that for me? It looked like you wanted to try it, besides you need to eat. 
I won't let you fight on an empty stomach. Naruto then rested his arms on the table and let a low sigh out. Soon the waiter came back and placed the food in front of Naruto. He began to eat as well as Raftalia eyeing the second dish the waiter brought. Raftalia's eyes widened as stars formed in them. A tint of pink stained her cheeks with excitement and wonder. She looked at the food happily as her tail began to wag a little bit, aren't you going to eat? Naruto asked confused. Raftalia looked up at Naruto excitedly, can I? Yes, you can, you don't need me to give you an order to eat. Naruto closed his eyes and began to eat his meal. He was glad that Raftalia made a small 180 seeing her happy. Naruto watched her begin eating using her hands to scoop the food up. She continued to eat too quickly, and food got stuck in her throat. She began to pound at her chest to help swallow her food. Naruto moved his cup of water to her, drink this. Raftalia took it and drank the water to quench her thirst and free her throat from the lodged food. Raftalia saw Naruto eating with the fork, so she began to use it. Naruto smiled internally as he asked, is it good? Naruto could tell she hasn't been eating very well. It must have been a long time since she has had a good meal. With her cheeks, full Raftalia nodded her head as Naruto heard, yeah, come from her stuffed face. Backquote 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 later. Naruto took Raftalia to begin training as the two began to grind on the balloon monsters. Eventually going up from the orange ones to the darker colored balloon monsters. She dispatched them quickly and Naruto saw she was improving quickly. By dusk, Naruto and Raftalia caught fish and cooked it. This reminded Naruto of when Hiraz and Gigi found him and Kasumi in the woods one time. The two were cooking fish they caught from the river. Naruto saw that Raftalia's level was already at 4, it was good. Naruto himself even got a level after all the grinding. Then again, his strength only went up by 1, so now he was at 501. Still annoying but it was something. Naruto began to check his shield again as new abilities were added, Mush Shield, Green Mush Shield, and Blue Mush Shield, Unlock Blue Mush Spores X3 and Spores of Blue Mush X2. And Simple Blending Recipes 1. Naruto now could blend things, that would be good for making potions for healing. Just then Raftalia spoke up, Gushujin sama A. N. Means Master. I was wondering, who are you? Naruto sighed as he closed his eyes, I am Uzumaki Naruto, you can just call me Naruto. No need for Gushujin sama or anything like that. Naruto is fine, but as to your question, I am the shield hero. Raftalia was intrigued by this, you mean, one of the four cardinal heroes. Raftalia looked at Naruto with awe and hope in her eyes. She remembers her two san telling stories about them. Backquote 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 flashback. Raftalia, do you know the four legendary heroes? Her father asked. Yep, the ones with the sword, the bow, and the spear, and then, the one with the shield. Her father looked at her proudly, right. The shield hero, in particular, treated us demi-humans very well. Really, I'd like to meet him, Raftalia's tail began to wag behind her. Her mother then adds, if you're a good girl, I'm sure you'll meet him one day. Raftalia smiled happily as she smiled hoping she would. Backquote 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 end of flashback. Naruto sitting there began to mix some of the herbs and mushrooms he had. He was going to try to make some medicine to help cure Raftalia. Soon Naruto finished the medicine, here drink this, this will help with your sickness. Naruto handed her some medicine wrapped in a leaf. Raftalia took a sip but spit the little bit out, it's bitter. Naruto chuckled but shook his head, he gently patted her head, good medicine tastes bitter. Now drink it all up Raftalia, Naruto said with a gentle tone and Raftalia seemed to enjoy hearing his gentle voice. For whatever reason, Naruto unconsciously dropped his cold persona and tone with her already. Even if it wasn't long, Naruto couldn't be mad or stay mad at those who were only children. They're innocent and haven't done anything wrong, then again maybe he only feels this way because she had that slave crest on. Naruto was unsure himself, or at least that's what he kept telling himself. Eventually, Raftalia fell asleep as Naruto wrapped her up in a makeshift bed Naruto made with leaves. Naruto was grinding up some more medicine to use so they can heal injuries. Not only that, but this also helped level up his skills in making them. 
Just then Naruto saw Raftalia shoot up from her bed and her arms extended, no. She began to reach out trying to reach for something she couldn't grab, Otu-san. Okaa-san. She began to flail her arms around, and Naruto knew those cries of pain. It was the pain of loss, Naruto moved to her side as he pulled her head into his shoulder, it's okay, Raftalia. It's okay, calm down, it's okay, I'm here, I'm here. Naruto felt his voice shake as he hugged the little girl. Naruto frowned at himself for acting the way he has been. Here is this little girl, who's gone through the pain of losing her family. Here is this little one who has suffered who knows how much. Naruto didn't know it but this little girl he took in. She was someone who he bought on a mere whim and was going to be the first that he needs. Sometimes it only takes just one person to change your life. One to be there for you, to push you, to believe in you, it only takes one. Yet here he was falling apart for a little girl he bought from a slaver trader. It scared Naruto so much that he clamped up. He didn't want to tell anyone, and when he did, he did it out of anger or rage. Like when he shouted at the king and the others that he lost it all. Raftalia kept crying in his arms as Raftalia cried from a horrible nightmare, Okaa-san. Otu-san, Raftalia cried. It's okay Raftalia, it's okay, I'm here, I'm here, I all, I'll never leave you, I promise. Naruto frowned at himself, no he hated himself. He so badly wanted to tell Raftalia that he would protect her. But it hurt, it hurt so much to put trust into someone again. Even if she was a slave. It scared him that she would just betray him as the others have. That bitch mine, and then the people of Konoha. Naruto began to rub Raftalia's head trying to help calm her down. He looked up at the sky and said to himself, Unless you decide you want, your freedom, it is granted as soon as you want to go. I'll never stop you. Backquote 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 next day medicine store. The quality is not bad. The medicine man inspected the product that Naruto made, are you well versed in making medicines, Hiro-sama? Well, for a while I'd had to. I had someone who got sick more than I did. So, I did what I could by making medicines from herbs. I would sneak into medical classes to listen in on the teachers. So, I learned to make herbs for that person. Naruto smiled as he thought back to Kasumi. Kasumi and Naruto would get into a lot of trouble, and it wound up them getting hurt. Mainly Naruto, but Naruto focused too much on keeping Kasumi well. Even if it meant Naruto had to deal with some scrapes for a day. Then again, rarely did he and Kasumi ever get sick but there was a time when she got sick one time. That was due to the food she and Naruto ate, which probably wasn't the best idea. Just then Naruto caught himself slipping again, P please don't tell anyone that, I I've just had a really hard life is all. The man not deciding to pry didn't say anything about it but was curious, the name is Hiruzen, a pleasure to meet you. Naruto froze for a moment but then came back to reality, I I, I see. Naruto smiled a bit as he looked at the old man. Did I remind you of someone from your old world? Hiruzen asked as he saw Naruto only look at him nervously. Yay, maybe some other time for now let's just talk business. Naruto didn't want to dwell too much it was a pain for Naruto. I see, well anyways due to the wave's impact medicine is flying off the shelves lately, so I'd pay more for the medicine than for herbs. Naruto's eyes wandered the stores for a moment, that will be four silvers. Naruto nodded his head, you wouldn't happen to have any unused medicine tools, would you? Backquote 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 outside. Soon Naruto made his way outside and saw Raftalia staring at two kids playing with a ball. Naruto saw her ears twitch, Raftalia, would you want a ball? Raftalia jumped and shook her body, no, and she pulled her arm to her chest, I don't want it at all. Raftalia didn't want to take advantage of Naruto's kindness. Under all that cold facade he holds up she noticed how kind and genuine Naruto is. She could tell herself that he trusted very little of others, though that couldn't stop her tail from wagging. Before Raftalia knew it Naruto held an orange ball in his hand, come on let's go, we can play later. Naruto gently smiled handing her the ball, I I just like seeing her happy. Naruto doesn't want Raftalia to dislike him. He thought about raising her like a daughter, and he did. However, he decided not to, he doesn't want her to end up like him. 
He wants her to grow up to be her person. So, it is better for her now. Since then, Naruto and Raftalia trained and fought together. Naruto began to increase her speed and strength, while also teaching her the ideologies of chakra and how to use it. He had her learn to unlock it and told her to never tell anyone else about this. So, Raftalia's training as a kunoichi under Naruto began. Naruto had to make sure that she cleaned herself well and fed herself, as well as keep her hair manageable so it didn't impede her training. Not only that but Raftalia loved the hairstyle picked out for her. It felt nice being appreciated, it's been a long time since he's gotten such a warm thanks. The two continued to keep training and farming experience. However, this time they were deeper into the forest than normal. Today would be Raftalia's first kill. A rabbit jumped out of the bushes and charged at Raftalia. Naruto blocked the bunny using his arm which was covered by the Anbu forearm guards. Now, Raftalia. Stab it. Raftalia began to shake a bit, B but, it'll bleed if I do. Hurry up Raftalia, this is regular for Shinobi. We kill when we must. So, kill it. Naruto held it out for her to kill. The pain of the slave curse began to affect Raftalia again and this time Naruto had to be serious. He is always serious when training, but fighting he needs her to do the same, I know how you feel, you're scared I get that. But that's fine. But we need to keep getting stronger, but if you can't do it. I won't need you any longer Raftalia. I don't want you to go. I need you to grow up a little. This is our life, this is what life dealt us. We need to grab it and take our lives Raftalia. Please, it'll get easier in time I promise. But don't ever forget, never enjoy killing. Never. Naruto was thinking back to his late master, Erosenin, how much I've strayed from the path you wanted me to follow. I if, I can be different for this girl, maybe she won't be such a failure as I was. Naruto knew deep down he failed Jiraiya, Kasumi, his parents, and Tsunade too, he failed everyone due to how he turned out. He even failed Yahiko, Nagato, and Konan. But that didn't mean he couldn't raise a new generation of shinobi. Shinobi that can do it, shinobi that be better than who he is now, Raftalia. Do it, for me, please, I beg of you. I need to put this much trust into you. Raftalia heard Naruto's plea about him not wanting to get rid of her, but it's when she saw his eyes. His eyes were filled with pain, loss, and hopelessness. Naruto was hurting and Raftalia hated to see that in Naruto's eyes, I must be strong enough for the next future waves that are coming. I can deal with the early ones, but I need to get stronger for the later ones. I need you Raftalia, please, I need you on this one. Naruto bit his lower lip, he was worried that Raftalia one day might betray him. Even with the slave seal on her, I I need help getting stronger, I I can't do this on my own for the foreseeable catastrophes. That's why I need you Raftalia. Why you're going to fight the catastrophes? Raftalia looked at Naruto in shock. I have to, if I ever want to get back home. Naruto grit his teeth, he wondered how Raftalia would feel about hearing the rumors that everyone called him. Would she leave him? Raftalia gathered her courage and lifted her short sword. I got it. Why a a a a? Raftalia thrusted her sword forward stabbing into the rabbit. This causes blood to splatter. Onto her hands, blade, and her face. Along with Naruto's face and clothing. Raftalia tried to catch her breath as she said. P please. Gushujin sama. Please don't throw me away. Raftalia had a look of worry in her eyes. Just then Naruto placed a hand on her head and patted it, don't worry, I'd never truly do that, you're my comrade Raftalia, my sensei taught me an important rule. Naruto looked up at the sky and took a deep breath and then exhaled, those who break the rules are scum, that's true. Naruto turned to her and pulled her into a hug, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. Naruto then saw his express meter go up and this time and saw his attack go up. It was originally 502, but it jumped up to 510, why did it jump up like that, I wonder, why did that happen? Naruto didn't feel like he truly followed Kakashi's teaching in that lesson. Though, it seemed he could teach that to Raftalia. Backquote 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 weapon store. Naruto placed 15 silvers on the counter, I need a new sword for Raftalia. The blacksmith smiled as he placed his hand on his hips. Time to get the little miss a sword, then. 
He turned and walked off to the side going to a crate off on the side. He began to search through some of the swords and he said, one on the short side would be good to start. Soon he held up a sword, how about this one? It's a sword made of iron. We'll take it, but anyways Smith San where is the nearest village? Naruto thought about going somewhere else to get stronger. In the meantime, back quote back quote back quote back quote back quote village of loot. Naruto and Raftalia were by a merchant and Naruto handed him the bunny skin, how much for this? Naruto asked curiously, he wanted to get some smaller money, so he didn't have to keep exchanging his family Ryu for money here. Besides Naruto found out that one gold piece is worth 20 silvers. One silver is worth 10 copper. Hum not bad but I'd say maybe two silvers. The merchant saw the skin was good, but the bunny was on the small side. Naruto sighed and he then looked at the man hoping he would point him where Naruto can go, do you know any other spots to help me earn some money? The man looked towards the coal pit area, there are ores by the coal pit, but there are monsters in those caves. Ever since the first wave, there are a bunch of dangerous monsters there who call it home. Naruto thanked the man and left him silver for his troubles. Naruto and Raftalia made their way to the cave entrance and found a rundown house, we can use this to stay for now. Naruto found materials around in the cabin and found rope. Naruto took the material and dropped it into his shield. Lo and behold he obtained a new shield, rope shield. It's got an exclusive effect skill, air strike shield. Naruto transformed his shield into a rope shield, rope shield. The shield changed with a rope. Then Naruto said, air strike shield. Like that, a green shield appeared in midair, that will be helpful. Naruto said to himself. Gushujin sama Raftalia looked at Naruto a bit puzzled. Naruto quickly shook his head, it's nothing, let's get going. Naruto picked up a pickaxe and handed another to Raftalia. Soon the two made their way into the cave and Naruto said, Raftalia remember what I taught you. I want you to begin reaching out with your senses once we get in. Raftalia simply nodded her head understanding Naruto's orders, also, stop calling me Gushujin sama just call me Naruto. Raftalia didn't answer since she was conflicted on what to call Naruto, she didn't understand that bit about him. I see, Uzumaki-sama. Raftalia raised an eyebrow as Naruto gave her a deadpanned look. Naruto. Naruto is fine, Naruto didn't want her calling him that either, he understood she was a slave. But he wants her to start maybe acting normal. Ah hell Naruto doesn't even know anymore. Naruto. Sama. Raftalia thought that was a lot more appealing. Soon the two arrived at the mine and began to make their way inside. It took some time, but they got deep enough and found a lot of green ores, is this the place? Raftalia was taken back by the pretty green ores. Naruto took the pickaxe he had in his hand and placed it over the shield. Naruto then got an alert from the shield saying, pickaxe shield. Special ability. Summon a pickaxe, pick shield. Naruto would see what it did after he made some shadow clones. Naruto created a few shadow clones and summoned the pick shield. Luckily the pick shield simply formed a shield in Naruto's hand, maybe I could try placing a kunai or a sword above it. Naruto still had the shield on his arm and the pickaxe in his hand and began to whack away at the ore. Not only that but Naruto found out that when he hit the ore, he began to refine the mineral. Naruto chuckled, he could use an earth jutsu, but this way he refined them for more money. He would make sure to keep an eye on them. Just then Naruto felt Raftalia back up as he turned around and Naruto saw a two-headed monster dog. Just then Raftalia froze again, no. She screamed remembering the best that killed her parents. Naruto lunged forward and kicked the dog causing it to tumble to the side. Naruto stuck to the side wall of the cave. Raftalia get a hold of yourself. Naruto gently tapped her cheeks to get her to pay attention. Raftalia was on the verge of tears, T the dog monster. I had had T3 heads, it killed all our villagers even Otu-san and Oka-san. I see, I promised you Raftalia you won't ever lose another person again. But I need you to be strong, being scared is okay, but you need to face it. Naruto jumped back onto the rock as the dog jumped toward Naruto and Raftalia, she needs to get over her fear. I need her to be strong, I know she has a lot of potential. It's so this way I know she'll be strong when I'm not around. Think of it like this Raftalia, Naruto looked at her seriously, 
you and I get stronger together, we kill things like this. That way no other little girl or boy has to go through what you did. Raftalia looked up in Naruto and took his words to heart. Even his other lessons about not abandoning your comrades. As well as never giving up, Raftalia gripped her sword and pulled it out. She looked at the dog with determination, so, so no one else has to go through this. That's why, in a way I picked you. So, I could at least give you some sort of life. Naruto thought back to how Jiraiya and Tsunade did what they could to care for Naruto, I promise to get you stronger. So, you can prevent everything that happened to you from happening to another kid. I I need you to trust me. S so I can. T trust you Raftalia. I need to trust you. Naruto charged at the dog as he blocked one head with his shield. Then Naruto grabbed its other head with his hand to crush its windpipe if he needed to. The head that was grabbed with Naruto's hand bites down on Naruto's right shoulder digging its teeth into him. Could have Naruto dispatched the thing easily. Yes, but he needs Raftalia to grow, as much as he doesn't like to see her hurt. She needs to keep growing and maturing. One of them is for Naruto to trust her, trust her to do the right thing. Not as an order, but as someone he can trust. It wasn't easy but Naruto need to trust Raftalia. That was the moment when Raftalia's care for Naruto as her master grew more. Raftalia charged forward with her sword ready to kill the dog. Raftalia in her mind saw Naruto turning and leaving her as she tried to run up to him. Yet Naruto didn't stop he kept walking as she was left behind, no. Don't leave me, don't die Naruto-sama. Raftalia accidentally channeled chakra into her feet and jumped into the air. Naruto looked up to see her jumping as a true shinobi would. She then landed on the head that was grabbed onto Naruto's shield. Raftalia stabbed it and pulled causing a large gash to appear on the neck of the dog beast. Raftalia rolled to the side not being able to stop her momentum. The dog monster growled at her and turned its attention to Raftalia which it jumped to attack her, air strike shield. The dog smashed into Naruto's green shield. Naruto ran forward and held his hand out as a sphere of blue chakra appear in his hand, Rasengan. Naruto slammed the attack into the dog monster sending it into the rock beside Raftalia, now Raftalia. Naruto called out. Raftalia lifted her sword and stabbed it into the chest of the monster dog causing blood to spew out. It roared in pain and fell to the ground dead. Naruto walked over and knelt to Raftalia he patted her head, good move, you did it. It's over. Naruto cleaned some of the blood off of Raftalia's cheek, good job. Raftalia saw the wound on Naruto's shoulder which was bleeding. She had tears in her eyes as she ran forward with her arms out wanting to hug him, Naruto-sama. She glopped Naruto in a hug not wanting to let go. Raftalia began to nudge her face into his chest not wanting him to go, don't ever die. Please don't leave me alone. Naruto hugged her, it's okay, I'm never leaving you, I never abandon my comrades. Once we're done here, I have some things I need to tell you. Naruto tapped her head to have her look at him, look. Raftalia wiped her tears as she looked up at Naruto's shoulder. An orange substance began to come from the wound and his shoulder began to sizzle. Once it stopped his shoulder was completely healed, W what is that, I is that chakra too, Naruto-sama. Hi, I'll explain another time. Naruto and Raftalia stayed like that a little longer. Once Raftalia calmed down Naruto went over to the dead dog and fed bits it to his shield until he obtained a new shield. Backquote 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 time skip week later. Naruto was sitting on a rock as he yanked a porcupine quill from his arm. Naruto put it in front of his shield as it absorbed it. Naruto saw the entire list of new shields and abilities he has gotten. Naruto also told Raftalia about who he is, and what happened back in his home world. Raftalia fully supported Naruto telling him he had to do what he had to do. But since then, Raftalia has been glued to Naruto's side ever since he began to trust her. Naruto decided to trust in Raftalia, the first time to ever trust another person since Jiraiya had passed. Naruto has always asked others to trust him, but Naruto never gave him the chance to trust another person. Raftalia also learned about his little sister Kasumi, and it was a reason why he took her in. When they first met her eyes looked like Kasumi's eyes, but Naruto didn't know it. But Raftalia figured something out that Naruto didn't see. 
The reason Raftalia was chosen by Naruto was that the eyes in Raftalia were like Naruto's. Lost and hurt, something Raftalia vowed to herself to help Naruto with one day. As he did for her. That's because Naruto has done so much for Raftalia, so she wants to do all she can for him. Naruto just forgot what his face looks like anymore. Naruto can't even remember the last time he's looked into a mirror. Raftalia noticed that when Naruto would bathe in the river, Naruto never looked at his reflection. Which Raftalia always enjoyed seeing her reflection. Anyways Naruto was a great teacher for Raftalia, it took her less than an hour to complete the tree walking exercise and a few hours for the water walking. Raftalia was a natural when it came to channeling Charka. Naruto also learned she had a natural ability for learning Senjutsu, maybe because she was a demi-human that she had stronger connections to nature. Naruto hasn't had her learn that yet, but in due time she will. Naruto was currently sitting on the rock when he heard, Rasengan. Oh yeah, he forgot she mastered that in a few days, that still kinda pissed him off. For someone who didn't know what Charka was not that long ago. She was able to master that within four days. Three days quicker than he learned it, Naruto watched as Raftalia was chasing the porcupine through the tall grass. It took Naruto another week to learn to spin the Rasengan without a shadow clone. Raftalia got it within four days. Naruto-sama, Raftalia called out, and Naruto sighed mentally. Just then the porcupine jumped at him, and Naruto snapped his fingers as he said shield prison. Naruto trapped it within bent shields and a chain that locked it inside. Naruto watched as Raftalia jumped up and swung her sword downwards. Naruto released the spell as Raftalia sliced right through it. Just then Raftalia called out to Naruto as she held up the dead porcupine, look Naruto-sama. We did it. Raftalia had a bright smile appear across her face. Naruto shook his head as he walked up to her and patted her head, good job, we need to go get new gear for the wave. It will be becoming soon. Naruto turned to leave as Raftalia only puffed her cheeks out at him. Naruto looked at their stats for Raftalia as said, Raftalia LV, 25. Naruto looked at his level and sighed, the good thing is his strength was now at 580. It has shot up ever since, ever since he began to trust Raftalia. Maybe that was the key to getting stronger, trusting others. Well, at least Raftalia. Though there is one thing Naruto missed. Ever since Raftalia began to level up quicker and their trust has increased. Raftalia underwent some changes, after several weeks of traveling with Naruto. Raftalia's body inexplicably changes, and she gains the appearance of a beautiful young adult. Backquote 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 blacksmith shop. The two enter the store to meet the blacksmith, wow, I hardly recognized you. You've turned into a real pretty lady. The blacksmith looked at Raftalia, he was glad to see that she was still with him, I haven't seen you in a while. Naruto looked at Raftalia confused, what do you mean, it's only been a week. I don't think she has changed that much. Raftalia only puffed her cheeks out at Naruto. Something also began to notice that Raftalia has been a lot livelier too. Happier. Maybe even a hint of maturity in her voice and attitude. But not a whole lot changed, at least he doesn't think she has. Raftalia happily replied, I had the innkeeper teach me table manners. Raftalia leaned her head back with a bigger smile, that way I can eat properly just like Naruto-sama. That's so, the blacksmith couldn't help but think that Naruto's, slave, might have some feelings for him. Which seemed to completely fly over Naruto's head. That was the last thing Naruto had on his mind about Raftalia ever having feelings for him. The blacksmith stood up tall as he joked, you're all grown up now. Nothing like the little pipsqueak you used to be. Naruto looked at Raftalia a bit confused, really. Huh. The blacksmith simply closed his left eye as he scratched his left cheek with his hand, someone's hard to please. Naruto did sigh as he looked back at the blacksmith, I'm surprised too, this country is full of lolicons. Naruto thought back to the times Raftalia has gotten free things from people. Sure, she is a kid, but geez some people take it too far, some of you people take it too far. Naruto leaned on the counter. The blacksmith did the same as he said, say, kid. Don't you know what demi-humans are like? Just the Raftalia interrupted their conversation and Raftalia held up her left hand into a fist, boss. We're here to buy armor for Naruto-sama. 
She leaned in closer. Do you have any recommendations? Huh? What are you saying? I don't need armor. I need something light like you. Our armor needs to be maneuverable. Naruto scratched the back of his head confused by Raftalia's words. I know that. Raftalia pointed her finger at Naruto, but you need to also think about yourself. I know, but I can heal from just. Naruto went to continue but Raftalia turned around and grabbed a sword. She turned around and held the sword appropriately showing the blade's reflection at Naruto, otherwise you'll die. Raftalia looked at Naruto sternly. Raftalia then noticed how well the sword was made, hey, boss, this sword seems sharp. The blacksmith chuckled as he held his hand out and said, that sword is magic iron, made it myself. Can I try it out? Raftalia waged her tail cutely, can we also get a discount? Sure, anything for you, miss. The blacksmith chuckled himself and Naruto noticed Raftalia just played him as well getting the discount. Naruto didn't understand it. Yeah Raftalia is cute, but she is still a kid. Great, thank you so much. Oh, while we're at it, could you show us some light armor, too? Raftalia was happy she was assisting Naruto so much when in the shop. Raftalia placed the sword close to her making a cute look on her face. She was smiling as she bartered the prices. Well, not even barter it was more one-sided. Naruto noticed this, she is sticking up for herself, not only that but she is playing him pretty well. Our budget is around 180 silvers. In that case, the blacksmith looked at a full suit of armor, how about this? I don't think that's what we need. We need something light and easy for us to maneuver, I'll heal whatever injury I get. So, I'll be fine with whatever. Naruto knew he and Raftalia wouldn't find it easy to move in that heavy suit of armor. I know, I can whip up something made to order. The blacksmith suggested that Naruto and Raftalia liked that idea. Raftalia seemed to glow at that idea, made to order. Her ears twitched with excitement. If you don't mind me using materials of God on hand, I can finish by tomorrow. The blacksmith was interrupted when Raftalia ran up to him. She grabbed his hand and placed both of her hands on top of his, please. I would greatly appreciate it. Backquote 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 pub. It was nice of him to give us a discount, nay. Raftalia was holding the sword close as her tail wagged. Naruto was beginning to wonder if he raised Raftalia wrong, he wanted to raise her to be her person. Though she seemed to act a lot like him sometimes, man, I didn't mean to bring her up like this. I thought she might pick up some of the girly things on her own. Yeah, it was, it's crazy how well you were able to sweet talk him. Naruto shook his head letting a small chuckle out. He's a nice guy, Raftalia smiled as she continued to hold her sword close. Seems like it so far. The two sat at a table and then Naruto's stomach growled. Ah, Raftalia began to panic as she blushed in embarrassment, that wasn't me. Naruto shook his head as he reached over and poked her forehead, Mo. Stop doing that, Raftalia puffed her cheeks out. It was me, Naruto looked up when the waiter came up. You ready to order? The man waiter asked. Yeah, get me the best lunch here. She'll have the kid's meal. Naruto gestured to Raftalia as she looked at him upset. Raftalia stood up and placed her hands on the table. She looked at him annoyed, Naruto-sama. I'm not a kid anymore. Raftalia looked at the waiter as she angrily said, I'll have the same lunch Naruto-sama is having. All right. The waiter looked at Raftalia a bit confused but went with it. He quickly turned and left to get the orders. Naruto raised an eyebrow, you don't need to force yourself to grow up. You got time Raftalia, but don't push yourself. Naruto didn't want Raftalia to grow up so quickly. He saw Raftalia as his little sister, so he didn't want her to rely on him so much. Raftalia looked at Naruto embarrassed. She lifted her hand and smacked it back down on the table, I am not forcing it. Backquote 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 next day blacksmith shop. Naruto looked at his outfit a bit confused, this makes me feel like some sort of villain. Naruto inspected his outfit. Naruto had on a black long sleeve shirt. It was light but durable with metal plating on the shoulders and forearms. There was black neckwear had had on his neck. It went around to his back and front. The lining of the neckwear had gold accents, and a black mask to cover Naruto's nose and mouth. 
There were metal plates that protected the sides and a single metal plate on his stomach with leather straps that met at his hips. He had green baggy pants for maneuverability, with orange rope decorations tied to his waist to keep the pants up. Naruto's boots covered his entire foot up and went up halfway up his shins. A N if you want a picture of Naruto's new outfit, please check my Pinterest. Just type in Sage of Prophecy. However, Raftalia had nothing but stars in her eyes. Her eyes sparkled and her cheeks had a light pink hue on them. Her hands were folded in front of her mouth, it suits you perfectly. You look great. The blacksmith chuckled as he said, I call it, Kitsune Renegade Armor. Why Kitsune? Naruto looked at the man confused. I know. Raftalia shouted as she leaned close to Naruto with her hand just inches away from Naruto's cheek, it's because of your whisker marks. They make you look like a Kitsune. Then Raftalia withdrew her hand before her hand touched Naruto's cheek. You're rocking it kid, now you look like a real bandit. The blacksmith let out a hearty chuckle. Naruto deadpanned, how was he happy about this? I'm supposed to be a hero, not some bandit. Naruto sighed, Raftalia knew the things he did to the crown of this country. She doesn't blame him, but she didn't like the things he did. However, Raftalia did ask him to try to do better than he has been. She scolded him about telling them he'd rather be known as a demon. She told him that Kasumi probably wouldn't be very proud that he said that too. It made Naruto wonder how the hell she picked up this attitude. I think it looks amazing. Raftalia liked seeing Naruto in the outfit, while the outfit is so cool. It hugs his, body, just right. Raftalia began blushing mentally while on the outside only a light pink hue stained her cheeks. Well, you did make it. So I'll wear it. I won't lie it's cool, just not as hero-like as I thought it'd be as all. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, then again as a shinobi wearing gray or black is the more suitable colors to wear. Just then everyone heard horses trotting by. Everyone seemed to be on edge, seems everyone is on edge. Well, the wave is almost here, after all, it was just like this for us too. When, we went to war. Naruto narrowed his eyes as his face continued to relax. War, huh, the bladesmith rubbed his chin, so there was a war from where you came. Naruto nodded his head, lots died, lost a good friend, had to kill my old teammate. Naruto closed his eyes remembering as he thrusted a technique he created on his own. It incorporated the Rasengan and the Reikiri into a single jutsu, I wish I knew where it would start, but who knows. If I sense a large gathering of energies looking for chakra, I'm sure I can pinpoint it. Chakra. The bladesmith looked at Naruto and Raftalia confused. Don't worry about it, just forget you heard about it. Let's just say it's something I possess and no one else does. Except for Raftalia, I trained her myself. Oh, has no one told you? The blacksmith looked at Naruto surprised, okay maybe he wasn't completely surprised, the church can see you they have an hourglass in there. Naruto frowned, that's if they let me in. Backquote 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 backquote. Church Naruto and Raftalia were being led into the church by a nun, come this way. The nun stopped as the stairs began to ascend. Once Naruto entered, he was awed by the design and then a beam shot out of his shield. It said there was a little more than 20 hours, is that Uzumaki? Naruto's eyes widen as he turned around. When he turned around, he glared at everyone and Raftalia stood by his side quietly. It was Motoyasu, oh hey, it seems like you got some decent equipment. Raftalia moved forward curious about who the others were, Naruto-sama who are these people? We're leaving. Naruto stayed quiet as he began to leave hoping Raftalia would get the hint. Just then mine said, hey, Motoyasu-sama is talking to you. Then Naruto stopped when he noticed Ren and Itsuki also ate the temple. Naruto grit his teeth but then he turned around. He saw Motoyasu greeting Raftalia. Greetings, I'm Kitamura Motoyasu, the spear hero. You're a hero. Raftalia looked at Motoyasu a little perplexed. Ah, so cute. Motoyasu looked at Raftalia seeing her as the cutest thing. Just then mine walked up and said, Motoyasu-sama, why are you complimenting a filthy demi-human? A pretty girl such you shouldn't be wielding a sword. I'll protect you. Motoyasu did what he could to persuade Raftalia to join him. He even grabbed her hands. Naruto stood there as he felt his anger rising once more. 
Naruto squeezed his fists which caused them to begin bleeding. Was he jealous? No, he was angry that mine called her a filthy demi-human. Not only that, but he would rather not make a scene again. Naruto wanted to let loose right now. Naruto walked forward towards them. Raftalia didn't pull away, but when she saw him, she quickly pulled her hands away, she didn't pull her hand away. She doesn't like him, right? Over me, Naruto felt the pit in his stomach drop, or is she just fascinated he is the spear hero? Just then Raftalia pulled her hand away, I'm sorry, I've sworn to fight with Naruto-sama, Raftalia said defensively. With Naruto, you can't. Motoyasu was surprised by this statement. Naruto continued to walk closer and Motoyasu kept running his mouth, if stay with him, you'll be in danger. You can listen to him if you want Raftalia, Naruto said bitterly as he stared Motoyasu in the face. Mine only smirked in the background, I told you before, I was accused of raping her. Naruto didn't even move to turn his head, but he pointed at mine. Raftalia looked at Naruto surprised by this, but it's your call. Naruto turned and began to walk away, this isn't an order, it's your choice. Naruto bites his lower lip causing blood to flow out. It hurt to even think that Raftalia would leave him. Before Naruto left Itsuki said, see you at the wave. Ren simply closed his eyes and said, don't hold us back. Naruto then said, who said I was even coming? Naruto continued past them as he heard Raftalia's feet come running after him. She shook her head and had a determined look on her face. It was clear Naruto was hiding something from her. She intended on finding what it was. Before Naruto left, he did call out, I won't be holding you back, if anything. Naruto turned his head at them as he glared at them with his blood-red eyes with black slits in the middle. Everyone froze a bit, but Raftalia and Naruto's eyes spun into the three Tomo Sharingan. Naruto saw their levels, he laughed to himself as he began to walk away, don't hold me back. Backquote 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 in. Naruto was on the ground making more medicines to use for the wave. Naruto finished rolling out more of the medicine. He then used leaves to store the medicines in, that's exactly what happened, what's your taking on it? Raftalia could see Naruto didn't want to talk about it much right now, Naruto-sama, I believe you, I truly believe in you. Raftalia didn't hesitate, everything that came out of Naruto's mouth was true. Even in the past war, he was in, he has shown her abilities she has never seen before. Or even dreamt of being able to do, good night, Naruto-sama. Raftalia turned in for the night as she smiles. She knew Naruto was innocent, he was a good man, life just dealt him a bad hand of cards. Backquote 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 next day battlefield. Naruto was there early in the morning in a crowd of other people. Naruto was prepared to do what he had to. He does as much as he must. Naruto was going to send out shadow clones and have them use the Kurama mode. Not six paths because he was sure they could handle the other surrounding villages in a time of need. However, before they start Raftalia spoke up from behind Naruto. Naruto-sama, before we begin there is something else, I want to tell you. Naruto turned around and looked right at Raftalia. Raftalia closed her eyes and smiled, I'm truly grateful I met you. You cured my illness and fed me warm meals. You taught me how to live and fight, gave me abilities I never knew I had. Raftalia remembered Naruto's words, I know how you feel, you're scared I get that. But that's fine, but we need to keep getting stronger, but if you can't do it. I won't need you any longer Raftalia. I don't want you to go. I need you to grow up a little. This is our life, this is what life dealt us. We need to grab it and take our lives Raftalia. Please, it'll get easier in time I promise. But don't ever forget, never enjoy killing. Never. Naruto looked at me with a worried look on his face. Naruto said, I have to be strong enough for the next waves that are coming. I can deal with the early ones, but I need to get stronger for the later ones. I need you Raftalia, please, I need you on this one. Naruto bit his lower lip, he looked scared that I might betray him one day. Now I understand why he had that look of worry in his eyes. Even with the slave seal, he put on me. He cared about my feelings, Naruto-sama then said, I I need help getting stronger, I I can't do this on my own for the next catastrophe. 
That's why I need you Raftalia. Don't worry, I'd never truly do that, you're my comrade Raftalia, my sensei taught me an important rule. Naruto looked up at the sky and took a deep breath and then exhaled, those who break the rules are scum, that's true. Naruto turned to me and pulled me into a hug, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. Raftalia slowly opened her eyes and looked up at Naruto, and you gave me a reason to fight, a reason to fight the waves, Naruto saw the sun begin to rise as the sun shined behind Raftalia. Naruto saw a light shine in Raftalia's eyes of sincerity and determination, I am your sword. Raftalia placed her right hand over her chest, wherever you go, I will go with you. I see, Naruto narrowed his eyes and closed them. He wiped his face as he walked over to Raftalia and pulled her into a hug, thank you, now let's finish this. Naruto made five shadow clones appear next to him. They knew their orders and they all disappeared spreading out around the country. Soon the sky turned red, and Naruto felt a massive amount of chakra signatures emerging from the sky. Before Naruto knew it, he and Raftalia were teleported, once they realized where they were. Naruto found his clones beside him, but they knew their orders, so they took off again. Naruto and Raftalia looked up at the sky and saw swirls in the sky. The colors were like a pinkish spiral on the outside and a blue and white colored spiral in the middle. Naruto's eyes widen at the sheer number of forces being targeted at him and Raftalia. Before Naruto could take off Raftalia stopped him, Naruto-sama. The village of loot. Naruto nodded his head as he created a shadow clone to take care of this spot. Naruto forgot about the village of Luke, so he'll handle it personally, Raftalia, we've trained for it. Go. Naruto and Raftalia took off jumping through the trees at high speeds. Backquote 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 loot village. Naruto and Raftalia appeared in the village and Naruto created a bunch of extra shadow clones wielding Horishin Kanai and began to go to work. Naruto appeared in front of a person and blocked an attack with his shield. Naruto bashed the enemy away and swung his Kanai taking off the skeleton's head. Raftalia, I can handle things here since it's still early waves. I can still fight, go evacuate the people, I'll lure them all away, I'll be fine. Backquote 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 middle of town. Naruto went charging straight into the horde of monsters. Naruto jumped into the air, Cho Odama Rasengan. Naruto carved a large path for everyone to escape. Naruto called out to them, go, get out of here, follow Raftalia. Naruto continued to get all the enemy's attention. Naruto extended his hand out, air strike shield. Naruto blocked an undead skeleton's attack gaining his attention. Naruto saw a mother and daughter cowering in fear, shield prison. This protected them from a swarm of wasps which then began to attack Naruto. Naruto began together with all the monsters attention running around punching and kicking them. Naruto could kill them easily, but he'd rather do it all in one go. Naruto also felt his other shadow clones entering the six paths sage mode. That way no one will know who the mysterious golden warrior is. Naruto saw a giant tower with a bell. He quickly jumped up and began to ring it around. The other monsters stopped targeting others and began to go after the tower Naruto was in, come on all you bastards. Come at me, the monsters all began to climb the tower. Naruto went through some hand signs, earth style, toad oil bullets. Naruto began to run along the side of the tower spewing oil out around where the monsters were. Naruto then summoned three shadow clones as they all slammed their hands on the ground, earth style, four wall locking oven. Naruto and his clones captured all the creatures within a box Naruto create and then they all jumped up and stood on the ledge, fire style, toad oil flame destroyer. Using the majestic destroyer flame jutsu Madara uses he ignited all the enemies on fire. Once Naruto landed there were some stragglers but that was it. Naruto jumped down and the man Naruto saved earlier came running back, Hiro-sama. What are you doing here? I told you to run away. Naruto shouted back but the man shook his head. We all changed our minds after seeing how courageously you're fighting. The man smiled happily as he showed the other villagers attacking the remaining stragglers, this village is our home. We cannot run away and abandon it. The man looked at Naruto and said, we'll fight with you. Naruto nodded his head, just help me keep the enemy pinned until the evacuation is complete. 
I'm sure more of these monsters will come so be ready to run if there's too many. Just then Naruto saw a large monster and pushed the man away. Naruto caught the attack and said, that all you got. Naruto reared his fist back and focused chakra into it, and then released it on impact. This annihilated the monster killing it instantly. Naruto was seeing his express going up quite quickly too. Naruto did say, they're getting bigger. Retreat. Think of your families. Don't die for no reason. They need you. Naruto turned to them wanting them to leave. Naruto-sama. Raftalia jumped over Naruto and sliced another one of the giant monsters in half. Raftalia then said, please evacuate, we'll handle things from here. Amazing. They all looked at Naruto and Raftalia, h hi. They all said as they began to run towards the cave. After they left Naruto and Raftalia looked up to see an attack meet in the middle of the sky Naruto's eyes widen, get down. Naruto pushed Raftalia down and held his shield in the air. This created a dome over the two of them to protect them. Naruto and Raftalia watched as the attack was made of flames that ignite the entire village fire. Just then Naruto saw a guard coming, ahaha. Took them all down at once. Just then the guards recognized Naruto, the shield hero. You're quite tough. Naruto growled at them as he stood up. You don't even care we were here, did you? Before Naruto could stop Raftalia her eyes narrowed with anger and shot off using chakra. Raftalia purposely aimed for their shield. She glared at them asking, did you do this knowing Naruto-sama was here? Raftalia enhanced her strength with chakra causing the shield to bend. Depending on your answer, I'll have your head. The knight simply closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He then looked at his men, draw your swords. Raftalia jumped away hearing his command. Are you with the shield hero? The knight asked her. I am Naruto-sama's sword. Raftalia shifted her sword forward, none may disrespect him in my presence. Raftalia, Naruto called out to her, but she ignored him. You think you can point your blade at the royal knights, you damned demi-human. The knight looked down at her in disgust. Shut your mouth. Naruto walked forward as he placed his arm in front of her, don't you dare look down on her. She's more a human and a hero than you'll ever be. Naruto continued to glare at them, don't you dare do it again. Do you hear me? Naruto was having enough of people looking down on other races. Not only that but what type of knight neglects the people he's meant to defend. Raftalia looked at them in disgust. Naruto looked at the houses on fire he simply went through a series of hand signs. The guards look at Naruto confused. Naruto finished and said, water style, bullet orca. Naruto aimed his hand into the air. Naruto made sure to power the attack down so he caused it to rain on all the houses putting out the fires, Raftalia forget it, it's not the time for this. But, no buts, stand down. Naruto ordered as Raftalia dropped her sword. But look down on her again, I'll make you regret it. Naruto glared at the knight commander. That's right, so long as you behave yourself. The knight laughed at the end. Don't talk to her like that, she doesn't take orders from you. Naruto looked at Raftalia. Raftalia you are to stay on standby and make sure none of the monsters get to the villagers. Don't assist the soldiers, that's an order. Naruto commanded as Raftalia nodded her head as she disappeared in a shunshun. Naruto looked at the spot where she left as he sighed, when did she pick that up? Figures she saw the hand seals for it. Now I'll sit tight and watch as the monsters feed on your corpse. Naruto turned and began to walk away, he hated that guy and his superiority complex. Naruto chuckled as he looked at the monsters behind them. Just then the knights all turned around in shock to see the monsters already there. The knight commander said, don't falter get into. The monster in front of him swung his sword down at him. The knight commander's eyes widen as the tip of the monster's sword nicked his nose. Naruto was standing there holding the sword in his left hand, ops sorry about that, man I can be a little clumsy sometimes. Man, if I didn't redirect the attack another inch, he would have cleaved you in half. Naruto reared his right fist back and punched the monster in the air. Naruto snapped his fingers as Raftalia appeared above the monster and cleaved it straight down the middle. She then landed gently next to Naruto, stop being bigots and work with me. I'll buy you time to get into formation. Naruto created a few shadow clones as they began to help take down some of the monsters themselves. 
The one down thing to using shadow clones, is they don't count as getting express so, using them to gain express is not the way to level up. Like that Naruto and his clones began to block and parry attacks. Raftalia would attack with any opening she could find. Naruto would attack when he could, the two continued to work like a well-oiled machine. Just then the knight commander said, let the shield hero handle this. We're heading to where the real three heroes are. He had his sword in the air. They all began to leave, but one of them who also seemed to be in charge said, we'll assist the shield hero. Get into phalanx formation. His comrades all smiled and felt better than just leaving Naruto and Raftalia to do all the work. They all got together, charge. They all ran into attack in their formation. Naruto-sama, the other knights. Raftalia was glad some of them stayed but frowned at the others. Scum the lot of them, no worse than that. To leave them behind, Naruto grit his teeth as he glared at their other knight commander. Soon before everyone knew it Raftalia said, Naruto-sama. Look at the sky, before they knew it the sky turned back to normal. Backquote 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 later. Once everyone was out of the cave, everyone began to rebuild. Naruto saw some people have lost family even though he came. Naruto also received memories from his clones. They did little to nothing, it seems this wave was easy, for the train that is. Naruto created a bunch of shadow clones, go heal the injured, get to work. The clones all went off and began performing the mystic palm jutsu. Naruto made sure to practice it enough to where he can heal cuts, scrapes, and fractured bones, but not split ones. Soon Raftalia came up to Naruto, Naruto-sama, I killed the rest of the monsters. Did, did we win? Raftalia asked as she looked at Naruto hoping for a good answer. Naruto nodded his head, honesty, I think I'm starting to get it. Naruto looked into the distance as he said, this world is full of things that don't go as you wish. The longer you live the more you realize reality is just made of pain, suffering, and emptiness, listen, in this world, whenever there is light, there are also shadows. As long as the concept of winners exists, there must also be losers. The selfish desire of wanting to maintain peace causes wars and hatred is born to protect love. Raftalia looked at Naruto shocked, those were powerful words, from a once powerful shinobi, that, what is what Madara Uchiha, the very many who wanted to do the infinite Tsukuyomi. I I think I'm beginning to see how his quote works. I don't think he is wrong. Naruto closed his eyes and tightened his fist, but not entirely right either. All of it, the winners, losers, the suffering, the happy, the ones in pain. Where there is light there is dark, we need to find the proper balance. So, we can all live, all we want to do at the end of the day is live. Living every day we win, for the people who protect others, even if one dies. You did what you could to protect others. Those are the winners, doing what you know is right, can make you winners. Moving on and pushing forward you win. Raftalia was getting to understand what Naruto was saying, so, are you saying the way we're fighting? What we're doing, we know that is it right. There are no losers, so we won. Naruto nodded his head, the reason Madara became so lost was that he always saw the dark side to everything. That's true there is, but we control what side we're on. At the end of the day, we do what is right. Since we know it's the right thing, others know it's the right thing. We're winners, and we're fighting to preserve peace. W what about the hatred? Raftalia asked wondering why it even exists. Hatred is born through the endless cycle of hatred. It's a curse my sensei taught me. When people get hurt, they learn to hate, when people hurt others, they become hated and racked with guilt. But knowing that pain allows people to be kind. Pain allows people to grow, and how you grow is up to you. Naruto laughed at it a bit, I don't know if I can find it, but I can work towards it. That's why there is darkness, hatred because people were hurt by someone. They can't let that go. So, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. When one dies another the cycle starts all over again. I I see, well I hope I can help you find it together Naruto-sama. Let's do it, together. Raftalia smiled happily as she walked up wagging her tail behind her. She liked the idea of being with Naruto forever. Just then the leader of the village came walking up, Hiro-sama. The man was bowing to Naruto, thank you very much. 
We couldn't have made it without you. Naruto shook his head, we all did it, including the knights over there. They helped at least the ones that stayed along with Raftalia. In reality, I don't deserve to be praised, I did nothing to earn your thanks. I did as anyone should have. Naruto didn't want to take all the credit. The man Naruto saved earlier shook his head, no, you do deserve it. Your presence is what helped us survive. We'll never forget what you've done for us. The other bulky man said his thanks. Naruto turned around and said, I see, well then thank me this way. Naruto tapped his foot on the ground as a clearing of trees sprouted in the open plains for the people, this wood will be stronger, chopping them will be easy, but burning them down will be very hard. Rebuild your town stronger than ever before. Naruto then signaled Raftalia to follow him. They seem very thankful for your help Naruto-sama. Raftalia was happy for Naruto, this was something Naruto needed, we've prevented at least a few kids from going through what you and I write. Naruto walked up to Raftalia and pulled her into a hug, yes we did, but remember, we can't save everyone. Naruto went on one knee and placed his hand on the ground, I should have placed a marker here before. This way, if they're ever under attack, we can just teleport. That way this place has a Horishin marker. Naruto should also set up a barrier in case of people with ill intentions step foot into the village. Backquote 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 castle. Naruto was up on the windowsill off in the corner minding his own business, of course, Raftalia wanted to attend, otherwise I wouldn't be here if I didn't have to be. She said we'd leave once we get our reward. Naruto even saw the knight commander that left him, Raftalia, and his other knights behind. He was telling a story about how he bravely fought, asshole, he spits on the graves of true knights who have fought and died. Soon Raftalia came walking up to Naruto, Naruto-sama, aren't you hungry? Naruto shook his head, not really, I'm here for the reward and because you wanted to come here. You enjoy yourself, I'll leave you to it, you deserve this. You deserve this too Naruto-sama. Raftalia looked at the food, the food here seems heavenly. Naruto continued to stare out the window until Raftalia came back into view. She was holding a piece of cake, hey Naruto-sama, let's eat together, have a bite. Raftalia picked some food up with her fork. She then extended it to him, it's really good you know. Naruto relented and took a bite and Raftalia seemed pleased, see. Just then a voice spoke up, Naruto. Naruto turned his head to see Motoyasu throwing his glove at him. Everyone in the room began to stare at Naruto and Motoyasu, duel me. Motoyasu just frowned at Naruto, I heard that Raftalia chans your slave. Naruto simply answered, what if she is? You. Motoyasu's eyes twitched. Raftalia is my slave, yes, but she's my best friend maybe even more so. Naruto narrowed his eyes at him. Listen, it's not right to enslave others, especially friends. Motoyasu was trying to reason with Naruto. Slavery is legal in this country, besides I'm also not mistreating Raftalia. I'd never harm her. Is it truly slavery when you treat them right and give them everything they want and need? Naruto closed his eyes wanting to ignore everyone's presence here. But we're heroes. We can't behave that way here. Motoyasu was losing his patience with Naruto. Well too bad. I came from a world where it's fine, but looked down on. Naruto stood up on his feet flaring at Motoyasu, I'm a shinobi, I've killed people before, bandits, sex traffickers, even though slavery in my world is rare. There isn't anything against it. Everyone was shocked to hear Naruto has killed people before, but seriously come one. There are serial killers out there all the time. Then fight me, if I win Raftalia goes free. Motoyasu aimed his spear at Naruto. Naruto looked at Raftalia and said, Raftalia would you like me to remove the enslavement curse on you? I have no issues with it. Raftalia shook her head and smiled as she placed her hand over it, no, I'd never want to get rid of it. That was the day Naruto-sama and I met, it's a bond I never want to break with him. This seal, is what makes the memory so important to me. Naruto looked at Raftalia floored by her words, wait, a bond, a slave curse. She considers it a bond with me. No. I won't even do it, Raftalia isn't some trophy to be won. Naruto refused as he stood in front of Raftalia, Raftalia were leaving. 
Naruto and Raftalia descended the stairs to leave however a night guard stopped him. So, Naruto grabbed the spear denting the blade, and broke the tip off, out of my way. Just then the king came walking up, I heard your conversation. The king came walking up to the balcony, a hero using a demi-human as a slave. It seems you are rotten to the core. The king looked down and saw his daughter and saw her nod at her head, I order you to accept his challenge. Raftalia looked at them angrily, wait a second. I'm with Naruto-sama of my own free, a knight put a hand over her mouth to make her stop talking. Hey, let her go. Naruto pushed past the guards until a bunch of guards came in stopping Naruto. Naruto's eyes turned blood red, out of my way. Naruto powered through them all knocking them down. Just then Naruto stopped as he saw the knight holding a knife to Raftalia's back. Naruto grit his teeth as he said, you coward. If you don't let her go. I swear. I swear to you all. I'll. Naruto stopped channeling Kurama's power when he saw Raftalia's face relax. Raftalia nodded her head looking at Naruto. Naruto bit his lip again causing it to bleed. Fine, I fucking accept your stupid fight. But when I win, I earn all the war chests for the sword, spear, and bow hero. As well as keeping Raftalia by my side. I also get one more thing. The king glared at him, but Motoyasu shouted, I'm fine with it. Motoyasu turned to Ren and Itsuki, I'll pay you guys back if I lose by some miracle. Ren and Itsuki simply shrugged their shoulders. Motoyasu seemingly ignored the fact Naruto wanted one more thing. Ren and Itsuki heard what Naruto said. The king then continued trying to earn the viewer's support, poor girl. You've been placed under a curse that compels you to defend your master. Once Motoyasu Dono wins, we shall release you from that curse. Backquote 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 arena. Naruto was in the weapon room as he heard the proctor talk. This duel will end when one of the combatants is pinned or admits defeat. Soon the doors opened as Naruto walked out. Naruto felt his stomach churning in anger and anguish just how much more. Just how much more will be taken from him. The proctor then said, this duel will take place in front of the Pope, King Melromark, and it is legitimate and official. When Naruto walked out, he saw mine waving to Motoyasu supporting him and saying, Motoyasu-sama. Good luck. Naruto realized she was in the arena on the outskirts which he didn't like. Naruto held up a tri-prong kunai in his hand. Motoyasu looked at Naruto as if he was serious, I'm surprised you can use a weapon, well a kitchen knife I guess. Motoyasu was so oblivious, anyways, you remember that folk tale about the irresistible spear and the immovable shield. Motoyasu twirled the spear and then dropped into a fighting stance, Uzumaki, be a man and admit defeat. We've heard about your intimidation. We learned it was all a hoax and you use it as a bluff. So, give it up. I won't be scared of the same tactic. Nor will I be tricked by mere illusions. Naruto simply held his kunai up similar to how Minato did so. Naruto's left hand is up in the air holding the tri-prong kunai in reverse. With his right hand holding a Rasengan at the midline of his body. The proctor then called out, Ready, begin. Naruto dropped the Rasengan so he could watch Motoyasu struggle. Motoyasu charged at Naruto as Naruto retracted his stance. Naruto merely sidestepped Motoyasu's attack. Naruto then twirled around and kicked the spear that was impaled into the ground. This sent Motoyasu flying as he slammed into the wall. Naruto planted his foot back down, is that all you got? Motoyasu stood up a bit surprised by that. He readied his spear, I am not even close to trying. He charged Naruto trying to attack him. Naruto decided to entertain him and began to block his attacks. Motoyasu seeing Naruto deflect and parry his attacks said, You are good at blocking, you're called the shield hero for nothing right. Naruto said, You know, you lost. Motoyasu looked at Naruto confused, You can't beat me, you can't even pierce my shield, in this battle between an irresistible spear and an immovable shield. Motoyasu backed up and aimed his spear at Naruto, Chaos Spear. He called out as all his attacks went at Naruto. Naruto didn't try to move or block his attacks. Motoyasu saw the damage he was doing as he saw cuts, gashes, and wounds on Naruto. The blood dripped from Naruto as he slowly began to fall forward. Until his foot slammed into the ground as he took off dashing towards Motoyasu. 
Motoyatsu took that moment to sigh but then he was met with a fist to the face as he was sent flying into the wall. Naruto looked down at his outfit. Man, come on and I just go this, well at least I got spare clothes. Everyone just stared at him in shock, what is everyone looking at me like that for? Naruto decided to play coy. Motoyasu sat back up, H how? H how are you up? Your wounds, they're gone. Naruto shook his head as he said, my wounds heal quick, my abilities are beyond your wildest dreams Motoyasu, and you all pissed off the wrong person. Naruto frowned deciding to drop the act, I don't know if you realized it, but you haven't been able to see my level this entire time, have you? Naruto pointed above his head. Motoyasu looked at the level Naruto had above his head and saw blurred numbers, W what? How is this possible? I don't understand. What is that extra blue line in your stats? Atsuki and Ren noticed this too, they too can't see Naruto's level or what the extra blue line bar is. Naruto said, what I put on you, Ren and Atsuki is a genjutsu. A small one, think of it as an illusion, an illusion you can never dispel unless I allow it. Motoyasu pointed his spear at Naruto and shouted, lies. He went to charge Naruto. Naruto simply snapped his fingers as the blurred numbers began to focus a bit. Motoyasu stopped dead in his tracks as he tried to count the hashtags. Ren and Itsuki did the same too, two, three, four, four-digit placements. How is that possible? Itsuki shouted out. Everyone wanted to know what was going on. Itsuki and Ren were sitting in their seats sweating, Motoyasu-sama. What's wrong? Mine called out to him. H his levels. T there's a total of four digit placements. H how is that possible? Motoyasu, Ren, and Itsuki looked at Naruto completely dumbfounded. Naruto then said, I could be lying and tricking you all too, just like what she did to all of you. Naruto motioned to mine as Naruto kept his focus on Motoyasu, you can only take my word for it. Naruto said mockingly, Raftalia knew Naruto won't seriously maim Motoyasu too much, but everyone needs to be taught a lesson. Motoyasu grits his teeth and charged Naruto, but before Motoyasu noticed anything, Naruto was already in front of him. Naruto slammed his fist into Motoyasu and sent him flying into the air. Everyone watched in awe with mine not knowing what to say. Naruto moved to the side as Motoyasu came crashing back down to earth. Naruto slowly turned his back and walked away to make some distance. Motoyasu slowly stood up and ran towards Naruto with his spear in his hand. Naruto turned around to see his pathetic attempts, as I said before, you better begin praying. Naruto extended his hand out as both his eyes shifted to the Rinnegan. Naruto extended his hand out as Motoyasu stopped dead in his tracks. W what the, all Motoyasu got out as Naruto swung his hand upwards as Motoyasu was sent flying into the sky. Naruto then swung his arm back down and Motoyasu did as Naruto wished. Naruto lowered his hand as Motoyasu was quite slow to get to his feet. Motoyasu stood up on his two feet and cough up blood, H how did you, did you see ch? Naruto then said, no, I didn't cheat. Like I said, begin praying to whatever puny god you believe in. Naruto then said, universal pull. Motoyasu shot off from his feet as he went flying towards Naruto. Naruto grabbed him by his throat and choked and slammed him to the ground. Motoyasu let out a small yelp, but then a gurgle as Naruto's hand wrapped around his throat. Naruto glared at Motoyasu's stupidity, as the said person looked up at Naruto with wide eyes. Naruto stood back up as he held Motoyasu in the air by his throat, what's wrong? Down for the count already, Naruto said with a monotone voice, how pathetic, to be easily manipulated so easily. Naruto decided to make Motoyasu an example for everyone else, Naruto looked at everyone else. Naruto lifted Motoyasu higher into the air, this is what you all get. This is what you all get for trying to take away from what is mine. Just then there was a gust of wind as wind magic was blasted at Naruto. However, he stood his ground. Atsuki and Ren saw mine aiming her hand at Naruto with magic coming off of her hand. Mine's eyes widen in shock not seeing Naruto move an inch from his spot. Naruto looked at her and said, you call that wind magic. Naruto lifted Motoyasu in the air with both of Naruto's hands grabbed onto his armor. Naruto then swung Motoyasu downwards as Naruto lifted his knee. 
Crack. Motoyasu's eyes widen as he loud a scream of pain as he felt everyone bone in his body rattle. Mine and the audience's eyes widen as Naruto dropped him onto the ground. Naruto extended his hand out towards mine, Bo. Naruto flicked his right hand downwards as mine fell to her knees as a powerful gravity was placed on her. Mine was forced to her hands and knees unable to move. Mine did call out, Motoyasu sama, I I C can't ask stand. Naruto then said without care, then don't interfere, you interloper. Naruto turned to Motoyasu who was groaning in pain unable to move, I didn't break your back, though as much as I would love to. Naruto walked up to Motoyasu and stepped on his chest, concede, you can at least do that. Naruto aimed one of his father's kunai at his neck. Motoyasu stared up at Naruto with nervousness in his eyes, and he could tell that Naruto wasn't fucking around, I I concede. Naruto lifted his foot off Motoyasu's chest and turned to walk away, but he saw the king walking in with his other guards and the noble from before standing behind the tied up and gagged Raftalia. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the king, now, let her go, immediately. The king glared at Naruto, how dare you say that to me? Look what you've done to our beloved spear hero. The king pointed his finger at Naruto, guards, seize him. That was the last straw for Naruto. The knights went to surround him, but Naruto muttered almighty push. A strange force field appear around Naruto and sent the knights flying away. The king along with his other knights who stayed by the king's side stared at Naruto with a frantic look in his eyes. The king simply glared at Naruto as mine came running up to her father, Papa. Make him stop. H he made me fall to my knees. How dare you do such a thing to my daughter. The king shook his fist angrily head, multi dear. I'll make sure he pays even more for this. Naruto's eyes widen when he found out mine was Malti and the daughter of the king. Naruto continued to shake in anger as he stared at them. They both had him set up from the beginning. They both did what they could to ruin him, in this world that he was unfamiliar with. Malti slowly walked over to her father. She smirked at Naruto. Yes, Papa. I do this to help fight for world peace. We need to bring an end to the shield hero. This triggered Naruto to the point that Naruto's blood was going to boil from his own body, this, this was all planned from the beginning, the daughter framed me to get in the good graces of her favorite hero. The father distorted the facts for the sake of his daughter. This duel was a setup all along. Just how much, Naruto didn't notice it, but a dark green smoke began to come from his shield, I never wanted to come to this world. I didn't ask to be brought here. You're the one who summoned me. Naruto growled out as killing intent washed over everyone, that's it, I'm done. Naruto used his Rinnegan abilities as he replaced Raftalia with Kanai he dropped onto the ground next to him. This surprised everyone along with the king, his soldiers, the other heroes, and Malti. Naruto began to walk forward, he walked forward towards the king and mine and the king's assistant before that held Raftalia bounded and tied. Naruto took his Kanai and shoved it through his neck. The man let out a gurgle as blood sprayed onto mine and the king's faces. Blood spurted onto Naruto's face as he glared at the two, now Bo. Naruto called out as he extended his hand towards the king and princess and flicked his wrist down. Gravity overcame both of them as they fell to their knees. The two once again began to struggle to breathe, Ren and Itsuki stayed silent as they came walking out to the arena. Naruto used a water jutsu to clean the blood off as he walked toward Raftalia. He undid the gag and the ropes, I'm glad you're safe Raftalia, we're leaving. Naruto released the pressurized gravity on King and Malti. Raftalia hugged him, Naruto-sama. Thank you, thank you so much. Raftalia smiled happily up at Naruto as he tailed swished left to right. Naruto felt the warmness of Raftalia's hold and the genuine words that came from her mouth. They were, relaxing. Raftalia slowly broke the hug, she made he way over towards Malti's slap. Everyone saw and heard this when Raftalia slapped Malti, slap. Raftalia angrily says, you cheated. Raftalia glared at Malti, how could you keep trying to hurt Naruto-sama so much? We did nothing to you. He did nothing to you. You've hurt Naruto-sama. You keep trying to hurt him. He's gone through so much. You keep trying to make my Naruto-sama suffer. I'll never forgive you for this. I'll make sure you pay one day. I don't care if you are the king's daughter. Malti, angry with Raftalia asked, W what do you think you're doing to me? 
How dare you hit me you filthy demi-human. The king was even taken back by this. Ren and Itsuki walked over to Motoyasu, and they helped him stand up. Raftalia looked towards Motoyasu and glared at him, when did I ask you to free me? Raftalia glared at them angrily, I am happy by Naruto-sama's side. The slave pack does nothing to brainwash me. W what? B but he was abusing you right. Motoyasu was completely confused. What the hell do you know about Naruto-sama? He's been through so much pain. Betrayals. He has lost so much just like me. You horrible people keep hurting him over and over again. Raftalia had tears in her eyes she shook her fists, he's treated me with kindness. Love. He fed me warm food. Clothed me. Cured my illness. He never left my side and always protected me. He trained me himself. Raftalia closed her eyes as tears ran down her face. He never made me do anything I didn't want to do. He only activated the curse when I was too scared to fight. Naruto stared at Raftalia in shock. He has never seen her get this worked up before. Just then Motoyasu slammed his spear edge into the ground creating sparks, and that's the problem. No one should be forced to fight. Raftalia argued back, Naruto-sama can hardly use any weapons but a kanai. Yes, he has moves you've never seen before. But the waves are going to become harder and harder. His attack level hasn't gone up at all leveling up by himself. Until he and I started to fight together. His strength stat shot up like crazy. You all can't accept that. You're all biased towards the shield hero. Someone has to fight for him. Not everything can be done by one person. You'll never understand Naruto. Never understand his pain and grief. Not everyone seems to be who you first judge them by. All of you. All of you together could never come close to how much more of a man, or more of a human than Naruto is. You all shouldn't even be called heroes. Your titles of nobility and everything should be stripped. Motoyasu still tried to argue, it doesn't have to be you. He painfully raised his hands to the side confused, he'll abuse you until you break. Raftalia didn't care these people were beginning to get on her nerves. They all are too blind to see the truth, it does have to be me. I promised Naruto-sama, he promised me, he never pushed me too hard where I'm about to collapse. He pays for a warm bed for me all the time. He sleeps on the floor wherever we go. I've never been hit once. Not by an enemy and he has never struck me. Naruto has always protected me. He would rather die than raise a hand against me. Besides, Naruto-sama inspired me to be better and to push myself as far as I can go. So, no child demi-human, or whatever else is out there. To never live what I've been through. Naruto vowed to me and promised to help me prevent this from happening to as many kids as possible. W what? That can't be right. He isn't that type of guy. Motoyasu took a step back and Malti only glared at her. Are you capable of extending a hand to a diseased slave on the verge of death? Exclamation mark. To try and help every single person in need. By far Naruto-sama has helped everyone who asked him for help. He never batted an eye. He gives to those who seek it. Even if they do hate him. Raftalia placed her right hand on her heart. Naruto-sama fed me everything I wanted to eat. He even agreed to come to your king's stupid party just for me. I figured it would be the first time in a long time he could eat some good food. He always bought me what I wanted. He always did everything for me. Raftalia narrowed her eyes at Motoyasu, why is it so hard? For a slave who owes her master everything to have one good meal. To share a bed with him. Or to see him sleep for once on a warm bed. Are you capable of doing that for others? Slaves. Demi-humans. Are your party members willing to go to such lengths for you? What about the people who aren't in your party? The sick. The ill. The dying. Are you capable of such kindness? Oh of course I could. Motoyasu barely got out. If that were true, you would have a slave by your side, too. He or she should be praising you. Raftalia had enough of these people. That's. Motoyasu was interrupted by Malti. Knock it off. Malti demanded. How dare you, a demi-human. Malti balled her left hand into a fist. Malti was about to hit Raftalia. Malti stretched her hand out to hit Raftalia who simply caught it. Malti looked at Raftalia in shock. Raftalia was stronger than her. Raftalia said, 
I don't condone unnecessary violence, but you've had this one coming you spoiled Sao. Raftalia reared her fist back infusing chakra into it. She launched her fist into Maldi's chest which let out a loud crack sending Maldi flying into the stadium walls. Dust and debris were kicked up as Maldi fell from the wall. She struggled to stand as she fell onto her hands and knees struggling to breathe. Maldi eyes widened in horror as she gasped desperately for air. Eventually Maldi let a loud, gasp out as she sucked in the air after getting it knocked out of her. Motoyasu unable to move shouted out, Maldi. Maldi slowly stood up and said, M. Motoyasu-sama. S. She needs to die for that. T. That filthy demi-human. Ak. Gasp. Atsuki came walking up and asked, Maldi-san, I'd like to ask you about your illegal interference in the duel. W whatever do why you hick mean. Malti closed her eyes as she did her best to quickly recover as well as not wanting to make eye contact. Illegal interference. Motoyasu asked confused. Ren said, Motoyasu, you lost the duel fair and square. I know there was a magic spell used. It's hard to tell since it was wind. I'm sure you're mistaken. I'm sure the audience. Malti was interrupted by Atsuki. The king has everyone silenced. One look from the nobles makes it obvious. Atsuki wasn't being fooled this time, a lot of this wasn't making sense. Ren sighed himself, I can't believe royalty would desecrate a sacred duel. The king kept his displeasure hidden to not draw any more attention to himself. With Raftalia done, she made her way back to Naruto and she hugged him. Naruto hugged her back, Raftalia looked up, Naruto-sama, you did it, you won. Now I get to stay by your side, forever. Naruto was a little taken back by that, for whatever reason he felt his heart beat faster than normal. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, T thanks Raftalia, T that means a lot coming from you. Naruto felt something almost break inside of him, Naruto continued to stare at Raftalia she continues to smile brightly at him. Naruto shuddered once again, she was once again by his side. Naruto didn't understand it. There was eagerness within him desiring for her to stay by his side forever. Naruto's smile began to waver as he looked at her. Raftalia looked at him with a worried look on her face. Naruto-sama, what's wrong? Ah Raftalia, I need to ask. Naruto's voice seemed to stumble. After everything, W-Y, why do you want to stick by my side, with the amount of danger and everything? Naruto looked at the ground and tightened his fist. Ah Raftalia, you've grown strong and you can fend for yourself. S so, why haven't you left? Oh or asked me or even mentioned wanting to be free. I know you better than anyone else in this world, Raftalia thought back to her ball, I know how very kind you are. So, even if the world speaks ill about you, I'll tell them they're wrong. I'll tell them again and again that you're a wonderful person. You're the one who saved my life more times than I can count. You gave me a sword and showed me my purpose in life. Raftalia placed a hand on the shield that was in his right hand. I knew you could fight, and you knew you had to get stronger. Accepting you need help and using yourself to save others. It's not a weakness, it's a strength. You save so many countless others and my own. Naruto stared at her in shock as tears began to run down his cheeks. I I, yeah thanks Raftalia, sometimes I wonder if I am. Naruto let out a few sniffles as tears ran down his cheek and he didn't even realize it. I I can't, sniff Raftalia, I I can't tell you h how much, that means to me. Sniff am, am I crying? Oot this is, w what is, Naruto began to wipe his tears, but they kept coming. His heart ached, but not in pain for once, but was crying out in agony for acceptance. Mostly for love. I don't blame you Naruto-sama, whatever choices you make. I'll always continue to follow you, I am your sword Naruto-sama. When someone makes you angry, I'll make them regret it. When you cry, I'll be the shoulder you can cry on. When you're lost, I'll be the one to guide you back. When you feel hopeless, I want to be the one who brings you back up. Raftalia placed her hands over her chest, I will follow you through fire and brimstone. As a shinobi, I'll follow you into war against Madara, and the Kagaya woman and back. Raftalia went up on her tippy toes and placed a kiss on his cheek. Naruto-sama, I'll go through hell and back for you. That's what love is, fighting the demons to get to heaven. For some reason, when Naruto looked at Raftalia, 
The little girl that he first took in seemed to begin to stand there smiling at him happily. Then a bright light surrounded her seemingly making her disappear, but he knew she was still there. Once Naruto blinked a couple of times wiping some more tears away. Naruto saw that Raftalia has changed a lot from the little girl she once was. Raftalia blushed, and she knew it was now or never, even if you can't trust anyone anymore, I trust you. I trust you, the man who saved me. The man who stole my heart and that person being you of course. Naruto's eyes continued to let streams of tears continued to run down his face. I I've always, wanted someone to say those words to me, I wished, so hard someone would say that to me. I thought I'd never hear those words, Raftalia, Naruto couldn't stand it anymore, he felt like his heart just jumped into his hands and shot straight into Raftalia. Naruto moved up and claimed her lips. Raftalia was a bit taken back by this, but she didn't resist. Naruto didn't pull away, it was a simple kiss, showing that he cared about her and that he loved her. The two soon separated, Naruto could only stare back at Raftalia, Raftalia, I won't ever let anyone ever take you away from me again, I love you, I won't let anyone, not even Kami-sama take you from me. Naruto held her close with his trembling body. On the side the king only frowned, he lost, so he turned and left. Malti followed her father along with other nobles leaving. Motoyasu tightened his fist, I didn't do anything wrong. What's wrong is a hero having a slave? Raftalia Chan might still be doing all of this because she's brainwashed. I don't know about that, look at them. Ren folded his arms across his chest. The three looked at Naruto and Raftalia was kissing. It's amazing that you can say that after seeing them kiss and hold one another like that. Not only that, but Naruto's story makes sense why he is so cold to everyone. Atsuki shook his head confused at Motoyasu's thinking. With Naruto's emotions running ramped and then came to a sudden halt. Naruto grew tired, tired for the first time since the fourth great shinobi war. Naruto's eyelids grew heavy as his face rested against Raftalia's chest. Raftalia held him tightly holding Naruto to her bosom, but for now, let me share some of your pain. Naruto nodded his head and for the first time. After a long time, Naruto fell asleep peacefully. Backquote 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 morning. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and found himself sleeping on Raftalia's thighs. Raftalia smiled as she moved her hands and placed them on Naruto's cheeks. Good morning, Naruto-sama. Backquote 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 later top of the castle. Did you make this? Naruto asked as he looked at the sandwich in front of him. Yeah, it's only leftovers from the castle kitchen and some bread, though. Raftalia didn't want Naruto to overthink it so much. Naruto just looked at her taking her new appearance, a gentle breeze blew past them as their hair flailed in the wind, you were Raftalia right. Raftalia's eyes widen a bit as her mouth slightly parted itself, I'm not used to it yet. Not only that, but suddenly having a girlfriend is completely new to me. Raftalia only shook her head and then turned to look at the scenery they had, when demi-humans level up as children, their bodies follow suit and grow rapidly, too. So, that's why she picked up on Chakra so quickly, along with the Rasengan, Naruto deadpan mentally, it was even greater to cheat the Shadow Clone. Raftalia narrowed her eyes a bit, that's why demi-humans are seen as inhuman beasts and discriminated against. I see, Naruto tilted his head to the side. Naruto didn't care if Raftalia was a demi-human, a human, or a demi-god. Raftalia was Raftalia and nothing could change that. Raftalia smiled at the food, for leftovers, it's quite good. Naruto turned to his sandwich and took a bite and began to chew. Naruto continued to eat, and he had some tears roll down his face, I I can taste it, I can also taste the work you put into it. Raftalia smiled happily as she said, let's eat lots of delicious food from now on. She trotted over and stood in front of Naruto. She waited for him to finish swallowing, she went up on her tippy toes and placed another kiss on his lips, as a couple. Naruto smiled as he nodded his head, sure, let's do that. Naruto kissed her back allowing the two to hold the kiss. Once they separated for air, then it hit Naruto, Raftalia, now that you've grown up. Don't get angry for me asking, but how old are you now? Weren't you like 10 or something when I first got you? Raftalia figured Naruto might ask her that at one point, I'm 18. 
Remember when we level up, we also age physically quicker so we can get stronger. Huh, took you only a week then. Well I'm 18 it seems we'll be together for a while then. Naruto smiled as Raftalia linked one of her arms to his. The two continued to eat happily on the top of the castle. Let's do our best, Naruto-sama. Raftalia leaned into Naruto's chest as she continued to eat her sandwich. Yeah, let's, Naruto smiled, for whatever reason it was. It felt as if his entire view of the world changes ever so slightly. Yes, he still hated the king and princess of this country, but he didn't feel as much anger as before. If anything, Naruto had a strong burning desire to prove everyone wrong about him. To get even stronger and to reach above level 2000, even if it does take him years to do it, Raftalia, for what the king and princess did to me. Wouldn't it be funny if I did something to their family? Raftalia looked at Naruto with a raised eyebrow, what do you mean? And is that even a good idea? Naruto chuckled as he joked saying, the king and princess tried to ruin my life, so I'll take the king's wife, eh? Naruto joked as Raftalia sighed as she shook her head at Naruto's antics. The scene that focused on the two began to aim up towards the sky. The blue sky where clouds moved, birds flew through, and where sunlight pierced the surface of the atmosphere, that reminds me Naruto-sama, exactly what level are you? I'm not able to see it since stat magic is exclusive to the four cardinal heroes. Naruto chuckled and simply said, ever since I came here, I started at level 910. Now I'm at level 1015. Thanks to you. Naruto-sama, you're a very good person. Even with those threats you make, and how dangerous you make yourself seem. You are just a big old softy. Raftalia giggled, she was happy Naruto was still a good person even with the threats he made. H hey, I can be mean when I need to. Naruto retorted back as Raftalia began to laugh Naruto only rolled his eyes, also, they aren't empty threats, I'll go through with them, which reminds me. You punch Malti, nice. Raftalia simply beamed as Naruto praised her for that. Backquote 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 throne room. Everyone was gathered to give the heroes their rewards for fending off the wave. The king didn't seem to have very happy. He didn't have his arrogant tone in his voice this time around, as a reward for your efforts during the wave and for fulfilling my request, Motoyasu Dono 4000 silvers, and Itsuki Dono and Ren Dono will receive 3800. And as agreed upon, I have set aside 500 silvers for the shield. Naruto didn't care how much it was, it was better than nothing. Naruto would rather not be using his family Ryu and convert it to gold every time. Naruto went to take it until the king spoke up, however. Since it's offset by the death of my assistant. Naruto and Raftalia only glared at the king, you know damn well about the agreement, besides the bastard had it coming. Naruto swiped the money from the person's hand. Causing the king to stand up angrily, hey, give that back. I don't think that's going to fly. Atsuki spoke up making Naruto and Raftalia turn to him, your daughter interfered with his duel. Even though Naruto won. Not only that, but since Naruto won by default, but yet you declared no one the victor. When Naruto won, you also unfairly and ignored Raftalia's pleas too. She willingly said she would work under Naruto. Since he won that duel fair and square, he gets all our money from this too. Ren add as he closed his eyes, he saw them interfere with the duel. Motoyasu looked at them like they were nuts. Not only that, but you refuse to pay him what he deserves. Atsuki closed his eyes, he was beginning to see who the king was. Ren then added, if you'd follow the rules, Naruto won that duel. Yet you decided to say there was no victor. Motoyasu stayed quiet, he was knocked out of the arena. He is oblivious and an idiot, but he could see that. Just then Maldi spoke up, you're mistaken, Atsuki-sama, Ren-sama. She closed her eyes and said, it was a one-on-one -on -one duel, and the shield hero was the one with the ridiculous healing. Tell me how that isn't cheating. That's why father didn't declare anyone the victor. Atsuki then retorted making Maldi open her right eye, even then, you cheated by firing magic spell at him. Then Ren added, even then it was Naruto who defended the village of loot in the night's stead. We heard the truth from the ones who did stay and fight. I believe he must be compensated in some way. The king decided to relent and said, very well. I shall afford him the minimum agreed amount. 
There you have it. Now be gone already. Raftalia walked up to Naruto and grabbed his arm and hugged it. Let's go Naruto-sama. We don't have to waste our time in this place anymore. There are just some people who are not deserving of your presence. Raftalia glared at the royalty she saw in front of them. Naruto went to turn and leave, but before he left, he turned to the king again. Naruto narrowed his eyes to the king and glared at him. You know, I don't know if royalty works the same here than like it did back in my ancestral village. Naruto held up a coat of arms. The coat of arms was a eight trigram seal with a picture of a nine-tailed fox on it. This is a coat of arms, I'm sure you dunderheads can get that through your skull. Just then Ren walked over and swiped the money Motoyasu had in his hands, hey! He shouted. Shut it, you're the one who agreed to this. Naruto won fair and square, or should we say Wakai Oji? Ren glared at Motoyasu and then turned and walked to Naruto. Since you won the duel, here is the money. Atsuki extended his money to Naruto. Naruto closed his eyes and said, No, Atsuki, Ren, you deserve the money for at least standing up for me this time. So, keep it as thanks for defending me and Raftalia but, Naruto did look at Ren who was holding Motoyasu's money, I'll gladly be taking that. Ren handed Naruto Motoyasu's money and turned around to leave. Hey, you can't do that, you didn't win the duel. Malti shouted angrily but then Naruto turned his head and glared at her. Naruto had enough of her bickering. Naruto casually picked his ear with his pinky finger, it's Naruto to you, you so. Naruto turned to Raftalia, Raftalia, let's go. Naruto simply turned and began to walk away and Raftalia only seemed to glare at Maldi, Raftalia didn't like her. Oh yeah, he was gonna piss off the princess and the king. One way to do this was for the queen, he wouldn't force her to do something against her will. A little payback though wouldn't hurt. When Naruto and Raftalia left the throne room, Naruto summoned Suzano's ribcage and a hand. Made sure to use its hand to flip the bird at everyone as the two walked out. Backquote 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 in another palace before Naruto and Raftalia left the castle. A woman was standing by the window with her arms up. Maids were currently helping to fix her outfit, is that what the king has been up to? The queen said disapprovingly. Malti Sama must have talked him into it. A special op who works for the queen was kneeling outside of the window and responded respectfully to her queen. How is the shield hero holding up? The queen asked genially concerned for his well-being. He procured a demi-human girl from a slave trader. Though he's been rather distraught and been put in a lot of constant abuse and unfavorable situations. Though I fear the king and second princess have pushed shield Sama too far. The special op froze for a couple of seconds and continued, his abilities are otherworldly, when he said and I quote, you all better begin praying to whatever god you guys follow. Spoilers, I won't be listening. I, myself, deemed him an important asset to our cause, but I fear he might have been lost. He seems to only serve himself and his party. The special op simply said without moving. Then we got to see the queen's face, who has his trust I presume. I'm still rather concerned for him. For now, I am stuck here for my husband's and daughter's foolish actions. I fear I may need to take more drastic measures. The queen placed a hand on her chin, I fear my husband and daughter have put our kingdom in true danger. Is he that powerful? The special op said, I fear it is true, the shield hero's abilities are farther beyond what we can comprehend. Not only that, but it seems that Naruto, our shield hero, is actually Naruto Wakaioji. He showed the king and everyone, a coat of arms. What are you suggesting my liege? The queen closed her eyes and slowly opened them, it seems I will personally and appropriately punish them. For our, shield hero, no our shield prince, monitor him, if Malti keeps getting in his way. Take care of the situation, I shan't allow any more misfortune or mistreatment to the shield prince no longer. Otherwise, we could lose against the catastrophes altogether. Give the shield prince this, the queen walked over to her desk and pulled a scroll out of the drawer, the king has forced my hand, next time I am in the castle shall be his last days on that throne. The queen closed her eyes as a frown appeared on her face, news of Melromax's summoning of the four cardinal heroes is making waves here as well. We must prevent our neighbors from meddling, no matter what. Let it be known to the special forces that I ask the shield prince to be my prince consort. Melty is too young to be wedded and to be crowned queen, so for now. 
I'll be Naruto's wife in her stead for now. She'll learn of this later when she is ready to be wedded by Shield Prince Naruto. Her special op simply replied with, Might I ask why my liege? The queen said, Politically to try to keep the Shield Prince with good graces. I also must make up for my foolish family's actions. We disgraced a person of noble blood, as being royalty of our own. We shouldn't have mistreated anyone no matter what the excuse is. To be mistreated and continuously humiliated by my own family, I feel like this doesn't even come close for recompense. The special op nodded her head, we'll continue to keep an eye on the things in the capital. I'm counting on you. The queen opened her eye as the special op disappeared. It wasn't an outcome she wanted to make. However, it was evident to her that her husband was incapable of any sort of leave. Chapter 2. Power to Change Others Slaver Trader Camp. So, you don't want to get it removed. Naruto looked confused by Raftalia's reason, but he also understood it. Raftalia only smiled as she looked up at him, but I wanted to keep it. It's a symbol of your faith in me. This also will prove that just because you have a slave in your party, that you can treat them equally and fairly. Not only that, but it's my first slave crest with you, I want to forever and always treasure it. Raftalia said with a big grin from ear to ear as her tail wagged happily back and forth. Naruto nodded his head as his cheeks turned red, anything you want, I'm fine with. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest. Anyway, Naruto-sama, Raftalia looked at Naruto and blushed, W what do you think? I never got a chance to show you how my first rest looked originally. Raftalia placed her hands on her collar and parted it. It showed off her slave crest, but it revealed a fair amount of Raftalia's cleavage. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and blushed, I think it l looks great. Naruto smiled as Raftalia beamed internally at Naruto's words. Raftalia though was a little curious, Naruto-sama, why did you want to come back here? Raftalia's ear twitched as he tailed wagged in curiosity. Naruto smiled and placed a hand upon Raftalia's head, well, I figured that maybe you would like someone to help you out while fighting. Naruto then moved his hand and poked her nose, that way you have backup when I'm not there, or if I'm preoccupied with something. Just then the ringmaster came from his room and interrupted the two. He said, I'm amazed you helped that scrawny bag of bones so much in such a short time. He then turned to Naruto and held up two fingers. He smiled as he said, even if she's not a virgin, she's guaranteed to fetch you 20 gold pieces. The ringmaster made it sound like he wanted to buy her back. Raftalia was upset by him placing a price on her, I am a virgin. Naruto deadpanned as the ringmaster leaned in closer to Naruto and held up three fingers in his left hand and five in the other, 35, then. Naruto shook his head, he didn't even think about it, no, there is no amount of money that could make me want to sell Raftalia. Naruto walked over to her and pulled her close to him so her back was up against his chest, she's more than just a companion and a friend, she's, way more than that. We were just here to make sure the slave crest is alright, I also wanted to look for another companion that Raftalia could fight alongside with. Naruto blushed as Raftalia did so too. Just then Naruto saw a case of eggs, hum. What's that? He smiled as he held up a finger, a monster egg lottery. Pay 100 silvers, and you're guaranteed at least a philolele. You'll win a monster chick that'll double in value if you raise it well. That piqued Naruto's interest, I see, Raftalia what is a philolele again? Really, I thought you must have seen them around. They're the large birds that pull carriages around town. Raftalia did what she could to possibly jog Naruto's memory. Naruto then remembered the birds with the long necks, oh, those birds. You know we could even produce more medicines maybe try offering our services, ya you know like mission requests. Gives us two different ways to make money. Naruto liked the idea of doing mission requests once again while also making medicines to sell. Just then the ringmaster jumped back and tilted his body to the side. He extended both of his arms to the side, what's more if you hit the jackpot you'll win a dragon worth 20 gold pieces. So, gambling huh, never was into that, unlike Tsunade. Naruto placed his hands on his hips as he thought about Tsunade. Naruto however heard a cough off to the side, both Naruto and Raftalia looked to the right. The ringmaster smirked as he rubbed his hands together, that reminds me, shield hero, 
I figured I'd save someone that might be towards your liking. The ringmaster began to make his way towards the place where he kept a slave in reserve. I knew you would return after she made me so successful after news of you taking in a slave. Now, what do you think? Another demi-human for you to help out. Naruto glared at the ringmaster for his underhanded tactics. Raftalia was quite annoyed at him too, but she also understood the business. Slavery was legal, as much as she hated it, but she will be forever grateful for how it brought her and Naruto together. The two followed the ringmaster to a cage that held a woman in it. She has dark skin, golden irises, and black hair with two cat ears coming out the top of her head. Her hair is waist length unkept with some hair framing the sides of her face. Naruto looked at the ringmaster, Naruto closed his eyes for a moment and let a low sigh out. Naruto looked at the slave and then at the ringmaster, I'll take her, how much? The ringmaster chuckled and grinned evilly as he rubbed his hands together, oh, I don't know how about 25 gold. Naruto tossed him the money for the slave, but it was only 10 gold, don't try to cheat me out, 10 gold is already overpaying. Naruto also tossed him 100 silvers, also 100 silvers for an egg, Raftalia can choose it. Naruto then turned back towards the girl as he knelt to the girl's height. She had to be about in her teens, about 15 or so, and she was a level 15 to boot. She couldn't be too much younger than Raftalia. Naruto broke the cage open with his hands and extended his hand out. The cat demi-human looked at Naruto with a rather worried look in her eye. She went to speak, but she did freeze up for a moment. However, Raftalia knelt next to Naruto and smiled at the girl, Hello. My name is Raftalia. I'm 18. I'm Naruto-sama's slave too. What's your name? How old are you too? Oh, but don't worry, Naruto-sama treats me very well. It's okay, you can trust him. The girl relaxed as she extended her hand out to Naruto. Naruto gently picked up bridal style her out of the cage and put her down to stand. The ringmaster walked over with the ink and a brush in his hand along with a knife. Naruto looked at him and shook his head, it's okay, the slave crest isn't needed. The cat girl looked at Naruto rather surprised and looked towards Raftalia for more answers. Raftalia knew what she was asking, Naruto-sama has asked me before if I wanted my slave crest off. I said no because I think of it as a connection to Naruto-sama. Not only that, but it's precious to me, it's what first connected me and Naruto-sama. For that I am grateful. The cat demi-human looked at Raftalia like she grew a second head. The girl looked down and nervously said, M my name, my name is Y Yoruichi, Nightwalker, I I'm 15 years old. A N. It is Yoruichi from Bleach, just different backstory. Naruto giving the girl a small smile extended his hand out to her, come on, let's go. He took Yoruichi's hand and began to walk away with her and Raftalia. Not before Raftalia went ahead and picked up an egg from the other clutches that the ringmaster had. Then it hit him as Naruto facepalmed, he forgot about trying summoning. Let's pull off to the side. I need to try summoning someone, I should have tried this much earlier. Backquote 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 outside. Naruto-sama, you shouldn't waste money like that. On the egg, not Yoruichi. Raftalia scolded Naruto, not only that but we need to conserve more so we can get proper treatment here for Yoruichi. Yoruichi looked between the two rather confused, they were acting more like a married couple than master and servant. Relax Raftalia-chan, it will be fine. Raftalia flinched at the sudden affection Naruto showed her, I figured we can raise a chick, buy a wagon, get Yoruichi proper treatment, and then we can travel farther. As well as find more herbs, make more medicine, and carry it back here or to other medical stores and sell them. While also taking on missions along the way, that way we can make money. Naruto smiled holding the egg in front of him, I'm sure it will be fine. Besides, we can then help teach this one here. I think having a partner for you would help if I'm not there. Raftalia puffed her cheek out, what do you think I'm not capable of? Raftalia made sure to give Naruto the stink eye for that comment. No. That's not what I said at all. Stop taking things out of context. Naruto pulled her close using one arm while holding the egg in another, but I thought it would be nice to Yano raise something together. Naruto blushed a bit, it was weird because he used to see Raftalia as his little sister. 
Now she's all grown up and she isn't that little girl anymore. Raftalia blushed as she looked at the ground. B but we've kissed, we're going to be raising something aren't we? Her hands motioned to her stomach as Naruto's face turned red. Yoruichi looked at the two rather perplexed with the tint of pink on her cheeks. She didn't even feel like a slave anymore. She felt like a third wheel. Yoruichi then asked, W wait, I'm so confused here. You two are master and servant. Yet you act as if you're dating or married or something. Explain. Naruto chuckled a bit as he scratched the side of his cheek. Well, it's a long story you see, give me like ten minutes. Wait, Raftalia. T that's not how. Babies, are made, Naruto didn't want to have. The talk, with Raftalia that would be weird. Raftalia stuck her tongue out at Naruto. I'm just kidding, I know what it is. One of the female innkeepers helped me out with that, when I got my first, you know, period. Naruto blushed and shook his head, he had to get his head out of the gutter, uh, anyways. Hold this. Naruto handed Raftalia the egg. Naruto walked over to a clearing and bit his thumb to draw blood. Naruto then slammed his hand on the ground, summoning jutsu. Like that, an array of seals appeared on the ground. From the smoke appeared a giant toad, huh? The giant toad looked down, who the heck has, Naruto? Damakichi, it's so good to see you again. How's the old hag? Naruto placed his hands on his hips. Raftalia muttered, Gamakichi. Gamakichi is a large orange toad with purple markings around his eyes, mouth, and stomach. He had a cigarette in his mouth and wields a giant tonto. In addition to this, he is wearing a necklace with a large bead. Yoruichi's eyes widen. She has never heard or seen magic to summon something before. Naruto. Man, what happened to you? Gamakichi looked around and then back at Naruto. Something tells me you're not in the elemental nations. Yeah, I'm not, it's a long, and kind of a dark story, Naruto grew a bit quiet but had to push it down, anyways, since you're here can you let Tsunade Ba-chan and the others know that I'm okay. I'm currently saving another world that needs help, I'm the shield hero here. Yoruichi looked curiously at Naruto on what the issue could be, she's been a slave for a while, so she was out of the loop of what was going on. Gamakichi was surprised to hear this, I see, well I'll go relay this to Tsunade-sama, we've all been trying to look all over for you. How did you even get here? Who are the two little misses? Gamakichi spotted Raftalia and Yoruichi. Naruto scratched his cheek and smiled, and he went to speak but Raftalia wanted to introduce herself, my name is Raftalia. I'm Naruto-sama's girlfriend, Naruto-sama is my master too. Yoruichi quickly introduced herself, oh, um name is Yoruichi, a pleasure to meet you, Naruto-sama is also, my master. Gamakichi let out a hearty laugh, ahahaha, you work quick kid, Jiraiya would be proud of you, though Tsunade-sama, not too sure. Anyways, I'll do just that, but first, tell me how it has been like here for you. Naruto shook his head with an upset look on his face, not good, you might want to get comfortable. Gamakichi did so and mentally asked, just what happened here, Naruto? Backquote 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 hour later. Gamakichi looked at Raftalia and smiled, take care of him Raftalia, Yoruichi, he needs it and deserves it as much as he denies it. I'll go relay this to Tsunade-sama, and I'll come back later. Bye Naruto, take care of yourself. Keep your chin up, you did what you had to. Sure, you lost your way but that's okay. We all stray from the right path at times, but what matters most? We seek others to help us guide us back. It only takes only one to change you. Gamakichi disappeared in a puff of smoke. I bet you're happy you got to contact the people you knew Naruto-sama. Raftalia could see Naruto seemed a bit more relaxed. That was because he got to talk to someone he knew. But it also worried her. Would Naruto leave her then once the waves were over? Would they end up breaking up? Naruto closed his eyes and nodded his head. Yeah, I am. I started to think I'd never be able to hear from them. Though, I wonder even if I'll even be able to go back. Naruto scratched his head. He didn't know how to feel. Did he want to stay here? Naruto held up one of his father's Horishin Kanai. Naruto traced his hand over it and placed it back into his seal on his wrist. Come on let's get going. We should stop by the medicinal shop. The three walked and made their way into the shop. 
Hiruzen, the old man who worked there smiled when Naruto walked in with Raftalia. He quickly took out a place to book on the table in front of Naruto. He knelt on the table with his left arm smiling, relatives of mine in Loot Village asked me to help you out. Raftalia looked at Naruto curious who it was, must have been someone we saved. Who knows? Naruto added as Hiruzen continued to talk. This book has recipes for finer medicines that you bring to me. Hiruzen continued to talk while Naruto opened the book and began to scan it using his status magic. Though he could not read it, use it. It's yours. That's right. The old hag at the magic shop wants to see you, too. It's for a similar reason. Hiruzen turned his head looking at the wall which was the direction of the magic shop. She said you helped her grandkid out in Loot Village. Backquote, 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 magic shop. What an impressively vast array of affinities. You have fire, water, earth, wind, lighting, light, dark, illusion, healing, and support magic affinities. The magic shop owner was completely dazzled by Naruto's affinities. She had her hands over her crystal ball to analyze Naruto and Raftalia, not only that but did you hear the rumors about a golden warrior. I heard he flew around the land with nine black orbs behind him. Oh, my apologies shield hero, but you and he have been the talk of the town. Then she scanned Raftalia, and the young lady has a light and dark magic affinity. She is half raccoon, after all. I recommend she learn illusion magic and the like. The woman then turned to Yoruichi who was still in rags and simply smiled at her. The woman then used her crystal ball to scan Yoruichi's magic, ah. I see the young lady here a cat demi-human is quite versatile in lighting magic. In which case, the woman went behind her desk and pulled out two books. She placed them one after another. Naruto smiled as he chuckled a bit, well, it seems we have our ticket to get you stronger Raftalia. Yoruichi. Naruto prepared to take out the money until the woman stopped him. It's free, as thanks for helping my grandkid. She smiled as she looked at her crystal ball, I actually would have loved to give you a crystal ball instead. Huh, Naruto looked at her confused by what she meant. The magic shop owner was surprised, don't you know? If you use a crystal ball, you can learn one of the magics sealed within it. First I've heard of that. Naruto was confused by what she meant. The lady tilted her head confused too, but I heard the royal court ordered a bunch of them for the heroes. Naruto let a small growl out and said, I bet they handed them out to every hero but me. She understood and closed her eyes with a small smile saying, learning magic from a grimoire is hard, but if you keep at it, you can learn as many spells as you want. She then opened her eyes and put her fists up and said, do your best. Naruto for the first time felt relaxed and he said, thanks. Dot dot, I appreciate it, Naruto smiled back at the giving her a foxy grin. Naruto then opened his eyes, huh, thank you, so much, Naruto looked up at the ceiling, I can't remember the last time since I've thanked someone. Kasumi, I think I'm beginning to understand why I'm here now. Naruto looked at Raftalia and Yoruichi both said, thank you and Naruto tucked the books away. Naruto smiled happily. Maybe I should ask Tsunade for some genjutsu Raftalia can learn and lighting jutsus that Yoruichi could learn. Soon Naruto and Raftalia left and made their way towards the forest between Loot Village and the Kingdom Town. Naruto sat up against the tree as Raftalia sat next to him. Yoruichi sat in front of the two, hey Raftalia, Yoruichi. Raftalia looked at Naruto with some interest, what is it Naruto-sama? Naruto picked up the book that they were given earlier. You guys want to learn the language together. Yoruichi smiled happily at the idea as her ears twitched, why yay. I've always wanted to learn. Yeah, Raftalia smiled happily as she moved her arms up and down in a fist pump fashion, I'm sure we can do it together. Naruto placed the book down and moved closer to Raftalia and hugged her close. Naruto gently pulled away and asked, Raftalia, you'll be with me, stay by my side forever, right? Yoruichi caught the hint as she gently picked up the books, why don't I go place these into our bags, Naruto-sama. Yoruichi left leaving the two behind. Raftalia wondered why Naruto was acting like this suddenly, of course Naruto-sama I always. Naruto placed a finger on her lips, just call me Naruto when not out in public, okay. Naruto asked as Raftalia nodded her head, Raftalia, I'll be honest with you, 
I don't ever intend to return home. Unless there is a way for me to return here because I want to live the rest of my life here. The only person I'd want to see again is Tsunade, but that's it. Here with you and Yoruichi is who I'll ever need. I know we just met Yoruichi, but I hope she gets along with us, we could be like a family. Raftalia was a little puzzled about where Naruto was going with this and her face was beat red. Raftalia also felt her cheeks heating up. What do you mean, Naruto? I don't understand, I mean. I'm grateful that you intend to stay here. Raftalia was happy to hear that, but I don't understand why you don't want to go back. Naruto lowered his head as he said, Raftalia, I'm not a good person, at certain times I can be, but truthfully, I've done a lot I regret in life, and many I don't. I've killed, granted I had to, but you see. My sensei, my godfather was none other than Jiraiya of the Sanin. He was like, like a father to me, I never saw that, until he found out he died. Raftalia there is so much you don't know about me. Yet, I feel like I know everything about you. Raftalia leaned in and kissed Naruto on his lips. She pressed her forehead close to Naruto as she said, Naruto, no matter what bad things you feel like you had to do. No matter what wrongs you might have done to others or even failed others. I know you're a good person, I know you're the person I love and want to be with. So, don't worry about it, I've been wanting to know more about you anyways Naruto. Naruto smiled as he said, then I ask you to please look into my eyes and trust me, I want to teach you how to even further your skills with Chakra Raftalia. I believe in you so much now. I trust you with all my heart. Naruto wanted to teach her if it was possible to use the Horishin Jutsu. Naruto would only trust people he fully trusted. Backquote 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 with Yoruichi. Yoruichi was able to read the room and leave the two alone for a little bit. Yoruichi didn't understand it herself, all her life. She believed that most humans were monsters who only cared about themselves. Their self-preservation as well as men and their insatiable lust for women, money, and power. Yoruichi found herself at the wagon that Naruto had procured from the village of Loot, what is his angle? Just who is this Naruto? The shield hero. I've heard rumors about how he acted nice to demi-humans. However, I do know they were brand new and were recently summoned a couple of months ago. Yoruichi was weary about her new master, not only that but he already had a slave. However, the two were sweet about one another. Yoruichi looked at the ground as she tightened her fist, see can I truly be free? Yoruichi looked down worried as hell, about the amount of crap she went through. She did not want a repeat of what happened last time, she didn't want to leave this new master. However, she also doesn't want to lose her new master as well. But could she trust him? All men she ever knew, were liars, crude, mean, and perverted men. Could he be different? With that thought done, Yoruichi turned around to walk back and found the two sitting under the three. The two were kissing, and the two both had blushes on their faces. Yoruichi had a small smile appear on her face, maybe, it's not going to be so bad. After all, she seems to love him, no, I have to ask her, she has that slave crest. It could easily be a ploy. Backquote, 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 back with Naruto and Raftalia. Raftalia smiled as she blushed as nodded her head, Naruto, I'd trust you with my naked body. This caused Naruto's cheeks to blush which earned a giggle from Raftalia, so, I'd do anything for you, I trust your mind and soul. Raftalia kept looking into Naruto's eyes as his eyes turned red with three black tomos circling his pupil. Then it morphed into a flower pattern as Naruto held up a tiger sign, Sukuyomi. A. N. In this Naruto world where Naruto is from, Sasuke has the Amaterasu, flame control, and the Sukuyomi he got from Itachi. With that Raftalia fell asleep as Naruto laid her on the ground gently, he purposely put her to sleep so he could tell her everything about him. Everything from Kasumi to the end of the fourth great shinobi war. Naruto didn't trust anyone and he certainly wasn't going to use the Tsukuyomi to prove he was innocent. They wouldn't believe him due to his otherworldly powers anyway. Naruto gently pulled Raftalia's stomach exposing her tight and toned stomach. Naruto entered six paths sage mode and placed a hand on her stomach. Naruto gently pushed his chakra into Raftalia earning a slight moan from her and a light blue hue of chakra coming off her body. 
Yoruichi came walking up looking at Naruto confused at what she was seeing and hearing. Yoruichi said, W what did you do to her? Did you put her under a spell? Mind control, what is it? Yoruichi snarled at Naruto as he bared her fangs at him. Her tail waved defensively, and her nails lengthened themselves. Naruto simply said, I showed her my memories, I showed her who I was. Because I trust her, mind and body. With that Naruto was done, he gently picked her up and carried her bridal style. Naruto made a shadow clone that was sent to go set up camp. Naruto had a shadow clone make a bed lay Raftalia on. Naruto sat over by a nearby tree and motioned Yoruichi to sit next to him. Come, let's talk. Yoruichi nervously looked at Naruto. She was weary of who he was. She wasn't sure if she could trust him. Why should I believe you? I don't know who you are. You merely bought me on a whim. Naruto then said, All right, then don't join, make your way around. Try to survive on your own then. Naruto retracted his hand, I don't know what's going on in your head. What you experienced in your life. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he looked up at the sky, it's not easy I get it. Trust takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. Remember trust is a privilege, not a right. Yoruichi, still hesitant, bit her lip as she slowly made her way toward him. She sat next to a tree that was a couple of feet away from Naruto. Yoruichi let out some coughs into her hand as she sat down. Naruto looked at her and fished something from his pocket. Naruto extended his hand out to her holding what seemed to be an item with leaf wrappings, what is that? Yoruichi looked at Naruto wearily. Naruto gave her a gentle smile, Yoruichi, I'd never do anything to hurt you or Raftalia. If you decide to stick with us, you can if you want. Naruto held the leaf-wrapped medicine up, this is medicine, it's supposed to help get rid of your illness. You seem to have contracted the same thing Raftalia had when I first got her. Naruto let out a small chuckle as he thought back to when he gave Raftalia the medicine, Yoruichi crawled forward, gently reached out, and took it. Yoruichi sat back up against her tree and opened the leaf and saw the liquid within the leaves, J just who are you? Naruto lifted his right hand holding up a shield, I am Naruto Uzumaki, shield hero, one of the four cardinal heroes that were summoned to this world. Naruto lowered his hand and looked off at the horizon, a breeze blew by as his hair flailed in the wind, I'm also many other things as well, but in due time you shall learn who I am. Naruto looked towards Raftalia's sleeping form as their mysterious egg was resting wrapped in blankets, hopefully, we can learn who you are as well. Yoruichi went ahead and decided to drink the medicine that Naruto gave her. Once the healing medicine reached her lips, she stopped and stuck her tongue out, blah, bitter. Naruto added, good medicine tastes bitter. Naruto rested his head on his knees with his body curled up, that's exactly what Raftalia said when I first got her. Make sure to finish all of it. Mo. Yoruichi's ears drooped, but Naruto continued to smirk as Yoruichi downed the rest of the medicine. Naruto then stood up. Come, let's begin preparations for leaving. We'll head into town and grab some dinner at a pub. Backquote, 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 later. Naruto finished packing up and soon he walked over to Raftalia. He sat next to her and began to run his fingers through her hair. Her hair was soft and light, and before Naruto knew it, she woke up. Naruto smiled down at her, hey, morning sleeping beauty. Raftalia blushed as she slowly woke up, oh, Naruto how long was I out? Naruto helped her sit up, not long about 20 or so minutes, so how was everything? At least what you saw. Raftalia smiled as she jumped forward and wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. This caused Naruto to fall onto his back as Raftalia straddled his hips and leaned forward, I feel like I've gotten so closer to you. What you've done, all you've ever done, you did it how you felt. If you felt that was the right thing to do, I support you all the way. Raftalia leaned forward and claimed Naruto's lips. Naruto had Raftalia fall asleep after the jutsu, so it was easier for her to process than stay awake. Yoruichi, who finished packing the other stuff away watched the two. I I, guess, this is what Marin Sama talked about. She always would tell me not all men are evil and driven by those things. Though she always told me, to be careful. Just then a voice spoke up, Yoruichi are you okay? Yoruichi snapped back to Naruto, 
he was standing next to her with a concerned look on his face. Raftalia was right there behind him. I, I, J just, old memories, is all. Yoruichi found tears continuing to flow down her cheeks. Yoruichi remembered her last master's words. Marin tells her to run away. Naruto gently moved his hand out towards Yoruichi. She looked at him in fright as she seemed to flinch in fear. Naruto placed his hand on the back of her head and pulled her close. Naruto pulls Yoruichi's head to his chest. I know what it is like to lose someone close to you. I know what looks, feeling, and expressions are. I've experienced it, and most of all, I understand it. Naruto's facial expression softened and looked downcast as Yoruichi tried to stop, but more tears continued to run down her cheeks. W.Y. Yoruichi was trying to forcibly forget Marin, it was too painful to remember her. All the good memories hurt so much, why did they? M. Marin Sama, it hurts, it hurts too much, I I can't, I can't, forget it. Naruto caressed the back of her head with his one hand and said, It's okay Yoruichi, whatever you experienced is over. I promise you'll never have to experience losing someone again. For what it is worth, they will never truly die, as long as you keep their memories alive. They'll always, be in you. Naruto looked at the horizon as he narrowed his eyes, Naruto felt it was close. There was hope that he will also have to let go of Kasumi as well. Even in this new world, there isn't a day he doesn't go without thinking about her. Wishing she was here by his side. We'll do it together, but for now, let it out all. Your pain, anger, sorrow, hate, everything. Let me take it, I'm the only one who can take it. Yoruichi held both of her hands on her head as tears continued to pour down her cheeks. Once Naruto said that she stopped resisting. Yoruichi doesn't remember the last time she cried. Hell. She didn't even cry after her former master was killed. That was years ago, it to be almost six years ago. Up until now, she held it in, the first tear that was shed in over six years. Backquote, 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 morning village of loot. Naruto woke up in bed as he found Raftalia asleep and cuddled into his chest. He heard her whisper, Naruto-sama, so, warm. Naruto gently got out of bed and covered Raftalia with the sheets. Earning a slight moan of displeasure from Raftalia, Naruto made his way over to Yoruichi who was on another bed. Naruto saw her sleeping form with tear stains on her cheeks. She cried so hard last night, that she slept throughout the rest of the night. Naruto walked over to her and gently leaned over her and gently caressed her hair. He leaned in and whispered, Don't worry Yoruichi, I promise that we won't die. We won't leave you behind either. Naruto then went to go check up on the egg on the counter as he saw cracks on it. Naruto's eyes widen. Whoa, Raftalia. Yoruichi. Guys wake up. Look the egg is hatching. The said two woke up from their sleep and all got up next to Naruto. The two watched as a piece of shell from the egg broke off. Naruto, Raftalia, and Yoruichi watched intently until the top of the shell burst apart. Revealing a small pink baby philolial. The bird seemed to chirp, Fila Fila. The bird flew up and landed on Naruto's head. Raftalia cooed, it's so cute, Naruto sama. The baby philolial began to chirp happily sitting on Naruto's blonde locks. It must think you're its mother. Yoruichi looked at the baby philolial with stars in her eyes, she's so adorable. Naruto reached up and patted the philolial's head, imprinting, huh. Well, She's ours now. Naruto did agree that the baby Philolial was very cute indeed. We should think of a name for it. Raftalia suggested and Naruto closed his eyes thinking of a name. Just then a loud grumble was let out as everyone looked around the room. Though Naruto's eyes turned to Yoruichi whose face was blushing. She held her hand over her stomach. I I'm, kind of hungry. Naruto led a chuckle out along with Raftalia, and Naruto said, let's think over breakfast. Naruto, Raftalia, Yoruichi, and their new member went down to eat breakfast making sure to give her the proper food she needed. From everyone else, Naruto and Raftalia already looked like a mother and father taking care of the baby Philolial. Yoruichi was like the big sister to the baby Philolial though the baby Philolial seemed to take a strong liking to Naruto. The four went to go back to grinding in the forest to help level up their Philolial and Yoruichi. Together they killed some beasts and Naruto placed the remains into his shield. 
Naruto also noticed that their newest member grew when it leveled up. Once they were done, they went to the market and bought more food to keep their newest members fed and happy. After that four went to the blacksmith and got Yoruichi a set of armor and regular clothing for her to wear. Yoruichi wore a sleeveless and backless top with a butterfly-like design on the front, with long golden wrist guards. She also had a golden belt, black leggings, golden leg warmers, and black shoes. Yoruichi preferred lightweight leather under armor since she was a close hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Yoruichi came walking out of the clothing store with her new gear on, I like it, I appreciate it. Yoruichi turned to Naruto and gave him a warm smile and a polite smile. Just then Naruto walked up to her and said, close your eyes for a second. Raftalia who had their baby Philolil in her arms looked at Naruto confused. Yoruichi looked at Raftalia as she nodded her head. Yoruichi did so and closed her eyes, just then she felt something being put around her head. Naruto then said, all right, open them. Naruto sent her a small smile as Yoruichi looked at what was on her neck. Yoruichi looked down at a golden scarf that was around her neck. It had the face of a cat on it, I I, you got this for me. Why? Yoruichi looked up at Naruto, Yoruichi was still trying to get over the fact that Naruto wasn't as bad as she originally thought, even with everything she went through. It seems Marin's lessons and teachings seem to have stuck true so far. But, most of her experiences say otherwise. Naruto gestured to them to follow him. Come, we need to get Yoruichi up to speed. I plan on furthering your guy's training in chakra. I should be able to jump start your chakra system Yoruichi. Yoruichi looked at Naruto rather confused, a chakra. Yoruichi looked to Raftalia for answers. Raftalia placed a finger on her cheek. She thought back to Naruto's lessons to her. She then moved her finger to point at the sky and said, well I remember how he taught me how chakra worked. What he did is he jumped start my chakra using his chakra back when I was younger. He gave me the regular theory and general idea of how it works. Chakra is essential to even the most basic jutsu. Through various methods, the most common of which is hand seals, chakra can be controlled and manipulated to create an effect that would not be possible otherwise, such as walking on water, exhaling fire, or creating illusions. Chakra is ordinarily not visible to the unaided eye unless it is highly concentrated or manifested in large amounts. Naruto gave her a thumbs up, hey, that's right, you remember our lessons on them. Chakra is created when two more primal energies, known collectively as ones, stamina, are molded together. Physical energy is collected from each of the body's cells and can be increased through training, stimulants, and exercise. Spiritual energy is derived from the mind's consciousness and can be increased through studying, meditation, and experience. These two energies becoming more powerful will in turn make the created chakra more powerful. Therefore, practicing a technique repeatedly will build up experience, increasing one's spiritual energy, and thus allowing more chakra to be created. As a result, the ninja can do that same technique with more power. This same cycle applies to physical energy except the ninja needs to increase their endurance instead. Some unique individuals have substantial potential that enables them to exponentially increase their chakra reserves in a relatively short amount of time. Yoruichi looked at Naruto still rather confused by the principles, um I don't know if I follow. Naruto chuckled and shook his head, it'll make more sense once we begin using it. Naruto gestured for everyone to follow him as they made their way toward the forest. Naruto wanted to have as much secrecy as possible, he doesn't want others to learn about chakra. Once the group was in the forest Naruto looked at Yoruichi. Naruto stood there as a wind blew through the forest causing the trees to almost come alive. Yoruichi looked at Naruto and could tell that Naruto was far more powerful than he led on to be. Naruto looked at Yoruichi with a serious look on his face, Yoruichi, before we begin this, I must ask you. Naruto extended his hand out to her. I need you to trust me Yoruichi, I need you to trust me soul, mind, and body. Trust takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. Remember trust is a privilege, not a right. Yoruichi looked at Naruto with a rather hesitant look on her face, I I, how do I know, you won't do anything to me. Yoruichi had a look of fear and worry on her face, how do I know that? Yoruichi looked down at her feet, she knew he fed her clothed her, and cured her illness. 
But how was she supposed to be so sure he wouldn't try anything on her? Request her services after he's helped her do so much. She's seen the type of men out there. She even saw that happen firsthand. What happened to her master Marin? What happened to her six years ago? She was only ten when she was forced to leave Marin behind. Her friends, the people she saw as family, her home village, were pillaged by humans, and they were pulled from their homes. Male demi-humans were slain, and women and children were taken and sold into slavery. Mostly to serve life as another human's plaything. She just got lucky that her master Marin saved her, and warned her. Yoruichi began to shake more and more as tears began to run down her cheeks. Our blonde shield hero walked up to Yoruichi in her time of crisis. Again, pulled her into a hug like he once did before. He placed one hand on the back of her head and gently pulled her head to his chest. Naruto smiled and looked down as he said, I know your pain, I understand it. How I know, I lost my twin sister. She was tortured and then thrown off a cliff where she later died in my arms. I get it, it hurts, the pain, anger, and hatred never go away. For now, let it all out, I'm here for you. I promise I'd never do anything like that to you. Raftalia walked up with their baby Philolil and went into the group hug as well, it's okay Yoruichi, Naruto-sama is the kindest, caring, and most wonderful master you could ever get. We can prove it. Naruto-sama told you the darkest part of his history, he always keeps it close to his chest. He took that leap to trust you, can you do the same? Yoruichi went to speak, but her own emotions caused her throat to snap shut, I I, I, Yoruichi tried to continue, but more tears ran down her cheek, I miss them. My family, my friends, they're all gone, those men, those damn horrible men, I want to kill them, I want to kill them like the swine they are. Yoruichi broke down as she screamed out as tears flowed out and overtook her vision. Yoruichi continued to until she saw golden light. She couldn't make it out, but she felt a warm light envelop her and a voice that belonged to Naruto. Never again, will I allow such atrocities to happen again. You and I will fight to become stronger together, so no one ever has to experience that pain again. I promise, to never lay a hand on you, hurt you, your family now, we are your family. Yoruichi, I'll go to hell and back for you. That's what love is, fighting the demons to get to heaven. Naruto channeled his chakra within Yoruichi. Yoruichi let out a moan as she felt a warm power surge throughout her body. Before Yoruichi fell asleep, she watched as she slowly grew asleep and Naruto laid her down. Naruto said to her, We'll find out who those men were, make them pay for what they did to you. Do you have any idea, who the people were, who did this to you? Yoruichi's eyes slowly came to close, but she still got out, a a man, had a suit, our red tie, Yoruichi fell asleep in Naruto's arms. Naruto walked over and planted his foot on the ground. A small tree sprouted which formed into a chair for Yoruichi to lay on. Raftalia looked at Yoruichi rather interested, Naruto, you think we'll be able to ease her pain? Our blonde shield hero simply shook his head and gently caressed Yoruichi's head, I think she's been through a lot. I think we can help her find closure, she lost her family, just like you and me. Hey, I swear I keep attracting cute girls. Naruto shook his head and Raftalia simply blushed and beamed at the compliment. Raftalia leaned her head on Naruto's shoulder as she reached up a planted a kiss on his cheek. Naruto looked behind Raftalia and saw her tail wagging behind her happily. Backquote, 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 couple days later village of loot. During the next two days, their youngest member grew even bigger each day. Once their breakfast was done and they went to grind more, the Philoleal grew after a few more levels to the size of a horse. Naruto was able to get on its back and ride it as the Philoleal took off like a speeding horse. Yoruichi got to level 20 and their Philoleal was a level 15. At the end of the day, Naruto, Yoruichi, and Raftalia had to put their new feathered friend in a stable. They were in front of their philoleal in the barn, Raftalia said, I can't believe she grew so much in just two days. Seriously, we didn't give anything that crazy to make her grow, did we? Yoruichi scratched her cheek as she stared at the interaction between Naruto and the philoleal. Naruto smiled as he placed a hand on the philoleal's beak, 
I think it's because of my growth boost skill, that probably what did the trick. Then Naruto decided on a name, I know how about Philo. Philo. Did you name her Philo? As in, Philoleo. Raftalia deadpanned at Naruto's name pick, don't you think that's a bit lazy? An arrow shot into Naruto as he hunched over. Here, here, a tad mundane don't you think? Yoruichi added as another arrow shot into Naruto's lower back causing him to buckle to his knees. Naruto shook his head as he said, Nah, I think it suits her. I mean, I could name her something like the pink super fast philoleal bird. Just like how my two san name his attacks, spiraling flash super round dance howl style 3. Naruto called out with a smirk on his face. Raftalia had a sweat drop appear on her forehead, I uh, have no words for that. Yoruichi looked to the side a little surprised, okay. Philo it is. Yeah. I take that back, Philo is a good name. Raftalia laughed along with Naruto and Yoruichi. Raftalia both saw Naruto laughing together with Philo, heck even Yoruichi was laughing. Raftalia thought to herself, I don't think I've ever seen Naruto laugh like that before. Even Yoruichi is too, they both should do it more, it suits them. Raftalia was glad she learned everything about Naruto. Now it was time to get to know Yoruichi. She hoped that she can eventually learn to trust Naruto as well. Naruto slowly stopped laughing as he caught even Yoruichi laughing along. Seeing her smile made him think about last night. Him telling Yoruichi of the death of his twin sister helped make Yoruichi decide to trust Naruto. The other night, Yoruichi told Naruto what happened to her. As a child, Yoruichi was orphaned at the tender age of two years old. She doesn't remember her birth parents, however, she was taken in by Marin. Marin, who was a human, moved to a demi-human area for a new experience in life. She was 20 when she moved, and 25 when she adopted Yoruichi into her house. Even if it wasn't for long, Marin took care of Yoruichi as if she was her own. Feeding her, bathing her, and clothing her, as any other mother would do for their child. She raised Yoruichi for 8 years, 8 years the two had a mother and daughter relationship. Marin loved and treasured Yoruichi very much, Yoruichi was Marin's treasure. Naruto was cut from his thoughts when Philo called out to him, Guwa. Philo was very happy with that name. Just then voices from outside the stables were heard by Naruto and his party, hey look. Why are knights here? Another villager asked out confused. Naruto, Yoruichi, and Raftalia turned their heads outside. The three walked out to find the entire village was littered with knights. Along with Malti and Motoyasu, Malti was holding something in her hand. Hearing her voice made Naruto swear he felt his eardrums pop, in the light of his exploits during the last wave, the spear hero, Motoyasu-sama has been appointed ruling lord of this region. Motoyasu could only smile smugly about the appointment, to help the rebuilding efforts, we've decided to levy a toll. Fifty silvers to enter and fifty to exit. The townspeople were appalled by this, that's absurd. One shouted, we won't even have anything to eat tomorrow. Another shouted out with concern. Malti scowled and retorted, you wish to defy your lord's orders. Of course, they would. Naruto shouted which caught Malti's and Motoyasu's attention. The shield hero. Malti narrowed her eyes at Naruto and growled out, why are you even here? This is Motoyasu-sama's domain now. You have no right to defy him. Get out this instant, criminal scum. Malti then swatted her hand to the right wishing would Naruto leave. Naruto shook his head, I don't have to listen to you. Naruto turned his head to Motoyasu, you know the villagers can't afford the toll. They also aren't going to accept this either. Motoyasu, do you even know how much it costs to stay at an inn here? Motoyasu scratched his cheek as he looked to the right, he had no idea, you uh. TCH, typical someone that is the king's lapdog. I'm sure you never have to worry about paying for a lot. You are imbecilic, that's one silver a night, that includes food. Naruto raised his finger, asking for 50 silver is like asking for 50 nights at the inn, that's 50 days here. This is a bang up job by the kingdom helping their people by making them suffer even more. Thanks to buying and selling medicines, Naruto began to learn how prices worked in this world. Naruto began to learn about their currency. If he were to begin converting all of his money from Ryu to gold pieces. 
he would cause inflation in their economy, Naruto learned this with the help of Hiruzen. The medicinal shop owner gave Naruto a quick rundown on their economy. Naruto didn't want to cause prices to soar if there is extra currency going from person to person, to add it all together you're charging a hundred nights worth of money just to enter and exit the village. There won't be a village to charge if you do this toll. Yeah, yeah, a few called out outraged. He's right, the townspeople all argued and Motoyasu had no idea what to do. Naruto knew about politics and had some ideas, but not enough. It was only because he was the sole heir to the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans. Not only that, but by Uzumaki standards, Naruto is the prince of Uzushiogakure. That was because his mother Kashina herself was the princess, granted she never went back to claim her title as queen. By royal lineage, it makes Naruto a prince of a nation that no one knew about back in the elemental nations. Thankfully Gamakichi already gave Naruto documents of Naruto's birthplace. Since Tsunade informed Naruto that he was a prince after the pain attacked Konoha. The monarchy knowing that Naruto is of royalty might help gain him somewhat of a better standing in this world. So, Tsunade made sure that Naruto always carried his coat of arms to show the people whenever he felt like revealing his identity of being a prince. Though he even wondered how the hell would that matter if he is royalty. He didn't understand Tsunade's demand he carried it on him. Besides, you can't just show up and call yourself our lord. Another villager shouted out in anger. And it was the shield hero who defended this village during the wave. Another shouted, and many were upset by this news. Raftalia was glad all these people believed in Naruto so much. Yoruichi was also impressed with how all the other villagers were taking Naruto's side. You dare complain about a royal decree. Malti shouted Naruto then realized Tsunade's reasoning for giving him his coat of arms. There were two, one for Kasumi and Naruto, granted Kasumi would have been next in line. However, since she was killed, Naruto is in the next line of succession. Malti raised her hand which ordered her knights to raise their spears at the people. Naruto narrowed his eyes angrily as he disappeared from the back of the crowd. Everyone found Naruto in front of Malti's face with nine glowing chains coming out of his back. The chains wrapped around the people in a protective barrier. Malti's eyes widen as this while a bunch of shadow clones appeared behind the knights aiming kanais at their throats. Naruto had one up to Malti's throat too, you make them move an inch, I'll kill them and you in an instant. No one harms the people of this town. They've done nothing wrong here, they're merely stating that they don't agree with your decree. Besides, who said that was a royal decree? Your queen or the king? If I remember, this is a matriarchal monarchy. This means that signature of the king means Jack Diddley squat. Especially if the people oppose it. As the crown, you have sworn to protect your people. Not threaten to kill. All your being is a tyrannical ruler. Nothing more than a person hungry for power. Some princess you are. Motoyasu jumped onto the podium aiming his spear at Naruto. How dare you threaten Maldi? Malti was happy to hear this as Naruto looked at Motoyasu as if he was an idiot. You fool, can't you fucking, see? Naruto spat at Motoyasu as he took a step back. Naruto removed his kanai from Malti's neck. Naruto gestured to the people, look. Look, really good you idiot. Naruto pointed his finger at Malti and then towards her knights and the barrier that protected the people, you call this being a hero. Forcing a levy on a village that was ravaged by the wave. People are trying to rebuild without the crown's help. Damn your captain of the knights. They left us during the waves. Some brave knights did stay but look at this. Is this what you call being a hero? Threatening a village to pay taxes they can't even afford to pay. Not only that, but this slut was going to order her men to kill innocent villagers. Naruto spat out in anger. He couldn't believe this bitch would kill in cold blood. They were royalty for heaven's sake. They're supposed to protect the people. L liar. Why you're just a criminal. Motoyasu spat out at Naruto as he pointed his spear at him. Just then in front of Naruto and multi three figures in cloaks that represented the seemingly Anbu of this world landed. The woman in the middle raised her head and said, I trust you know who we are, multi sama Naruto added, she doesn't deserve the honorific if you ask me. Naruto coughed out as he pulled back his adamantine chains removing the barrier while his shadow clones dispersed. W why are you people here? 
Malti froze when she saw the queen's shadows. The woman handed Malti a scroll, for you. Naruto asked, I wonder, are you the queen's elite forces? I sensed one of you guys in the castle back when I visited the throne room multiple times. They simply nodded their heads and said nothing else. Malti read the scroll as she stared at it angrily. She began to shake as she said, T this can't be. She rolled it up and lifted her finger in the air and then pointed at Naruto, shield hero. Race us for the right to rule this village. Huh, Naruto's eyes widened at Malti. Naruto regained his composure, turned, and began to walk away, I refuse. Naruto made his way through the crowd to Raftalia. Then the village chief did what he could to persuade Naruto, but if we lose this, the village will fall into the spear hero's hands. Naruto shook his head, I am not fighting over you guys. Naruto wanted to get his point across, I do not want to fight over you guys like you're a trophy. It's not right, the village may be just a village, and home to you guys. But you aren't objects, people are people, and I don't intend to fight over trophies that are human beings. That isn't right, Naruto glared at Malti and Motoyasu, well mainly Malti, but Motoyasu is just an idiot and is oblivious. The villagers all looked at Naruto in shock as they found even more respect for Naruto. He was treating them fairly and he didn't want them to feel like objects to control. T then how about we hire you? We promise to reward you. The village chief pleaded with the others hoping he would accept. Naruto had his arms crossed over his chest, but when the village chief said that, Naruto dropped his arms to the side along with his frown. Naruto smiled as he walked up to them. Sure, if I was hired to help you. I can get behind on that, I'll make good on it, you can choose afterward who the lord is. Naruto stuck his hand out as the village chief happily shook it. The queen's shadow watched from where they were with high respect for Naruto. Naruto was already looking to be a promising prince consort, not only that but he was easily able to defend people. He treated them equally and he wouldn't treat them less than an object. This is something the queen would want to hear. Naruto was also the perfect definition of what a king should truly be. Naruto was a leader, and he does what he can to protect his people. Just then they heard, Gwa, Gur, Gur, Naruto, Yoruichi, and Raftalia looked to the side to see that Philo got out of her pen. She was currently glaring daggers at Motoyasu's dragon. The village chief said, your Philoleal seems to be up for it. Naruto could see the fire in Philo's eyes, it reminded him of Tsunade. Naruto scratched his cheek and Raftalia put a finger on her lower lip, so it's true that Philoleal and dragons don't get along. Yoruichi fist pumped the air, come on Philo. Make sure they're eating your dust. Naruto then said, we won't lose, I promise you that. Naruto would have to remember next time to see about unlocking Philo's chakra. Then again, how would the animal regulate the chakra, it would be kinda hard to teach her. Quickly the race was set up and Naruto walked over to the starting line with Philo and Raftalia. Naruto was petting Philo making sure she was ready. Philo could only happily smile as Naruto petted her. Just then Motoyasu walked up to Naruto and said, so lame. And it's a bird, not a dragon. This irked Philo which Motoyasu completely missed, how are you gonna race my dragon with this? Naruto retorted and smirked as he looked at Philo, then how are you ever going to get it up again after this? Naruto finished as Philo kicked to her right kicking Motoyasu in the ball sending him flying into the air. Motoyasu was sent flying until he landed on a hay bale as he clutched his crotch. Malti shouted in worry, Motoyasu-sama. Malti turned to her knights, healing magic. Hurry. Naruto and Philo could only smirk as Motoyasu got what was coming to him. Motoyasu moaned in pain, T this is going to leave a bruise. Malti shouted, you cheater. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, his fault for getting too close, Philo doesn't like idiots. Naruto began to laugh putting his fist up to his mouth as Philo laughed right next to him. Raftalia could only smile as she saw Philo and Naruto. Naruto-sama has been smiling more and more lately, it suits him way more. It also makes him look cute. Raftalia blushed as she placed a hand on her cheek. Yoruichi also watched in fascination, she hasn't seen Naruto laugh and smile all too often. Though, Soon Motoyasu slowly and painfully made his way back and hopped on his dragon. Naruto got onto Philo's back and the village chief said, 
the course will be three laps around the outskirts of this village. Whoever reaches this gate first will be declared the victor. No magic is allowed to affect the terrain or opponent's racing. Motoyasu-sama, Malti cheered. Raftalia added her own with the village people standing behind her. Good luck, Naruto-sama. Yoruichi cheered out. You too can do it. Win. The village chief raised his hands in the air. On your mark, go. He threw his arms down as Motoyasu's dragon took off and Philo began to take off quickly. As the race started Naruto and Philo took off kicking up dust and leaving Motoyasu behind. Keep it up Philo, this will be a piece of cake at this rate. Naruto smirked as Philo replied with a, Gwa. Naruto and Philo had about the 40 second lead on Motoyasu and his dragon. Naruto saw the guard on the side. As a source of thy power, I order thee. Decipher the laws of nature and create a pit in front of me. Earth hole. Naruto smirked as he extended his hand out and Naruto said universal pull. Naruto swiped his hand to the right which pulled the guard into the hole he just made. Naruto didn't have Philo slow as Philo stepped right on the knight's chest plate pushing him deeper into the pit. Naruto simply kept going as Maldi looked at Naruto angrily, she couldn't believe this. Malti quickly looked towards the other knight who quickly went to help Motoyasu. However, everyone heard a universal pull. The knight that was next to Malti was pulled from his feet. The knight continued to fly as Naruto's hand grabbed his face. Naruto then tossed him to the side as the knight slammed into a nearby guard post. However, the way Naruto tossed him, his crotch met the post. E e e e y y y y y y y y y y a a a a a a a h h h h h h. The knight shouted as his eyes rolled to the back of his skull. He then passed out due to the excruciating pain. Malti looked at Naruto in shock. However, she saw Naruto on his filoleal. Then another Naruto was right next to her. H how are you? I'm a figment of your imagination, princess. You've gone so batshit crazy. Now I'm in your head. As to why I'm here, you created me. Shadow clone Naruto chuckled evilly at Malti as he flipped the bird at Malti as he went up in a cloud of smoke. Malti's eyes widened in shock as she placed both her hand on her head, WWHO. What? Where? How? I have so many questions. Malti shouted in anger as she looked at the last spot where Naruto's shadow clones were. Just then another came from the bushes surprising her once again, who are you talking to? Oh wait, that's right, me. Well, you, or me, so I am you, you do realize you just called yourself a bitch when we flipped ourselves off. I know we're confused about what the hell Naruto is doing, or how he is cheating, the shadow clone of Naruto then smirked and said, now, we'll be thinking about just how dumb Motoyasu-sama is. Malti looked at the shadow clone confused as he went up in a puff of smoke, w what? I have a Naruto in my head. Malti squatted down pulling her knees to her chest and began to rock back and forth, W what is going on? I'm not crazy you're crazy. Malti screamed as she saw another shadow clone Naruto sitting there in the same position as she was. The shadow clone pointed to himself, you do realize you just called yourself crazy. Not only that, but you're talking to yourself again. Malti grew angry and went to punch the Naruto clone, shut up. I'm not crazy. Before she could make contact with the shadow clone he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Malti hit air as she looked at her fist. She then turned her head to see both Raftalia and Yoruichi. Yoruichi was judging her hard so hard, Yoruichi turned her head to the left. She saw a village girl say, look, mommy. A crazy girl, she's talking to herself. The mom went to shield her child away from Malti, ignore her honey, she just has a few screws loose. WWWWWRRRRRRYYYYYYY. Malti screamed out as she made a claw like hand gesture and reared her back backward. A. N. Yes. This is a JoJo reference. Backquote, 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 backquote. Back to the race, Naruto and Philo quickly kept running and eventually won the race while Motoyasu and his dragon were an entire lap behind. Naruto and Philo easily passed him up when they were on their third lap. Once the race was over the sun was setting and Naruto petted Philo, we won. Great job Philo. Naruto hugged the neck of Philo as Philo, what, in happiness. Naruto then heard the villagers surround him and the chief said, excellently done. 
Now we can rest easy and focus on rebuilding the village. Just then there was a bright green glow as feathers fell and began to fly around. Naruto didn't notice it but he began to pet Philo and he closed his eyes, if you want to thank anyone, thank Philo. Naruto did an extra pat and then opened his eyes. Naruto's eyes widened when he looked up at Philo who grew again. She had to be knocking on almost 8 feet tall. Her feathers are also almost completely white aside from a small ruffle on her abdomen and some feathers on her wings, which still contain pink. Philo smiled happily as she chirped, Gua! You cheater! Malti shouted from the side as she had two knights next to her. She placed her hands on her hip, you didn't tell us your philoleal was this massive tub of lard. Naruto smirked as he said, you mean the vastly superior tub of lard that handed Motoyasu's and the dragon's loss on a silver platter. Naruto mocked as Malti growled at him. Then the village chief tried to defuse the argument, but it only transformed after the race is over. Naruto did frown at Malti, you are the ones who cheated, you used your guards to try to make the terrain hard by making holes appear. Holes. Malti looked at Naruto angrily, accusation this criminal made. Do you have any proof? Malti placed her hand on her cheek as she smiled. Well, the one knight's fat ass is still stuck in the hole he made. Naruto laughed as Philo began to laugh along with him. Just then a voice spoke up, the shield prince is right. The queen's private Anbu appeared in front of Malti again, we detected traces of magic on the course that belonged to your knight's affinity. Malti tried to blame Naruto, I it was the criminal. No, even though the shield prince has an affinity for earth, he does not know any spells for the earth. He was never given a crystal ball or a book to learn any type of spells. He only got a book of spells only recently besides, the grimoire is on light, dark, and illusion magic. Naruto narrowed his eyes, hum so it was them who were in those shops. Usually, I'd get rid of them, does the queen even trust me? It was hard for Naruto to judge if the queen was on his side. He would rather be safe than sorry, so he'll go with that she is looking out for her best interest, the raccoon's affinity is light and dark and the cat girl's is lighting. It was a completely different type than the magic we found. The spear hero's party cheated. Shield Prince did what he had to and non-lethally took out the cheaters doing the dirty work. He never used his clones to help him win the race, he simply used what resources that were near him to help him win. Without using any spells, the spear hero's party tried to interfere illegally. Thus, the Shield Prince would have won on the spot of the illegal magic interference. The village chief looks at the queen's shadow, wait, Shield Prince. Malti bit her lip at that. The queen's shadow said, yes, Shield Sama comes from a land where he is royalty. The queen's shadow turned to Naruto, though, of what country? Uzushiogakur. Naruto added as he turned his head to the side, he might as well as relent. The queen is going to want to know at some point. When the villagers heard Naruto was a prince as well, they were ecstatic about that and he was very kind once too. Malti glared at Naruto and pointed a finger at Naruto, F fine. We shall leave for today. Just then Motoyasu walked up next to Naruto, Yoruichi, and Raftalia, just to let you know. I let you win today, but it won't happen next time. Motoyasu glared at Naruto, in the first place, this fasto. Just then Naruto looked down and swung his foot at Motoyasu's crotch. Motoyasu was sent flying with his hands on his crotch pain. Motoyasu fell into the same bale of hay from earlier, call Philo that again, I'll do something even worse. Raftalia's eyes widen at Naruto's comment, next time, me nor Philo might not be so courteous as we are now. Raftalia looked at Naruto as she said, Naruto-sama. Raftalia puffed her cheeks out. M-O-T-O-Y-A-S-U-sama. Malti went running over to him, medic. We need a medic. Raftalia deadpanned as she waved to him, get well. Yoruichi glared at Raftalia with her arms crossed, the idiot deserved it. Raftalia looked at Naruto and Yoruichi back and said, two wrongs don't make it right. I don't have to like it. Raftalia crossed her arms over her chest. Naruto placed a hand on Raftalia's shoulder, don't, he doesn't deserve an apology, he's too oblivious to his surroundings. Once Motoyasu and Malti left the villagers and the chief came walking up to Naruto. He had his hands together in a thankful manner, Sir Prince, again, thank you so much. We don't know how to express our gratitude for everything you've done. 
Naruto nodded his head, well a deal is a deal, right? The reward please. Naruto extended his hand out for an item of some sort. Yoruichi's eyes widen, she thought Naruto was going to let the reward slide. The chief closed his eyes along with the villagers, we're going around the village collecting money now. Please give us a few days. Naruto shook his head, I don't want your money, never asked for it to begin with. The chief smiled grateful for Naruto's kindness as well as the villagers behind the chief, Sir Prince. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, I wouldn't be much of a lord if I took the money you needed to rebuild your village. Naruto fished some money out and handed the chief a thousand silver, think of this as an investment, I want this place running in tip-top shape when I get back. Got it. Naruto stomped his foot on the ground as a couple of trees began to grow, these are orange and apple trees. I'm sure you'll know what to do. Naruto then was pecked on the head by Philo. Naruto looked in the direction she was looking, and Naruto smirked, now I think Philo has another idea on the reward. Naruto turned his head to see Philo turn up to an old worn down wagon and pecking at it. Sir Prince, this is too kind, we can't take money from you. The chief and the two villagers behind him were shocked by Naruto's kindness once again. Take it. I can make it more quickly with what I have in mind. I think being a merchant mercenary both jobs could help a lot. Naruto smiled at the idea, he could sell medicines and heal people along the way. While also taking up missions to earn more money and level up at the same time. Naruto also lifted his hand too, also, enough of the Sir Hero and Sir Prince. It makes me feel out of place, Naruto is just fine. The chief and the villagers all smile happily, Naruto-sama. Thank you. Naruto shook his head and chuckled, close enough. Backquote 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 couple days later village of loot. Within just two days the villagers got the wagon in working order. While also giving them a new white cloth for the top. Before Naruto left the chief gave Naruto a pass so he doesn't have to pay the toll when he travels. Naruto, Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Philo soon took off once Philo was hooked up to the wagon. The three continued to ride by wagon with Philo pulling it and Naruto driving. Philo had a very big grin on her beak as she pulled the wagon. However, Naruto turned his head to see Raftalia who seemed to be on the verge of throwing up. S sorry, Naruto, but could we stop for a bit? Naruto could see that Raftalia's ears were dropping, and her face was looking green. Yoruichi was rubbing Raftalia's back trying to help ease her motion sickness, deep breaths Raftalia. Naruto gently pulled on the reins as Philo slowed down. Raftalia quickly got out and jumped off to the side and threw up. Naruto hopped off the cart to check up on his girlfriend, why don't we camp here for tonight? Before anyone knew it, Naruto had a fire going as the sky was dark. Naruto tucked Raftalia into bed making sure she was okay. Sorry to make you do this after you let me rest on the way. Raftalia felt bad for making Naruto do so much. Naruto patted her head and placed a kiss on her forehead, it's okay, just rest up. Besides Yoruichi was helping with the wood gathering anyways. Though you're going to have to get used to the wagon. We'll be doing that much more often now. I I will, Raftalia replied with a tint of pink staining her cheeks. Naruto then sat down next to Raftalia to make sure she was alright at night. Raftalia looked at Philo, Philo seems happy now that she can draw a carriage. Yoruichi was laying in Philo's feathers, wow, you guys need to try this. Philo's feathers are so soft. Naruto stood up and walked over to Philo and touched her feathers, yeah, they are warm, and I bet you liked pulling the cart too. Huh. Philo chirped out, gua. Naruto then turned his head to Raftalia, get some sleep I'll keep watch, you as well Yoruichi, I'll wake you for your shift. Naruto walked back to Raftalia and grabbed her hand. She then pulled Naruto's hand close to her as she fell asleep. Just then Philo moved close to Naruto and snuggled into him, Philo. Raftalia looked at the bird a bit annoyed, but she couldn't think too much about it. Yoruichi was out cold sleeping on top of Philo. Naruto did mention saying, Wow, Philo's feathers are pretty soft and warm. Though Naruto continued to gently rub Raftalia's hand as she slowly fell asleep. Then he felt himself even slip into the clutches of sleep. Backquote 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 morning. Naruto-sama, Yoruichi, Naruto-sama, 
Raftalia called for Naruto. Naruto slowly opened his eyes along with Yoruichi who was right next to him. The two were sleeping relatively close to each other. Naruto moved away along with Yoruichi who had a large blush on her face. The two were a lot closer than they thought when sleeping. Naruto turned to Raftalia and asked, What's wrong Raftalia? You feeling alright? Naruto looked around confused, I also must have fallen asleep too, sorry. Naruto moved his hand, but he found something small. Naruto looked at a girl with blonde hair sleeping on him. Naruto's eyes bulged out of his head. Naruto quickly stood up and backed away confused, W what is going on? F Philo. Naruto got out as the naked girl sat up. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, and angel-like wings behind her. The girl smiled as she said, Good morning, Gushujin-sama. W wait, T that's Philo. Raftalia shouted in shock, she couldn't believe this. Yoruichi's eyes almost popped out of her skull, W what the hell? Then Philo simply said, I'm hungry. She had a giant bright smile appear on her face. Backquote 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 blacksmith shop. Erhard, the blacksmith came walking out from the back and saw his most frequent customer, welcome back. He paused for a moment, man, don't come too off every time you buy a new slave. Naruto shook his head, it's not that, but it is a long story. Another young girl, you really must be a lolicon. Erhard shook his head and let look at the new girl. Though there was then Yoruichi who he raised an eyebrow at, alright I take that back, at least you got good taste. Erhard chuckled but Yoruichi didn't seem to appreciate that. Naruto motioned a stop gesture by placing his hand near his neck which Erhard got, oh, I apologize for that miss, I was just messing around. Me and this guy way back, I'm not like that honest. Yoruichi kept her arms crossed as she puffed her cheeks out. Philo turned to Naruto and said, Gushujin sama, I'm hungry. Erhard lifted his sandwich and said, Want a bite? Philo quickly turned to him and smiled happily, Yeah, thanks. I wouldn't do that. Naruto tried to warn him, but it was too late. Hey, Philo. Raftalia was about to scold her. Yoruichi giggled as she watches Philo eat Erhard's meal. She can take a much larger bite than you think. Erhard waved it off. It's fine, Missy. He gave her a lighthearted smile. How big of a bite could she take anyway? Just then smoke filled the room as the cloth Philo was wearing was torn. Philo in her philolial form said, Itadakimasu. She grabbed the sandwich in her beak and tossed it into the air. She then gobbled it down and ate it. Philo then added, That was so-so, I guess. Erhard could only look at Philo in shock. Yoruichi patted Philo on her side, Seems you liked it a lot, Philo. Philo nodded her head in her philolial form, it wasn't bad, could have used some more meat though. Raftalia bowed in apology and Naruto pushed Philo's head down too, sorry, I did try to warn ya. Naruto added as Philo didn't understand what was wrong. Erhard rested his head on his hand, alrighty, so what with the new members of the team? Naruto smiled as he placed the hand behind his head, well, I figured I can't make Raftalia do all the fighting. So, I thought another team member might be a good idea. Raftalia smiled as she placed an arm around Yoruichi, yeah, she and I will fight well together. She placed a finger on her lip and began to explain, according to the slave merchant Philoleals have a king and a queen leading the flock. Isn't that just a myth? Erhard added confused by this. Raftalia shook her head, no, those kings and queens are highly skilled at transforming, and they blend into flocks by disguising themselves as normal Philoleals. Erhard couldn't believe this, and they can transform into humans, too. He scratched his bald head, that's crazy. Not only that but a special crest was needed to tame her. Naruto added, that he didn't like it but he had to make sure Philo wouldn't go out of control, it wasn't cheap but we had to do it. Yoruichi looked at Raftalia and Philo, was it weird that she was jealous? The fact that they had a slave crest, and she didn't. Things got crazy while giving her that crest. Raftalia thought back to how Philo resisted, Philo started to resist with all her might. Yoruichi wanted to add in on it, but she didn't have one. Again, was it weird that she kinda wants one? Having that connection with their master, is something she doesn't have. Seeing Naruto and Raftalia so close already is rather strange. 
That was when she was at level 19, who knows how powerful she'll be once she gets stronger. Naruto walked over and patted Philo on the head, he didn't like seeing Philo in pain, but it had to be done. And, Erhard didn't understand why they were here, you didn't come here just to show off this Philoleal queen, along with this cute cat demi-human right. We need some special clothes, she rips them every time she transforms. Naruto held up a piece of torn cloth in his hand. Aren't there outfits for transforming species? Raftalia asked wondering if the place was real. Erhard nodded his head, those are special, I ain't got any. Go see a dressmaker. He then leaned down behind his counter, but I guess you can't have her walking around in public looking like that. He brought a cloak up and placed it on the table, take it, a customer left it here. Backquote 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 dressmaker. Wow, cute. The dressmaker chirped out excitedly, she's cute, like an angel. The woman had soft brown eyes, glasses, and blonde hair that had a similar shade to Tsunade's. The woman turned to Raftalia, wait, she has wings on her back, so maybe she is one. The woman then looked at Yoruichi, wow, look at how cute this one is. That one too, the woman fixed her glasses to her face, a tanuki demi-human. As well as a cat demi-human, they're so cute. Yoruichi was a little taken aback by her actions, w what? Raftalia could only smile, and then Philo turned to Naruto, Gushujin sama am I cute? Naruto noticed the woman somehow got Philo into a cute pink outfit she was wearing. It matched her cuteness overall along with her blue eyes and blonde hair, of course, you are Philo, though no need to be so formal. You can just call me Naruto-sama or Naruto. Naruto patted her head. The woman placed her hand on her chin and said, Oh Otu-san you need to be more enthusiastic. Compliments help girls grow ever cuter. Philo wondered as she looked at him, Naruto-sama, are you, my Otu-san? Naruto patted her head and said, Otu-san, I'd say I'm a bit too young to be an Otu-san, how about Oni-chan? Philo looked up at Naruto curiously as she smiled happily as she jumped at Naruto wrapping her arms around his neck, Oni-sama. Philo snuggled her head into the crook of Naruto's neck. When Naruto looked at Philo, it reminded him a lot of Kasumi. Granted Kasumi was the older sister, but he still cared for her a lot, Onisama. What about Raftalia and Yoruichi Onichin, then? You think they're cute too? Naruto scratched his cheek as he blushed Raftalia did so too. Yoruichi looked at Naruto with an interesting look, Naruto was certainly becoming more interesting. Her opinion of him has been changing a lot just within a few days. Raftalia walked over next to Naruto as she gently grabbed his hand, Naruto-sama, well as my, be boyfriend. Raftalia's face turned bright red. Yoruichi's tail wagged a bit, but with nervousness as well. No need to be so embarrassed. Naruto leaned in and planted a kiss on Raftalia's cheek, Raftalia-chan. Naruto whispered as Raftalia blushed an even brighter shade of red. It would put two red-headed Uzumakis to shame. Naruto looked at the dressmaker and said, Look, I want clothes that don't trip when she transforms and can stay together when she turns back to normal. The woman looked at Naruto for a moment, Wait, I remember you. The woman got in close to Naruto as he backed up to the wall. Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Philo looked at Naruto waiting for an answer. Naruto scratched his cheek, Why ye, you're right. I got Yoruichi's outfit custom made. Naruto took out a ceiling scroll and took out some fabric, this fabric is used back in my world, it's a new technology I sent to my, Ka-san to try out. I got some fabric back in return, is woven with lightweight metal fabric. Also known as wire mesh, it's woven with chakra metal. I learned that you could conduct chakra through it. Yoruichi looked at her outfit and then at Naruto, wait, you saying you got a specially designed outfit for me. Yoruichi was a little surprised by the length Naruto went for her. Naruto scratched his cheek and smiled, Well, I I can't have you wearing an outfit that can't protect you. Besides, lighting, your affinity for magic was lightning. So, I think your chakra affinity might be lighting too. I was going to teach you, a technique that you might like. That's wonderful, I'm glad. Now, what are you looking for? Did you bring magic thread? The woman asked curiously, but Naruto shook his head. No, I don't even know how to find it. Though I feel like I can say the thread is made out of the wearer's mana. 
Naruto asked wondering if his hunch was correct. Yes, it is. So, they're custom made. Raftalia added as she woman nodded her head. If you give me the magic threads. She quickly whipped herself around as she pushed her glasses to her face. As she leaned in close to Naruto with stars in her eyes, she then leaned backward, I'll make you the cutest dress ever. Backquote 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 magic shop. Magic thread, huh, you certainly could spin it here, but not right now. The lady at the magic shop turned her head to her thread machine, my magic gemstone broke recently. Is it expensive? Naruto asked without too much concern, their rate on money shouldn't be too much of an issue. Getting their traveling merchant business going, they'd make good money. The old woman turned to Naruto, it is, but the bigger issue is that it's always in short supply. I see, that is a problem. Raftalia added, the woman however had ways to get one, I'll talk to people and try to procure one as soon as possible. Could you give me some time? Just then a voice between Naruto and Raftalia interrupted their talk with the magic woman, hey, hey. What is this? Philo said as she teetered to one side and back to the other on the counter. The magic shop owner leaned in and said, a crystal ball. It measures one's magical affinity. The woman placed her hands on the ball and then said, oh would you look at that. Backquote 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 later road. Naruto, Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Philo left and were out on the road once they were done talking to the magic shop owner. Currently, Philo was singing as she pulled the wagon, Philo has wind affinity. I blow away all the enemies. Naruto also took a mental note to unlock Philo's chakra as well, it would help her more when fighting. Since she has a wind affinity, he could ask Gamakichi to get him some wind jutsu for himself and chakra paper. Naruto wanted to be 100% sure of everyone's chakra affinity. He isn't sure if chakra affinity is different from magical affinity. So, he'll have to make sure he is right by testing it. Philo continued to sing, my job is drawing the carriage. Raftalia could only smile happily for Philo, well, she's in a good mood. Though she may not be the best at singing. Her childlike voice makes it bearable. Yoruichi said while playing with her scarf. Every time she looked down at it, she thought about how Naruto went through all the trouble to get her this outfit. She felt wanted, cared for, and thought, she had a place, and that place was by Naruto's side. Naruto could only smile back as he looked down at the base of the carriage. Naruto bit his thumb and placed his hand on it, summoning Jutsu. Like that, a small frog appeared and Naruto handed the little toad a note, please give this to Tsunade Ka-chan. This is a note to let Tsunade Ka-chan know I've been working on something. When I come back, there are some people I can't wait for her to meet. Naruto patted the toad's head and tossed it a small grub for it to eat. The toad gave Naruto a salute and poofed away. Philo continued to sing a line that was music to Naruto's ears, if I find the spear guy, I'll send him flying with a full powered kick. Imagine what kick she could do if she learned how to enhance her kick with chakra. Naruto knew Philo could be really powerful if she learned to do that. Naruto then called out to them. For now, until we can get Philo clothes. In the meantime, let's travel around and make some money. Whether it's healing someone, doing mercenary work, or selling goods. Naruto held out the trader pass. That trader pass we got from the village lord will come in handy. Raftalia commented and Naruto nodded his head. Just then Philo said, Gushujin sama there's someone up ahead. Philo got Naruto's and Raftalia's attention. Raftalia pulled up next to the man who was out of breath, is something the matter? The man then looked up at Raftalia and asked, P please, give me a ride on your carriage. Huh, Raftalia wondered what the emergency was. Yoruichi even poked her head out to see what was going on. The man looked in the direction of his village, I need to get this medicine to the village past the mountain at once. Naruto stepped out from the back and took a look to see how far it was. Naruto decided it would be fast if he ran it with the guy, Philo, Yoruichi, and Raftalia you two continue to make your way towards the village. I'll meet you there while I leave a clone with you. Naruto created two clones and one stayed in the wagon. Naruto had dropped down and picked the guy up and Naruto's clone stayed with him, once this clone disappears, he'll inform this clone of the directions. Naruto got down on one knee, get on. 
Naruto motioned to the guy to get on his back. He got onto his back and Naruto said, it'll be one silver. The man looked at Naruto worriedly, but I already spent all my money on the medicine. Naruto shook his head, you can pay me in goods, or even pay me later. Naruto hoisted the man up and took off at full speed towards the village. The man screamed out when Naruto took off like a speeding magic missile. Philo was amazed, whoa, I didn't know Gushujin sama was this fast. He is even faster than I am. Philo looked excited, she wondered if she could race Naruto. Yoruichi confused said, wait, so again tell me what this jutsu is. Philo turned her head and her beak open in shock. A shadow clone of Naruto waved at everyone. Raftalia giggled as she moved to the side as a shadow clone of Naruto that was still in the wagon, well I can use this ability called Chakra Philo. Once I get a chance, I'll unlock yours as I did for Raftalia and Yoruichi. I sent word to Tsunade Ka-chan not too long ago asking her to send me shinobi supplies. That way I can test your guys' affinities. Keep in mind, magic and chakra are two different energy sources. Philo was amazed to hear this as she began to pull the wagon in the direction of the village. It was normal paced so if they had a fork in the trail Naruto's clone would inform them on where to go. Backquote 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 with Naruto. Naruto and the man soon came to the entrance of the village. It also surprised the guard to see two identical people running together with the man on his back. He did shout and say, Halt! Pay the toll! Naruto jumped over the fence with the man on his back while tossing his pass to him and Naruto's clone stayed next to the guard. The guard shocked saw the toll and then handed the toll pass back to the shadow clone. Shadow clone Naruto saluted him as he took off to catch up to his creator. Naruto soon found himself in the man's house next to an elderly lady in bed. The man knelt next to his mother and Naruto seemed to have a slight look of envy. The man said, Okaa-san, I got you the medicine. The mother turned her head towards her son. She let a few coughs up and Naruto decided to take it from here, go boil some water. Let me administer the potion to her. Naruto looked at him, it's for family, I won't charge you for this. Including the ride, don't worry about it. I can't be charging someone trying to help their family. Naruto held the potion in his hand as a skill activated enhancing the quality of the potion. Naruto didn't know who the woman was, but he could tell her health wasn't good. Naruto gently lifted her head, don't worry, I'm giving you the potion. Naruto tilted her up and poured the medicine into her mouth. She drank it easily as a light golden glow came from her body. The son of the mother soon came walking in to hear his mother up, why, thank you. The son's eyes widened to see his mother up, Okaa-san. The medicine is helping already. The woman nodded her head, yes. The pain went away in an instant. Thank you. The woman nodded her thanks toward Naruto. Soon Naruto made his way out and found Raftalia and Philo outside the house with the guard. Naruto turned to the guard, what's wrong? The guard looked at Naruto, and then his clone sitting in the wagon, w what? T they said they were, whatever, I quit. The guard walked away, he needed a drink. Naruto's clone looked at Raftalia, what? Raftalia smiled and shrugged her shoulders, I think your shadow clones confused him greatly. Yoruichi chuckled at the ways Naruto was inadvertently fucking with people, you know, Naruto is a lot funnier than I thought. He screws with people without trying. Raftalia let a sigh out as she placed her hand on her head. Philo chuckled, Master Naruto is funny. Naruto came walking out hearing the others arrive. Naruto simply chuckled shaking his head just then the sun came walking out and asked, Um. What kind of magic spell did you use? N. Naruto turned his head to the man, I simply have a medicine enhancing skill, I made the potion you bought better. Making it help heal your mother faster. Naruto gave him a smile and placed a hand on his shoulder, You did well to take care of your mother, take care of her please. Naruto smiled at him. Naruto couldn't charge him for wanting to help his mother. After all, he met his mother, even if it was only brief. Naruto released his shadow clone on the wagon with everyone. The son walked up and handed Naruto a satchel full of goods, please, please take this, this is all still equivalent to one silver. Naruto shook his head, I can't I, the man had an almost begging look on his face for Naruto to take it. 
Naruto gratefully took it from the man's hands. All right then, you pulled my leg. Raftalia smiled. It was great to see Naruto getting the respect and kindness he deserved. Naruto looked into the bag seeing meat and veggies. Naruto nodded his head and hopped into the wagon. Yoruichi, Raftalia, Philo let's move out and find a camp to set up for the night. Backquote 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 that night. Naruto had everyone set up camp. Naruto though had Philo transform back into her human form, Philo, since you're still rather young. Your chakra coils should still be open and easily ready to begin being used. You just have to find it, though keep in mind it's different from your magic. Naruto sat in a meditative pose and showed her to make the ram hand seal, I'll give everyone another quick lesson over it. I'll also teach you all the basic ninjutsu taught at the academy. Philo chirped, all right Gushujin sama let's do this she sat down like naruto and made a ram hand seal naruto when do you think i could learn the shadow clone raftalia asked curiously and naruto focused on raftalia's stats yoruichi took a seat next to philo and raftalia sat next to naruto naruto shook his head and said not yet raftalia your reserves are about low john and level i don't like the idea of you using it just yet regular john and struggles to just make one Naruto turned to Yoruichi and Philo, though, learning the basic clone is a good idea. Naruto looked back to Raftalia, though learning different types of clones is quite possible. Lighting, water, and earth clones. Still take a good chunk of chakra, but highly effective in battle. Yoruichi wondered curiously, so, Naruto, you said my outfit was made for a certain element you know what I can use. Naruto smirked as he stood up and walked to the side. Naruto flared his chakra as an aura of blue surrounded him, Naruto's hair stood up on its ends. Everyone saw the lightning coursing through his entire body. Naruto's lighting cloak even took on the shape of that of a fox with nine tails swaying behind it, this is known as the lighting cloak. The user wraps their body in a layer of lightning chakra to increase their physical parameters, with more lightning causing greater increases. As users coat more lightning chakra around themselves, the more their hair sticks up. The lighting augments the strength of the user's taijutsu. The lightning also defends the user from most attacks, deflecting them away on contact. Yoruichi looked at Naruto curious now, that was a possibility of a jutsu she could learn, yeah. I want to learn that. Oh, wait, um, can I? Yoruichi looked at Raftalia, Naruto and Philo. The three were chuckling at Yoruichi, she was warming up to Naruto quickly. Naruto nodded his head as he placed a hand on her head, easy there Yoruichi, you'll have to get used to chakra first, but yes. If that's what you want, I'll teach it to ya. Yoruichi looked left, right, at the ground, and then back up at Naruto and smiled up at him. I I uh, thanks, Yoruichi had a light hue appear on her cheeks, and her tail wagged happily unconsciously. No problem Yoruichi, anything for you. Naruto had a grin appear on his face as Raftalia's ears seemed to twitch in excitement. She loved seeing Naruto grin like that, he was beginning to do that more and more lately. Naruto coughed into his hand, anyways, Philo for now just concentrate, slow your breathing, and simply clear your thoughts. Naruto placed a hand on Philo's head, I'll help you guide yourself to the spot. You should feel it in the pit of your stomach. Look for the bubble of chakra not the tangled up yarn balls that is magic. Well, that's how I described it at least. Philo continued to search as she squinted her eyes, relax your body, don't tense up. Naruto added as Philo did so relaxing, I'll try guiding your further. Naruto pushed her to where she found the two energies, she was then on her own. Naruto turned to Yoruichi who was relaxed, I I found it, Yoruichi began to draw upon it once again, there was a light blue hue that surrounded her body. She opened her eyes and found the energy invigorating her entire body. Naruto gave her a thumbs up, great. Once Philo gets it down, I'll begin teaching you all how to tree walk. Philo then said, I I feel two different energy pools, one I recognize as magic, but the other one is faint. Yes, that's it I want you to pull on it, tug at it. Once you grab hold of it, yank it. Naruto added as Philo stretched deep within her mind to find it. She did so and yanked on it and pulled it. Soon following Philo's body was surrounded by a blue line of chakra as she smiled happily. 
Philo opened her eyes as she said, Wow! Gushujin sama this feels so much warmer compared to magic. Whoa! Philo then felt her reserves run low she felt droopy. Naruto caught her before she fell. Naruto placed her on the makeshift bed and tucked her in. She did well on her first try. Raftalia then turned to Yoruichi. Come Yoruichi, we'll try practicing tree walking. Raftalia got up to her feet and ran near a tree. Yoruichi did so and walked over next to Raftalia. Naruto walked over as well, but he leaned up against a tree. Raftalia said, Now, it's a simple exercise, you need to learn to control your chakra. You send chakra to your feet when walking up the tree. You have to think about sticking to the surface, too much chakra you'll fly off. Not enough chakra you'll slip and fall. Raftalia placed a foot on the trunk and then her other foot and stuck it there, now you give it a try. Yoruichi did so, she tried to mediate how much chakra went to one foot. She felt it stick, she tried to budge her foot, but it didn't move. Yoruichi then moved to place her other foot, but once she did, she lost concentration on the first foot and slipped and fell onto her butt. Ow, Yoruichi called out as she rubbed her rear end. I have a feeling this is a bit harder than you make it out to be. Raftalia jumped down and helped her up. It's okay, at least you didn't cry when you fell. I know I did. Naruto was a great teacher he helped me throughout the entire exercise. Backquote 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 couple hours later. Naruto and Raftalia looked up and watched as Yoruichi was standing on the water. Raftalia cheered out. Great job Yoruichi. You got it now. Master look, I got it too, Philo cheered out, she was wearing a bikini that they just so happened to have. Naruto looked at Raftalia, when, did we get swimsuits? He gestured his hand to her confused. Raftalia giggled as she said, well, when you go sell your medicines, we usually go shopping for other things. We figured if you were going to be teaching them water walking. I figured getting them swimsuits was a good idea. Naruto had a blush on his face as he watched them practice. He conjured up a medium-sized lake after using earth jutsu to make a man-made lake. Raftalia was wearing a rather interesting blue bikini. The swimsuit had a neck ring that held up her chest, which had a frilly dress-like attribute to the chest area. She had a blue thong that went around her waist but was covered by a blue sash on her hip. Her hair was done up in a ponytail, with flowers in the hair that were tied into tendrils along with leather like a belt around her left thigh. Naruto had to admit that Raftalia looked good in her swimsuit, he loved the ponytail too. Philo was wearing a pink two-piece swimsuit with her wings sticking out her shoulder blades. Yoruichi was wearing an orange two-piece bikini with yellow cat heads on them. Eventually, nightfall came, and everyone set up camp. Yoruichi was back in her regular clothing, Naruto, I'll take the first watch. Naruto shook his head, not needed, I've been working on something. Naruto made a few hand seals and then bit his thumb. In doing saw an array of seals appeared and stretched out about over a hundred yards, we'll be safe in here, anything trying to get in won't be able to. So, get some rest alright. Oh, thanks, Naruto. Yoruichi trotted over and laid next to Philo who was in her philoleal form already asleep. Come on Naruto-sama let's head to bed. Raftalia laid down on her bed. Naruto walked over and lay next to her. Raftalia cuddled into Naruto's arms as she relaxed further, I love you Naruto. Naruto kissed Raftalia on the lips and said, I love you too Raftalia. Naruto didn't tell Tsunade about his relationship with Raftalia just yet, he just told her of her. He knew she was going to thrash him when she found out that she was a slave. That was information, Naruto left out of the letter to Tsunade. Though Yoruichi was getting ready to fall asleep, she saw Naruto and Raftalia cuddling together. Yoruichi felt a twang in her chest watching the two, what was this feeling? What is this feeling? Whatever it is, I don't understand it. Is it jealousy? Yes, it is, but what is this, other feeling? Yoruichi held her hands to her chest and closed her eyes for a moment. That is when she then suddenly saw Naruto in her mind, this was when Naruto picked her up. When he took her out of the slave cage, and then told the slaver trader he didn't want her to have that slave crest. Backquote 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 morning. Naruto heard his name being called, Gushujin-sama. Gushujin-sama, 
Naruto slowly opened his eyes to find Philo looking at Naruto upset. Philo. W what's wrong? Naruto rubbed his eyes as she looked to see an angry Philo. Why are you sleeping with Raftalia Onisama and not me? Philo had her arms crossed over her chest. Yoruichi slowly began to wake up hearing their little companion call out to Naruto. Raftalia slowly woke up to see a jealous Philo. Philo, what's wrong? You got to sleep with Gushujin sama I wanted to. Philo puffed her cheeks angrily with Raftalia. Naruto gently chopped Philo over the head. Philo, two things. One, Philo you're way too young. You're like only ten or so years old. Two, Raftalia is old enough. She's eighteen like I am. Plus you're more like an Imaudo to me. Naruto patted her head. Besides, I'd be called a pedophile if I was dating a girl who is ten years old. That's eight years younger than I am. Philo let a sigh out accepting what Naruto said, for now at least, well, can I call you Naruto-sama then? Naruto nodded his head, I'd like that much better than Gushujin-sama, now let's go find some breakfast. Though Naruto then remembers, if I remember correctly, I'm supposed to summon Gamakichi today. I'm supposed to summon them at least once a month to follow up. Naruto bit his thumb and slammed his hand on the ground. An array of seals came out of his hand and a plume of smoke covered the ground. Yoruichi and Philo looked in awe as Naruto smiled out, Yo Gamakichi. It's been about a month already. How are things going? The summoned toad was yellow with orange marking around his eyes and mouth. He also has two markings curving inwards on his stomach. Gamatatsu looked at Naruto. Yo Naruto long time no see huh? It's been like almost six months since you last reached out. Gamakichi is busy with his girlfriend. I've been the one waiting for ya. Naruto was taken aback by this, wait. Gamatatsu, what do you mean six months? It's been like, what a little less than a month here, I guess that time moves much slower here than back at home huh? Gamatatsu then rubbed the back of his head, well that's a new development, I'll let Lady Tsunade know about this. Probably contact us at least three weeks each month then, so we can get updates. She has been worried sick that you haven't contacted her lately. Then Gamatatsu looked down to see a blonde girl, that girl being Philo. Then he looked at Naruto, Raftalia, and then Yoruichi, kid. Already, you've been busy, so, who's the lucky mother? Naruto blushed as he shook his head. No, uh, no not like that, she's another companion I got from a slave trader. Raftalia was a little confused until she began blushing, W wait. And no, it's not like that, Naruto-sama and I didn't have Philo. S she hatched from an egg we bought from a slave, traitor. Yoruichi giggled as she walked up and bowed respectfully, name is Yoruichi Nightwalker, a pleasure to meet you. Yoruichi stood back up, I am Naruto-sama's companion, I'm his, newest ally. Gamatatsu's mouth dropped and then he shut it, Naruto. All I can say is Lady Tsunade will luckily not have to hear that. Anyways, Gamatatsu reached into his back and placed down a scroll, there is everything you were needing. Tsunade also had part of the forbidden scroll jutsus written in there, though it's only one jutsu. Then some basic fire, water, earth, wind, and light jutsus. As well as some chakra papers for you. Naruto accepted the scroll, thank you Gamatatsu, besides that, how is everything going back at home? Everything is fine, everyone is still slowly rebuilding, but that seems to be about it. I think peace has finally reigned over the elemental nations Naruto, Jiraiya would be proud. Gamatatsu waved to Naruto, well I should head back take care you here, oh I can't forget this. A letter from Tsunade, Gamakichi tossed it to Naruto as he caught it, see ya Naruto. Gamakichi then went up in a plume of smoke disappearing. Whoa, Naruto-sama, who was he? He was about the same size as Philoleal form. Philo jumped onto Naruto as he wrapped her arms around his neck. Naruto simply set her down. Well Philo, there is a lot you'll eventually have to know. Once we get your chakra affinities down, we'll pack up and begin our ride. While you pull the cart, I'll explain who I am and where I came from. Including what happened here. Naruto took placed his hand on the scroll that Gamakichi gave him and took out its contents. Some scrolls had symbols for kinjutsu, ninjutsu, letter, and then chakra paper. Naruto took out the chakra papers and handed them to Raftalia, Yoruichi, 
and then Philo, channel your chakra into the paper, I'll explain what happens when they change. Raftalia channeled chakra into hers, on one half of the paper it crinkled and on the other side it went up in flames, ooh that was cool. Judging from the reactions that must be fire and lighting. Naruto nodded his head, that is right, now let's see about Philo and Yoruichi. Naruto turned his head to Philo as she channeled chakra into her paper. The paper was split in half, one side was crinkling, and the other side turned to dirt, whoa so cool. What does the dirt mean? Naruto chuckled as he placed a hand on her head and rubbed her head, well like Raftalia, you both have an affinity for lighting. Philo, you also have earth, lightning, and wind as well, just like I do. Yeah, Philo began to dance around, I have affinity like Naruto-sama. Yeah, wind, just like wind magic. Naruto turned to Yoruichi, alright you're up next. Yoruichi nodded her head as she channeled chakra into her paper. The piece of paper split in half, and then suddenly an electrical discharge shot off towards the ground. The group jumped back a bit as sparks of burnt electricity burnt throughout the ground, whoa. W what does that mean? I can see I have wind and lighting, but uh. Naruto's eyes blink a bit, but he then smiled, well look at that. It seems you have a really strong affinity for lighting, and another for wind. We'll begin practicing these later alright. Let's all pack up and head out. Raftalia smiled as she turned to begin packing up, but she saw Yoruichi move to Naruto's side. Raftalia watched as Yoruichi tapped Naruto's shoulder and he turned around to her, Yo, what's up Yoruichi? Yoruichi began to fidget a bit as she looked up at Naruto. She said, Um, are you happy I got lighting and wind? Naruto looked at her confused, but then he got what she was trying to say, No need to be so nervous around me Yoruichi. He placed a hand on her head, yes, I am happy you have such a strong lighting affinity. I can't wait to see how far you'll go. Naruto began to rub her head as Yoruichi leaned into his touch. She let a small purr out as her tail wagged happily. Philo looked at the two and jumped up onto Naruto, Mo. Yoruichi ne sama, don't hog all of Naruto sama. Yoruichi glared at Philo, what are you talking about? Being praised is normal for you and Raftalia. Naruto-sama practically dotes on Raftalia all the time, you are too. Yoruichi's eyes narrowed at Philo, I'm allowed to be praised and doted on too. Alright, enough you too. Naruto moved Philo the front of him holding her like a child, Philo, you're like a sister to me. I think that'll stay that way, but I'm fine doting on you, and everyone else. Don't try to fight for my attention and affection, Yoruichi and Raftalia are different because they are older. Philo puffed her cheeks out and said, that's not fair. You treat Raftalia and Yoruichi Onisama like women. I want that too. Philo pouted as a kid would. Naruto deadpanned, Philo if I tried treating you like I would treat Yoruichi and Raftalia. Pretty sure I'd be labeled as a sex offender and thrown in jail. Naruto simply patted Philo's head, besides, you're way too young for me, plus you aren't even a teenager. You're like 10. Fine. But I'll make you see me differently one day. Philo jumped out of Naruto's arms and shook her hand in the air. Naruto simply shook his head and gestured for everyone to begin packing. Come on guys, we need to get a move on. The group packed up and head out on their long journey. During this time Naruto informed Philo and Yoruichi of everything about who he is. From being a ninja, from the beginning to the fourth great ninja war and then being summoned here. Naruto informed the two new members of the team of everything including what happened to him as the shield hero. Yoruichi outwardly expressed her feelings about what happened to Naruto. Her words were, and I quote, that rotten, cowardly, stupid cow. Philo's comment for mine was, Mimi. In the end, both Philo and Yoruichi didn't care what happened to Naruto with the other heroes here. For as long as they were concerned, Naruto was the better of all of them. They didn't understand who Naruto was and what he went through. A large part of their end is the ignorance they had of Naruto. They never stopped to try to see things that were right in front of their faces. No one even tried to prove Naruto's innocence, it was all one-sided. Naruto also gave everyone a rundown on his abilities and with the help of Raftalia and now everyone else. Naruto's attack damage in this world shot up since they joined his party. That was the one thing. Naruto couldn't increase his attack damage so, all of his attacks would be useless. 
for some reason, the stupid status magic or whatever this world was connected to. Capped Naruto's attack, Naruto could one-shot mostly everyone in the beginning, but the waves would get harder. So, he would have to increase his strength if he wanted to help with the stronger waves that came. The only good thing is earlier on, he could one-shot just about everything. After that was said, Yoruichi was truly thankful that Naruto was the one who chose her. Yoruichi decided what she wanted, and what and who she wanted was none other than Naruto. Though it was clear she would have to share, share she will. Having Naruto is better than no Naruto at all. For now, she wants to get to know him even better, she wants to be able to laugh with him. Cry, jump, fight, defend, and be able to get angry with and for Naruto. With that, the three continued their journey selling goods they had and trading with others. This also included Naruto healing people along the way and getting paid too. Money at this point for the three wasn't a problem, the only issue was seeing about getting a mana stone. It was so they could get Philo proper clothing when she transformed. Backquote 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 camp. Naruto and his party set up camp for the night. Naruto was sitting at the campfire setting it up, meanwhile, Raftalia was hunting with Philo. Naruto ordered them to practice stealth killing everyone's meal tonight. Naruto wanted them to begin learning how to be stealthy as possible, as a shinobi should be. Naruto looked up as he saw Yoruichi come walking back with her kill for the night. It was a deer, well, look what you have there, good kill. Clean, fast, left no trail of blood. Yoruichi nodded her head as she placed it next to Naruto. Naruto and Yoruichi began to butcher the deer together, thank you Naruto-sama. The two continued to butcher the deer for a couple of minutes until Yoruichi spoke up once again, Naruto, may I talk to you? Naruto looked up from his work and nodded his head and smiled at her, of course Yoruichi. If there is something you want to tell me, I'm always willing to listen. Naruto grinned, he was happy, Yoruichi has been opening up more and more each day. She has truly come to trust Naruto, and he was happy. Not long ago Yoruichi is level 34. Philo level 30, and Raftalia recently reached level 40. Everyone has been growing at an incredible rate, though lately, Yoruichi has grown in the right places. Her bust came bigger than before, her hips much curvier, and her buttocks were soft yet firm. Yoruichi was now physically 20 much like how Raftalia is now. Meanwhile, Naruto was still only 18, it was still only July, Naruto would be 19 in October on the 10th. Yoruichi's cheeks blushed a bit, she then smiled and said, Naruto, I want to tell you, my story, there is so much. S so please I beg of you, don't be upset with what I've. Before Yoruichi could finish Naruto moved next to her and pulled her into a hug. Yoruichi looked up from where her face was looking. It was stuff in Naruto's chest, and Naruto looked down at her happy, I'm glad, I've been waiting for Yoruichi, I'm glad I'm going to get to know who my Yoruichi is. Yoruichi blushed and smiled as she nuzzled into Naruto's neck. Yoruichi also noticed how much Naruto liked her hair up in ponytails. She noticed it when Raftalia had her hair up in a ponytail when they doing the water walking exercise. Yoruichi moved her face close to Naruto's lips and gently placed a kiss on them. Naruto was a little unsure of what to do or even say, he was rather frozen by the sudden advancement. He had Raftalia, he couldn't cheat on her. Yoruichi gently caressed his cheek, it's okay, I talked to Raftalia about this, she said she didn't mind sharing. Because I got to know you, and I truly have a reason to, but I must tell you who I am, what I had to do. Yoruichi looked down as she looked at the grass that was beneath their feet. Naruto looked at Yoruichi seriously and said, please, tell me, I want to know who you are. I don't care if you had to do something bad, I'm sure you had your reason. Yoruichi smiled as she shook her head, well, where do I begin? I guess, I should begin with Marin-sama, ear, well my adopted Ka-sama. Chapter 3. Carry on my wayward son last chapter before Yoruichi could finish Naruto moved next to her and pulled her into a hug. Yoruichi looked up from where her face was looking. It was stuff in Naruto's chest, and Naruto looked down at her happy, I'm glad, I've been waiting for Yoruichi. I'm glad I'm going to get to know who my Yoruichi is. Yoruichi blushed and smiled as she nuzzled into Naruto's neck. Yoruichi also noticed how much Naruto liked her hair up in ponytails. 
She noticed it when Raftalia had her hair up in a ponytail when they doing the water walking exercise. Yoruichi moved her face close to Naruto's lips and gently placed a kiss on them. Naruto was a little unsure of what to do or even say, he was rather frozen by the sudden advancement. He had Raftalia, he couldn't cheat on her. Yoruichi gently caressed his cheek, it's okay, I talked to Raftalia about this, she said she didn't mind sharing. Because I got to know you, and I truly have a reason to, but I must tell you who I am, what I had to do. Yoruichi looked down as she looked at the grass that was beneath their feet. Naruto looked at Yoruichi seriously and said, Please, tell me, I want to know who you are. I don't care if you had to do something bad, I'm sure you had your reason. Yoruichi smiled as she shook her head, Well, where do I begin? I guess, I should begin with Marin-sama, ear, well my adopted Ka-sama. Backquote 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 this chapter week later. Throughout the week Naruto noticed some tension between Raftalia and Philo. Philo tried to intervene in their romantic life which Naruto had to lecture Philo about. It was different because he and Raftalia were of age. Much to Philo's chagrin, she did her best to appease Naruto regardless. Yoruichi was even shocked by the number of attempts Philo tried on Naruto. Thankfully, Yoruichi was able to warm up to Naruto a lot more. She didn't gain the irk or jealousy from Philo and Raftalia. The good thing is, that they weren't hindered in their training by the troubles in paradise. The four continued to train and level up with Naruto. Philo learned a wind jutsu, Raftalia won lighting, and fire, and finally, Yoruichi learned the lighting cloak jutsu. Naruto taught Philo the wind bullet, and Naruto even taught Philo to make the Rasengan in her human form. Philo learned she was able to form a Rasengan with her talons when she lunged at her enemies. Naruto was relatively surprised how easily Philo learned the Rasengan while so young. It took Philo and Yoruichi the same time as it did Raftalia when she learned it. Raftalia ended up learning how to use the Great Fireball Jutsu, as well as a collaboration with Naruto and Philo using Wind Palm to enhance her flames. Yoruichi learned the Rasengan and began trying to add an element. She found little trouble in doing so as if it was breathing for her. Naruto wondered if it was growth passive he has, that must buff Philo's, Raftalia's, and Yoruichi's training in chakra. Yoruichi learned to add her lighting affinity allowing her to toss the electrified Rasengan like a speeding bullet. Philo learned to channel wind into her Rasengan, but Naruto forbid her from even trying it. If it did the same effect on him without sage mode, he didn't want her using it. Naruto made sure to have Philo practice her regular chakra exercises before she dwelled too deep into her nature affinities. Though what did it matter when their chakra control was basically on par with Raftalia's? Naruto would have to ask Tsunade for some more chakra control exercises for the girls to work on. Naruto had Philo learn to tree walk in both forms, and water walk in both forms. Naruto also learned the Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu which really could be done with Shuriken or Kanai. Naruto could even do it with his Horishin Kanais too, Naruto also had Gamatatsu get an order of those for himself to use. Naruto and his party soon found themselves letting merchant travel with them. The man was wearing a red outfit, to be honest, Naruto thought he looked like a clown. The man smiled happily, I can't believe I get to ride with our Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. A. N. God of the Kitsune Sukunabaikona. Sukunabaikona is the Shinto Kami of the Onsen, Hot Springs Agriculture, Healing, Magic, Brewing Sake, and Knowledge. His name means, the small lord of renown. He is often described as being a dwarf and is frequently paired with Okunanushi. 1. Naruto raised an eyebrow and looked at him confused, Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. The merchant nodded his head, you've become quite famous around these parts. The current shield hero has been rumored to have potent healing powers. He travels in a carriage drawn by the heavenly fowl and accompanied by two beautiful demi-humans. As Philo was pulling the cart, she turned her head and asked curiously, Whoa! Naruto-sama is a Kami-sama. Just then Raftalia placed her finger up to her mouth, Oi! Didn't Naruto-sama tell you not to talk with strangers around? Yoruichi just shook her head as she shook her head, no matter how many times we tell you, Philo, honestly. Yoruichi crossed her arms over her chest. Philo turned back toward the road, oh, sorry. 
The merchant's eyes widen. She can talk, too. That's the heavenly fowl of our Kyubi sama. Naruto shook his head and sighed. I'm no Kami sama or anything. Just then Raftalia spoke up and said, Naruto sama, people are blocking the path. Naruto moved forward to get a good look. He sensed them earlier. They certainly didn't try to hide. Whoa, stop right there. Naruto saw the muscle-headed men with grins on their faces. Strange bird you've got there. We heard an accessory seller was hitching a ride with you. We know you're in there. The leader of the group of bandits called out with a smirk on his face. Naruto motioned for the merchant to stay quiet and stay inside. Naruto stepped out to get a look at them. Then a man with scraggy brown hair and a green shirt said, Quietly hand him over, and we'll spare your lives, at least. Naruto landed on the ground and walked up until he was about 20 feet away, You mean you'll take everything but our lives? The bald one behind him smirked and said, You're a sharp one, lad. The man then spotted Raftalia and Yoruichi, Look at those two girls. They're pretty hot for demi-humans. Looks like we can have ourselves some fun tonight. Naruto grit his teeth as he felt his blood boil. If Naruto hates more than anything in any world are scum who abandon their comrades and rapists. Especially ones who would target the people he loves. They all began to laugh and chuckle at the idea. Raftalia hopped off the wagon and drew her sword and she asked, Naruto-sama, may I take their life? Yoruichi punched her fist into her other hand, make sure to leave some for me. Naruto rolled his sleeve up as he said, no, because I have a better way. Naruto's eye shifted to the Mangeku Sharingan. Naruto glared at them all he pointed to them, I'm not giving you any sort of mercy. You aren't leaving unscathed. Naruto looked at one guy and Naruto muttered Tsukuyomi. The guy Naruto made eye contact with fell Naruto and fell straight to the ground. His buddies stared at their fellow friends and panicked. One knelt and checked his pulse, and he froze, H he's dead, I I don't feel a pulse. Naruto began to walk forward as his eyes shifted to the Rinnegan, universal pull. Naruto extended two hands out and two men were pulled toward Naruto. Naruto produced two sharp black receivers from the palm of his hands. The men Naruto pulled towards him felt a sharp pain in their throat and found a pulsing spray of blood coming from their necks. Naruto dropped them to the ground. Naruto made sure the black receivers were hollow, so blood squirted out in the rhythm with their heartbeat. That was already three down, two more to go. Naruto stretched his hand out as a truth-seeking orb appeared from his back and shot forward. The orb appeared in front of one man and stared at the orb with fear. His body shook, and he had a look of fear in his eyes. Yoruichi stared in shock and awe at Naruto's powers, Naruto was so caring for the people he cared about. This side of Naruto was completely different, he had no mercy towards the ones who tried to end theirs. Naruto lifted his hand as the orb went up and shrank to a small pill size. The orb shot into the man's mouth as it went down his throat. Naruto then muttered, expand. The orb shot out, but this time took the shape of a cross with the man's arms pinned out by the pole of the truth-seeking orb. His head was straight up as the pole stuck out of his mouth. Naruto watched as the man screamed in pain as blood ran out of the holes in his body. Naruto returned his gaze to the bandits, one more, who's up next? Raftalia simply watched as Naruto did as he pleased with them, Raftalia wondered to herself, if what Naruto was doing was right. Killing them was one thing but torturing them was another. They all fell to their knees, with their eyes widened in fear. One screamed out, W what the hell? Why you're a hero you're? Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, I may be a shield hero by title, but that doesn't mean that I am a hero. Naruto took a couple of steps forward, I could be a serial killer for all you know. I just so happened to be summoned as the shield hero. Naruto walked up to the bald guy who crept on Yoruichi and Raftalia. Naruto stuck his arm out as a kunai was lodged into his throat. Naruto raised a hand and snapped his fingers, the other four men who Naruto, killed, were next to Naruto passed out on the ground, though like I said earlier, I don't stand for rapists, so I only ended his life. The bald guy gurgled and choked on his blood, he fell to his knees and fell onto his face. He died. Naruto looked up at them and he gestured to Raftalia and Yoruichi, the two walked up to the past our four men and threw them at the group, now, are you done? Naruto simply put everyone under a genjutsu to make the illusion he killed the four. 
Though, he wasn't joking about the bald one he was going to kill. When Naruto dispersed the Genjutsu, and even after killing one of them, the scraggy guy built up the courage and said, We've got a class upgraded bodyguard, so your little eye trick isn't scary. Sensei, show him who's boss. Soon a man came walking up he was wearing a black cloak and had black hair. He had tear troughs like Itachi and a sword in hand. Naruto's eyes changed back to the M's, and the pinwheels began to spin as he said, Fools, the lot of you. Tsukinami. Naruto muttered as all the men in front of Naruto's eyes widen. Quickly within seconds, they fell to the ground foaming at the mouth. Naruto closed his eyes and shifted them back to normal. Raftalia, Yoruichi, Philo, try not to kill them. Naruto went back to the wagon as Naruto released them from the Genjutsu. Naruto decided that having the girls kick their asses would be much more enjoyable to watch. With pleasure, Raftalia whipped her sword out and charged at them. As you wish Naruto, Yoruichi's body was engulfed in a pillar of electricity. Yoruichi narrowed her eyes and said lighting assault mode. The electricity form on her arms and legs in electricity, and also covers her forearms past the elbow and her legs up to her thighs, each ending with claws made of electrical energy. Yoruichi launched at them on all fours with her claws pointed at her targets. You got it. Philo flapped her wings, fast tornado. She shot a wind tornado sending them flying into the air and on the ground. Backquote 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 pointless struggle later. After a one-sided battle, Naruto stood in front of them and glared at them. The same scraggy-haired man spoke for everyone, s some. Other T trader told us to M mug T the guy riding W with you. T that was because H he was carrying a B bunch of nice stuff. The broken scraggy man spoke but the memories of that accursed illusion he was in had him on edge. I see then, the merchant sighed, Naruto then asked, what do you want me to do since they were after you? Naruto wanted to end them himself, but then again, he wouldn't be any better than them, but that one guy had it coming. The trader looked to Naruto and said, usually, you'd hand them over to the guards. Then the scraggy guy Naruto broke somehow grew a pair, I it was obvious since you had no weapons, only a shield. Naruto smirked as he leaned forward holding a Horishin Kanai to the guy's throat. Naruto then said, We're unlucky adventurers who were attacked by the cruel shield hero. Not only that but he killed one of our guys. That's what you tell the guards. The bald guy added, E exactly. Naruto knew he had ways to work on that genjutsu so, he'll continue to work on it to make it as powerful as Itachi's. They'll surely take our word over the shield heroes. Naruto sighed and closed his eyes as he put his kanai away as they laughed, I see, I got no choice. Naruto signaled to Philo, you'll have to die. The bandits all flinched and said, huh. Naruto said, Philo, are you hungry? Philo had an evil glare appear in her eyes, I sure am. Philo looked down at them, food. Philo leaned in close as she opened her beak, I'm going to enjoy this, I will make you an example for all of you. First. I'm going to eat this one's arms, then both of his legs. Then I will eat your face. Then you'll be this armless, legless, faceless thing rolling down the road, like a turd in the wind. Philo smirked as she pushed her beak onto the guy's head, do you feel me? A. N. Does anyone get the reference? All the bandits saw Philo was dead serious and Naruto added, she's an omnivore, you see. I'm sure you bunch of dimwitted knuckled-headed idiots know what that means. The bald bandit then said worriedly, aren't you the Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami? They all began to sweat nervously. Naruto's eyes turned red with black slits and his whisker marks thickened. Naruto's canines grew as he knelt in front of his face, I'm no savior, and I need to act in my best interests. Besides you, all labeled me that. If anything, I'm nothing more than the demon fox of the shield, and don't you forget it. Naruto growled at them from the way you treated me and acted against me. I'm sure you've killed plenty of people so far, as well as rape many women as well. Am I wrong? Now, tell me the truth, because I know who is lying. Naruto's eyes shifted horizontally as orange pigments appear around his eyes. W wait, P please, A anything but our lives. The scraggy blonde haired man pleaded, but Naruto had none of that. I'll ask again, have any one of you done it? Naruto asked not wanting to hear any other answers. 
They all began to shout, I've never done such a thing. No way in hell I'd do it. They all argued and shouted for their innocence. However, Naruto grabbed one from the middle grabbing the scraggy looking man from before. Naruto slammed him on the ground, all right shits for brains. Spill it. Naruto interrogated him as the scraggy man was crying for his life. P please. D don't kill me please. I beg you. Mercy. The bald man shouted for mercy. Naruto used his Sharingan to glare into his mind and pull the memory out. Soon Naruto flinched back as he grits his teeth. Naruto looked at his fellow bandits. Here, this is what he's done. Filthy animal. How dare this one begs for mercy. Begs for me not to kill him. To not do it. Naruto turned his eyes to everyone and sent them the scraggy guy's memories. Naruto simply kneed him in the balls causing him to scream in pain as his eyes rolled to the back of his head, the mother was about 25 to 30. With children, you made those children watch as their mother begged for you to stop. Mercy, how dare you ask me for that? Naruto stripped him of his clothing and left his underwear on. Naruto did crush his balls. This piece of shit was a real womanizer. The traitor's eyes widen at this and a scowl appears on his face. I see, I'll make sure his name is known and everyone knows to shun him. How despicable, Aragor. The other bandits never knew what he did and many of them were truly disgusted by this. Naruto glared at them. Naruto turned off his abilities and he said, I'll spare the rest of your lives along with this sad sack of shit of a man too. Naruto still glared at them, however. Raftalia and Philo stayed silent. Though Yoruichi was more than satisfied with Naruto's actions. So it was decided they left him in the middle of the road, naked with nothing but his underwear. Before Naruto and the others took off Naruto said, May Kami-sama have mercy on your soul. What I'd usually say is go by the words, kill them, kill them all. Let Kami-sama sort them out, however, this time, I'd let them go and let Kami-sama teach them a lesson and sort them out that way. Naruto had his clones push his new captives to take him towards their base. Naruto was going to make a trade, their lives for all the goods that they stole from others. Backquote 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 bandits base. Naruto, Philo, the traitor, Yoruichi, and Raftalia watched as the bandits gave up all their stolen goods to Naruto. Of course, Naruto threatened to end them all if they continued this way of life. Raftalia understood Naruto's actions, but this was making her feel bad, we're looting the bandits. Doesn't this make us eviler than criminals? Yoruichi shook her head in agreement with Naruto's actions. She was very happy with what Naruto was doing, they had it coming, they all deserve it. What Naruto-sama is doing for them is already too merciful in my book. The traitor chuckled as he smiled saying, you're wrong Miss Raftalia is it. They offered up everything they had to purchase their lives from Kayubi-sama. He's treating even lives as merchandise. Sir Hiro is a shining example of the traitor's spirit, that's so rare nowadays. Raftalia then said, I'm pretty sure this is just intimidation. Raftalia understood the guy who threatened to have his way with Raftalia and Yoruichi. Even the guy they left alone since Naruto thought it was much more befitting for him. Naruto walked up next to her and placed a hand on her head, well, I won't blame you if you're mad, but I'm trying to change them. To help them wipe their slate clean. Naruto noticed all the bandits were out of their base. Naruto then shouted to them, Go get out of here, start new lives and try to make your new chances meaningful. If I find out you've done worse, I won't hesitate to feed you to Philo. Naruto finished as Philo licked her beaks as all the men shivered. Naruto snapped his fingers as a bunch of his shadow clones slammed Cho Odama Rasengans into the bandits' base destroying it entirely. Naruto finished putting the good into their wagon and turned to the merchant. Well now that they're taken care of, how are you going to repay me for this trouble? The merchant waved his hand, please call me Hikwal. Hikwal gestured his hands to the left, I can offer you the knowledge I possess and connections. You're an inspiring trader, aren't you? Besides I've taken a real liking towards you. Backquote 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 few days later. Hikwal stayed with Naruto and his party in the meantime teaching him everything he knew. He taught Naruto how to process metals and the tools required to process them. That way Naruto could create gems and imbue them with magic, but Naruto thought of possibly inscribing chakra seals into them. 
Naruto also learned some spells after he got used to how mana felt between his chakra and magic. So, Naruto picked up being able to craft jewelry. Then Hikwal introduced Naruto to different traders through his grapevine. Naruto heard various rumors about them. It seemed Motoyasu and his party liberated a famine-stricken village southwest. It seemed he used some legendary crop. Ren has been looking around to slay various monsters he took a dragon down. The information on Itsuki wasn't completely accurate. Some say he is training up in the mountains, some said he went to the dungeon to look for treasure, and then one that Itsuki joined some other country's resistance. Luckily Hikwal was able to help Naruto locate the mana stone they needed for Philo's outfit. Hikwal gave Naruto the deed for the mines where the mana stone would be found. Backquote 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 mining town. Naruto met up with the foreman of the mining area and his eyes were surprised, I'm amazed that money grubber gave this to you. He looked up and continued, we can easily get a gemstone if that's what you want. At a discount of course. Which one are you looking for? Naruto rubbed the back of his head and closed an eye, we're hoping to find a gemstone used to make magic threads. Backquote 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 in the wagon on their way to the mine. Naruto sat in front of the witch from the magic shop with Yoruichi next to him, I'm amazed you learned where to find the gemstone so quickly. Not only that, but you learned how to use the magic from those grimoires so quickly. Philo smiled and chirped out, Naruto-sama is such a great sensei, that's why. Yes indeed, Naruto-sama is very gifted at teaching. Raftalia turned her head with a bright smile on her face. Raftalia looked at Naruto who continued to converse with the witch, she was happy Naruto seemed so much more relaxed. Naruto waved his hand to the side, I'm not too worried, I heard the location is rather dangerous. Though, I'm sure it's something we can all get through no issue. Just then Yoruichi called out, Raftalia, Naruto-sama look. Everyone looked ahead to see the entrance to the mine, but it looked like a tomb of some sort. The witch recognized the tomb, I remember this, the temple was once a notoriously evil alchemist's base of operations. The witch directed them to a small cave that was on the side before they went into the actual tomb, I had no idea this tunnel existed. Naruto was holding a flame in his hand, the mining chief said that no one enters due to the monsters that have made their home here. The group continued to walk until they came upon an open chest. Yoruichi looked confused, the stupid chest is empty, wonder if someone else got to it. The wit then interrupted and said, Dear, I think it's bad that we found it opened. It's ancient writing. It says, We pray this seed never makes it out of here. It is a twisted manifestation of our wish for nobody to starve. Naruto placed his hand on his chin and closed his eyes, the energies that were in here. Naruto opened his eyes, Well that's not good. Naruto's eyes were yellow with horizontal markings in his pupils and orange markings around his eyes. I sense that the spear hero along with his party were here, and they opened the damn chest and took the seed. Philo then called out, Naruto-sama, there is a path this way. Naruto turned to her, thanks, Philo. Let's get going. Though Philo called out, wait, Naruto-sama. Philo heard, Naruto, say, geez, if you aren't going to listen then, I'm not going to need you anymore. Naruto turned back to her. He could sense she was nervous, what's wrong Philo? Um well, there's. Philo could sense monsters nearby. Naruto looked at her confused, but he suddenly felt the presence of monsters, Philo come here quick. Philo came running over as Naruto walked in front of the group. Naruto placed a hand on Philo, Raftalia, Yoruichi, and even the witch. The witch suddenly felt an energy spring up from within her after Naruto touched her. A red chakra cloak covered the head from head to toe. The cloak had two red ears, a single tail, and a claw for hands and feet, w what is this? She looked at Naruto as he was covered in a golden cloak. Naruto's pupils consist of a cross of vertical fox slits with horizontal toed slits, and no pigmentation around his eyes would otherwise signify the standard sage mode. The whisker-like markings on his face become thicker to resemble the trigram and the chakra shrouds shape altars to resemble a full-length haori. Naruto also had nine black orbs behind him. Stay near me, but that cloak will protect you. Naruto warned them. Yoruichi held her fists up. Philo had her claws ready, 
and Raftalia drew her sword while the witch had her wand out. The Wyth knew what they were dealing with, it seems this cloak gives us the resistance to the monster's magic, the monsters have magic that makes you hear the last thing you would want to hear from the people you care about. Raftalia narrowed her eyes, how crude is that? The witch held her wand and she began her chant, as source of thy power, I order thee. Decipher the laws of nature and restore our sight. She held her wand straight into the air and shouted out, fast and bind. She then swung her wand down as a bright light illuminated the area. Naruto saw the bats and extended his hand out as arms appeared from his body swatting at the animals. Naruto turned to Philo, Philo. Now, Philo lifted her wings and shouted, take this. Fast tornado. A green tornado shot from her wings as she blasted the creatures away. The witch looked at Yoruichi and Raftalia, are you two girls, okay? Hi, Yoruichi said with an appreciative nod. Yes, thank you, Raftalia smiled as well. Naruto reached down and inserted a piece of the bat creature's wings into the shield. Naruto read the name of the shield, voice Gengar shield, bat form. Naruto was rather unsure of the shield, I don't know how this will help, but I'm sure there is a way. Naruto turned to everyone, is everyone okay? Everyone nodded their heads confirming to Naruto that they were safe. Philo asked, Naruto-sama, you won't abandon me, right? Naruto looked at her confused, but he wondered if she heard one of the voices before he used his cloak to protect them. Naruto shook his head as he walked up and placed a hand on Philo's feathery head, don't you worry Philo, I'd never leave or abandon you. Like what my sensei says, those who break the rules are scum, that's true, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. I'm not scum, so don't worry. Philo smiled happily as she brushed her head up against Naruto's cheek. Raftalia nodded her head and gave Philo a reassuring smile, don't worry about what those hallucinations said. Naruto-sama will never leave us behind. Just then Naruto spoke up, hold guys, there's something ahead. Philo nodded her head, I can sense it too Naruto-sama. Philo readied herself as Yoruichi's claws had electricity running between them. Raftalia drew her sword and took a first-class swordsman stance. The witch narrowed her eyes and Naruto wondered, what is that thing? Just then the beast's tail turned around and the tail was a snake. The witch replied, Anu. On the small side, but it's still a dangerous creature. Naruto looked at the three girls. Girls, I want you to do your best and try to kill it stealthily, use everything I taught you. Raftalia nodded her head as she sheathed her sword and got low. Raftalia closed her eyes and chanted, As source of thy power, I order thee. Decipher the laws of nature and conceal me in a haze. Raftalia held her right hand into the air, hide mirage. Like that Raftalia turned invisible. Yoruichi smirked as she knelt on all fours and electric claws appeared on her hands and sent chakra to her feet. Yoruichi then climbed onto the ceiling and took a ceiling advantage against the new. Philoda transformed back into her human form as she hunched down ready for Yoruichi or Raftalia to attack first. Naruto and the witch waited and watched. Just then Raftalia weaved through some hand signs and called out, Fire style, great fireball jutsu. A large ball of fire came from Raftalia's spot as her mirage went away. The snake looked at Raftalia's attack surprised, and by the amount of heat being produced. The snake could not determine where anyone's position was anymore. Just then Yoruichi dropped down onto the new's back and slashed at the back. She dug one of her claws into it allowing her to keep her hold. Then swung her other hand on its body causing long gashes. Yoruichi stopped her momentum when she was on the side of the new and slashed at its right hind leg. The witch watched in shock at the girl's collaboration. Just then Philo ran forward in a burst of speed in her human form. She was fast and quick, she quickly transformed back into her philoleal form with one talon stretched out. A ball of chakra formed from her feet as she slammed it into the new's left side. Rasengan. Yoruichi jumped off before Philo made contact. The new was sent flying into the side of the cave letting out a roar of pain. However, it was silenced once Raftalia appeared again from a mirage and swung her sword coated in lighting chakra. The head of the new fell to the ground, and then Yoruichi quickly slashed the snake's head off. Naruto smirked as he came walking out and began to clap his hands. The witch looked at Naruto in shock, she wondered what those spells they used. She recognized the mirage spell, 
but not all the other ones, great job ladies. You all did a fantastic job. Great timing with the Rasengan Philo. Raftalia, good execution, and Yoruichi, great job on attacking its leg. You all get an A plus in my book one inch. Yeah, I did great. Philo chirped out happily. Thank you, Naruto-sama. Raftalia smiled rather happily. Your praise is appreciated Naruto-sama. Yoruichi felt her cheeks heat up with a light pink hue on them. Yoruichi went to stand by Naruto's side and give him a kiss, but she hesitated. Before she could do anything Naruto went towards the mana crystals, Naruto didn't see she was trying to kiss him either. Not that he didn't want to, it's the fact he wanted to take their time. He didn't want to rush anything. Naruto walked over to the rocks and took out a hammer. Naruto hit it to break the gemstone off, let's mind a bunch of these, seal them away then. We can sell them for a bunch later. Backquote 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 back in the witch's shop. Philo was sitting on a chair wearing a red dress that was given her to wear. She was spinning a wheel that was taking her mana and turning it into a fine thread. Philo though have made quite a bit already and she said tiredly, this is making me sleepy. The witch smiled as she said, it's because you're converting your mana into thread. Endure it just a while longer. Philo looked at her mortified. The witch giggled as Naruto shook his head at Philo's complaints, I'll give you a snack once you finish. The witch walked over to get some snacks for her. Naruto couldn't believe Philo sometimes, she was such a kid. Wait she is one, a yummy one, then I'll keep going. Philo cheered out happily. Eventually, Philo finished and made plenty of mana thread for the clothes designer to make her outfit. Naruto, Philo, Raftalia, and Yoruichi went to the clothes designer and handed her the threads. After a day of making the outfit, they returned, and Philo got to try her new outfit on. Once Philo got the outfit, she came walking out with the clothes designer in tow. Philo smiled brightly as she flapped her wings out and twirled in her dress. Naruto had to admit, that Philo looked very cute in that outfit. Though Naruto seemed to have missed the pout look on Yoruichi's face, with Raftalia's simple giggle. Philo smiled and asked, Naruto-sama, how do I look? Naruto walked over and messed with her hair, you look so adorable, Philo. You look cute. Philo jumped in happiness as she wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck and clung to him, yay. Thank you, Naruto-sama. Yoruichi looked at her clothing, should she get something cute herself? Would Naruto care if she, no, 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 no way Naruto-sama looks at me like that. He has Raftalia. Besides, Naruto-sama would say I look beautiful in my outfit. Cute might be a bit weird. Yoruichi did herself to convince herself she was overthinking things. Clearly, Yoruichi didn't think of it right, Naruto thought they all looked very cute. Regardless of what they were wearing, Philo was just cute since she was a child. Naruto would say other choice of words for Raftalia and Yoruichi. The clothes designer smirked as she raised her hands to the side. Naruto could see the sleep-deprived look on her face. Not only that, but her hair was a little disheveled, I did my best to bring our every last, the woman placed her hands next to her face with a cheerful look. She then placed her hands on her hips as a proud look appeared on her face, bit of Philo-chan's charm. Philo twirled around as she described what she did, I used white as the base color, to go with her wings. I added plenty of frills as a nod to her feathers, too. She then walked over and gestured to Philo's bow, and since it had contrast best with her blonde hair, I went with blue for the ribbon. Raftalia chuckled as a sweat drop appeared on her head, all right, she was very enthusiastic about her dress. Naruto knelt to Philo's height, as long as you like it, Philo, I'm happy with it. He again patted her head which she smiled and leaned into it. Yeah, I can't wait to show it off. Now let's try it oh you. Philo suddenly was engulfed in steam as she transformed into her philoleal form. Raftalia had to reprehend Philo for that, Philo. Don't suddenly transform indoors. The clothes design moved next to Philo again and looked at her ribbon in awe, the ribbon looks oh so cute even in her monster form. The woman then smoothly slid up close to Naruto and asked, don't you agree? You agree, don't you, Otu-san? Naruto let out an awkward chuckle and rubbed the back of his head, I I believe so she is. Isn't she? 
back quote back quote back quote back quote back quote in the wagon on the way to a village naruto and his party were tasked with delivering herbicide to a village ordered from hikwal naruto agreed to do it and get paid for the job while traveling philo spoke up and said whoa there's so many plants here naruto stuck his head out to look along with raftalia yoruichi was currently driving the car yeah you would need a lot for this but i might be able to make it go away using my wood release yoruichi looked back at naruto wood release naruto chuckled and said i'll explain later philo let's go yoruichi hit the reins as philo sped up quicker to the village yoruichi was shocked at the scene naruto sama look at the vines they overran the village naruto focused his chakra onto the vines and everything but whatever it was was not responding to his chakra at all it must be independently thinking and capable of not listening to naruto's control Philo chirped out listening to Naruto's command, you got it. Philo sped up trying to get to the village faster. In the village Naruto, Raftalia, and Yoruichi stood in front of the village chief, this place was about to fall to the vines, too. Raftalia was curious, you couldn't have burned the plants. The chief replied, we tried everything, but nothing was working. Our village was already overrun by vines. What's worse, is the plants turned into monsters and attacked us. Naruto narrowed his eyes and looked at Raftalia and Yoruichi. Girls, that plant, remember what we found in that cave. That empty chest, the writing on it, we pray this seed never makes it out of here. It is a twisted manifestation of our wish for nobody to starve. I wonder if, did that idiot Motoyasu come through here? The spear hero. The chief was surprised at how easily Naruto was able to deduce who gave them the seed. Yes, it was. Our village was being ravaged by famine when the spear hero visited. When he heard out plight, he went to ruin and brought back a seed that was sealed there. He called it a miracle seed. Naruto gave them a dry look, seriously, does that not ring any alarms? Sealed away, it meant people wanted to keep it away. A member who was part of the chief's circle spoke up, at first, we were overjoyed how quickly it grew and bore fruit. However, they grew too much and overwhelmed your village. Raftalia finished his sentence. Indeed, you're right. The man looked at his feet ashamed. The chief added, we looked up our old history. We found out that the alchemist who'd set up shop in this area created the seed. Though, they sealed it away for some reason. Naruto who was sitting on a wooden box stood up and sighed, well we know the reason now, don't we? Hi, the legend said the seed overtook the region for a while. The chief was then cut off by Yoruichi. Honestly, you guys ignored the legend because you were desperate, weren't you? Yoruichi crossed her arms over her chest. The three got down on their hands and knees. The chief held up money, please, we'll pay for treatments, and the monster extermination, in advance. Please save our village. You are the Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. You even have the heavenly fowl pulling your cart, along with two beautiful demi-humans with you. I'm so kicking his ass the next time I see his stupid face. Naruto took the money, I'll save your village and treat its people. Where are the sick? Please this way. The chief stood up and gestured for them to follow them to the tents. Naruto made his way inside and found kids, they were all kids. They had vines growing off their bodies, these plants, they're parasitic. Naruto walked over to a child, he could see it was in pain. Naruto smiled out and said, hang in there buddy, I'll make the pain go away. Naruto pondered for a second, he could try to use the herbicide in his shield. That way he could enhance its effect and cure people, at the same time making it safe to use on people. That or he can use his six paths sage mode and use the sun mark to cure them. Naruto decided to go with the latter, he didn't want to use it if he didn't have to. Naruto took the herbicide and held it in his hand. He poured it into the kid's mouth and his shield enhanced the quality of it. Naruto then took the rest of the herbicide and threw it onto the child. Like that the vines on the child died, and the child's skin returned to a normal color. The chief along with Yoruichi and Raftalia looked at Naruto in amazement, come on, let's get to the next. After spending a few minutes helping the sick, Naruto walked outside, Philo. We're going let's get a move on. Naruto's party made their way through town and took out any nearby plant monsters. Yoruichi slashed them with her claws along with Philo. 
Raftalia used fire jutsus to help burn the plants away. Naruto let them fight as he wanted to continue surveying the area. Naruto tried to continue to connect with the plant monster but was unable to. It was clear that it had its mind of thinking and would not respond to his chakra. The crew made their way into the middle of town and saw a giant tree. Which also had a giant flower on it, that had an eye in the middle. That was probably the most disgusting thing Naruto has ever seen. Okay guys, engage, and watch each other's backs. Philo smirked in her philoleal form, you got it Naruto-sama. Philo took off. Raftalia shouted out, Philo. We should be in formation. Yoruichi sighed annoyed, Philo. Come on Raftalia. Yoruichi jumped off with Raftalia following in tow. Naruto walked forward and stomped his foot onto the ground. Wood style. Wood dragon jutsu. A giant wood dragon shot out from the dragon heading towards the monster tree. Naruto watched as Philo jumped and flipped through the air. To give her a boost he extended his hand out and shouted, Air Strike Shield. Philo landed on the shield and used it as a boost to launch herself at the plant. Philo clawed her foot at the eye causing purple blood to shoot out. However, the eye quickly regenerated and shot out vines to capture Philo. Naruto ran forward quickly and swung his kunai down creating a wind blade. It cut the vines trying to capture Philo, Raftalia landed next to Naruto. Naruto looked to Raftalia, you two, work together. Raftalia, throw the herbicide onto the eye. Yoruichi, watch their backs. Yoruichi took off next to Philo and Raftalia after Raftalia grabbed the herbicide and hopped onto Philo's back. The two shot off with Philo dipping and dodging the vines. Naruto meanwhile looked toward the vines going after him as he extended his hand out. The wood dragon came crashing through as it bit through the vines ripping them to shreds. Naruto then aimed it at the eye of the monster plant. However, once Naruto took his eye off Philo and Raftalia, Raftalia cut the vines around them including the one Philo was using to hold onto. Philo said out annoyed, Oni-chan, don't hold me back. Raftalia shouted out annoyed, hold you back. Yoruichi shouted, you too, get your head into the game. Yoruichi lunged at them as vines wrapped around Raftalia causing her to get stuck. Raftalia. Naruto shouted as he ran forward, but Yoruichi swung her claw out shredding the vine wrapped around her. Raftalia had to hold her skirt down, so she didn't flash anyone. Philo smirked as Raftalia landed next to Philo and Yoruichi, Philo. Did you just laugh? No, I didn't but don't mind that, get the herbicide. Philo said with a cocky tone. Raftalia did so and spilled the herbicide on the plant's roots, which burned it, but began to regenerate. Yoruichi growled, this is annoying. It regenerates too fast. Naruto wondered, wait, I think I got it. Naruto jumped and landed on the roots of the plant monster. It wrapped its vines around Naruto, but he quickly broke through using Kurama's corrosive chakra properties to burn through them. Though, Naruto's shield also allows him to break through the vines easily. Raftalia looked at Naruto in awe as he broke the vines, Naruto then poured the herbicide using his enhancement skill. The plant let out a screech of pain as it began to shrink and die with the vines falling apart and leaves dying. The entire tree fell apart as everyone jumped away. Once the tree fell down the remainder of it was the fruit that the tree bore, alright, well we might as well begin picking. Yoruichi skipped up and smiled, yeah, let's do it. Naruto made some shadow clones to help with the picking. Naruto went over to check on Raftalia and Philo to find them arguing, that one was mine. Raftalia looked at Philo rather annoyed. Philo looked back at Raftalia and retorted, I got it first. Me, no, me, no, me, me. Naruto sighed as he picked up fruit. He saw a new shield pop up, Bio Plant Shield. Naruto saw the skill that came with it, Plant Modification. Naruto added magic to the seed using his skill and threw them to the ground. The seeds immediately took root and grew into a tree with a bulb that has yet to bloom. Naruto watched as the plant quickly withered and died and Yoruichi walked up holding a basket of fruit, Naruto-sama, what are you trying to do? Raftalia came walking up with Philo holding the fruits in their baskets. Naruto looked at Yoruichi and replied, I got a skill that allows me to modify plants. I tried to change the seed, but with no success. I don't wanna try chakra, it might make the plant monster thing even stronger. 
Back quote back quote back quote back quote back quote back in the village. They arrived at the front gates with the chief and the town's people greeting Naruto and his party, thank you so much, our savior, no, shield hero. Naruto nodded his head giving them a small smile, the monster is dead, the vines are all that's needed to be cleaned up. Naruto gestured to everyone, come, let's all get some rest alright. Naruto let a small yawn out as he went to the wagon. He hopped in and changed his shield to a small one, which was much more manageable when wanting to sleep. When Naruto went to bed he looked up at the white cloth of the wagon. Philo slept on his right side in her human form, while Raftalia was sleeping on his left side close to him. Naruto lifted his head to see Yoruichi sleeping peacefully on her own on the side. Naruto laid his head back down and wondered to himself, how things were going with Kasumi. There has been so much going on, that he hasn't had time to stop and think. Naruto turned his head to Raftalia to see her sleeping form. He leaned forward and placed a kiss on Raftalia's forehead. I wonder, how fall we'll go, what lies ahead for us? Backquote 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 Spear Heroes Party A girl was alone in a stable and plopped herself on some hay. She had bright blonde hair and reddish brown eyes. She was a very well endowed girl with floppy dog ears on her head and a blonde tail. The girl was wearing a white short sleeved, no shoulder strap, blue top with a green overall outfit that went over her shoulders. She had leather buckles at her midsection that also showed off her belly and green pants. A. N. I am using Roxanne's description from Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World. She had a clear slave crest on her chest. Motoyasu smiled and said, Please, if there is anything you need. Don't hesitate to call me, okay. I'll come running in to save ya. I can take care of myself, the wolf demi-human replied with an annoyed look on her face. Mine walked in, come on Motoyasu-sama, let's go try out the hot springs. She may be new, but don't ignore me over her. Motoyasu sighed and rubbed the back of his head, well, if anything call for me, okay Roxanne-chan. Are we sure we can't ask her to join us mine? Motoyasu waved as he walked off and mine stood by. Kasumi turned her head away, no thank you, I'm fine here. Kasumi immediately shut Motoyasu down. The now named Roxanne looked at mine annoyed, don't give me that look you stupid demi-human. You're lucky that Motoyasu-sama even decided to purchase you. The only thing you're good for is being our shield. If you die you die. Be thankful for his charity, after all, we did go through the trouble of purchasing you this nice place to stay at. Mine chuckled as she shut the doors and laughed walking away. Kasumi growled out annoyed she hugged her knees to her chest. She looked down annoyed. Naruto, Naruto Oni-chan, if that's you, please, come save me. Kasumi looked down as tears ran down her cheeks. Please, come save me. Backquote 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 with Naruto mourning. Please, come save me. Naruto shot up from his sleep as he held his hand onto his face. He let out rapid breaths as sweat ran down his face. Naruto, felt his heart racing while hurting as well, I I'm sorry, Kasumi, I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough back then. Naruto sighed as he created a shadow clone and replaced himself with it. That way he didn't wake anyone up. Naruto went outside and found the sun was slowly rising. He stomped his foot on the ground as small hole opened up. Raftalia came walking out realizing her boyfriend left the wagon, Naruto-sama, what are you doing? Naruto dropped some seeds onto the ground, he had clones working during the night for him. Naruto covered the hole up, check what my clones figured out. Naruto sent the magic and chakra into the seed. A stem began to grow, and the sun began to rise from the horizon lighting up the wagon that Philo and Yoruichi were sleeping in. Naruto and Raftalia watched as the plants grew to a normal height and bore fruit. There were no monsters that came from the plant, it worked. Philo then walked over and smiled, whoa, these look yummy. Before Naruto knew it all the villagers came by and Naruto explained what he did, I went ahead and adjusted the seed. I increased their growth rate while notching the mutation potential. I lowered it to about nothing, about 0.02% meaning they'll mutate for only weather conditions. Their growth rate was knocked down a significant amount too. I did increase the fruit growth and productivity of the plant. Naruto turned to the chief who looked in awe, 
you'll never run out of food again, and never have to worry about famine. The chief cheered out thankfully, thank you so much, Sir Hero. Not only did you save us from danger but gave us a way to sustain ourselves. Naruto smiled and looked back at the plants, like they say, hunt and farm for a man and feed him for a day. Teach a man to hunt and farm, and they'll be fed for life. Naruto looked at the other seeds, why don't we cut a deal with the seeds, I'll sell some of them to you. If you can't pay for it, why don't you pay me using some of your goods? So, we'll exchange the fruits among us equally and you'll buy fruits with fruits. Regardless, they should grow well within the time before you run out. Yoruichi watched from the wagon as she leaned her cheek on the side of it. She smiled watching Naruto as the sun rays gently ran across his face. Yoruichi sat up and felt her heartbeat increase, for whatever reason, it reminded her of what he said to her. When she told her life story to him, and how he comforted her. Promised her to find the people who did this to her and see if her old master was still alive. Backquote 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 on the road back to Hikwal. Yoruichi looked at Naruto as she sat in the back of the wagon with him, who the heck is going to eat all of these? They'll rot by the time we get to them. Yoruichi threw one into her mouth munching on it. Naruto took a bite out one too, well, Philo loves them a lot and we can always snack on them from time to time. Though I think Hikwal might find a person to buy them. After about a couple of hours of travel, they arrive at Hikwal's house. They were all inside with him as he inspected the seed, I see, what an interesting seed you have here. It's very impressive, I'll gladly buy it, including the produce. Naruto smiled, he looked over to Philo as she laid on top of a basket, we'll keep one, that way Philo and us can munch on some of them before they all go. Yeah, thank you, Naruto-sama. Philo ran up and wrapped her arms around his neck. She nudged her soft cheeks onto Naruto's. Naruto patted her head, anything for you guys. Hikwal continued and said, you placed several attractive products to create an advantage in the trading business. I love how you work Shield Hiro-sama or should I say shield Wakaioji? Naruto waved his hands quickly, please Hikwal none of that, Naruto is just fine. I see, I see, no worries Naruto-sama, it's a pleasure dealing business with you. Hikwal turned to get some papers, but he stopped and turned back to Naruto, oh Naruto-sama if I may I heard some interesting news as of lately. Naruto raised an eyebrow waiting for Hikwal to continue, it's on your way there and I think they're still there, but I have a request for a delivery. There is a hot springs town not too far from here, it's about 4 hours south of here. Naruto nodded his head, yeah, we can take the mission, but what's the other information? Naruto crossed his arms over his chest. Hikwal chuckled and said, well I heard that the spear hero has acquired a demi-human within his party. He simply shrugged his shoulders, but the interesting thing is the demi-human talked to one of my connections. She requested that she deliver a message to you it was for Naruto Uzumaki, Namikaze, that's all she said, was your name. Naruto looked at Hikwal floored by the news, Yoruichi and Philo both look at Naruto. He stood there frozen in shock, H how do you know the name? N Namikaze, T that was my two chan's last name. Hikwal shrugged his shoulders, again I don't know. The girl was a demi-human. She was described as having blonde hair, reddish chestnut brown eyes, and a voluptuous figure. Do you know her? Did you catch her name? Naruto asked as he seemed almost to jump out of his seat, he was mere inches from Hikwal's face. He shook his head, no, I'm sorry about that, do you know her? Naruto sat back down and coughed into his hands, s sorry, it's just, surprising to think that someone I used to know is here, but who? Philo looked at Naruto curiously, but Raftalia moved in and wrapped her arm around Naruto. She moved in and kissed him on the lips, this seemingly snapped Naruto back to reality, are you okay? Naruto-sama, Hikwal was surprised, but again not surprised, he wondered just how close Naruto and Raftalia were. Naruto smiled as he gently pulled her into a side hug, thank you, Raftalia, Naruto stood up, Yoruichi, Philo, Raftalia. Let's get going. Right. They all shouted excitedly. Backquote, 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 backquote. Hot Spring Town Naruto and his party arrived two hours later with Philo doing her best to haul ass without breaking the goods. 
The group met up with the buyer who was dressed up as a maid. Great. The order is complete. Thank you for your business. See you. She handed Naruto the money as he stowed the money away into a seal. Naruto turned around as Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Philo came walking up to Naruto. Naruto closed his eyes and absorbed the nature chakra. Naruto entered sage mode, he turned his head to the southeast and sensed Motoyasu and his party. Naruto gestured to the girls, come follow me. The shield party began to run following Naruto to see where the spear hero's party was at. Naruto then stopped as they came face to face with Motoyasu, mine, some girls, and one dog demi-human. Naruto turned off sage mode before they got there and stared at the demi-human slave that was with them. Motoyasu looked at Naruto annoyed, what the hell are you doing here? Criminal scum, he swung his spear from the left to the right. Naruto ignored the idiot and turned to the dog demi-human. Naruto didn't recognize her at all, she didn't fit anyone's description that he knew, oh, I I I thought. Naruto watched as the dog demi-human placed her hands on her mouth and looked at Naruto in shock. Her tail behind her began to wag and tears formed at the corner of her eyes. The demi-human girl ran forwards with her arms extended out. Before anyone knew what was going on, Naruto was tackled to the ground. Naruto, who hit his head, winced in pain, he lifted his head to see the demi-human on top of him once again. Raftalia was not happy about that one bit, and Naruto-sama. You, get off of Naruto-sama. This instant, Philo shook her fist into the air, yeah, off of Naruto-sama. However, the dog demi-human ignored the two, she leaned forward with tears in her eyes, it's been so long, so, so many years. I can't believe you've grown. Naruto-ni-chan, oni-chan. Oh, Kasumi leaned forward and hugged Naruto tightly, not letting Naruto go. Naruto, who was frozen didn't hug back right away. He slowly sat up as the girl continued to hold him, but something clicked within Naruto, W wait, it's not possible. I I, S she died, I in my arms, that's impossible, S she, she, K Kasumi, I is that you, Naruto hugged back tightly as tears began to run down his cheek, he began to tighten his hold on Kasumi. Raftalia's eyes widen as she relaxed at the same time. Yoruichi realized who she was, while Philo was clueless. Raftalia had tears begin streaming down her cheeks along with Yoruichi, this was a sight to behold. Yes, it is, Oni-chan, it is me, Naruto, I've missed you so much. Kasumi cheered out as tears began to run down her cheeks, she didn't want to let go. She internally begged, that if this was a dream, was to not wake her up. Please don't wake her up, let her stay let her stay forever. Just then Naruto felt Kasumi flinch in pain as purple electricity shot off from her body. Naruto looked in horror as Kasumi began to flinch in pain. Naruto could tell that the setting of the curse mark was at level 3, a level Naruto never went to. Naruto angrily looked over to see Mine, standing there with an angry look on her face. Motoyasu looked at Mine confused, wait, Mine, I thought I was her owner. Mine shook her head, you still are, but for now I took the reins. Motoyasu bought the lie as he rubbed the back of his head. Just then before anyone could move mine found Naruto in front of her. Naruto stared at her with his own eyes wide, mine stared at Naruto's eyes in shock. Naruto's eyes were filled with rage, anger, and hatred, and yet Naruto show no trace of the said emotion on his face. Before mine could say anything she found herself flying into the wall. Bam. A loud smack went off as a ripple came out from the impact of where mine was slammed into. Mine's eyes widen in pain, as she spat out blood, and more kept coming from her mouth. Blood ran down the side of mine's face. She could not move, could not talk, and found breathing to be very painful. Mine looked up and saw lots of red as her blood covered her face. She was losing consciousness, mine looked over to see Motoyasu running over towards calling out for her, mine. Mine, mine looked back to Naruto as he stared at her with a hateful look in his eyes. A look promising her that he would make her life horrible, so horrible to the point that she would want to end her own life. She watched as Naruto walked over to Kasumi, he took out his shield. He created the slave shield and used his knowledge of the slave crest and fuinjutsu. He broke their slave contact, and mine's vision began to darken, 
but not before she saw Naruto stare at her. His hair covered his face, he stood there holding Kasumi in his arms like a princess who was passed out. Naruto lifted his head slightly to the right as his right eye began to glow red. Three spinning black tomos appeared around his red eyes and black iris, then his eyes changed into a beautiful flower pattern. Everything changed when she heard him call out, Suku Yomi. Chapter 4 Prince Consort Last Chapter Naruto, who was frozen didn't hug back right away. He slowly sat up as the girl continued to hold him, but something clicked within Naruto, W wait, it's not possible. I I, S she died, I in my arms, that's impossible, S she, she, K Kasumi, I is that you, Naruto hugged back tightly as tears began to run down his cheek, he began to tighten his hold on Kasumi. Raftalia's eyes widened as she relaxed at the same time. Yoruichi realized who she was, while Philo was clueless. Raftalia had tears begin streaming down her cheeks along with Yoruichi, this was a sight to behold. Yes, it is, Oni-chan, it is me, Naruto, I've missed you so much. Kasumi cheered out as tears began to run down her cheeks, she didn't want to let go. She internally begged, that if this was a dream, was to not wake her up. Please don't wake her up, let her stay, let her stay forever. Just then Naruto felt Kasumi flinch in pain as purple electricity shot off from her body. Naruto looked in horror as Kasumi began to flinch in pain. Naruto could tell that the setting of the curse mark was at level 3, a level Naruto never went to. Naruto angrily looked over to see Mine, standing there with an angry look on her face. Motoyasu looked at Mine confused, wait, Mine, I thought I was her owner. Mine shook her head, you still are, but for now I took the reins. Motoyasu bought the lie as he rubbed the back of his head. Just then before anyone could move Mine found Naruto in front of her. Naruto stared at her with his own eyes wide, Mine stared at Naruto's eyes in shock. Naruto's eyes were filled with rage, anger, and hatred, and yet Naruto showed no trace of the said emotion on his face. Before Mine could say anything, she found herself flying into the wall. Bam! A loud smack went off as a ripple came out from the impact of where Mine was slammed into. Mine's eyes widened in pain, as she spat out blood, and more kept coming from her mouth. Blood ran down the side of Mine's face. She could not move, could not talk, and found breathing to be very painful. Mine looked up and saw lots of red as her blood covered her face. She was losing consciousness, Mine looked over to see Motoyasu running over towards calling out for her, Mine. Mine. Mine looked back to Naruto as he stared at her with a hateful look in his eyes. A look promising her that he would make her life horrible, so horrible to the point that she would want to end her own life. She watched as Naruto walked over to Kasumi, he took out his shield. He created the slave shield and used his knowledge of the slave crest and fuinjutsu. He broke their slave contact, and Mine's vision began to darken, but not before she saw Naruto stare at her. His hair covered his face, he stood there holding Kasumi in his arms like a princess who was passed out. Naruto lifted his head slightly to the right as his right eye began to glow red. Three spinning black tomos appeared around his red eyes and black iris, then his eyes changed into a beautiful flower pattern. Everything changed when she heard him call out, Suku Yomi. Backquote 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 this chapter Suku Yomi world. Multi looked around in shock, she looked up, down, left, and right. The world around her was in black and white, where the hell am I? Where did you go, you damn demon? Multi growled out angrily, she raised her hand to make a fist. However, she looked at her hand and found it to be a stub. Her arterial blood shouts out of her arm in spurts, Multi's eyes wide beginning to shake, w what, what the, h how, am I, ah. Just then a hand was placed over her mouth, geez, you're so damn annoying, also god damn infuriating. Multi looked up as Naruto stood there in front of her with Sasuke's M's glaring down at her, of all the things, you dare to do such a thing to my little sister. Especially after we reunited after she was taken from me. Naruto raised his hand and gripped it tightly. Naruto threw his hand to the side as Multi fell to the ground the mouth that was over her mouth was gone. She quickly lifted her hand to find her hand back on her right arm, M my, how did you, 
Just then something began to pour from Maldi's mouth and she quickly threw up. However, when she looked at the stuff on the ground, she looked at it in disgust, W what the hell is, blarg. Malti hunched over throwing up even more than before. Naruto simply says, nothing much, just the amount of fucking dick juice you keep sucking off from Motoyasu, that's all. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest, I've been enjoying this so very much so far, I know I may have removed Kasumi's slave crest. I will be but merciful just this once and only once. I will give you the money for her. Ten gold, nothing more nothing less, is that a deal? Malti sat up as she caught her breath, and glared daggers at Naruto, you damn criminal. Don't talk to me like you're better than me. Naruto pointed his finger at her, oh, I see how it is. Naruto snapped his fingers, and black and red figures of demi-humans appeared around Malti. Malti looked left and right, she tried to run away, but found herself immobilized, w what the? Malti looked down to see that her legs were chopped off, m my legs. h how? Malti however felt no pain at all from her missing limbs. Naruto on the side was holding a sword in his hand, you won't need those for right now. Naruto snapped his fingers as a wooden table appeared beneath Malti. Malti was hoisted up on the table, and leather clasps clamped over Malti's arms. Hey, let me go, what the hell is this world? Let me out, let me out, Malti screamed out with a panicking look on her face. Just then a voice that came from the black and red beings that appeared before spoke, Malti. Don't worry, I'll come to save you. They both took a step forward, but what Malti saw was not Motoyasu, yet it was. It was Motoyasu but he had a monkey face with ears, and a tail swaying behind him. Malti realized that Motoyasu was a demi-human, no, no, stay away you damn, no, I it's Motoyasu-sama, B but you're a demi-human, H how how. Malti watched as the others surrounded her with stupid monkey looks on their faces. Naruto smiled. Come now dear Malti, it's your precious Motoyasu-sama. So please, make sure to please him with that body of yours. Naruto turned to walk away and he disappeared, and Malti watched helplessly as the Motoyasu demi-humans had their way with her. For Malti, it felt like hours passed as she screamed out, Please. Save me. Please someone get this filthy demi-human off me. Malti couldn't stand it. These demi-humans that looked like Motoyasu did what they wanted to her. Just then Malti stopped and smiled like a crazy woman, please. Save me, Sir Shield Hero. You're a hero, right? S -s save me, save me, please. I'll do anything, just save me. Malti screamed out in terror. She tried to break through the restraints that kept her down. Naruto who was floating above her had his arms crossed over his chest. Only Naruto's glowing red eyes were visible, only his silhouette was visible for her to see. Naruto simply chuckled, hey, and save you. I'm no hero remember, I'm a criminal, so I do things the way I want, if you think about it, in this world, I am not a king, I am not a hero, I am not a criminal. In here, I am God. Malti's lips began to shake and she tried to worm her way out of the board she was tied down to, s so, please. L let me devote myself to you. Please, please have mercy on your servant. I'll worship you every day to you. I. Naruto stuck his finger out and pointed at her as the M's began to spin, and a god's job is to make their sinners repent, and repent you shall. Now don't worry, you still have 71 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds of repenting. Perk up. It'll be over before you know it. Backquote, 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 end of Sukuyomi. Once Naruto placed Malti under his genjutsu he quickly turned back to Kasumi. Ignoring everyone and everything around him. Naruto placed a hand on her cheek. Kasumi, hey Kasumi wake up. Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Philo were completely silent. The three have never seen Naruto get so angry before and show so much of his strength before. The fact that the girl is still alive, tells an entire book about how much Naruto held back. The girls looked down as the reincarnated twin sister of Naruto slowly opened her eyes. She looked up and smiled as she placed a hand over Naruto's hand that was on her cheek. She leaned into it, Naruto ni, is that you? Is it you? Naruto smiled as a tear ran down his cheeks, Naruto felt as if weights of planets were lifted off his shoulder. Naruto nodded his head as he leaned his head down, 
Kasumi, I I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Naruto had warm tears run down the side of his cheeks and they dribbled onto Kasumi's face. Kasumi gently rubbed Naruto's hand and brought her other hand up and gently rubbed Naruto's cheek. My dear Nisan, you must have been through so much. It must have been hard. Kasumi smiled happily as Naruto began to hug her tighter. It felt as if the world stopped moving, and the two twins reunited in this crazy world. Somehow, by some chance, the two came together again. Some people would call it fate, some people would call it a coincidence. Fuck all people who thought that, this, this was meant to be, it was going to happen. Whatever it was, by whatever twisted turn of events, some crazy outcome. Naruto was so glad, he was holding his sister in his arms again. Nothing would become between him and them again, never. If anyone dared, they'd suffer the wrath of Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the one who saved his world, the one who will save this one. He'll do it by any means, even if it means killing some people and stripping the crown of all its power. He'll do it, he'll do it, just like how his father took out Iwa. Only this time, he'll do it using a Chibaku Tensai. Naruto slowly broke their hug and smiled, Come, let's us find a new place to rest, I'll make sure to clothe you, feed you, and care for you, just like we did back in Konoha. You're home Kasumi, welcome home. Kasumi reached up and placed her hands on Naruto's face, I'm glad to be back. Kasumi tilted her head to the side and smiled brightly. Naruto waved his hands around which placed Kasumi into a sleep. Naruto stood up and picked her bridal style and created a shadow clone. Naruto handed his clone Kasumi. Naruto turned to Motoyasu who came walking back with Maldi on his back. Motoyasu looked at Naruto with actual fear in his eyes, um Naruto. Look Kasumi belongs to us, why did you just take her? Not only that but we did buy her. Just then the queen's shadow even landed next to Motoyasu with another two. I must concur, you did attack the princess of the crown. It seems you know the demi-human Roxanne, but the spear hero party did buy her legally. Naruto closed his eyes and opened them, he sighed and rubbed the back of his head. Naruto walked forward, I won't do anything. Naruto's eyes morphed into the M's and placed Motoyasu in a genjutsu to allow him to control him. Naruto had Motoyasu lay Maldi down, Naruto turned to the shadow, you may relay this to the queen, but I shan't do this often. Don't expect me to do this for free ya no. I am willing to pay for Roxanne, what I am going to say might sound crazy. But Roxanne, is Kasumi, my sister, she reincarnated as Roxanne. Naruto's body was engulfed in a powerful golden charka with six black truth-seeking orbs behind him. Naruto extended his hand out and placed his right hand on Maldi. Naruto sent a small bit of chakra to heal her wounds and the mental stress he caused her, though, I will admit I acted rashly and lashed out due to my emotions. Her real name is Kasumi Uzumaki Namikaze, but it seems she reincarnated into this new world as a demi-human. Naruto then dropped his six path sage mode and the three shadows continued to stare at Naruto in awe. Another shadow then landed next to the leader and whispered into her ear. The leader of the shadow looks up at Naruto and says, Naruto-sama, the queen has asked for your presence. We will recall the spear hero along with Maldi. Your party and Kasumi will be brought to the castle as well. Naruto released the genjutsu on Motoyasu allowing him to snap back to reality. He looked down at Maldi and saw that she was completely healed. Naruto then said, I healed her, I'll admit I may have gone overboard. Naruto turned around and left to walk back to his party. Naruto might have to explain to the queen, someone who he doesn't even know, about why he attacked her daughter and the spear hero for almost no reason, as well as taking their slave without asking and even dispersing the slave crest. Naruto will admit he acted how the king and Maldi tried to do to him. Naruto just got so angry, that he lashed out, and understands he was in the wrong. At least just for this go around. But that doesn't mean he feels guilty about it. The bitch and dumbass got what they deserved, they had it coming for a long time. Queen's Palace Naruto and his party made their way to the palace which was about an hour away. Before everyone knew it, everyone was sitting in a room waiting. Raftalia and Yoruichi were standing guard next to Kasumi as she slept on the bed. Philo simply sat on the edge of the bed and kicked her feet back and forth. Naruto stood by a window, 
he felt uncomfortable being in a castle like this. Just then the door opened with the queen's shadow walking in, Naruto-sama, the queen requests your presence along with your party. Naruto stood up and walked over to Kasumi, he knelt over and placed a hand on her head. Naruto released her from the genjutsu, and she simply opened her eyes. Kasumi's eyes fluttered and they focused on the person standing above her. Kasumi saw Naruto's blonde hair and whiskers, tears began to form once again. She shot up and wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck, it wasn't a dream. It truly wasn't a dream. Thank Kami. The queen's shadow watched quietly as Naruto wrapped his arms around Kasumi. Kasumi simply tucked her head in his chest and Naruto gently rubbed her back, it wasn't a dream, it's real, I am real, so don't fret. I am not leaving you, not ever, we'll be together now and forever. Now come, the queen wants to speak with me. Naruto pulled Kasumi to her feet, she stood up next to Naruto. She stretched her hand out and took Naruto's hand, she didn't want to let go. The group was escorted down the halls into a room. Naruto expected to be taken to a throne room, but he was taken to her quarters instead. The shadow knocked on the queen's door, Queen Morelia-sama, Naruto-sama is here with his party. Come in, the voice behind the door called out. The group walked in, and then the shadow disappeared. Naruto looked towards the window and Queen Morelia smiled and opened her fan over her mouth, how very astute, then again not surprising. You seem to be of a much higher caliber than many adventurers and even the other three cardinal heroes. Naruto turned to her and answered back, Yes, I can sense where they all are. They're hidden good, but they can't get past me. Naruto was on edge, and Queen Morelia could see that. Kasumi who was holding Naruto's hand could feel how tense he is. Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Philo stayed silent when in the presence of the queen. The queen chuckled a bit as she folded her fan away. Naruto's eyes widened a bit when he saw the face that belonged to the Queen of Melromark. Morelia is a beautiful, fair-skinned woman with purple hair tied in a bob with collarbone-length bangs, purple eyes, and pale purple lipstick. She is normally in her intricately decorated royal gown, with what appears to be a bronze breastplate. Naruto could tell she has a regal presence that commands the attention of everyone around her. Oh, did the shield prince just give me a once-over? Queen Morelia giggled which caused Naruto to blush. W what? N no, no, just a I didn't expect you to be this pretty, Naruto turned to the side as he muttered, I can see where Maldi got her looks, but her personality is much to be desired. Oh, I quite concur, Maldi's looks are good. However, once you learn about her true nature underneath, Queen Morelia opened her fan to fan herself, can be much to be desired, now, let me introduce myself. I am Morelia Q. Melromark, a pleasure to meet you. Naruto nodded his head and added back, I am Naruto Uzumaki, Namikaze, this is my party. Raftalia is the Tanuki, Yoruichi the Nako, Philo in the white dress, and Kasumi. My long lost sister from my previous world. Morelia watched everyone closely, she saw how Kasumi looked at the ground. She held onto Naruto's hand tightly, she was scared they will try to pull them apart. Morelia closed her eyes and then reopened them, I must say it is a pleasure to meet all of you. I'm glad you found such trustworthy allies, I also commend you for searching out your sister. I'm sure it was hard to live knowing she died back in your world. I was informed she was, reincarnated and her birth parents here named her Roxanne. Queen Morelia looked to Kasumi waiting for her answer. Kasumi spoke up as she looked up, why yes, I am Kasumi Uzumaki, Namikaze, but here I am Roxanne Yeager. My Otu-san and Okaa-san passed a long time ago, and I was sold into slavery. I see. Morelia turned and walked towards the window looking outside, I understand what my ex-husband Altkray and Maldi tried to do to you. Especially when they tried to take Raftalia away from you. Morelia then turned to Naruto and sighed, she shook her head, then you heard wind that they also procured a demi-human, yes. Naruto nodded his head, a merchant I have close ties to told me he received word about someone searching for me. They so happened to be in the area where I was delivering a product for him too. Naruto moved his hand that was holding Kasumi's hand up to her shoulders. He pulled Kasumi close, long story short, I took off as soon as possible. We found the spear hero party there, as well with Kasumi or Roxanne since that's her name here. 
Morelia raised an eyebrow and then asked, Okay, I would like to believe in you, is there any way you can prove that she is indeed your reincarnated sister? Morelia wasn't trying to be cold, but this girl could be playing with Naruto's heartstrings. Naruto nodded his head and turned to Morelia as his eyes morphed into the M's. Naruto said, I'll pull everyone but Kasumi into this, Sukuyomi. Then turned to his party to pull them all in, but Kasumi was. Naruto waited for a few seconds, in the Sukuyomi world, he had everyone dive into memories of himself to clarify what happened. Before they knew it, a second passed until everyone returned to their bodies and woke up. Morella's eyes blinked for a moment, and she began to mull over the new information she got, I see, how rather fascinating. Naruto, I must give my condolences for that, I'm sure it was hard, for you to have to live through that. Naruto simply showed Morelia his memories up until Kasumi passed away. Morelia turned to Naruto and asked, Kasumi, can you tell me where you both lived? We lived in apartment A floor 6, Gigi Chan paid for our apartment. Kasumi quickly answered as she looked at the queen sternly. It seems she was going to ask questions about their past together. Name of the Sandame Hokage. Here is an Gigi Chan. Your academy instructor, Mizuki and Aruka Yumino Sensei. Mizuki became a traitor, Naruto added Kasumi's eyes widen, I'll explain later. Morelia continued, name of the two people at Ichiraku Ramen. Kasumi answered, Toichi Jiji Chan, Ayame Ne Chan, Kasumi smiled thinking back on them. Morelia smiled, all of those answers were honest and true. There was no hesitation in her answers, though Morelia decided to tease Kasumi a bit, alright can you answer who Naruto's first kiss was? Kasumi began to blush and turned away, I didn't know what kissing meant. I thought family did that normally. Wait, Naruto ni you showed them. Kasumi hid her face in Naruto's shirt and began to lightly beat on Naruto's chest, you big dummy. Baka, 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 Raftalia simply puffed her cheeks out and crossed her arms over her chest. Yoruichi seemingly felt a little annoyed too, but then again, they were alone their entire childhood lives wouldn't be surprised if Kasumi felt something towards Naruto. Morelia let a chuckle out, but then she began to laugh out loud. This shocked everyone as Morelia quickly did her best to pull herself together. Morelia took a few deep breaths and shook her head, all right, I confirmed it, Roxanne, you are indeed Kasumi Uzumaki Namikaze. I am willing to overlook the actions you took against Malti and Motoyasu, in all honestly, I think they both needed a wake-up call. Morelia continued to walk towards the door passing Naruto, now please, follow me, I have people waiting in the throne room. I have an important announcement to make. The group followed the queen as Naruto looked at the queen rather strangely. She acted more like a teenage girl or something, yet she still held her authoritative aura. Backquote 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 throne room. Everyone arrived at the room, and Naruto saw that it was just Motoyasu and Malti there. Though Naruto could sense a bunch of the queen's shadow all over the place. Malti looked at Naruto as she took a step back, she was still rather rattled from what happened in the genjutsu. Though, for some reason, it felt as if it wasn't even real. Naruto though made sure to heal the mental damage but made sure to change her memory of the genjutsu. For now, he'll admit he went overboard. But he doesn't regret it. He could easily reverse what he did at a flip of a dime. Naruto stood to the left of Motoyasu and Malti with his party on the left. Motoyasu and Malti stayed quiet, this was the longest they ever stayed quiet with Naruto around. Morelia went to her throne and sat down, all right, we're here today because of a certain issue at hand. I was told of recent events of what happened. I must ask, Morelia turned to Motoyasu, spear hero, Motoyasu, what was your reasoning for procuring a slave as a member of your party? Motoyasu answered, well, it was because I wanted to prove to Raftalia that Slave has a spot in my party. That I wasn't wrong with what Naruto has been trying to do to her. I wanted to show that I could provide and care for a slave better than the criminal before us. Raftalia pipped up, be quiet. You're just taking my words for what I said and try it yourself. To make yourself look like a better person. This infuriated Raftalia and make her happy, it was clear enough that Kasumi wasn't happy with Motoyasu. Morelia grew quite agitated by Motoyasu's words, then Maldi grew a pair to try to fight back, yeah. 
We gave her food, clothing, and a place to stay. A demi-human like her should be grateful for Motoyasu-sama's gratitude. Naruto grit his teeth. He wasn't surprised idiots like them don't ever learn. Besides, that girl, Motoyasu looked at Philo as he was shocked, whoa. Wait, you're like an angel, Motoyasu rushed towards Philo as he got on one knee, look at you. You're so cute, Motoyasu grew serious, what's your name? Philo, Philo glared at Motoyasu, she doesn't like this guy. Philo-chan, Motoyasu grabbed Philo's left hand and gently held it, I bet Naruto makes you work like a horse, doesn't he? Philo smiled and said, I love pulling the carriage. Motoyasu gripped his fist angrily, you swine. You're making her pull the wagon like that fat bird. Motoyasu stood up and pointed his spear at Naruto, you swine. I'll. Naruto grew angry for Motoyasu calling his Philo fat, but a certain, angel, didn't take being called so kindly. Philo's hair covered her eyes, you, called me fat. Just then a bunch of smoke covered the room as Philo transformed into her Philoleal form. Morelia looked at Philo in shock. Philo's eyes were white, narrowed, and gave off an angry look on her face, you called me fat. I hate you, Spear Bakayaro. Motoyasu looked up at Philo in shock, w what? Why your T that fat by? Motoyasu didn't get to finish as Philo swung her right talon right into Motoyasu's jewels. Motoyasu's, protective plates, went flying off as he crashed into the throne room wall. Naruto held his hand out angrily as his hands made a swinging motion towards Malti, fool. Gravity picked up Motoyasu and flung him towards Malti as he fell to her feet. Morelia was still surprised and completely overwhelmed by the fact that Philo was a Philoleal. Naruto saw Morelia staring at Philo in shock and a rather childlike look on her face. Naruto raised an eyebrow as Morelia quickly coughed into her hand. She reeled herself back in, ahem. I think that is quite enough of this. Morelia swung her left hand to the right. Malti quickly stood at attention from her mother's booming words. Motoyasu slowly stood up to his feet with his knees still knocking together, but mother. That stupid fat bird. Enough. Morelia shouted out which made Malti freeze up. Morella glared down at her firstborn daughter. I've already heard quite enough from your side. I don't need to know much to already put the pieces of the puzzle together. Motoyasu weakly said, S so, that means Roxanne will be returned to us right? Morelia looked towards Roxanne, and asked, Roxanne, or Kasumi, was it? Would you like to go back to the Spear Hero Party? Morelia gestured to Motoyasu and Malti, as she then gestured to Naruto, or stay with the shield. Naruto ni, I want to stay with Naruto ni. There was no hesitation in Kasumi's voice as she quickly turned to Naruto and shoved her face into his chest. Naruto wrapped his arms protectively around her, he wouldn't dare let anyone lay a finger on her. If someone tried, they better start praying to whatever their god is. You traitorous demi-human, how dare you, Malti screamed out angrily as she looked at Kasumi staring daggers at her. Morelia slammed her fist onto the arm of her throne, causing cracks to appear on the ground. Silence at once Maldi. Morelia stood up and began walking towards her daughter as Maldi tried to argue. But mother, that criminal, that damn demi-human, I outa. Malti was glaring hateful looks at Naruto and his party. She was going to make sure that demi-human would be punished severely. Slap a smacking sound rang out in the throne room as Maldi's face was turned to her left. Courtesy of Queen Morelia's left hand, I said that is enough Maldi. How many more times will you keep disrespecting another person who is of noble birth? As well as my orders. I don't know where you got your arrogance. But that is enough. You already caused a tremendous amount of damage. Morella threw her hand into the air. Take her and the spear hero back to Melromark this instant. I can't stand to see her face. Let it be known that spear hero is nothing but a brainless idiot and a dog who follows around Maldi. Let it be known that Malti is nothing but a conniving traitor. I'll descend my verdict on your and Altcray on another date. Naruto could see the sadness in Queen Morelia's eyes as she disowned her daughter. Malti, you and your father are to be stripped of your royal status. Your father has also been removed as king. He is no longer my husband either. He has disgraced me in this kingdom far too many times now. Morella turned and began to walk out of the throne room. Shield hero, you may continue on your journey. 
But before you leave, spend the night, I wish to have dinner with you and your party. Queen Morelia turned her head to Naruto, his party, Malti, and Motoyasu with her arms opening doors, I'll have maids set up rooms, and make sure you're comfortable. I will need you to return to the castle within a week for my foolish family to stand trial. Shadows, take the spear hero and Malti to the kingdom at once. They appeared next to Malti and Motoyasu and said, Yes milady. They placed a hand on their shoulders and teleported them away. Naruto and his party's eyes widened at that, Naruto had to admit by now that Queen Morelia was no pushover. She even was placing her own family on trial for their actions. She was a strong woman indeed, in heart and mind. Yet, he could still see the pain in her eyes to make her daughter succumb to this. She must be disappointed as a mother, she must feel like she failed as a leader, a wife, and as a mother. Naruto for whatever reason felt empathy for the queen. Though he was sure she would want none of it. Just then a woman came walking back into the throne room. She was wearing what looked like a general's uniform, and Naruto could tell she was relatively strong. She has butt-length strawberry blonde hair that has a chest-length hair strand hanging on the right side, blue eyes and she has a face that could rival Raftalia's, Yoruichi's, and even Kasumi's beauty. The woman placed her right hand over the left part of her chest. She gave a polite bow, Hello Naruto Wakai Oji, my name is Eclair Sieto. I am the queen's second in command, a pleasure to meet you. Naruto waved it off, please, Naruto is just fine Eclair. Is there something we can help you with? Eclair once again placed her hand over the left side of her body, I've heard how strong you were, I've also heard you've yet to have your members get a class up. What do you think? Naruto looked at everyone's level once again, Raftalia was still at level 40, Yoruichi was at 39, and Philo was also at 39. Naruto placed a hand on his cheek, well, Philo and Yoruichi are right now sitting at 39, level 40 seems to be the level cap until they do a class up. Eclair clapped her hands together, well we have time before dinner will come around. Why don't we all do a little bit of grinding to get everyone up to speed? Naruto looked at Kasumi and asked, would you like to come with Kasumi? Kasumi nodded her head, it was nice to hear her old name be used again, yes. I am. Naruto had a party invite pop up for Kasumi. Once Kasumi said yes, she was added to his party. Not surprisingly Kasumi was only a level 18, it seems they haven't had her level up a lot. Though in the status magic, it said her name was Roxanne. That's probably because that was the name given to her when she was born. With Naruto's party, even Eclair joined in on the short little training that everyone did. Though, what everyone saw was rather different than usual. Raftalia, Yoruichi, Philo, and Eclair finished up with their short farm. Yoruichi and Philo got to the max level of 40 and now could do their class upgrade to move past their class level. Eclair got to see Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Philo in action. Their fighting styles similarly mirrored one another, not only that but they used strange techniques. Techniques that did not require magic or even incantations, at all didn't require any incantation. Once they finished their leveling up the group returned to meet up with Naruto. Though Raftalia was a little taken aback by the scene, Naruto was sitting next to Kasumi on the grass underneath a tree. Kasumi was sitting next to Naruto as she laid her head on Naruto's shoulder. The two were catching up and were lost in their world, wow, I can't believe that Jiraiya was our godfather, and Tsunade was our godmother. Kasumi smiled as she looked at her brother curiously, so, the fourth great shinobi war, you won and everything right. Naruto nodded his head, yeah, it was tough, but I'm here now. I met them. Naruto turned his head and pointed to Raftalia, and the others. Kasumi turned her head, she saw Naruto's friends come walking up, so, who are they? Well to you. Raftalia stepped forward and placed her hand over her chest, I am Raftalia, I am Naruto-sama's sword, his slave too. He's one of the most important people to me in the world. Philo ran over and slid on the ground cuddled up on the other side of Naruto, Naruto-sama is my Gushujin-sama too. I love him so very, very much. Philo nuzzles her face into Naruto's chest which made Kasumi raise an eyebrow rather shocked. Yoruichi walked over and placed a hand on her hip, we might not seem like much, but we're all in debt to Naruto-sama. He's taken such great care of us, Naruto-sama is important to me as well. 
Kasumi turned and let go of Naruto's arms and looked at them seriously. Naruto ni, why do they seem closer than a normal master and servant? Raftalia blushed as she turned her face to the side. As well as Yoruichi did, she was silent as well, she moved her arms behind her back. She lifted her foot and began to twist her toe into the ground. Raftalia placed a hand on her cheek and said, Well, a Naruto sama is my, my. A Claire looked at Naruto, Raftalia, and then Yoruichi. A Claire went back to look at Naruto as his face began to heat up. Well, Raftalia is my girlfriend, we're dating. Yoruichi and I are beginning to warm up to one another. She and I are still brand new to our new relationship. Naruto scratched his cheek sheepishly. Kasumi was happy for Naruto. I'm so glad. Thank you for watching out for Naruto ni. Kasumi's eyes opened slightly, and a small frown appeared on her face. She quickly shook it off and returned to her smiling. Raftalia and Yoruichi saw through Kasumi quite easily. She clearly might feel something more for Naruto. It was just a hunch, and the hunch was quite strong. It was clear that Kasumi would want Naruto right now. Kasumi definitely wouldn't mind if she got into a relationship with Naruto. They haven't related by blood anymore. Besides, she has been wanting to make Naruto happy. Ever since she could remember when they were kids. It was always Naruto who took care of her, and made sure she ate, was fed, clothed, bathed, and was healthy. Kasumi wanted to do something in return for her beloved ex-brother. Naruto stood up with Philo hanging on Naruto's neck, he moved his arms to support Philo as he held her. Come, it's late we should turn in for the night, we don't want to keep the queen waiting. Backquote 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 castle dinning room. Naruto and his party were seated at the table with the queen at the head of the table, which was direct to the right of Naruto. Naruto had from his left Kasumi, Raftalia, Yoruichi, Philo, and then Eclair was across from Naruto on the other side of the queen, so, might I ask why you decided to call me back to the castle? The queen who was already eating took a moment to chew and then swallow, it was when you attacked Malti and Motoyasu, it seemed unlike you to lash out like that. Then again, it almost sounds like they had it coming. With that said, there is something I've been aware of lately. Naruto raised an eyebrow out of curiosity, I've heard of a recent nearby village that was being plagued. Many are getting sick, some have already died. I've sent my best doctors and mages to find the cure, but no luck. Rumor has it, it's coming from something from the mountains, exactly where Ren Sama slayed a dragon. Naruto nodded his head, all right, is this something you would like for me to take a look into? Since I have a strong affinity for healing magic and such things. Ideally yes, I'll make sure to compensate you before you leave. I'm sure you'll succeed, I have no doubt. The queen resumed her meal as she listened to Kasumi talking. Whoa, that's so cool. So, Naruto ni really can mop the floor with everyone. Kasumi's ears twitched, and her tail wagged around excitedly. Hi, he's been teaching us well, he has us trained the way of a kunoichi. Raftalia took a bite of her meal, chewed, and swallowed. I've been practicing more on kenjutsu he calls it, he's been teaching me a style called the flying swallow. A technique he said that an anbu he knew named Nako used. That sword style was your Ka-san's original sword technique. Whoa, really? Kasumi turned to Naruto and smiled, so you know it don't you? Naruto nodded his head confirming it, yes, Yugao sensei taught me the sword style. I learned my fighting style using the from Kumite. I prefer to use hand to hand more anyways, I just haven't been able to pick up a sword because of the shield. Naruto took another bite of his meal once again. Cool. So, what techniques have you guys learned? Kasumi looked back at her fellow female party members. Philo cheered out. Naruto-sama taught me a bunch of wind jutsus. I also love using the Rasengan. Yoruichi nodded her head. Yes, Naruto's ama helped me learn my lighting assault mode as well as the Rasengan. Yoruichi turned to Naruto. Naruto-sama is a great teacher. I'm sure he'll do well to teach you as well. Naruto-sama is also helping me with genjutsus as well. I have an affinity for illusion magic so it makes sense. Raftalia took a bite of cake that was just placed down, um. Naruto-sama, try the cake it's so delicious. The group continued to talk as the queen got to learn more and more about her prince's consort. Naruto was a very interesting person, she was beginning to like him more and more. Though, 
She would love to get to know him on a personal level later. She is a busy woman. After all, the queen slowly stood up. It's been a lovely evening. Naruto-sama tomorrow morning I will have a Claire deliver your pay. I will see you back in the kingdom of Melromark in a week. So, Monday then, I must head off to bed. Naruto stood up with her and gave her a polite bow. Ah yes, please have a good night, and thank you for everything. Naruto and his party did the same thing which the queen was quite pleased with. Morelia walked over and stood next to Naruto. Morelia was a relatively tall woman. She is about 5 feet 10 and Naruto was just a couple of inches taller. My, well do have a good night, dear. Safe travels. Morelia gave Naruto a flirtatious smile as she turned and began to walk away. The girls, beside Philo and Eclair, noticed Morelia's extra sway in her hips. Naruto turned to everyone else and saw they have finished up their meals for tonight, so, should we all head to bed then? Come on let's. Kasumi jumped from her seat and grabbed Naruto's arm, she began to pull him towards the bedroom. Raftalia watched as the two walked away, Yoruichi walked up and placed a hand on Raftalia's shoulder, just give it some time, Kasumi is just really happy to have her niece San back. Raftalia nodded her head giving a smile out, I I know, it's just a bit annoying is all, but it's also his sister. I can't separate them from that, they've been through a lot together. Raftalia lowered her head, she felt horrible for feeling jealous of Naruto's sister. Yoruichi placed a hand on her hip, I wonder, think Kasumi might like Naruto more than just a normal sister should. Raftalia looked at Yoruichi in shock, what? No way, that's his sister. Yoruichi, kept her right hand on her hip, raised her left hand, and raised her pointer finger, always is the key word here, she's reincarnated, she may still have the memories. But she is also Roxanne at the same time. She grew up differently than Kasumi did, and not only that but had different parents than Naruto. So, in turn, they haven't related anymore, just by their memories. Their souls aren't even related anymore, reincarnation is an interesting thing, don't you think? Philo cocked her head to the side confused, I don't get it, does Kasumi Ne san also like Naruto-sama? Yes, Kasumi, I think she does. Yoruichi lowered her left hand and began to walk towards the rooms, come on, let's give them some privacy. Yoruichi continued to walk down the halls with Raftalia and Philo following suit. Once they got to the rooms Yoruichi turned to Raftalia and said, I want to get closer to Naruto-sama too, but this puts a halt on mine and Naruto-sama's relationship. But I'm relenting right now because they used to be siblings and have been through a lot. Raftalia simply nodded her head, she walked up to her room opened it, and then shut it. Backquote 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 with Naruto and Kasumi. Kasumi trotted into the room dragging Naruto to the bedroom and the bed, come on. I want to sleep together. It's been so long since we've done it together. Naruto chuckled as took his left hand, which was free, and began to pat Kasumi's head. Well, why don't you get changed, I want to go say goodnight to the others. Kasumi had a light frown appear on her face, she wanted to have all of Naruto's attention for now. Kasumi then asked, you do care about them, don't you? Naruto who almost left turned his head to her and smiled, of course I do, they're some of the first people in a long time I've ever trusted. Plus, me and Raftalia are a thing, well Yoruichi and I are just beginning to start our relationship too. Naruto gestured a wave to Kasumi, I'll be back soon, I promise. Naruto left through the door and shut it, Kasumi simply puffed her cheeks out and crossed her arms over her chest. Though, ended up smiling regardless, Naruto ni is lucky to have found those girls. To find love, I'm glad, it seems he forbids himself in our world to have that. Though I definitely wouldn't mind if he doted on me a bit more, I got 13 years of him doting on me to catch up on. Kasumi took off her shirt and pants, she walked over to a dresser and found clothes in there. She put on a pink nightgown, reached back, and unclasped her bra which dropped to the ground. Kasumi picked her clothes from the ground, folded them up, and tucked them away in the dresser. Kasumi made her way to the bed and lay down, all she had to do now was wait for her brother to return. Backquote 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 with Raftalia and the others. The girls were all in one room but had three separate beds. Raftalia was sitting on the bed and she was wearing a purple's nightgown. 
Yoruichi was sitting on her bed with her knees to her chest. Philo was just laying in the bed kicking her feet into the air. There was then a knock on the door. Hey guys it's me, can I come in? Raftalia's ears and tail twitched in excitement. Naruto-sama, you can come in. Naruto opened the door and walked through. Naruto had a light smile on his face. Sorry about things so far everyone. I feel like I haven't been spending a lot of time with ya guys. Raftalia placed her hands up quickly. Oh no. Naruto-sama, please. Don't apologize. Kasumi is your long-lost sister. I couldn't imagine what it is like to reunite with her after what you have both been through. Yoruichi raised an eyebrow as she looked at Raftalia. Naruto chuckled as he walked over and sat next to Raftalia. Naruto gestured to Philo to his lap, and Yoruichi to come to sit to his left. Philo ran over and jumped onto his lap as Naruto placed a hand upon her head, like I said, sorry for not giving you three enough attention. I know Kasumi has been taking up the majority of it. It's just, I can't tell you how happy I am to have her back. Naruto looked down at the ground, but he could still see the tuft of Philo's blonde hair. Raftalia nodded her head, I would be lying if I said I wasn't jealous, just we've been going so strong together, and suddenly your sister joins us. Raftalia leaned her head onto Naruto's shoulder. Naruto smiled as he turned to Yoruichi, I know we just started to try our relationship, the only question is when you're ready Yoruichi. Naruto gave her a small smile which caused Yoruichi to blush. I I, s shut up. Yoruichi smiled back as she leaned forward and placed a kiss on Naruto's lips. Naruto leaned into the kiss and Yoruichi fluttered her eyes open from the kiss, well, if I get more of that, I won't complain. Yoruichi smiled as she leaned her head onto Naruto's shoulder. Naruto turned to Raftalia, once we get on the road things should begin to adjust to our newest member. Don't worry, we'll continue our journey and relationship. I remember you told me on the side there were things you wanted to tell me too. Naruto placed a kiss on the top of Raftalia's head, which she simply giggled at, remember don't forget, I love you both very much. Raftalia reached up and claimed Naruto's lips for her own, and the two held it there for a moment. Philo puffed her cheeks out, I wanna grow up quick. I wanna be with Naruto-sama too. Philo swung her hands in the air angrily. Naruto sighed as he patted her head trying to calm her down. Philo, you're far too young, you have to grow up before that. It says here you're, while already 15 years old. Then again leveling up like this I'm not surprised though. Besides you need to grow up not just physically but mentally too. Naruto leaned forward and placed a kiss on the top of Philo's head, besides I don't want to seem like a child predator. Naruto closed his eyes and smiled as he felt them all close to him. For now, I should head back, I don't want to keep Kasumi waiting. I promise to talk to her about this tonight. The girls slowly got off them and stood up. Now, why don't I tuck you all in? The three quickly jumped in, and Naruto stood up and tucked Philo in first. Have a good night, okay? Oh, you also look very cute in your blue nightgown. Naruto felt funny doing this, but he didn't mind it too much. Naruto pulled the covers over and placed a kiss on Philo's head. Good night, Naruto-sama. Philo chirped out as she snuggled into her bed closing her eyes. Naruto walked over to Yoruichi, night, sleep tight, you looked very beautiful in your nightgown. Yoruichi was wearing a dark purple nightgown. It hugged her figure well and the compliment caused her to blush. Naruto then pulled the covers over Yoruichi, though this feels rather strange, you and Raftalia are practically adults. Naruto leaned down and captured Yoruichi's lips. Yoruichi feeling bolding wrapped her arms around Naruto and pulled him closer. This allowed them to hold the kiss longer than usual. Once they separated a line saliva connected their mouths until it broke. I love you Naruto-sama, see you in the morning. Naruto placed a hand on her head and patted it. Yeah, sleep tight Yoruichi. Naruto walked over to Raftalia as she lay there with the covers completely off of her. Naruto giggled a bit, which Raftalia smiled at seeing. Raftalia loved Naruto's smile very much, you look very pretty in your nightgown. Raftalia blushed, she was wearing an orange nightgown, which Naruto had to admit. Was still the best color out there, T thank you, I thought you might like the color orange so. Naruto patted her head with one hand, and used the other to pull the covers up, I I do, oh Raftalia, I gotta ask. 
Sometimes I wonder what I did to deserve girls like you three, well now four. Naruto leaned down and claimed her lips, I love you Raftalia, we'll be together forever. We'll all be together, I can't wait for all of us to share delicious snacks and food. Raftalia pulled Naruto down though for a longer kiss putting more passion into it. The two slowly separated with a line of saliva that slowly broke after the two parted. When Raftalia fluttered her eyes open from the kiss, she said, have a good night, tell Kasumi I said good night too. As well as good luck and shoot for it. Shoot for it. Naruto raised an eyebrow confused by her words. Yoruichi and Philo respectively shouted out, yeah tell her to shoot for it, shoot for it. Naruto didn't understand what they were saying a shoot for it. Naruto shook his head as he made his way toward the door. He opened it and before he left, he turned his head to them, all right, I will, you all have a good night, though I swear, sometimes I don't get what you guys are always on about. Naruto gently shut the door behind him. Naruto slowly made his way back to his room with his sister in there. Naruto opened the door and found Kasumi sitting up on the bed, welcome back. Ni-chan, is everyone tucked in asleep? Kasumi's tail was swaying back and forth. Yes, they are. Come on, we have a mission to prepare for tomorrow. We'll work out the details later. Naruto took his outfit off and placed it on the side. Naruto kept his pants on but took his socks and undershirt off. Though Kasumi looked at Naruto confused, Naruto ni, what's that scar in the middle of your chest? Kasumi had a very shocked and worried look in her eyes. Naruto sighed as he sat on the bed next to her, as we fall asleep, I'll tell you tale of me, of Uzumaki Naruto. Oh, before I forget, the other girls wanted me to tell you to shoot for it. I don't get what they mean, hopefully you do. Kasumi blushed a bit as she looked down and stared at Naruto's chest. I it's a girl thing, don't worry about it. Those three caught on fast, do I really, no way he's, my brother. Naruto decided to continue, well, let's begin with how I survived in the shinobi world. Naruto swung his feet onto the bed and lay down, which Kasumi laid next to him. She moved her hand and placed it on Naruto's chest, directly over the scar, well, Naruto brought the covers up, where do I begin, ah, probably soon after you passed. Kasumi frowned, so she braced herself for the details that Naruto wanted to tell her. Chapter 5. Royalty's paths aligned last chapter Naruto slowly made his way back to his room with his sister in there. Naruto opened the door and found Kasumi sitting up on the bed, welcome back. Ni-chan, is everyone tucked in asleep? Kasumi's tail was swaying back and forth. Yes, they are, come on, we have a mission to prepare for tomorrow. We'll work out the details later. Naruto took his outfit off and placed it on the side. Naruto kept his pants on but took his socks and undershirt off. Though Kasumi looked at Naruto confused, Naruto ni, what's that scar in the middle of your chest? Kasumi had a very shocked and worried look in her eyes. Naruto sighed as he sat on the bed next to her. As we fall asleep, I'll tell you tale of me, of Uzumaki Naruto. Oh, before I forget, the other girls wanted me to tell you to shoot for it. I don't get what they mean, hopefully you do. Kasumi blushed a bit as she looked down and stared at Naruto's chest, I it's a girl thing, don't worry about it. Those three caught on fast, do I really, no way he's, my brother. Naruto decided to continue, well, let's begin with how I survived in the shinobi world. Naruto swung his feet onto the bed and lay down, which Kasumi laid next to him. She moved her hand and placed it on Naruto's chest, directly over the scar, well, Naruto brought the covers up, where do I begin, ah, probably soon after you passed. Kasumi frowned, so she braced herself for the details that Naruto wanted to tell her. Backquote 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 this chapter morning. Naruto woke up from his sleep and looked up at the ceiling. However, Naruto had a weight on his chest. Naruto looked down and found Kasumi resting on his chest, her ears on her head twitched as she slept. Naruto lifted a hand and gently began to pet her hair. Naruto lifted his head and placed a kiss on the top of her head. Hey, Kasumi we need to begin waking up. We have a mission to go on. Kasumi slowly opened her eyes, she began to rub her eyes with a hand. Morning, I'm so comfy. Kasumi snuggled her head into Naruto's chest, 
though it looked like she had no idea she was using his chest as a pillow. Kasumi soon pushed off on the bed and her vision began to focus. Though, she realized that she was sleeping on his chest. Her cheeks turned bright red as she quickly moved backward. She landed on her butt on the bed. Oh, I didn't realize I was using your chest as a pillow. Kasumi's eyes averted away from Naruto's chest. He was quite toned. It's okay. Don't worry about it so much. Naruto reached out and placed a hand on the top of his sister's head. Come, we should get everyone else awake and ready. Just then the door opened with Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Philo up and ready. Naruto-sama, morning, we're all ready to head out. Raftalia said with a bright smile on her face, and once she opened her eyes, she saw Naruto without his shirt on. Yoruichi smirked as she placed her hand on her chin, niece. Yoruichi said staring at Naruto. Meanwhile, Raftalia blushed as she saw Naruto's chest. Philo looked at everyone rather confused, I don't get what's going on but. Philo dashed off and ran onto the bed with Naruto and Kasumi, Naruto saw the morning. She wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck and hugged him. Morning Philo. Naruto hugged the human Philoleal back with one arm. Come, let us get dressed and go downstairs. Everyone and by everyone simply Kasumi and Naruto get dressed into their outfits and makes their way downstairs. Naruto was in his armor with everyone else in their original change of attire. However, Kasumi instead was wearing a new outfit. She was adorning a low-crop adventurer's dress with large white frills on her biceps. She had a brown leather strap go over her shoulders and connect to the buckles on her shirt. She had on long brown light combat pants, combat boots, a sword at her hip, and a brown headband on her head. Once they were there, Eclair and Queen Morelia met up with everyone. Morelia handed Naruto a pouch of 250 gold coins for the job, here is your payment, with an extra 50 gold to add up the total to 250 gold coins. We have paperwork and everything filled out where Kasumi is officially your slave, Naruto-sama. Kasumi however pipped up and asked, I I appreciate everything you've done for me Queen Morelia-sama, and you as well Eclair. Kasumi looked to Naruto and his other group and says, I appreciate everything, but I have one request. Kasumi looked down as her tail seemed to move in between her legs, and her ears dropped, I was hoping to keep my original name, I want to continue using the name I was given here. It's important to my Ka-chan and Otu-chan, they are the ones W who raised me after all. Kasumi gave a small smile Naruto looked at her rather surprised, so yeah, is it okay if I continue going by Roxanne? Naruto smiled and understood his sister's plight, well she used to be his sister. So, she isn't technically his sister anymore since she reincarnated. That's a weird thing to think about. Naruto went into the party system and changed her name to Roxanne. Roxanne, of course, we can continue to call you that. Philo jumped and hugged Roxanne. Welcome to Naruto-sama's party Roxanne Nay. Roxanne simply hugged the human Philoleal back, and Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Naruto all joined in on the hug together. Roxanne's ears twitched and her tail wagged with excitement and relief, thank you for having me aboard. Naruto's party slowly broke their hug, Naruto went to turn to Eclair and Morelia. Morelia was already making her way towards Naruto, and Naruto said, Queen. Naruto was stopped as Morelia placed a finger on his lips, please, no need to call me in such a formal matter. Morelia is just fine or Meyer chan if you feel bold. Morelia gave Naruto a sultry look with her lips making a small O and winking one eye at Naruto. Naruto was a little taken back by this, he felt a shiver run down his back. Morelia was up and close to Naruto's face, her chest even pushed up against his chest. Naruto went to leave until Morelia grabbed his hand and turned him around. Naruto looked at her with a rather shocked look on his face. Raftalia and Roxanne looked at the scene rather annoyed watching the queen trying to hit on Naruto. No, scratch that, she was trying to seduce him. Yoruichi on the other hand didn't mind whatsoever. Philo, didn't get it, thanked Kami for that. Queen Morelia simply gave a slight kiss on his cheek, and then blew a bit of air into his ear. Naruto couldn't help but feel a slight rush of blood to his other head, he looked at Morelia and said, um this isn't by chance because you divorced your ex-husband, you're, um looking at me as a. Morelia simply gave a nod as Eclair looked at her queen rather shocked. 
Morelia smirked as she got closer and said, I know there's a bit of an age gap between us, after all, I'm only 38. I might be old, though for now, I don't mind being yours. I'm mostly hoping you'll get together with my second-born daughter who will inherit the throne. Naruto looked at her like she was crazy, and he placed both hands up. Whoa, whoa wait a second, first of all. How old is your daughter? Morelia smiled and answered, she's 10, I know you're 18 as of right now, an age gap. However, when it comes to royalty it is fine. Marrying young is often more times that not seen as fine here. Naruto placed both his arms up to make a big X, okay sorry lady, but I don't marry or more or less date girls that are frickin' children. Morelia who was calm, collected, and willing to converse on the topic says, simple, that's why I'll take your hand, and you'll marry her when she's older, she's already fist in line to be queen. Naruto went to argue but found himself stopping in his tracks. It wasn't a bad tactic, but wouldn't it make her second-born daughter his stepdaughter? Then marrying her later, isn't that technically him marrying his stepdaughter, that can't be right, w wait are you implying that I'm going to marry, her, make a family with her after you've already become my husband. If that's what's bothering, you then don't worry about it. Our customs here are very much different from the world from where you come from. Morelia crossed her arms over her chest, if I wanted to, I could have an entire harem at my beck and call. I can marry and divorce as I see fit, and I see the current king as unfit. I find you a rather fine person for the job. Naruto continued against this whole idea, t this isn't right though. Marrying your wife's daughter isn't. You came from a world of shinobi and clans, right? Morelia unfolded her fan placing it in front of her face, marrying family there is considered okay in the eyes of the clans, it's simple as it's fine here, but on a much larger scale. Especially when it comes to the ruler, and I am that rule of this kingdom. Meaning I make the rules, I could rule this land with an iron fist if I wanted to. However, that's not the way to get your people to respect you. She then closed her fan and pointed it at Naruto, I shan't make you marry me or even my daughter. However, she moved closer to Naruto and placed both hands on his cheeks. She pulled him in for a searing passionate kiss, which Naruto's eyes widen at. The way Morelia claimed him, it's not the fact she was trying to dominate him. It was more or less a standing that she is firm on what she wants. She wants him for herself and her daughter in the future. She has no qualms about doing everything and anything to get what she wants. She could demand he bow to her and lick her feet for all she wanted. In the eyes of the public, he could be viewed as a criminal who defied the queen. She holds so much power here, but yet refuses to use it for her gain. However, when it came to the heart of one's desires, it seems she was willing to do anything to get him. In short, she wanted him, she wanted to feel every nook and cranny of Naruto's body. She wanted to learn everything about from what's in his brain, to how he thinks, acts, talks walks, and even sings. Once she broke the kiss and saw the shocked look on Naruto's face, that doesn't mean I give up that easily. She placed her hand on Naruto's chin and lifted it a bit, I, Queen Morelia will win you over, body, mind, and soul. Queen Morelia turned and began to walk back to the throne room. Eclair wondered to herself, how the hell are any of us supposed to go up against someone like her? Wait, why am I picturing myself with him? Well, does have a relatively strapping body, wait since when am I a pervert? Naruto was floored, never had he met such a woman as Morelia. Roxanne puffed her cheeks out along with Raftalia seeing Naruto's dumb look on his face. The two simply turned their heads away in an annoyed fashion. Philo, again, still doesn't get it, but Yoruichi clenched her fist tightly holding it up in the air. Yoruichi then shouted out, that's some damn bullshit. I ain't losing to no old hag. Yoruichi pointed her finger out towards the back of Morelia, you may have won this battle. But the war is far from over. Roxanne and Raftalia quickly added in, you got that right. We aren't gonna lose. Raftalia called out to which Morelia kept walking towards the double doors to the throne room. Roxanne added her two cents, we'll beat you to Naruto's first time. So, you better watch it. Queen Morelia opened one of the doors, but before she went through all the way. She simply turned her head to the left, unfolded her fan, and held it up to her face. She smirked at the three girls and said, Oh, I can't wait, 
bring it on. You three are bringing the cavalry, but me, Morelia looked straight and folded her fan putting it away. She walked through the doors, and as the doors began to close behind her, she said, I'm bringing the army. So, you girls understand, I am that army. Naruto watched from the side with Philo next to him, and Philo looked at the three in confusion. Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Roxanne all glared at the closed doors that Morelia just walked through. Naruto scratched the back of his head and sighed, what the hell just happened? Backquote 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 on the road. Naruto just simply sighed as Philo transformed back into her filial form. Everyone hopped into the cart and began their journey on the mission given to them by the queen. The trip was a rather long journey since they traveled all day. Meanwhile, Naruto went ahead and unlocked Roxanne's charka. Just like Raftalia and Yoruichi, Roxanne moaned when Naruto jump-started her charka. For the rest of the day, Naruto and the others relaxed and took a break when needed. Naruto during the meantime just talked with Roxanne while Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Philo got to better understand Roxanne better. Naruto hoped this would bring them all together and help them work better than ever before. Eventually, night came and they set up camp, once everyone was tucked in and asleep. Naruto was the one still up, he was tinkering around with some precious metals. Naruto held a necklace near Raftalia's chest. Naruto had his necklace for Raftalia in a shape of a raccoon with a silver layer around the pendant and the shape of the gem itself was the body and head of the raccoon with its tail. Naruto then turned to Philo as he placed a barrette near her head. It was gold inlays around four sapphire-like gems. The design of the barrette was like one of her wings. Naruto then tucked it away as Philo seemed to stir from her sleep. Naruto, Sama. Philo looked up at Naruto confused. Naruto placed a hand on her head, and the other behind his back, it's nothing Philo, just go back to sleep. Naruto rubbed her head as Philo slowly was lulled back to sleep. Naruto then tucked it away and looked at Roxanne as she slept next to Yoruichi. Naruto made his way over to them and knelt beside Roxanne, I wonder, Naruto looked at Roxanne, maybe he could get her a bracelet, maybe even a headband. He could maybe enchant it or something like that. Naruto looked through his bag and found some cloth, so maybe. He then looked at Yoruichi and saw her gloves, they were a bit worn. So, maybe some new gloves, that are comfortable and battle ready. Once Naruto was done, he went ahead and laid down. He laid in the middle of the four girls, he placed both hands behind his head. Naruto closed his eyes, and he let sleep overtake allowing him to sleep peacefully. Backquote 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 morning. Naruto along with his party all packed up and placed their belongings back into the wagon. Well, everything but their breakfast since Roxanne was cooking it. Naruto fastened their stuff with a rope, and he looked left to see two travelers. The two seemed to be mother and son, and they seemed very depressed. Naruto invited them to stay to eat to learn some intel. The mother said, you should turn back while you can. Her son followed suit with the same tone, if you keep going, you'll die. Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, I'm on a mission towards the very village just down the road. Is there anything you can tell me about it? The woman looked down, the plague even got the village elder. Backquote 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 on the road. Naruto sat on the right of Raftalia as she drove the cart with Philo pulling it. Meanwhile, Yoruichi and Roxanne were within the wagon listening to Naruto's thoughts, I wonder what this plague could be, hopefully with this ability with healing magic and more I should be able to help cure it. Raftalia added in worriedly, all those people driven from their homes, what is going on there? Yoruichi leaned her elbow on the wagon and rested her cheek on her hand, I don't know, it's a real coin toss as to what's going on there. Hopefully, we can figure this out. Roxanne nodded her head, yeah, with all of us. I'm sure we can figure it out. Eventually, Naruto and his party made it to the village with Naruto at the front holding Philo's reins leading her. An elderly man came out of his house, what are people like you doing here? Naruto replied, I was sent on a quest here by the queen herself, I heard you people need help. I'm a traveling merchant, and I can help treat your sick. The elderly man looked at Naruto and his party and saw Philo and then recognized Naruto's face, wait. You're the shield hero, I recognize your face and that Philoleal, 
The Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. Just then the man took off into town shouting, Doctor. Before Naruto knew it, everyone was dragged inside the nearby hospital. Though, Philo stayed in her philolial form and stayed outside. The doctor looked at Naruto and asked, If I may ask, are you? Naruto just sighed and lifted his hand to explain, I'm here to help cure the sick and find the cause for all this. I was already paid in full to do it, so I'm here to do my job. Naruto turned to the girls, Yoruichi and Roxanne, go join Philo outside. I don't want to crowd the place here too much. Hi, we'll be outside Naruto-sama. Yoruichi did a polite bow and turned to leave. Roxanne nodded her head in understanding, we'll be waiting for you, and good luck. The two left and Naruto was escorted by the doctor to the sick with Raftalia in suit. A nurse who was working there had short pink hair, doctor, who are they? The doctor replied, oh, this is the Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. He was paid to help us and cure everyone. Naruto got out his bottles of medicine from his seal and created a bunch of shadow clones. This surprised the doctor and nurse as Naruto went to administer the doses to everyone. Naruto was able to help out everyone relatively quickly and fast. Just then the doors of the place were kicked open. Everyone turned their heads to see a mother carrying her child in her arms, please help my baby. Please somebody save him. The mother screamed out with tears rolling down her eyes. Naruto quickly made his way over and said, give me your son, I'll treat him. Naruto gently took the child from the mother and placed him on an empty bed. Naruto could tell this was an ordinary disease or anything of that sort. Naruto examined the child, doing his best to come up with an idea of what was going on. Thanks to all the practice he has become more and more of a medic expert. Naruto took the time to have his clones go out and learn more about the human body. That also included common diseases known to man and unknown, for this go around. From what Naruto remembers back in the elemental nations, he remembers Obito telling him how sick and ill Itachi was at the time. Naruto was seeing similar conditions with the boy, however, it seems without the drugs that Itachi took. There was no way this boy was going to make it at least another four or five days. His breathing was ragged, he had a high fever, his blood pressure was low, and this boy was on a steep decline in health. He could even end up dying today if not treated. Naruto looked to the mother, how long has he been like this? The coughs, fevers, and seemingly overall weak. The mother did her best to collect herself and answer Naruto, W well even as a C child he has always been a frail child. Got sick often, coughs were pretty common for him, sometimes he would have coughing fits. W we tried to get him help, but we just don't have the money to afford it. That our doctors didn't know how to cure him. Today was the worst, I knew he was declining. The doctor here has tried, but nothing has worked for him when I heard you were here. The mother's eyes had a shine of hope in them, she was praying to Kami that Naruto could save her son. Naruto continued to examine the boy, Naruto placed a hand over the child, and he closed his eyes. Naruto turned on sage mode, and he could easily tell that this boy was indeed dying. Naruto snapped his eyes open and changed his appearance. Naruto's body took on a golden glow as the whisker marks on his cheeks thickened. Naruto's hair stood up with a golden glow like two horns protruding from his head. Naruto had nine black truth-seeking orbs appear behind his back. Naruto looked at his left hand and placed the sun mark on the boy's left part of his chest, just over his heart. Everyone in the room watched in amazement, and Raftalia no matter how many times she see this. Naruto's willingness to go far for other was unrivaled even if Naruto seems like he won't or he shows his cruel side. Naruto only shows his cruel side to those who deserve it but shows kindness and warmness when those who need it. Everyone watched as the young boy seemed to begin breathing normally. His body calmed down and returned to its homeostasis, it's where your body can return to a normal working state. Naruto felt it, he could tell the boy's immune system was below average that of a normal human. So, he jump-started it to get it to function normally, while also removing the disease the boy seemed to have contracted. However, there was one thing that bothered Naruto, he found a lump of the boy's cells throughout his body. Naruto has never seen anything like that before, nor was there anything talked about like that in the medical textbooks here. He's fine now, he'll live a long happy and healthy life. Naruto turned to his mother, 
he could see the love and the desire to love and protect her son. Naruto couldn't turn a blind eye to that, he won't get sick so easily next time, and if he does, he'll be able to fight through it, I made sewer of that myself. Then Naruto's glow was gone and he returned to normal, Naruto placed a hand on the mother's shoulder, take good care of him, you're an amazing mother. The mother then rushed to her son's side as he began to wake up. Naruto turned and began to walk out of the clinic without saying another word. The boy who came around saw Naruto and Raftalia leave together. Before Naruto shut the doors behind, Naruto turned to the boy, and the little boy saw Naruto's vertical and horizontal glowing eyes. Naruto mouthed to him, take care. The group went into another room where the nurse and doctor joined Naruto. Naruto didn't want to make any more of a scene than he already has. Naruto sat down on a chair and crossed his legs with Raftalia standing to his right, so, explain to me, when did this all start happening? The nurse placed a finger on her lip, well it was after a dragon made its home up in the mountains. There are also a bunch of monsters up there as well. The doctor then added, the sword hero not too long ago killed it. Naruto placed a hand on his cheek and his arm rested on the chair, I wonder if the dragon died, and its rotting corpse is letting out a rancid toxin. I bet the breeze from the mountain carries it down here. The doctor nodded his head, when it died, many adventurers came to harvest the monster's corpse. It helped everyone, but one day the adventurer collapsed, and soon more followed. Naruto wasn't surprised, flesh rots after a few after the body of a monster dies. TCH, careless, anyone should know when an animal, person, or in this case a monster dies. It rots to high hell, of course, it'll stink like crap. To think it would have a poisonous smell to it, should have been more thoughtful about it. Damn it, having to clean up after others is troublesome. Naruto closed his eyes and added, everyone when they got here mentioned that this was like some sort of video game. Whatever the hell that is, but from what I got the games they were talking about. Is something that wasn't real, so, he probably thought the monster would simply despawn. Fool. The mountains are filled with monsters, Raftalia gave them a reassuring smile, it's okay, we were tasked to take out the dragon. So, in this go around we'll also take out the monsters. That way there's a safer passage. Wait, you plan on doing it yourself? The doctor looked at Naruto in shock, no ordinary person could go there. Naruto looked at the man and smirked, I'm no ordinary person, I'm sure we'll all manage. Naruto lifted from his outfit a mask that covered his mouth, besides, have some faith in me. After all, I cured that boy and gave a boost to his immune system. He won't get sick ever again, or if he does, it won't be as severe. Remember, Naruto-sama showed you powers beyond this world's imagination. Naruto-sama is, very caring when it comes to those in dire need. Raftalia's ear twitched in excitement as her cheeks blushed at the same time. Just don't go telling people about that. Naruto stood up and began to walk out the door, I'll take that as payment for taking out the extra monsters. Backquote 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 mountain. Everyone was in the wagon and Naruto had his chimera shield equipped with poison resistance. It wasn't for himself, when he had the shield equipped it buffed everyone. The last thing he wants is for everyone to get sick from the poison. Everyone had on similar masks going up the mountain except for Philo. It seemed her being part Philoleal must have helped give her some extra resistance to the poison along with his shield. Raftalia asked Naruto, you told them their silence was their payment for us taking out the smaller monsters. Was it because you don't want them to see you as a savior? Naruto nodded his head, my services are never free, it's the way of the shinobi. I always expect a payment, I don't do things out of the goodness of my heart. Never have, never will. Naruto narrowed his eyes, it was easier that way. He didn't want people to look up to him like a god or anything. He hated the moniker Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami, he is no god, and he'll never be one. I see, I guess it makes sense Naruto-sama, you don't want others to think you'll just do things out of the kindness of your heart. Even if you already did. Roxanne smiled as she looked at Naruto with a proud smile on her face. Yoruichi smirked and added, Well, we all know who Naruto-sama is, he's kind and caring. However, he'll do things to make sure he seems like a simple businessperson. 
When the group drove up the mountain and came across some monsters. There were a lot, so Naruto quickly parked it and extended his hand out, everyone attack. On command, everyone shot off from the wagon but Roxanne. Naruto got off as some animals came towards him and Roxanne. Naruto held his shield up and said, Roxanne, I'll block and parry, you attack. Roxanne nodded her head and held her sword out in front of her, you got it, Naruto-sama. Roxanne lunged forward after Naruto parried a monster rabbit from attack. She then ran towards it and swung her blade down its middle cleaving the animal in half. Backquote 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 little later. Everyone soon made their way about a hundred yards from the corpse of the dragon. Naruto had everyone unload the wagon to use tools to harvest the dragon. It would be good to capitalize on it to sell it for money in their group. Naruto looked to everyone and said, the air is thicker up here than it was down in the village. I'm going to set up a barrier. Naruto held his hand up as a bubble of air appeared around Naruto and everyone else. This kept the poisonous toxins away from them. Let's work but not take too long, if it's too strong stay back. Naruto looked behind him as Roxanne, Raftalia, and Yoruichi were right behind him. However, Philo was eating the leftover plants they got from the previous village. Naruto deadpanned watching her eat them. Naruto shook his head and continued to advance toward the dragon. However, once they got within 50 yards, the dragon began to move. Naruto watched as the blood seeped back into its body. The dragon's eyes began to glow, and some of the skin reformed. Roxanne jumped back a bit, it's a zombie dragon. Her eyes widen in shock as Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Naruto's eyes were even surprised by this. The dragon reared up as it raised its wings and head and let out a roar. Naruto had to analyze this thing before they got any close, everyone back now. Naruto dashed towards Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Roxanne. He threw Raftalia onto a shoulder and Yoruichi on another, and then used his right arm, which held Yoruichi, to touch Roxanne's shoulder. He Horishin them back to the wagon. Once they did Naruto looked up to see the dragon finally up. However, Philo jumped in front of him, and Naruto saw the fire in her eyes. She shouted out angrily, a dragon. She hunched down and then shot up, I hate dragons. Philo stuck her claw out and kicked the dragon in the face. Philo landed back next to Naruto and his group, maybe we can, get behind me now. Naruto held his shield up and began to pour more chakra into the barrier which kept the toxic breathe the dragon breathed out at them. However, Naruto's eyes widened when he saw Raftalia's, Yoruichi's, and Roxanne's status effect change from normal to toxic. Now, I'm mad. Philo moved next to Naruto's left and took off. Philo, don't fight it without backup. Naruto screamed out with worry for her and the rest of his party. Philo charged anyways, and the dragon swung its wing at Philo. Philo simply backflipped away from the attack. Philo jumped back up and kicked it in the face, so Naruto created three shadow clones which took Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Roxanne back into the wagon. Naruto shot forward joining Philo at her side to attack the dragon, idiot. Naruto lunged forward at faster speeds than Philo. He was able to snatch her out of the air before the dragon could eat her. Naruto sped towards the dragon and sent Chakra to his feet. Naruto swung his foot and launched the dragon into the air. Naruto held his arm up into the air, and formed a Resenshuriken in the air, get out of my sight. Wind style. Resenshuriken. Naruto tossed it as the spinning Fuma shuriken shaped attack slammed into the dragon. The dragon went farther into the air as the attack cleaved it in half. Then the orb blew up as a large vortex of air eviscerated the dragon into nothingness. Naruto watched as a purple crystal fell to the ground, he found it with a bunch of deep gashes within it. Naruto picked it up and placed it into the shield. He saw the shield menu pulled up and a new shield was unlocked. When Naruto read it, his eyes widened in shock, he didn't smile. He simply saw Rage series, he didn't know what it was. Though, it seemed it was an ability he could tap into if he wanted to. Naruto turned to Philo and frowned, Philo, that was very reckless of you. Naruto began to reprehend her for her actions, I commanded you to retreat when Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Roxanne were poisoned. Even with the number of air currents I put up and used my poison resistance shield. Somehow the poison still got through, even though I don't understand it. 
Come we need to cure them. Naruto turned and decided to dwell on the issue no more. Philo simply frowned as she followed Naruto, she was sad because she disobeyed his orders. Naruto got back to the others to find them simply resting as his shadow clones used the mystic palm jutsu. As well as the healing spells he learned from the shield. Naruto sighed as he relaxed knowing they were going to be okay. Naruto figured because Philo went to attack the zombie dragon, maybe his focus wasn't entirely on protecting everyone. Naruto ordered his shadow clones to set up came and get a fire started. Later Naruto sat in front of Philo who held her head down, I I'm sorry Naruto-sama, I just thought I could. Philo, Naruto said sternly which made her stop talking. She looked at the ground upset, she angered Naruto. Yoruichi, Roxanne, and Raftalia were worried about what Naruto was going to do. It's not like he would punish her severally, but he had to reprehend her for her actions. Naruto got up and walked over to her, Philo, I am very disappointed in you. I wanted to retreat so we could regroup and figure out a strategy. Instead, you went head on and fought on your own. Naruto stated sternly as he then raised his voice, do you know how angry I am at you right now? Naruto's heart was aching more than it was in anger. Philo's hands clenched together wondering what he was going to do. However, before Philo knew it a pair of arms wrapped around her. Naruto held her close, idiot, do you know how worried I was? You could have been hurt. Worse, killed, Naruto placed a hand on Philo's head as he rubbed it, I I can't do it, I can't lose another person again Philo. Don't be so reckless like that. Philo stared at the rocks behind Naruto as tears welled up in her eyes, I I'm sorry and Naruto-sama, sniff I I J just thought, I if I could sniff beat it you w would praise am me more. Philo began to cry as she hugged Naruto back with all her might. Naruto simply shook his head, I am still angry, angry you ignored me and continued. Only because you or someone else could have seriously gotten hurt. I am only one person, I may be able to create clones. Naruto wanted to let them know that even though he is powerful, he is still a human, what if I couldn't get to you in time? I couldn't stand losing you. Philo sniffled more and more as the tears continued down her face, I I'm as sorry Gushujin sama Naruto simply hugged her as he shook his head, you stupid, stupid silly girl, worrying me half to death. After the two calmed down for a bit, Naruto let her go as he let the things that transpired that day wind down. Everyone ate dinner and everyone snuggled up to Naruto, before Naruto knew it, he had them all sleeping on him. That or had had a part of their bodies touching him. Naruto just sighed and relented, at the end of the day. Everyone was okay, and he had no reason to complain too much. Then it hit Naruto, oh, and Philo as punishment you're no longer allowed snacks for three days. Ah, G-O-U-S-H-I-N-J-I-N Sama. Philo cried out upset as Raftalia just rolled her eyes, Yoruichi giggled, and Roxanne smirked at Naruto amused. Don't make me make it a week. Naruto retorted to Philo as she then stopped complaining, she didn't want to make it longer than it had to be. Lesson learned. Though the other girls, however, found Philo's plight rather funny. Backquote 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 day later. Naruto and everyone were packing things into their wagon to get them ready. They were getting ready to head out the next day to start heading back to the royal capital. However, they were in the forest farming some levels and express. When Naruto came back from a bathroom break, Philo pointed to the woods and said, Naruto-sama look. The other girls looked as well interested in what Philo had to show them. Naruto looked through the trees and saw a few Philoleels laying around a girl. Naruto could tell she had blue hair and a rather elegant dress on. When Naruto looked over, he saw the birds begin running away. Just then Philo spoke up and said, Naruto-sama, if we chase those birds now. We can catch them, they look yummy. Everyone looked over to Philo with a rather shocked expression adorning their faces, yummy. Raftalia looked up at Philo. Naruto raised an eyebrow, Philo, those are your kind. How could you want to eat them? Just then Naruto sensed the girl getting closer, he put his guard up, but he soon lowered it. The girl looked up at Philo as a blue adorned her cheeks, s so, big. Philo tilted her head and pointed her wing at herself, you mean, me. The girl placed her hands together and close to her chest, you can talk too. Yep, 
Philo replied rather perplexed by the girl's question. Just then the girl seemed to try to hold back her excitement, until she could contain it no more. Ooh. I've always wanted to talk to a Philoleal before. Philo was shocked, but the girl went into her pocket and pulled out a snack. Here. Have some dried meat. Philo smiled joyously. Thanks. Philo. What did Naruto-sama say? Roxanne raised her eyebrow as she began to tap her foot on the ground. Philo stopped as her eyes drooped in disappointment. That's right, no snacks for three days. Naruto watched as the girl frowned a bit, so she tucked the snack away. She walked up and began to run her hand through Philo's feathers. Before she could continue Naruto walked up and said, Excuse me, but I'd rather you not be touching Philo here. Naruto said rather sternly, he had no idea who she was. Just then the girl said, So, what's your name? Philo smiled and replied, My name is Philo. A pleasure to meet you. The girl smiled back and said, My name is Melty. Nice to meet you, Philo Chan. Melty has the appearance of a child who has an overall blue color design with bra length blue hair that is tied in two curly pigtails by two blue ribbons and blue eyes. She is wearing fancy frilly clothes that merit her royal look which is also blue with various areas in white. The girl began to pet Philo more and began to sneak treats to Philo who began to eat them. Naruto sighed and Raftalia said, she must love Philoleals, huh? Naruto shook his head and added, Philo, if you want you can stay here and play with the girl. It'll allow you to lift your punishment early. You did well to listen, just don't forget next time. Philo smiled along with Melty as they both shouted, yeah. Philo the transformed back into her human form. Melty grabbed one of Philo's hands and smiled, you can transform too. Philo replied with a smile and a, yep. This only made Melty smile even brighter, amazing. Roxanne placed a hand on her hip, she took that surprisingly well. Guess she doesn't mind. Naruto looked between Philo and Melty, Melty, she couldn't be Melty's younger sister. She couldn't be the queen's daughter, there's no way, is it? Naruto hooks his head, he'll think about it later. For now, he had to finish up at the village doing some work, we'll be back later, you two meet us in the village once it's late. Naruto and the other three girls left to finish up the mission. Backquote 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 that evening. Naruto was in a bedroom prepping for bed, though for some reason he was told the singles were all booked up. Naruto ended up getting a room that had a large bed to fit four people in it. There was a second one that was enough for two people. Strange design for a room in the inn if you ask him. Just then the door opened as Philo walked in, Naruto turned his head to her, did you have fun with that melty girl? Philo nodded her head, yes, I did, um Naruto-sama, she said that she's traveled to a lot of places, just like we have. Though, Philo placed her finger on her lower lip, she said she got separate from her people when she was playing with the Philoleals. Naruto turned his head to see Melty come walking in. Melty seemed to have had a rather downcast look on her face, sorry for showing up late. Um, could you let me accompany you for a little while? Naruto watched as she clutched the hem of her dress, you see, when I saw the Philoleals, as we were on our way back. She then lowered her head and sputtered out, I was so engrossed in playing with them, I got separated from my guards. The girl then began to twirl her finger through a strand of her hair, I I was hoping you could place let me join you, savior. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest, the villager must have been talking a lot about me. I'm aware that I'm making a selfish request. I am begging you though. Please help me out, I must return to the capital. Naruto sighed as he rubbed the back of his head, I don't mind truly, but as long as I get something out of it. I don't mind. Backquote 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 next day asterisk. Naruto and everyone were outside packing things into the wagon getting ready to leave. Naruto was in the driver's seat with Philo hooked up to the carriage. The village doctor smiled again at Naruto, that is everything we could offer you, we promise to keep our promise as well. Naruto smiled as he sat on the wagon's driver's seat, yeah, just don't forget it. Naruto sensed the queen's shadows nearby, though it was interesting. They sometimes come and go to check up on him so he wasn't sure if they were there for him, or Melty. Naruto was having a rather sneaky suspicion that Melty was Morelia's daughter. With that, soon the group took off making their way back toward the royal capital. 
They stopped every so often to fight some beasts to help Roxanne level up. Everyone else besides, Naruto and Roxanne, were at max level cap and waiting for a class up. Naruto watched how well Melty got along with everyone, even Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Roxanne loved her. It was strange, but it was almost like she was always part of the party. Naruto of course added her to the party which Melty didn't mind at all. It was clear Melty was all caught up on who the shield hero was. They stopped and caught fish to make for dinner, meanwhile most of the time Philo and Maldi played a lot. Naruto was glad that Philo was able to make some friends, Naruto guessed that was something he always regretted in the beginning. It was Philo who never had any friends or even Raftalia. Naruto never was able to let them play with others, then again not a lot of people wanted Naruto around. At night once everyone went to bed, Naruto deadpanned when he saw Melty jump into Philo's feathers. She then tossed her cloths off so she could go to bed in Philo's warm feathers. Before Naruto knew it, everyone else reached into Philo's body and found there to be a lot of room. Philo became a giant pillow for everyone to sleep on. Yoruichi and Roxanne both joined soon sleeping on Philo allowing them to get a good night's rest. Backquote 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 less than a day later royal capital. Eventually, everyone got to the royal capital where Naruto was escorting Melty. Everyone in the group was walking together until there was a shout. Naruto. Naruto and everyone looked up as Motoyasu spun his spear in the air. He then went to stab it into Naruto, but Naruto simply blocked the spear with his two fingers. Naruto held him in midair as Motoyasu looked at Naruto in shock, W what the? How did you? Naruto glared at him, you imbecilic. There are bystanders, why the hell are you attacking me out in public? Motoyasu jumped back and shouted, where is Roxanne? Where is she? As well as that cat girl slave. He then charged at Naruto ramming his spear into him. Naruto simply parried the attack with his shield as he grits his teeth in annoyance, you never learn. You idiot. Motoyasu growled at Naruto and activated an attack, chaos spear. He threw the attack at Naruto and he quickly extended his hand out, shield prison. Naruto's spell intercepted his attack causing no collateral damage in the surrounding. Naruto then removed the top of the shield prison so the attacks went up into the air and dispersed, you moron. Naruto disappeared and appeared in front of him. Naruto slammed his fist into Motoyasu's gut denting his armor once again. This sent him up into the air and arching backward falling onto his ass as he held his stomach. Then the crowd around them began to tell them to stop fighting or to keep fighting. Before everyone knew it, the civilians were out into a brawl. Just then Malti appeared with the royal guards behind her. Funny enough, Naruto ordered Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Roxanne to protect Melty. No one saw Melty because she was behind those three. Melty watched all while enraged by her sister's stunt, for now, she had to confirm it was her. Naruto growled out and shouted, this isn't a place for a duel. There are. Naruto was interrupted by Malti as she said, it is now. She had a cocky smirk on her face, surround them. Malti ordered. The soldier behind her side and said, men, draw swords. He said it with a lot of regret in his voice. Malti held up a scroll and said, ladies and gentlemen, I declare this an official duel between the spear hero and the shield hero, with the authority vested in me by the crown. Just then Melty had enough of this, this was the final straw that mother sent a letter to her about, enough of this. Put away your weapons at once. She came walking up from behind Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Roxanne when the guards saw her. They immediately went on to one knee, I will not allow the heroes to fight among themselves. Malti looked at Melty shocked, WH what are you doing here? Melty was disappointed, it's been a long time, nay san. Philo. Raftalia, Roxanne, and Yoruichi's eyes widen, while Naruto stayed emotionless. Naruto had a feeling she was Morelia's daughter, the looks were uncanny, and the names too. Melty then continued and said, please don't think your or the hero's privilege can cover up this mess. Spear hero, Motoyasu relaxed as Melty spoke to him, look around you, starting a civilian all-out brawl. You cast a magical attack that could have harmed innocents. Who would call a man that puts lives at risk a hero? Melty walked closer as Motoyasu put his spear down not knowing what to say, Nay-san, 
your fun and games have gone too far. Malty tried to back herself, I'm simply doing my job as the hero's aide. Melty retorted, is making him fight in a public place your idea of aid? Malty flinched and retorted, you dare defy me, your older sister. It doesn't matter if you are older, I am the one next in line. If need be, I will let mother know about, scratch that. She already knows about this. Melty looked at Malty disappointed. Malty, defeated, angrily let out a, TCH. Melty walked up to Naruto and said, Shield hero, no Naruto Wakai Oji I need to speak with you. Backquote 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 blacksmith shop. Erhard leaned on his counter and asked, Kid, could you explain this to me? Sorry Erhard, but there wasn't a better place than here. Besides, our royal highness has a few words with us. Naruto wasn't completely untrusting, but he was weary. Though, it seems like Melty wasn't bad as her sister was. Melty placed a hand over her chest, pardon my late introduction. I am first in line to the throne of Melromark, second princess Melty Melromark. Erhard shouted out, T throne. Roxanne looked at her shocked, whoa, wait, ahead of your older sister. Raftalia nodded her head too, Roxanne took the words right out of her mouth. Melty nodded her head towards Roxanne, yes. My sister has always been a problem child due to her personality. That's the understatement of the century, Naruto added which Melty didn't argue, no one did. Melty looked at Naruto and said, I'll be honest, I had no idea you were the shield hero. You keep a low profile, and my mother never told me who you looked like. Though this timing could be perfect. Just then one of Melty's entered the blacksmith shop, Melty Sama, his majesty has called for you. Naruto simply walked up and placed a hand on her head, we can talk more later, we have more pressing concerns of noticed. Naruto looked at his scream, we have waves incoming, so we need to prepare. Melty relented deciding this would be talked about more later. Once Melty left other soldiers came walking into the blacksmith looking for him. Naruto recognized them, I remember you guys, you're the knight that stayed behind to help us in loot village. The young knight swallowed. Well, um we want to, please let us accompany you, at least during the waves. They all gave Naruto a respectful bow, Naruto Wakai Oji. The one young knight continued, we were deeply touched by the way you fought in the last wave. Everyone here wants to support your efforts. Naruto closed his eyes and understood, I see, so that's why you were looking for us. Naruto thought he was in trouble so he did what he could to avoid them. He created shadow clones to throw them off. The boy raised his head and smiled, we decided to ask you the next time we saw you here in the capital. Naruto wasn't so sure about trusting them, even if they were the ones who stayed to help, how can I know you won't do anything to me or my party behind our backs? Naruto said more or less aggressively and no one batted an eye. Then one of the mages spoke up and said, please let us, we know you're a good person. The rumors about you aren't true. You helped protect our families from the village of loot. So, no, we wouldn't betray you, we want to help you in any way we can. Naruto closed his eyes for a moment and then he opened his eyes, okay then, Naruto lifted a rather expensive necklace he created, buy this for 2000 silvers, I might just then consider your offer. Raftalia looked at Naruto and said, Naruto-sama, don't you think that's? Raftalia is usually the one who tries to get Naruto to lighten up. 2000 silvers is a lot for anyone. However, Yoruichi placed a hand on Raftalia's shoulder, it's okay, I know how you are, you're a kind person. Naruto is just making sure, that's all. Yoruichi smirked, she was beginning to understand Naruto more and more. It was merely to see if they could keep their word, trust goes a long way if you give it a chance. Raftalia sighed, she wished Naruto was more willing to trust than not. Honestly, if the queen hasn't talked to Naruto before he melty, Naruto might have not helped her at all. The group began to talk amongst one another for a bit. Then their leader turned to Naruto and said, We'll collect the money somehow. We promise. Erhard crossed his arms over his chest to Naruto, You never change kid. Philo puffed her cheeks out and said, Mini. Naruto isn't surprised that Philo didn't get it. Naruto scrolled through everyone's stats. Philo, Raftalia, and Yoruichi had star marks next to their levels. 
Though Roxanne was only at level 24 now after joining his party. He would probably have to go to some church to get the class upgrade. However, he doubts they would even try to help him out. He'll have to wait for another opportunity for this to happen. Let's go everyone, we have business elsewhere. Backquote 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 slave trader merchant. Naruto and everyone else was outside of the slaver trader merchant. Naruto continued to walk towards the slave merchant until Philo spoke up and said, Are you selling me, Naruto-sama? Naruto looked towards Philo and gave her a soft smile. No way in hell Philo, you're non-negotiable for selling. No amount of money could ever get me to sell you. Philo ran up to Naruto and he placed a hand on her head rubbing it. The group walked in and found the slave trader turning to them. Though, he had some extra accessories in his outfits. Belukas smiled. Ah, shield hero Sama, what brings you here today? Naruto looked around and saw a lot of empty cages, seems business has been well for you. It's all thanks to you. Belukas rubbed his hands together greedily, oh, it seems you've acquired a new slave girl. You're already cheating on me. He he he, I'm just kidding. Anyways your traveling trade was very profitable for me as well. Naruto decided to ignore the fact he called Roxanne a slave, then again, he wasn't wrong entirely. Though, Naruto noted Philo stood behind him during this entire time. Naruto raised his eyebrow, what do you mean? Philo peeked her head out from the side of Naruto's back. Beluka smiled and said, first and foremost, your Philoleal queen has gained quite the reputation. He walked up to get a look at Philo who then quickly ducked her head back behind Naruto. Nobles all across Melromark contacted me to ask how they could procure one for themselves. Belukas then looked to Yoruichi and Raftalia, secondly you too. You've helped my business gain a reputation for providing high quality slaves. He then put both arms out to the side and smiled, the money hasn't stopped rolling in since. Belukas turned to Naruto happy to help him, anyway, how may I help you today? Would you like another slave? Or do you need assistance with a philoleal experiment? Philo simply gave the Belukas a dirty look, something he was quite used to. Roxanne looked at Yoruichi and Raftalia with some jealousy, they both were technically Naruto's slaves. So was she, but she didn't have one of those slave crests to prove it, Mo. I can't let them get ahead of me. Even Philo has a slave crest. I want one. Yoruichi looked at Roxanne who was staring at her, Raftalia, and then Philo. Yoruichi thought to herself, I have a feeling Roxanne is going to get a slave crest, maybe I should too. Naruto then said, could you arrange a class upgrade for us? Naruto walked to a cage that had a slave beat within it, they're most likely going to refuse to let me class upgrade in this country. At least for right now, and the waves are coming. So, I'd like to do it as soon as possible. Belukas walked up to Naruto and said, I'm truly sorry, but we don't provide those types of services here. Naruto sighed in defeat and said, I see. Worry not though. You can simply get it done at another country's dragon hourglass, Belukas smirked as Naruto looked down at him with an interesting look on his face. Belukas lead them to a table with a map of the continent, yes, I would regularly charge for information, but since you're the one asking, I'll tell you for free. If we're talking favorable countries for you to upgrade classes, there's mercenary nation Zeltobel, demi-human country Siltvelt, and Shieldfrieden. For a country of demi-humans, it's very welcoming to humans. Naruto asked curiously, how long will it take to get there? By ship, two weeks. And wagon, a month. Belukas finished. It's far, Raftalia added. Sounds like fun. Yoruichi smiled. She always wanted to be on a boat. Philo, don't eat the eggs. Roxanne reprehended the girl as Philo frowned and Naruto even gave a look to Philo who simply began to pout. Naruto shook his head. It's far, I could probably get there in a day. Belukas looked at Naruto with interest when he said that. Belukas then said, How about, for now, we equip your Philoleal queen with a weapon? Philo turned to Belukas with a smile on her face, a weapon for me. Soon Belukas brought them out and said, These are made from wyvern talons. Naruto nodded his head, It would have to do for now. He will have to begin training everyone more ninjutsu to use before the wave. He also has to get Roxanne's level up as high as he could before the wave, what's a wyvern? Philo asked curiously. 
Don't worry about it. How much? Naruto asked wondering what the price was. Baluka smiled and said, In light of your continued patronage, Baluka's held up five fingers, I'll offer you a special price of five gold pieces. Naruto went to speak but then Roxanne spoke up, Naruto-sama. Please can I also get a slave crest like Raftalia? Naruto turned to Roxanne with a confused look on his face. Raftalia looked at Roxanne, Raftalia wanted to retort, but she smiled, why do you want one? Don't you think it's a waste of money on Naruto-sama? Yoruichi coughed to the side and raised her hand as well, um well I kinda want one too. Naruto looked at them confused, why the heck do you too, HMF? Naruto was silenced as Roxanne wrapped her arms around Naruto. Roxanne slammed her lips up against Naruto's mouth which Yoruichi was taken back by. Raftalia looked on in jealousy and Philo shouted transforming back into her human form, I want a kiss for Naruto-sama. Philo jumped onto the back of Naruto wrapping her arms around the front of his neck. Belukas could only smirk and chuckle at this. Raftalia shouted, Roxanne, Philo, you're strangling Naruto-sama, get off him. Raftalia ran over and got Philo off of Naruto. When she turned to get Roxanne off Roxanne already broke her kiss with Naruto. Naruto was in a bit of a daze, w what? R Roxanne, w we can't do that, we're. Roxanne continued to blush as his face was a bright shade of red. It would have put Kashina's hair to shame, w well. I it's not like that anymore. B besides, I I made my decision. I I love you, and that's final. Naruto didn't know what to say, until Yoruichi stepped forward and smiled. Well it seems our own Naruto-sama, Wakayoji has formed himself quite the harem. Yoruichi took a couple more steps toward Naruto swaying her hips, well, it's a good time as any I suppose. Yoruichi licked her lips before she claimed Naruto's. Raftalia held both arms up as she let out a pout as her cheeks puffed out jealously, Mo. You guys. Philo jumped onto Naruto again, I want one too Naruto-sama. Belukas could only laugh and chuckle at this. WHO knew he was in a relationship with his slaves. For being slaves, they certainly don't act like it. Belukas knew he made the right choice with Naruto now. You know what kid, I've grown to love the type of man you are. How about four gold pieces? For reigns and the two slave crests. Once Yoruichi broke her kiss with Naruto, she licked her lips, I'm not bad, I'm so going to be getting used to this. I should have been doing this a long time ago. Yoruichi smirked at Naruto, she could tell that Naruto had a weakness. It wasn't the fact that it was his long lest sister who reincarnated that kissed her. It seemed Naruto likes women who come at him to the point to take what she wants. Naruto likes strong women, in personality and body, so, that's why he fell from Aurelia's charms so quickly. Well, you better watch out ya old hag, because I ain't losing to some dumb old cougar. Backquote, 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 time skip two days later. Naruto received a letter from Melty not too long ago that the meeting with all cardinal heroes and the queen was forced to be postponed. Mainly until Thu waves were finished with so, Naruto went on the monster job to kill a monster in a sewer which was quick and easy to do so. Once that mission was over the shield party made their way north where they found themselves at a rather desolate place. However, they came across people who were starving for food. Naruto learned about how the bow hero helped the rebellion kick the king from power. However, it only ended up replacing a new leader who was even worse than the last king. So, Naruto had everyone prepare emergency food for these people who needed it. Naruto was even able to give them some extra money to help them survive once they got to the next village. Naruto went ahead and used the wood release to grow everyone some orange and apple trees. Naruto as well gave them extra seeds that will grow if they need them. They would sprout into fully grown apple or orange trees. However, once they're used the seeds those trees produce will take the normal amount of time to grow. Once they were finished, they went on their way again and made it back to the royal capital where the wave will hit. The group then went inside and saw Itsuki and Ren sitting at a table together. Naruto heard them continue to talk about their mission pay being stolen from them. Not only that, but Itsuki said, great power comes with great responsibility. Which only made Naruto cough and gag at what he said. Mainly because it was a load of bullshit. 
Before Naruto and his party knew it, Ren and Itsuki were right by Naruto asking, what is so funny? Naruto simply sighed and said, the fact that you were conned. Just then Itsuki began to accuse Naruto, you're the one impersonating us, then stealing our jobs and rewards. Once he said that Itsuki felt the glares from Raftalia, Yoruichi, Philo, and Roxanne. Naruto narrowed his eyes and said, why would you think it's me? Because who else would? Itsuki was interrupted by Naruto. You're on thin ice buddy. Naruto glared at him getting him to shut up. Ever consider that maybe it's because you're trying to be a cool, secret vigilante? Naruto stood up and looked at Itsuki. You were the adventurer who helped the rebellion in the north were you not? Itsuki simply replied with a, Hump, do you know what happened to the country after you left? Naruto closed his eyes seeing all those grave markers, there were a ton of grave markers, there had to be only about 20 remaining. What happened as the new leader charged and hiked up the prices on their people? You solved nothing. How could you possibly know? Atsuki went to retort by Ren placed a hand on his shoulder. If you know all this, what about the situation with the dragon? Ren asked wondering how that turned out. Naruto looked at him, so you knew, it makes things easier then. So you stole the job. Ren looked at Naruto annoyed, but the girls continued to glare daggers at the two. More like I saved people who were gonna pay you from dying. Naruto added with a frown on his face as the annoyance grew more and more prevalent, I hope you know the dragon you killed caused an epidemic. I got rid of the corpse that's why it was cancelled because you failed to complete it. Ren looked down surprised, no, no way, Naruto went to sit down to go back to eating, if you don't believe me go back to the villages yourself, and see how they fared off. I don't care if you do or don't really, I just hope you two realize just how many people died because of you two. Naruto slammed his fist onto the table which made the two flinch. Ren hung his head down, I I see, sorry. Atsuki looked at Ren shocked, you believe him. Ren shook his head, he has no reason to lie. I hope you two morons can realize something. Naruto stood up since everyone else finished eating. The group made it to the doors and Naruto turned his head to them, this world. Isn't one of those stupid video games this is life. Real life. So. Get it through your thick skulls, you idiots. Naruto turned to leave, but Itsuki shouted out. I don't believe you, okay. Itsuki glared at Naruto. Naruto opened the door and walked out and he said, I never asked you to. Backquote 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 blacksmith shop. Naruto and his group walked out of the shop with some additions to their armors, while everyone but Roxanne and Naruto sat at the level the 40s, Roxanne was at level 34 which got her pretty close to level 40. Just then Naruto saw the group of knights from a few days ago appear. The boy held out the money, we ran around and somehow scraped up 2000 silver pieces. Naruto walked over and placed the necklace in the boy's hand, along with a triprong kunai, hold on to the money as well. Keep it, split it amongst yourselves to help yourself for better equipment or your family. The boy looked up shocked and smiled, T that means, you'll accept us. Naruto smiled and nodded his head, it was to see if you were trustworthy or not, even if you couldn't get the 2000 silvers. By trying you showed me you guys do care, sometimes actions speak louder than words. Naruto highlighted everyone using his status magic and added them to his party, just don't betray my trust. They all nodded their heads, thanks for having us. They said in unison. Philo ran up and stood next to them and smiled brightly, looks like we have more friends now. Yay. Naruto looked at the clock, we have less than 24 hours before the wave, might as well take this time to relax. I'm sure everyone is ready. So, let's go strategize. Naruto turned to walk into Erhard's shop. The man looked at Naruto annoyed, hey, Kid, my shop isn't always for meeting places. Is what he said until Naruto tossed him a silver coin which he smiled and decided to shut up. Backquote 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 with Queen Morelia. I see, is that so? Morelia looked at her shadows, she was rather annoyed with Maldi, even after everything. She decided to give her one last chance, now she'll have to face all of her crimes. Along with her ex-husband. Well she was going to diss him anyways, next time I come to the capital you are to arrest Maldi and bring her to me in chains. As you wish Morelia-sama. 
The shadow then disappeared. Morelia looked out the window she frowned. She was hoping to see Naruto quite soon. Though negotiations didn't go the way she had planned, how annoying Altcray and Malti just had to summon the heroes now, we each were going to summon the hero we wanted. Oh well, seems we'll have to be just farther apart for a bit longer. My Naruto Wakai Oji, Naruto Kun, Unaru Kun, No Na Kun, maybe even Whiskers or Whisker Kun, oh yeah, I like that nickname. Morelia seemed to have got lost in her little world. Morelia sometimes wondered what attracted her to Altcray. Backquote, 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 day later during the wave. Naruto had everyone split up into groups, Roxanne stayed by his side with Raftalia, and a knight and mage with him. Meanwhile, Philo with Yoruichi two knights and a mage were with them. Naruto ordered Yoruichi's team to be the ones who evacuate while he and his team attacked. They were only in phase one and most of the civilians were evacuated. Yoruichi's team was to help protect the stragglers until they got back. Naruto helped finish taking out a lizard man two of the knights struggled to take down. While Roxanne and Raftalia were taking care of some other ones, Naruto turned his head to see the old woman he helped heal a while ago. She palm slammed two lizard men killing them instantly. Once she saw Naruto she gave him a respectful bow, ah. Shield hero Sama, I must thank you once again for healing me. I remember you, your son helped get that expensive medicine to heal you. Naruto placed his hands on his hips, you're quite strong aren't ya? The old lady smiled she chuckled, thanks to you, I'm all better now. As she said that a goblin jumped at her, but she did a quick roundhouse kick sending the goblin into the ground. When she landed on the ground she placed a foot on the dead goblin, as you can see. Just then team Yoruichi returned with Fila watching the old woman in amazement, wow. The old lady smirked as she stood proudly on the dead goblin, small fry like these is nothing to me. She held her arms up similarly to how Naruto remembers Tsunade boasting about her strength, I swear on these fists, which fought many formidable foes back when I was an adventurer. She then began to laugh out loud until the one knight that asked to join walked up to Naruto. Shield hero Sama, Naruto turned to the boy, we finished getting the rest of the civilians evacuated. Naruto nodded his head, great, keep the enemy away from the now, that's our top priority. Naruto looked off into the distance wondering what was going on, it's been three whole hours, have the tree not beaten the boss yet? The boy then said, shield hero Sama, please go, the sooner we end the waves the better. The old lady smirked as she smacked the back of the knight, leave the village to Olgran here and these whippersnappers. She seemingly knocked the wind out of the boy as he began to cough to refill his lungs. Naruto nodded his head, everyone let's move out, the sooner this is done, the better. Naruto lunged forward, like we all practiced people, let's hustle. The knights, two mages, and the old gran watched as everyone in Naruto's party shoot off at ridiculously high speeds. Much faster than any ordinary philolil, even though philo was going the same speed they were going. Everyone dashed through the trees and rushed towards the boss of the waves. Backquote, 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 at the battle. Naruto arrived with everyone and saw Itsuki and his party trying to slow the giant pirate ship down. Naruto looked at Itsuki and then he turned to his party, you guys are to stay here and kill any monster that strays too far. All abilities are to be utilized, but I forbid you all from assisting the bow hero and his party. Only intervene if they are in danger. Everyone nodded their heads not arguing what Naruto ordered. Atsuki looked at Naruto annoyed, hey, how could you? Naruto glared at him and said, back off, otherwise you'll slow me down and get in my way. Naruto hinted back at what they told him a while ago. Naruto jumped up with pure strength onto the ghostly pirate ship. Naruto got onto the ship and landed on the mast. Naruto watched as Ren cut a skeleton captain. However, once it went down a magic spell went around its corpse and resurrected it. Naruto saw Motoyasu fighting trying to keep a giant worm monster at bay. Naruto sat on the mast not willing to lift a single finger. After all, he promised that they would handle this wave all on their own. That he wouldn't lift a single finger to help unless his own life was in danger. He will only defend himself. Naruto watched and simply sighed as Motoyasu and Ren backed up into one another. Ren looked at Motoyasu annoyed, Motoyasu, what are you doing? 
We need to take out the skeletons first. No. Motoyasu swung his spear at the worm-like thing. No, the kraken comes first. Naruto raised an eyebrow. He had to give these nerds some credit. He had no idea what a kraken was, but then again probably because they don't exist in his world, the soul eater won't spawn otherwise. Just then Naruto sighed as he watched Ren shout glared at Motoyasu and aimed his sword at him. Motoyasu did the same with his spear and both parts looked at their party leaders in confusion. Naruto shook his head once again, you morons take the cake you know that. Naruto jumped down in front of them, this is no time to be bickering you, idiots. Red looked at Naruto, and Naruto, Motoyasu glared at Naruto, go defend some village or something. Naruto glared at him, already did, but it seems some people were taking too long. Naruto looked at him and he simply sighed. Malti agreed, an incompetent hero who can't fight should. Naruto then looked at her and said, who's the real incompetent one? Naruto shook his head, since you guys can't finish these monsters. The waves are never going to end, and the monsters are going to keep coming. Naruto held his finger up, I'll give you one opportunity, and it is an ultimatum, stand down now. Let me end this, or I stand back and watch as you die. Naruto jumped back up to the mast, this goes around he wasn't playing nice. Someone is going to die if they don't accept his terms. Naruto did say, Ren, there's already plenty of blood on your hands as it is. Naruto waved his finger back and forth, tick, tock, tick, tock. Just like that the monsters began to attack again forcing Motoyasu, Ren, and their parties to go on the defensive, d damn it. I I won't accept h help from a criminal scum. Motoyasu screamed out as he pushed the Kraken's tentacle away. Ren parried a sword attack from the skeleton captain as he grit his teeth, Ren knew when he was beaten. It was clear he had no idea what to do, F fine, Naruto, I need your help. Please. Motoyasu screamed at Ren, no, don't do it, he's gonna steal all the glory for himself. Naruto then said, who said I was in it for the glory and just for myself? I got others to worry about. Honestly, I could give a damn about glory. In the real world, there is no glory, and the path you're leading down will only be glory, misery, loneliness, sadness, and death. Motoyasu refused as he slashed at the Kraken's tentacle once again, but to no avail. The damage he dealt with was immediately healed. Just then a male from Motoyasu's team was attacked, a tentacle wrapped around his foot. He hoisted the man into the air as Motoyasu used moves to try to save him. However, the Kraken dropped the man into his beak and clamped shut. The man's legs were the only thing that remained. Naruto looked down at Motoyasu in disappointment. There's one life on your conscious now Motoyasu, how many more will it take before you get it through your thick skull? How many lives will it require? Naruto raised kanais and he threw them at the skeletons, but at their shadows. Naruto could sense the magic coming from the shadow, so he struck it, and the skeletons fell. Before everyone knew it, the Soul Eater monster began to reform but the Kraken continued to live. Motoyasu stared at the two pairs of legs sitting there with some blood just slowly pooling out. Motoyasu's party all freaked out and backed up, Motoyasu shouted, why you could have saved him, couldn't you? Naruto. Naruto frowned and admitted, yes, I could have easily saved him, but I promised. Don't you all remember, that I'd never help you again in the waves. However, I did say I will take this one on by myself, but you cannot help out. Naruto jumped down and stood in front of Ren. Meanwhile, Itsuki and his party arrived on the scene. However, what they saw horrified them. Naruto said, now, what will you choose? Motoyasu grit his teeth as he lowered his spear and backs down. Naruto walked forward as Malti shouted out, no. No way are we going to let. Naruto snapped his fingers, shut it bitch. Naruto undid the Sukuyomi seal he placed on Malti's memories causing her a ton of mental pain and strain forcing her to her knees. Naruto threw another kunai at the shadow of the kraken causing the rest of the soul eater to leave. It formed into one giant soul eater. Naruto decided to try the new rage shield. He's had it since he's gotten here, might as well try it out this time around. Naruto equipped it. Wrath Shield. Naruto summoned a dark black shield with armor that surrounded his body. Naruto could feel anger, hatred, disdain, and more strong negative emotions. 
This was indeed a very scary and powerful ability to have. Naruto for this go around wanted to test this. Naruto found a skill to use with this shield, shield prison. Like that shield that came together as a ball with chains trapped the soul eater inside of it. Naruto shot his right hand out to the side, chain shield. Spike within the prison shield stabbed into the soul eater. Naruto's voice was mixed in with Kurama's voice since he even felt some of the old residual evil chakra of Kurama. It seemed this shield converted the normal Kyubi chakra back into its original state. Naruto then had a red chakra cloak cover him as his skin peeled off as he got to the seven tails state. His eyes were white, his mouth white, and his teeth were razor sharp the deep red chakra around his body. Naruto hasn't felt this in forever, Naruto began the chant, within this virgin of cold ore, who shall swallow even your screams with her embrace, suffer in anguish as your entire body is stabbed and skewered. Iron Maiden, like that the red gem on Naruto's shield began to glow. From above the clouds dispersed as a metal Iron Maiden descended from the sky. It opened its chest cavity revealing a ton of long sharp spikes. The trapped soul eater was pulled into the Iron Maiden as its chest closed in on the creature. Naruto held his up and closed it as the doors on the Iron Maiden shut. The eyes on it glowed until as dispersed in a green light revealing the now dead soul eater. Its corpse began to fall beside the ship, so Naruto opened his mouth in his tailed beast state and charged up a tailed beast bomb. Everyone held their hands on their ears as they heard an ear-piercing ringing sound coming from Naruto's attack. Everyone watched as red and blue orbs of magic or whatever came to the entrance of Naruto's mouth. Naruto moved his head forward and bit down on it, then opened his mouth and aimed it at the corpse. Naruto fired a tailed beast cannon that eviscerated the soul eater completely. Everyone watched in awe as Naruto's seven red tails began to recede into his shield. Naruto was back as his wrath shield disappeared, Naruto did fall onto one knee. However, he took a deep breath and stood back up. Naruto saw his shield menu pop up, his curse series went from red, and it changed. It then said it said, bless series. Naruto wondered if it had to do something with a cardinal hero who went through the curse series, they got the bless series. Then again, it was only a hunch, and Naruto probably won't use it again. He just wanted to see what it was like. Just then Naruto turned his head as Yoruichi, Raftalia, Philo, and Roxanne appeared on the ship after jumping. Everyone was curious about what Naruto's shield was, Philo smirked as she transformed back into her human form. Motoyasu sighed as he said, things will be different next time. Philo smirked as she looked at him and said, hey, sore loser, much. Motoyasu placed both his hands up in his defense, and no that's not it Philo Chan. I'm, uh, just saying I could have one-shotted that thing if I'd gotten serious. Naruto looked at Motoyasu, but then over to Malti. She was on the ground being cared for by the people of Motoyasu's party. Naruto turned the other way not caring, but Naruto noticed the wave didn't end. Naruto then summoned a truth-seeking ball to his side as he made a spear out of it. He then pushed it forward impaling surfacing Soul Eater. Naruto looked at it as his truth-seeking orb immediately killed it. Naruto turned his head to the top of the ship's mast and he called out, By the way you can come out, I've known you've been here this entire time. Naruto looked up as a lady came jumping down. Naruto's eyes met with hers, she is a beautiful young woman with long black hair trimmed and styled after a traditional Japanese princess haircut. She is wearing a jet black kimono with silver embroidery like those worn during a funeral. She has pale skin that is slightly translucent due to her racial characteristics. She looked at the sword, spear, and bow hero, you three, have you had trouble with such weak monsters? I can't believe you three are of four heroes who hold the world's fate in their hands. She walked forward and said, it seems there is only one man here who is worthy of even being called a hero. She looked to Naruto. What is your name? Naruto narrowed his eyes at her, you're supposed to introduce yourself before asking for someone's name. Naruto retorted. The woman closed her eyes and smiled, oh where are my manners, my name is Glass. She then opened her eyes and held her fan up to her face, however, feel free to consider me your enemy. Atsuki shocked looked at her and mumbled, enemy. Naruto looked at her ready to fight if they had to, Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto. Glass looked at Naruto and said slowly, Naruto, is it? 
She then unfolded two fans. Then, shall we begin? She then aimed one at Naruto, the true battle of this wave. Naruto looked at her and he could tell something was off about her. She was not a normal monster, no she was a living sentient being. However, she was not human she reminded him a lot of Hagoromo, the sage of six paths. Glass frowned, aren't you going to attack, hero Naruto? Why not send those servants of yours at me? Naruto placed a hand over his mouth, GRRRMMK. Naruto did his best to hold it in. Ren frowned as he said, servants. Atsuki had a scowl on his face, did you just call us? Naruto's servants. Motoyasu finished as the three drew their weapons to attack her. Screw you. They all shouted in unison. Their party members also surrounded the girl to prevent her from leaving. Ren charged up his sword, meteor strike. Motoyasu did the same with his spear, meteor thrust. Atsuki drew his bow back, meteor shot. The three combined their attack as it hit Glass dead on. Glass simply said, is that all you got? Naruto watched as her fans began to glow along with her body. She then shouted out, Zero Stance Rondo, Reverse Four Seasons. She then did a bunch of swings at her fans and she fired off multiple shots of magical blade attacks. She immediately took the three cardinal heroes parties out cold. Glass simply smirked, so you are but mere servants. Atsuki slowly sat up, shush she's strong. Naruto began to walk forward as he examined her, the more he thought about the more it sounded real. Naruto didn't prepare to attack, he held his hand out towards his girls, stay back, all of you. Naruto looked at Glass intriguingly, those fans, they're just like our weapons. Are your fans a cardinal weapon? This made everyone's eyes widen in shock wondering if what Naruto was saying was true. Glass looked at Naruto rather surprised, he was very smart to make such an interesting proposal, cardinal weapon. No, I am the vassal weapon holder of the fan. Naruto looked at her unamused, just go home, if I fight you can guarantee you this, you won't beat me. Naruto got into a fight stance ready to fight if he had to. Naruto summoned nine black truth seeking orbs and Glass could feel almost nothing coming from the orbs. Just then Glass came at Naruto at a very high speed. However, Naruto saw every strike, he simply parried each one with a kanai in his hand. Naruto raised his knee and kneed her in the stomach, he raised both hands together and did a sledgehammer. She was sent straight to the ground on her stomach. Naruto moved away as he walked next to his party, the fight is over, leave from wherever you came from. Naruto didn't understand why she was attacking, it made no sense, you can't beat me. Glass looked at Naruto with a frustrated look, we'll meet again shield hero, Naruto, we will meet again. She jumped into the air, and she disappeared in a bright yellow light. With that, the waves were over. Naruto decided that it would be best if he and his party returned to Loot Village. Backquote 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 Loot Village. Naruto sat on a rock as he let a tired breath out, the wrath shield was a bit more tiring than he thought. Physically no, nothing, mentally, yeah it brought back the old anger and hatred he felt. Especially back when in the elemental nations. Just then Naruto and his part saw two knights come to walk up to him. The one with the stupid mustache he didn't like and the younger boy knight who joined his party during the waves. The man with the mustache said, Shield Hero Sama, you are to report to the castle at once. This got Naruto to raise an eyebrow. Backquote 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 castle. Naruto sighed as he stood there listening to the foolish king. Alt Kray cleared his throat, I saw what happened in the crystal ball. Naruto was the only one in the throne room. The new king's assistant said, I hate to admit it, but you did a good job. You handle the wave yourself. I have a question for you. How did you obtain such strength? You possess power unbecoming of the shield hero. You must reveal the secret behind it. Now spit it out, and don't you dare lie to me. Altkray said with a rather serious tone. Naruto simply held his up and flipped the king the bird. I'm sorry, but I don't have to answer to you. You brought me here and you decided to fuck with me when you just were doing better. Saying I did well, but that went to shit in a handbag now, didn't it? Well, Naruto went to walk away, if that is all I will be on my way. H how dare you, Alt Kray stood up pointing at Naruto. Naruto glared at him and said, no, how dare you. 
Naruto's eyes morphed into the eternal Mangekyu Sharingan which made everyone flinch. You did this to me, you continuously tried to fuck with me. Ruin me, beat me, humiliate me, continually kick me when I'm done. As well as make me give up everything I own and try to take things from me. Naruto turned to walk away. The king shouted, you cur. The king's soldiers surrounded Naruto with their swords drawn and Naruto simply looked at the tip of the sword. Naruto turned to them and said, you think you could take me on? If I wanted to, I could end you all here right now. Naruto's eyes flickered as he caught everyone in a genjutsu, I simply need to flick my wrist. Everyone in the throne room saw a giant ball of fire appear at the very top of the throne room, I can burn you all to death, so, do you want to try me? The guards seemed to back down, so Naruto released the genjutsu and everyone saw the fireball just vanish. It was as if it wasn't even there, the foolish king again shouted out, I'm the king. You cannot disrespect me this way, shield. Naruto turned to him and smirked at him as Naruto again flicked him off, oh please, the only reason I came was to enlighten you. I've already spoken with the queen herself, let's just say. I think she's taken quite a shine to me. Not only that, but she gave me a rather very nice offer I almost don't want to pass up on. Naruto then held his hand and began to inspect his nail, after all, I'm off also noble blood too. I'm a prince, so, oh by the way that gift the queen gave me. Was a nice searing, loving kiss right on the lips. So, why don't you take that information and shove up your wrinkly old ass gramps? Your queen wants a real man over here, no shriveled up wrinkly old ass grandpa like you. Naruto waved to him as he walked and placed a hand on the door, bye, and have a wonderful day. The king stood there in shock as his eyes wondered if what he said was true. The king growled back, you know what? I'll make all your slaves pay for your crimes. I'll make sure every one of them is treated with the utmost hospitality we can offer. Naruto turned to him as his eyes glared at the king forcing him to stop. Naruto turned to him as he sent a shockwave of chakra throughout his entire body. The shockwave didn't just stop at the castle walls. It kept going beyond Melromax borders with other nations. Naruto growled at the king as his eyes turned red with black slits formed in the middle. Naruto turned and took a step forward, however that one step sunk into the ground. Naruto caused large spiderweb-like cracks with his left foot, you can use whatever underhanded tactics on me, Naruto took a step with his right foot which did the same thing. Everyone felt a entire castle shake as if the structure of the castle was going to collapse on itself, you can stab me, beat me, break me, ruin me, torture me. Naruto just then had a golden chakra cloak appear around his body. Naruto activated six paths sage mode, but if you dare go after my friends. I will destroy you and everyone who follows you. Naruto dashed forward as he grabbed Altkray by his throat and held him into the air. The guards all froze in shock, they couldn't move. Naruto glared at the man with rage in his eyes, hatred, anger, you better begin counting your lucky stars. Because you, re-running out of them, threaten them again, I dare you. I dare you, I'll make you suffer until you beg me to kill you. Naruto stopped. He dropped the man into his throne. Naruto held his hand up and said, Stay, like that vine grew from the ground and wrapped them around Altkray keeping him in his throne room. Naruto looked at his assistant. Hey you, get that stupid magic orb thing out, and show the king the mountain range that is to the right. The man did so, and the king saw the mountain and vast land there. Naruto picked that spot on purpose because there was no life there, no animals, no nothing. Naruto's eyes shifted to the Rinnegan he focused on the area, and he extended his hand out, Shibaku Tensai. Just then the large area began to break apart, rocks went flying into the air which began to clump together. It took a minute, and once it was done, everyone gasped at the giant sphere of earth that Naruto made. Naruto glared at the king, threatened them again, threaten my family, my girlfriends, threaten them again. See what happens to you and your followers. Naruto turned to the right and began to walk out of the throne room. People continued to watch as the giant planet-like structure that Naruto created fell to pieces. The vines around Altkray released him and sunk back into the earth. Naruto who was still in his six paths sage mode heard a man say, W what, know who did we anger? Before Naruto left, he glared at them as he said, a god. 
He slammed the doors leaving the throne room. Naruto went walking down the stairs as a woman who looked like a noble showed Naruto a necklace. Backquote 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 back in the throne room. Melty came running as soon as she heard shouting and a lot of shaking on the ground. Altkray stood up when he saw his daughter, ah ha ha, Melty, what can I do for you? Ignoring the way her father reacted to her Melty simply said, you once again angered the shield hero. I know it didn't go well. As well as it ends in a very hostile manner, I'm extremely disappointed in you father. Altkray had nothing to say as he sunk into his chair with a long look on his face. Melty continued, Father, you keep angering the shield hero. He's so much more powerful than any of the other cardinal heroes. If he were to leave Melromark and defend other nations and ignore ours. It threatens our entire country's safety, his shield is one of the best ways to protect our country. Not only that, but he has otherworld abilities and powers we've never seen before. We may very well lose our home if we continue to push him away, no we will lose our home if we push him away. Altkray slammed his hand on his chair, I will never forgive that swine. Melty was surprised by her father's sudden outburst, oh, Melty I'm not mad at you. Melty collected herself and asked, why do you hate the shield hero so much? Altkray looked to his left and said sadly, if I let him and his demi-humans do as they wish, I'll lose my family again. Backquote 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 later on the road. Naruto had everyone get their things and they got the hell out of Melromark. Naruto did not want to be there anymore if the queen wasn't there. However, even when they got far away and got new items from Erhard, he was stopped by some knights, and it so happened to be Melty. Naruto and everyone else was just simply taking a break after traveling for a while. Melty stuck her head out the side of the carriage, hey guys. I caught up. Philo's smiles widen, it's Mel Chan. Hey, long time no see. Naruto waited to see what she wanted as Melty came walking up to them. Melty walked up to Naruto and said, Shield Hero Sama, I'd like you to return to the capital and meet with King Altkray once more. Naruto, without hesitation, said, I refuse. When he said no Melty had to collect herself, I want you to apologize for your conduct and reconcile. Naruto growled out and said, my conduct was well handled, I'm sorry for the property damage. I'll pay for it later, but his actions and words do not mean he gets a pass. He threatened my party, he threatened my girls, I won't stand it, nor will I return until Queen Morelia returns. King Altkray has too much power to his head, I don't give a damn for his reasoning. Melty just had an annoyed and frustrated look on her face, we need your help to stop the waves. Also, you would be lost without the king's financial support. Melty hated to pull that card. Naruto smirked as he placed his hands on his hips, support. Hell, I never got any support from him. I'm the one graciously working with you a lot until the waves are gone. Besides, I asked that no one interfere or get in my way during the waves. If they didn't, they don't get my help. Melty hung her head annoyed as she said, Why, why do both you and my father have to be like this? Melty began to almost have a tantrum, a hero and the king can't be fighting among themselves. Not. She then began rubbing the back of her head confused. Mel Chan. Philo looked at her best friend concerned. Naruto interjected and said, I won't, and I refuse, end of the story. The king has done too much damage, he has hurt us way too much. I wouldn't forgive him even if he cut his own throat in front of me. That's how much I hate him. He threatened to put my crimes on my friends, and if he ever goes. God save the king. Again, these crimes aren't even real. They were forged. Raftalia chimed in as Yoruichi began to nod her head agreeing along with Roxanne. However, Naruto looked ahead and saw how the guards were all standing in a strange formation. One had a crystal ball in his hand while the other stood around him. Something isn't right, the way they're looking at me, this, it feels like. One of the knights began charging at them and his blade was aiming for Melty. Naruto suddenly pulled Melty into his arms and raised his shield and blocked the knight's sword swing. Chapter 6 God Save the Princess Last Chapter Naruto waited to see what she wanted as Melty came walking up to them. Melty walked up to Naruto and said, Shield Hero Sama, I'd like you to return to the capital and meet with King Altkray once more. Naruto, 
without hesitation, said, I refuse. When he said no Melty had to collect herself, I want you to apologize for your conduct and reconcile. Naruto growled out and said, my conduct was well handled, I'm sorry for the property damage. I'll pay for it later, but his actions and words do not mean he gets a pass. He threatened my party, he threatened my girls, I won't stand it, nor will I return until Queen Morelia returns. King Altcray has too much power to his head, I don't give a damn for his reasoning. Melty just had an annoyed and frustrated look on her face, we need your help to stop the waves. Also, you would be lost without the king's financial support. Melty hated to pull that card. Naruto smirked as he placed his hands on his hips, support. Hell, I never got any support from him. I'm the one graciously working with you a lot until the waves are gone. Besides, I asked that no one interfere or get in my way during the waves. If they didn't, they don't get my help. Melty hung her head annoyed as she said, Why, why do both you and my father have to be like this? Melty began to almost have a tantrum, a hero and the king can't be fighting among themselves. Not. She then began rubbing the back of her head confused. Mel Chan. Philo looked at her best friend concerned. Naruto interjected and said, I won't, and I refuse, end of the story. The king has done too much damage, he has hurt us way too much. I wouldn't forgive him even if he cut his own throat in front of me. That's how much I hate him, he threatened to put my crimes on my friends, and if he ever goes. God save the king. Again, these crimes aren't even real. They were forged. Raftalia chimed in as Yoruichi began to nod her head agreeing along with Roxanne. However, Naruto looked ahead and saw how the guards were all standing in a strange formation. One had a crystal ball in his hand while the other stood around him. Something isn't right, the way they're looking at me, this, it feels like. One of the knights began charging at them and his blade was aiming for Melty. Naruto suddenly pulled Melty into his arms and raised his shield and blocked the knight's sword swing. Backquote, 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 this chapter. Naruto then pushed the guy off of his shield and shouted, What the hell are you doing? Melty looked behind her to see that one of her soldiers attacked her. Just then the knight said, Curse you. How dare you take Princess Melty hostage? Naruto looked at him confused as he said lowly, Hostage. The knight held his sword up and aimed it at Naruto, fellow knights. Justice is on our side. Destroy the devil of the shield. Naruto frowned as he said, Devil. Fine. Naruto's eyes shifted to the Rinnegan as he stuck his hand out. If that's what you want, Naruto narrowed his eyes, that's what you'll get. Naruto looked to the girls, Raftalia, Philo, Yoruichi, and Roxanne. Behind me now, Naruto then trusted his hand towards the ground as a massive pressure of gravity forced everyone to the ground. Naruto gently released Melty, Raftalia, watch her for me. Naruto moved Melty towards Raftalia who pulled her protectively behind them. Naruto walked forward keeping his hand out as he watched two knights from the back. One holding a crystal ball, and another his hand ready on his sword, so, what type of game is this now? Huh, attack your own queen's daughter. Naruto began to close his fist as the gravity around the soldiers increased. They began to hear the armor creak under pressure and the ground began to sink in taking to their body's shape. The guy with his hand on his sword then said, come on. Get up, retreat. The two then began to turn and run away, but before they could leave, their fellow knights did not stand up. Hey, get up, we need to retreat. Just then Naruto said, Foolish knights, he suddenly disappeared from their sight and appeared behind them, just what are you up to? Naruto then said angrily as he glared the two down. The two knights slowly turned around and began to shake, Naruto then said, prostrate yourselves. The two suddenly felt a heavy gravity forcing them to do as he said. Naruto picked up the crystal ball and began to analyze it. Naruto looked to the men and quickly switched back to the Mangeku Sharingan. He simply said, Sukuyomi. As he knocked them all out, and decide to rewrite their brains thinking that their plan succeeded. As well as a delayed Tsukuyomi in the soldier's eyes who was holding it in his hand. The program was simple, when they showed the clip to everyone when the queen was present. The video played would be the real thing, all who lays on it besides himself, his party, the queen, and Melty will see an entirely different story. For now, 
Naruto had to know who was behind this, who was trying to kill Meldy. It was clearly from someone on the inside. Naruto dropped the crystal ball when Naruto trapped them in the Tsukuyomi, he dropped the heavy gravity at the same time. Naruto began to walk back to the group, we're all getting back into the wagon, we're leaving. Melty, I think you'll have to come with us, in case someone else tries to harm you again. I don't feel good about leaving you alone. Naruto watched as Melty fell to her knees with her eyes widening. First, she has never seen Naruto display his powers like that before. They were, well how could she put it? Godly then he simply knocked them all out with a glance of red and black glowing eyes, this was too much for her. She fell to her knees, but then looked up as she knights all began to wake up and run away. Philo asks, should we go after them? Naruto shakes his head, no, as I said, we're leaving. No one said anything, as they could all see an already angry look growing on Naruto's face. Naruto reset their memories thinking the plan succeeded. However, when he saw them leave, it was clear they had their intentions, and recording them with that crystal ball was it. Backquote, 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 a few days later. Before Naruto and his party knew it, they were wanted fugitives, rather ironic that the taping they had was already false. Good thing, everyone knew the transformation jutsu, and even Roxanne learned it. It didn't take long for her to also get acclimated to using chakra, so it made things much easier. Philo even learned to transform into regular-sized Philoleal to help keep up their fake identities. The group was outside in the forest in their makeshift camp, and Naruto remembered that woman from before. Before he threatened the king with the balls of planetary destruction, he held up a rosary inside, he looked at Melty and said, See, this is why I hate your dad. Can you see what he has done to us? TCH, thinking I'm some goddamn rapist and kidnapper. Making me out to be some predator. I will enjoy roasting his ass alive. Just then Melty stood up annoyed, no way. My father couldn't be part of this. Just the Yoruichi piped up and said, yes, maybe not directly, but he is indirectly part of this even if he was being used. Yoruichi narrowed her eyes as she looked up at the sky, who else gets to put these decrees out? Who allows Malti to do what she wants to cause us havoc and problems? In case you haven't gotten the memo little girl, the king hates us, and he jumps at any opportunity to make our lives miserable. Even if he is just trying to protect you, there is no one else who can dictate what is going on. Mainly until the queen returns. Melty closed her eyes and relented, it, probably is my sister. Filthy skank, Roxanne added in as she growled out annoyed, the second princess, who so happens to be the oldest, is trying to kill her younger sister who is next in line for the throne. Someone's a little jealous. Melty shouts out, I don't get it. I don't. This is no time to be fighting among yourselves. Just then Naruto turns to Melty and shouts back, Okay tell me then. Am I to return what good will happen? He hasn't even once tried to listen to me. Not once. If he were to, I bet his words were to lock me up and take everyone I've ever cared about. Sell them to slavery again, or be thrown into a dungeon, where his scumbag soldiers will rape and torture them. Like hell I'll let that happen. I'd rather see this country burn to the ground before I raise another finger to help. Unless your queen can amend your father's and sister's unjust wrongs, I'll never forgive them, never work with them. Your mother's body and life would never be enough to right the wrongs they did. Your father and sister are horrible people, but your sister is worse. Your father blindly follows orders, if she were to ask him to eradicate an entire village for looking at her wrong. I wouldn't put it past him to send his army to go do so. Regardless of morality, daddy's little princess gets everything she wants. While me, I have to work hard, train hard, and earn what I get. Cherish everything I love, defend every day, train them, help them, support them. They mean everything to me, these girls, mean the world to me. If I didn't have them, there wouldn't be a meaning or me to live. You don't understand Melty to lose your family, completely, to watch as your sister died in your arms. Because you were both hated for something that was far beyond your control. Naruto's hair covered his face as he turned and began to walk away. Raftalia lowered her head, Melty, please understand, your father and Melty have hurt Naruto very much. 
along with so many other people from the world Naruto-sama came from. There are very few people he trusts and has struggled to love once again. He's afraid to lose everything, so afraid, that he'd go against the entire world if he had to. Melty didn't understand, it's true, I was his sister back in my old life. Melty looked at Roxanne who stepped forward, we were only six, and I still remember it as if it was yesterday. Melty looked down and simply asked, W what should I do, Okaa-san, I can't face her like this. Naruto soon came walking back after scouting the view. Philo looked up and said, Naruto-sama. Naruto didn't look down at Melty and he just said, I've decided we're leaving this country until the queen can finish up the prolonged negotiations. We aren't returning, until she is ready to return. Naruto looked to Melty, what will you do? Melty slowly opened her eyes and said, I'll return to the capital and talk to Otu-san. Stupid idea, Naruto frowned. She still didn't get it, you go back, Malti kills you, and she'll pin the blame on us. Not hard to see through what she is trying to do. Naruto began to walk towards the wagon, however, I will protect you, you're just as much of a victim as we all are. I do suggest though, Melty, it's time to grow up and face the facts. Not everything goes your way, the world is an unforgiving and cruel place. That's why you cherish what you have. Love it, defend it, and kill for it. Naruto turned his head toward her and gave her a small smile. I won't let you die, besides I already have a plan set in motion. All I ask is you trust me, and I'll get you out of this alive. Philo smiled as she hugged Melty close. Please come with us, Naruto-sama may seem cold to only people who deserve it. You however don't, he's trying to help you, Mel-chan. Yoruichi nodded her head and asked, all right, we are leaving under the cover of dawn. Naruto nodded his head, yes, I got a place already in mind where to go. Backquote 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 on the mountains. Once we get over the mountain, I'll unseal the wagon. Naruto looked back toward Philo who had rather a bright smile on her face. Yeah, that means I can keep pulling it. Philo cheered happily and Melty could only smile for Philo. Melty could see that Naruto was a nice person, but when it came to the ones who hurt him, not so much. After some more traveling Naruto found a cave for them all to take shelter for a bit. Melty wasn't trained like everyone else, so she would be the most tired one. Naruto motioned for them to go inside as he placed a hand on top of Philo's head, come, let's take a break and rest inside. Naruto looked at Melty and asked, how are you holding up, Melty? Melty simply gave him a small smile, all right, I guess. Melty went inside and Raftalia, Yoruichi, and Roxanne looked at the back Melty was concerned. It seemed like this whole mess is beginning to take its toll on her. Before they went in Raftalia asked, Naruto-sama, of all the places, why go to Siltveld? Naruto closed his eyes and then slowly opened them, for safety purposes, at least while there we should be treated well. Honestly, I should have gone there a while ago, but the only thing that kept me here was mainly the queen's promise to right the wrongs of the father and firstborn daughter. But for now, safety. Yoruichi then said, hence why they're looking for us so hard, they're trying their best to stop us from going there. A little fishy if you ask me. Naruto turned to Raftalia and gently leaned into them to kiss her, maybe that way we can see your hometown and see how it's going. I was thinking, Maybe it is a nice place to set up a home. This time, Naruto gave Raftalia a thumbs up, we can defend it, together, and stop what happened so long ago from ever happening again. Raftalia smiled brightly as her ears twitched back and forth, and her tail swished left and right, yes. Let's do it this Naruto-sama. Raftalia jumped at Naruto wrapping her arms around his neck and pulling him into a kiss. Yoruichi smirked, this was all beginning to come together. She placed a hand on her hip, well Raftalia, make quick moves I see. Don't worry though, you won't outbeat me, so I have nothing to worry about. Once Raftalia pulled her kiss away from Naruto Yoruichi slid next to Naruto placing an arm on his shoulder. Roxanne puffed her cheeks out, Mo, no fair Yoruichi. We're all supposed to share Naruto-sama. Naruto looked at the three begin bickering as a sweat drop appeared on his forehead. Hey. Let me have my moment with Naruto-sama. Raftalia interjected between the two. Oi, 
I've been the one who's been easy between you two. I want some Naruto action. Yoruichi quickly wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck pulling him rather close to her bust. She said with a sultry tone in her voice, Come on Naruto, Sama wouldn't you like us to service you as real slaves should. Naruto's face blushed as he quickly broke the close contact, and now isn't the time for messing around. Naruto turned and walked into the cave as Yoruichi smirked watching Naruto leave. Yoruichi turned to Roxanne and Raftalia puffed their cheeks out at her. Yoruichi simply shrugged her shoulders, all is fair in love and war. Even when our main adversary is the queen, Roxanne added in to remind the two just how dangerous she was. Raftalia agreed as she nodded her head, yeah, it's bad enough that she has her eyes set on Naruto-sama. Yoruichi giggled and snickered, oh come on guys, lighten up. Yoruichi looked back off into the distance as the wind blew into her hair. She may be our adversary, but she'll end up being part of our little group of harem sisters. Raftalia blushed as she mumbled, H harem, sisters. Yoruichi nodded her head as Roxanne's face began to heat up, oh come on. After everything Naruto-sama has been through, worked for, trained for, fought for, I think he deserves a little bit of love. Yoruichi turned her attention back to the girls with a smile across her face, I don't intend on stopping that, if he loves us as much as he loves the queen, Meldy, and maybe even Philo when she is older. I don't have any qualms with it. Roxanne sighed as she placed her arms over her chest with her hands clasped together, I can't argue with that statement, as long as Naruto Ni is happy, it's all I could ever ask for. Even if I'm not one of those people who have to be like that for him. Raftalia looked at Roxanne with a frown, but don't you want to at least try Roxanne? Roxanne could only give the small smile on her face, the fact that my Ni-chan had to suffer being all alone after that fateful day. Having to watch as Kasumi Uzumaki slowly died in his arms, tears slowly began to roll down her cheeks, it pains me, to constantly think that I had to leave him all alone. It was supposed to be us, together, we were one another's pillars. His entire world came crashing once I. Roxanne was stopped after Raftalia placed a hand on her mouth. Raftalia looked at Roxanne with a serious look on her face. That was then, and you were kids back then. There's nothing more you could have done. I understand it hurts, but all you can do now is be there for him. Whether it's being there for him as Roxanne, or being there as Kasumi Uzumaki, that is up to you. We all deserve happiness Roxanne, no matter what form it comes in especially love, Naruto-sama deserves it, and so do you. Yoruichi stated as he placed a hand on her shoulder, don't think you're being a burden or being too much. Naruto-sama wants you to be happy as well, even if it meant you're alongside him for the rest of your life. Yeah, well, put Yoruichi. Raftalia smiled brightly at her along with Roxanne who began to wipe her tears. Yoruichi raised her fist into the air and said, we ride this out until we hear the ringing of wedding bells and the cries and coos of children. Which then presumably causes Roxanne and Raftalia to begin blushing up a storm and steam to exit the top of their heads. Backquote 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 meanwhile inside the cave. Naruto sat across from Melty as she looked at her pendant of her parents. She then looked up at Naruto and asked, I need to know, what happened between you and Otu-san? Naruto began to explain everything, a word from word, down to every last bit of detail. He didn't leave anything out, but he did leave his move set and abilities up in the air. Melty shook her head confused, but Okaa-san said to treat the shield hero well. Naruto raised his eyebrow and asked, your Okaa-san said to, not of your own volition. Melty shook her head, well, no, I mean yes. But not in that way. I mean you aren't a bad person Otu-san keeps bad talking. Melty hung her head down. Naruto then said, I've spoken with your mother, she's a nice and graceful woman. Naruto looked at the fire and narrowed his eyes, just how much did she tell you about what happened to me? Melty shook her head, not much, she said you were a kind and gentle person when it came to the people you care about. As well as those who seek out your help and do their best to earn your trust. Melty placed her finger on her lip, that's about it. That conniving woman, I wouldn't be surprised in some way she planned this, or hoped that Melty would meet me. After, she did want me to marry her, which isn't something I'm too keen on, then again, Naruto made sure to put that to the back of his head. 
Just then everyone heard the fluttering of birds, which meant people were nearby. Naruto narrowed his eyes, we need to get moving, I can sense them on their way. It seems magic has helped them get ahead of us too. Everyone got up and began to gather their things, but the girls were still outside and came inside ready and ready to go silent, all right, everyone, it's time to get out of here. Naruto stated as he picked Melty up carrying her in his arms. Naruto said, all right, let's move. Everyone sent Chakra to their feet and began to jump through the air kicking up the speed of their movements. They soon arrived at a crevasse which they all saw they could jump over. Naruto stopped so everyone could catch their bearings since they were able to avoid detection. Just then Naruto turned his head once again as he narrowed his eyes, again. How the hell do they keep getting past my senses? This is ridiculous, it should be impossible. Before everyone knew it, Atsuki came walking out. You're a hard person to catch, give up. You're surrounded. Naruto just then made a bunch of shadow clones which caused a bunch of smoke to fill the air. Some of them also transformed into perfect copies of the girls at himself once again to throw everyone off. Atsuki looked left and right and grit his teeth, cease your resistance and release Princess Melody at once. Naruto argued back, release. Bit of a harsh word when the person isn't even tied up. Motoyasu and Ren came waking up to Itsuki and Motoyasu smirked and said, quit lying. We have all the proof we need. Just then Melty stepped forward and placed a hand over her chest and said, heroes, I'm perfectly fine, as you can see. The shield hero even kept me safe when my knights tried to attack me. Ren was confused, hang on. Didn't Naruto abduct you? Melty looked at the other three heroes with sincerity, I asked him to take me and protect my life protect. Ren looked confused at Melty. Indeed, what does he have to gain by abducting me? The shield hero has informed me about the use of recording technology that would fabricate what was seen. Melty glared at the knights behind them. I know mages are using it to recreate the scene of shield hero Sama massacring a group of knights. The queen told me. Don't worry about the extra, they aren't ever going to work well with me. Naruto interjected. Let's keep it short and simple as well as make sure we get what we need to say done. Just then a voice spoke up, don't listen to a word he says. Everyone turned to look to see Maldi standing there, that devil possesses a brainwashing shield. That accursed shield lets him take over one's mind just by talking to them. Raftalia recoiled at the blatant lie, wah, who would believe such a lie? Maldi extended her hands out to the side and lifted them into the air. The Three Heroes Church has found that heretics who worship the shield have started popping up in the past month. Naruto scratched his head and said, Hey dumbass, we've been talking and conversing this entire time. Don't you think if I could brainwash you, I would have done it already by now? Mainly to prevent a fight from breaking out. Malti grew quiet and everyone looked at her rather curious about what she had to say, you are just saying that to try to make my claims false. Don't try to weasel your way out of this one. Yoruichi raised an eyebrow, wow, if anyone believes that lie, I'll kiss Naruto-sama for every person that does. Malti then placed her hands up together and said, Melty, you poor thing. I see the devil of the shield has already brainwashed you. So much for the Kayubi Sukunabaikona no Kami. Motoyasu smiled as he stepped forward, then Raftalia-chan, Philo-chan, Yoruichi-chan, and Roxanne-chan are brainwashed by Naruto too. Raftalia shook her head in defense of Naruto, no, that's not true, Naruto-sama has no such ability, even if he did, he'd never use it on people. Ren narrowed his eyes at Naruto, how can you prove this to us? Do you have a way? Naruto's eyes flashed to the Mangeku Sharingan as he simply muttered, Sukuyomi. Like that both Atsuki and Ren were shown the real event that led up to this mess. This also knocked out all the other soldiers who looked directly into Naruto's eyes. Though, Malti avoided his gaze by sheer luck, since she was eyeing Melty this entire time. Not out of admiration or love coming from such a family member should have for family. Here's the thing, can you even guarantee her safety, because I sure well can. Naruto looked at the group with seriousness as Ren and Itsuki wondered if they really could. Just then Malti began to hand on to Ren, you're right Ren-sama. Melty's safety comes first. Melty saw the fakeness coming off of Malti's facial expression and body language. Melty reached up and grabbed Naruto's outfit tightly, 
signaling she did not feel safe with the idea. Malty held her hand up to Melty. Now, come home, Melty Imauto. Melty hung her head in shame for her sister's acts. I, I can't, if I go home. I'll be killed. Melty did not say this out loud. She only had a shred of hope that Malty wasn't behind this. It was only the sake because she was family. Naruto-sama, please help me. Malty smiled again and said, Come now, Imauto. Naruto looks over to Ren and Itsuki. Ren, Itsuki, I hope some of you understand what's going on here. However, I cannot accept your offer, leaving Melty in the hands of this woman. Would mean most certain death for her, and do you want to risk that? Just because they're family, doesn't mean the love goes both ways. What are you talking about? Malti asked confused trying to act coy, however, Ren and Itsuki saw what Naruto showed them. However, it also made them wonder what Naruto showed them was false as well. However, he even informed them of a time-delayed cover he placed on the recording that would show the real tape once certain people were present. Melty is my dear Imauto, I couldn't possibly want to. Naruto interjected and swung his right arm from the left side of his body to the right, dear my ass. Naruto growled out at her, how horrible. You just want her out of the way, so you're a crown princess. You want it so badly, that you're willing to kill your Imauto for it. This caused Malti to freeze up since Naruto was able to lay her out, you'll say you're undoing the brainwashing and kill her when nobody's looking. Naruto began to walk forward as he dispersed all of his shadow clones, I'll prove to you all that I can make her talk, make her tell the truth. Naruto looked to Motoyasu, and he flared his Sharingan at him, Motoyasu, tell me why you helped the kingdom of Melromark, and after answering you won't remember. Motoyasu who was hypnotized says, I fight to protect it, and so I can build a harem for myself. Just then he snapped and asked, Huh, what's going on? Naruto asked again, Motoyasu why do you protect the kingdom of Melromark? Motoyasu chuckled as he firmly stated, It's to protect everyone I hold dear and precious. As well as build yourself a harem, right? Naruto asked raising an eyebrow which made Motoyasu freeze up on the spot. Everyone could see the man was horrible when someone points out that they were lying. Naruto turned to Raftalia and asked her, Raftalia, I hope you don't mind. Raftalia shook her head showing she didn't mind. Naruto then asked her, tell me why you stay by my side. Do you love me? Raftalia changed in tone as she spoke, I follow Naruto-sama around because he saved me. As well as promised no other child would ever have to go through the same pain I did. I stay by his side because I am his sword. As well as his lover, I love him very much and nothing will change that. As well as one day hope that I'll have children with him. Whoa, stop. Naruto frantically shouted out as he stopped the genjutsu as his face was red, he turned back to the others and said, okay, let's forget about the last part, but see that is my hypnosis ability. I can make people tell me the truth, however, I cannot control them on what to do. Naruto walked up closer to Ren, Itsuki, Motoyasu, and Malti and asked, Now tell me, Malti if you're willing, do you want to protect Melty, and were you the one who set this whole charade up with the Three Heroes Church? You'll be telling us it's all a lie, right? Malti's eyes widen as she took a step back, W what? Oh of course, I wouldn't Melty as my dear sister. Ren nodded his head and said, Malti, even though he can make people tell the truth, it's different from brainwashing. Let him ask you if you're telling the truth like you say you've been. Using this should be easy right? A lot of this depends on Naruto's wording, and by the looks of it. He can't control 100% everything you say, only the truth, even if it's an embarrassing truth. Ren looked back to Raftalia who was pushing her face into her hands in embarrassment. Atsuki nods his head accepting it as well, I see no problem, it seems everything Naruto has stated has been true. He can't brainwash but ask for the truth, Malti if you're telling the truth you should be fine. Malti took a step back, steeled herself, and said, fine. Ask me you damn demon of the shield. Naruto's eyes flared once again and he asked the same question, Malti, do you want to protect Melty, and were you the one who set this whole charade up with the three heroes church? You'll be telling us it's all a lie, right? Malti went monotone as her eyes dilated, no, I want Melty dead that little cunt runs around doing everything to be a perfect girl for Okaa-san. 
Okaa-san glanced over at me and chose that wretch to become queen instead of me. I'd rather see her get eaten by the wolves or sold off to slavery, she could die for all I care. All I want is the crown and power over all these peasants and damn demi-humans. As well as make Naruto my pet, my slave so I can have him all to myself. Naruto deadpanned at the last part, no way in hell was ever happening. Well, everything she said to the end wasn't going to happen anyways. Naruto does know he can control people with the Sharingan, he's just yet to learn to do so. Everyone took a step back as Motoyasu looked at Maldi in shock, and Maldi came to on what she said, W what? I, I. Just then Maldi held her hand out and shouted Zwaid Hellfire. Maldi fired a fireball at Naruto who moved in front of Meldi and deflected the attack with his shield. Atsuki shouted, Maldi, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill Meldi? Maldi looked to Atsuki, Ren, and Motoyasu angrily, the demon of the shield is making me do this. Zwaite fire arrow, a fire arrow crashed into Naruto's shield. What the hell is wrong with you? Stop. Ren shouted as he ran forward to stop Maldi as she drank a mana potion. If we can't undo the brainwashing, she'll have to die. Malti extended her hand out as she began to fire a barrage of fireballs from her hand as Naruto blocked them all with his shield. Before Ren could get royal guards stopped him as well as Itsuki as mages stood next to Malti. As well as the guards came walking up and drew their bows and arrows. Malti placed her hand on her hip, brined down the hammer of justice on the devil of the shield. Naruto turned to Raftalia, Yoruichi, Roxanne, and Philo, get going across the gaps in the mountains, I'll hold them off while protecting Meldi. Naruto saw the rain of arrows coming down on him as he quickly pulled Meldi into a tighter hug keeping his shield up. Naruto didn't want to use the rage shield anymore and he couldn't access the Bless series just yet either. Naruto equipped his star shining shield to protect them the best he could. However, Naruto saw the arrows begin to penetrate the barrier he had up and began to crack, magic arrows. I'm sensing a lot of them. Malti was beginning to conjure up a lot of magic forming a massive fireball from above. However, Raftalia appeared behind Malti and extended her mana blade through Malti's chest cancelling out her magic attack. Philo transformed into her philoleal form and knocked away a bunch of the archers. Yoruichi entered her lighting assault form and began to slash and attack away the knights attacking her. Roxanne stood by Raftalia helping her fend off oncoming attackers. Kill the demon of the shield and his party. Annihilate them all. The leader of the knight held his sword in the air as a legion of knights came from the mountaintop to attack. Wait. Stop. Ren and Itsuki shouted but were then pushed to the side as the knights began to charge at Naruto and his party aiming to kill them. Before Naruto knew it. He created shadow clones that substituted themselves with his party to bring them in front of his body safely. Before Naruto knew it, the arrows broke through his shield and Naruto activated his six path sage mode arrows, swords, and halberds were stabbed into his backside. Naruto had his body extend outwards as did his best to shield everyone from the attacks. Melty could only look up in horror to see swords, spears, halberds, and arrows impaled into Naruto. Though, he was much more different and was glowing with a golden light color. Naruto who was hunched up slowly stood up as he ejected all the embedded weapons from his flesh. Naruto turned to everyone and looked at them annoyed, we'll meet again, I'm sure Itsuki and Ren have figured out what is going on here. I suggest you tell Motoyasu as well since he seems to be broken by all this. Ren, Itsuki, stay safe, and we'll return when the queen is back. For now, I suggest you keep Maldi and the king locked up, otherwise, you're going to be in a lot of deep shit. Naruto created shadow clones which began to fly everyone over to the other side of the crevasse. Naruto threw Ren one of the rosaries for the three heroes church, he turned around and began to walk away. The group soon got into the forest and sat down to breathe. However, before they could a shadow drop down, Raftalia was ready to draw her sword, Yoruichi had her claws out, and Roxanne also had her hands on a sword ready to fight. However, Melty stopped them, wait, those are the shadow, an espionage squad under the queen's direct control. The shadow bowed her head and then looked to Naruto, shield hero. This is the first time I meet you in this form, I dare say. Naruto smiled and said, you were that woman who gave me the rosary. She then moved to Naruto's right and left of Melty, 
Let me get straight to the point. Shield hero, you are requested to meet with Her Majesty the Queen once again, I dare say. This commotion has a deep-rooted cause, I dare say. We would like your help, I dare say. This abduction is a setup by those finding your accomplishments alarming. Let me guess, it has something to do with Malti wanting her sister dead, as well as the three heroes' church. Naruto raised an eyebrow curiously to see if he was correct, all right, I'll meet with her again, it's been a month or so since I last saw her. Naruto took out the map and laid it out and he pointed to it, the queen's in the opposite direction of Siltvelt. Melty, do you know this country? Melty was about to say something until Raftalia stood up and her ears began to twitch. Before Naruto knew it, Raftalia and Roxanne did the same, and this confused Naruto greatly. For some reason, he's been having difficulty sensing things, and he doesn't know why that is. Raftalia asks, what's that smell? Backquote, 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 later. Naruto was in the forest with his group as they were forced to reconvene on what their game plan was. Though it continues to trouble Naruto that he couldn't sense when people were coming, and it has had him on edge. Naruto held up the map, stay undetected is easy enough for us, but we need to be careful. Naruto held up the map, since we can't go to Siltvelt, we'll keep to the shadows and interact with few people. Let's keep our disguises up and for Melty, I'll keep the chakra tag on her to keep her transformed. Everyone continued to move until they came across some farmland where Naruto and the others found other demi-humans. Raftalia was rather surprised, there are a lot of demi-humans in this region. Melty smiled as she then spoke up and said, Wait, I know the nobleman who is in charge of this domain. He might be able to help us out. Melty looked back towards the working demi-humans, these days, humans treat demi-humans like slaves, but in the past, some of the nobility tried to mediate peaceful coexistence between the two races. He's the leader of the group and is a wonderful man. He was the lord of the domain of Sayat. However, he died back during the first wave. Otu-san sent the nobles who sided with him to remote regions under his control. Naruto looked at Raftalia to see that something was bothering her. Naruto shook his head. I will never understand your father's obsessed hatred for demi-humans. Naruto looked at Raftalia he gently wrapped his arms around her, Raftalia, what's wrong? Raftalia felt Naoto's loving embrace as she slowly opened her eyes, the village I'm from is in Sayat's jurisdiction. Melty's eyes widen at that, I heard Sayat was attacked by rioters after the wave. Everyone watched as Raftalia slowly lifted her head, that's right, my village was attacked by a mob of Melromark's soldiers. Raftalia had some sour memories come back as she thought about her parents. Naruto could only hug her tighter as he whispered into her ear, Don't worry, I am here whenever you need to. I'm always ready to listen to you. Out of everyone, Raftalia was the only one who never really told Naruto her entire backstory. Yoruichi told hers, and Roxanne has even talked more about her past than Raftalia did. He knew it was already a very touchy subject but he trusted her that she would tell him when she was ready. Naruto then says, the more I hear about it, a lot of Melromark's men disgust me. Melty held her head in her disgust, I'm so sorry. Raftalia quickly looked at Melty and said, Melty, it's not your fault. However, Melty interjected and said, as royalty, there must have been something we could have done. Melty clenched the hem of her dress, but we did nothing to help. Melty shot her head back up. Raftalia, tell me everything you remember about those soldiers. Melty seemed to have a new fire light up in her eyes, once this all dies down, I'll make sure they're brought to justice. Naruto nodded his head, so long as no one ever has to go through what she did. I'm fine with whatever she wants. Naruto closed his eyes, this was Raftalia's decision. If she wanted those men burned on the stakes, heads on a platter, anything she demanded. He'd do it in a heartbeat. This did give Raftalia comfort, thank you, Raftalia turned around in Naruto's hold and reached up and claimed his lips. Melty's eyes widening shock as a blush appeared on her face. Yoruichi smirked, but Roxanne and Philo were soon on Naruto wanting their kiss. Roxanne got hers, as well as Yoruichi who simply gave him the look. Philo simply got a kiss on the top of her head. Naruto turned to Melty and rubbed the back of his head, sorry about that, we're all a little close. So, this nobleman you know lives here, right? 
Melty nodded her head and Naruto said, Well, we'll see if we can trust him then. Just then a voice spoke up behind them, Yes, indeed certainly I am. Naruto went on to the defensive as a man stood there with a smile on his face. A young male with bluish ravenous hair cut in a bowl hairstyle. He has a very slim build and delicate facial features. He wears a yellow pair of small, round, armless glasses on his nose bridge. He speaks with a soft voice tone and has an ever-present smile most of the time. He wears a dark blue overcoat and brown pants, all underneath a long white cape. Melty smiled as she walked forward, it's great to see you again, right not? Van replied and said, as to you too, Melty Sama. Van turned to Naruto and his party, hello everyone. I am Van Reichnot, the lord of this domain. Naruto looked at him with a serious look in his eye, again, how are these people getting past my senses? That shouldn't be possible, Van gestured for them to follow him, come, let's find a more private place to chat. Would you like to join me at my mansion? Backquote, 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 Van Reichnot's mansion. Van looked out the window as he had everyone in his dining room place, I see you came here to seek out asylum in my domain. Naruto simply looked at him still on edge, yeah, we are. Van turned to Naruto, the knights informed me that you started the wildfires to cover your tracks, shield hero. Naruto waved his hands to the side, please if I wanted to, there be no forest or people who knew of the forest left. Van sent him a cautious smile, yes, I've heard about your prowess and ability to manifest black flames. Though, I bet you'd like to know how they're getting past your senses, just like how I did, no. Naruto's eyes widen as he waited for Van to answer. It's rather simple, they employ a spell called Zufal. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow, a simple spell that can be cast onto a group of people. It doesn't consume a lot of magic, so it's easy to employ to sneak up on your targets. However, once an attack is assumed, everyone is revealed. It removes the group's or person's aura or even smells, along with turning everyone invisible. It's a very hard spell to detect people from, but it has a very small weakness. If you can be one with nature constantly and have an attunement with nature, you should be fine. Naruto's eyes widened as he simply shook his head, normally Naruto could continuously have Kurama absorb nature's energy. Naruto has never had any reason to enter sage mode because everyone was so weak. He might have to begin subconsciously beginning absorbing it now, just so he has the upper edge on those idiots, thanks for the info, it helps. Melty looked at Naruto shocked, wait, that's very hard to do. Even demi-humans let lone humans can't do it. Reichnot has been the only exception to do something like that. Naruto simply chuckled as he closed his eyes for a moment and reopened them. Van looked at Naruto in shock as he felt the flow of nature's energy absorb straight into Naruto. Naruto's eyes had a horizontal pupils in them. Along with the orange pigment around his eyes, this is called sage mode, and all it requires me to mix nature chakra and my chakra. Van was astonished, it took me 10 years to be able to just simply feel a glimpse of nature energy. We have to learn to channel our mana to help guide nature's energy into us. It's hard, very hard, and it could strain someone to the point of being bedridden for days. Melty quickly coughed into her hand, we need to get back on topic, you can ask about it later right not San. Van nodded his head, for reasons, I was doing my best to find all of you. Thankfully I found you before they found you. Soon two maids came walking in with carts of food, anyways, please you must all be tired and hungry from your journey. Relax, and eat as much as you want, everyone here is quite a fan of your shield hero. Soon food was given out with everyone getting a chance to relax. Though Philo pipped up and asked, may I eat no Naruto-sama? Philo was wiggling her fingers left and right ready to dig in. Naruto felt it earlier from Van, the food is safe to eat. He could tell he was telling the truth as well as he had no ill will towards them. That's just thanks to the part of Kurama's chakra, but Naruto can only sense the intent of someone wanting to kill him when he channels Kurama's chakra. It was easier when Kurama could detect things like this for him. Naruto nodded his head, eat with etiquette Philo. Naruto added as Philo made sure to use the forks and knives provided. Hai. Philo relented out annoyed. Still on edge, Naruto. Melty who was next to Philo looked at him curiously. Yes, 
Of course, I am. Besides, we shouldn't stick here long, it could cause too much trouble for Van. Naruto began to eat his food, it's safer if we kept moving. Melty sighed as she shook her head, geez, just when I thought we could get a moment to catch our breath. Van chuckled a bit as he looked at Melty, Melty, you've changed a lot, haven't you? You practically forced yourself to mature, but it seems traveling with the shield hero has helped you grow in a good way. This caused Melty's face to turn red, Yoruichi, Roxanne, and Raftalia took note of Melty's reaction while Naruto ignored it. Naruto simply retorted and said, Honestly, I'm probably more of a pain in the ass for her. I don't do things her way, so she pouts and gets upset about it. Then again, it's nice to see that her stuck-up royalty status doesn't change her too much. Shush shut up. Melty placed her hands on the table as she stood up. Then stop acting like a child and causing a scene, shut up and eat. Naruto quipped which only got Van to smile more. It seemed Naruto was very keyed in on how Melty acted and was able to get her to act more like herself. Melty is only 12 after all, no matter how you look at it, she is still a kid. Van chuckled to himself. Melty argued back, whose fault is it that gets me riled up? Back quote back quote back quote back quote back quote later. Naruto laid on his best, though he found it rather large, with enough beds for everyone, everyone else had a single sized bed. While Naruto had a king size, which he didn't understand why. Philo landed on a bed and rolled around, so soft and bouncy. Roxanne gently glided her hands across the bed, it's nice sleeping in a comfy bed once again. Yoruichi smiled and nodded her head, a nice change of pace, even though we are on the run as criminals. Raftalia rolled her eyes, that's not something to laugh about. This is serious. Naruto scratched the back of his head. Naruto went ahead and focused the chakra on his body. Just then four identical clones of Naruto made of wood came from his back. Melty's eyes widened at this as she screamed out in shock. The four Naruto's broke off from Naruto as they stood by themselves. They looked onwards at Melty, and then simply melted into the floorboards. Naruto scratched the back of his head, they're like my shadow clone ability, but made of wood chakra. They can move easier throughout the house and keep watch, they will report back to me once I reabsorb them. So, we all can get a good night's rest. Naruto turned to the window and once again looked outside. Raftalia stood up and walked over to Naruto and gently took his hands. Naruto-sama, it's bedtime, I want you to sleep, and no buts. Naruto to Raftalia and smiled deciding to listen to what she had to say, all right Raftalia. Raftalia guided him to bed as Naruto threw his shirt off and laid down. Melty, blushing, looked away and said annoyed, why do you listen to Raftalia and not me? Naruto replied, she's my girlfriend, and I trust her. Not only that, but she is right, I need rest. Sometimes I go on soldier move, if I had to, I could stay up for weeks on end. Melty looked at Naruto interestedly, how can you possibly do that? Naruto looked at Melty, she was just curious, and it wouldn't hurt. Back where I came from, I was trained to be a soldier at the age of six, though usually the age of eight is the proper age. Naruto looked down with a long look on his face, I learned to do it through training with some Anbu Black Ops Shinobi, like your mother's shadows. I began doing that regularly for training at twelve in my spare time. Hell. I even had to fight a war, for a week straight, with no rest, and no time to kick back. Even after that week, I killed the only one who was even possibly able to relate to me. Naruto laid down and closed his eyes on his back, that's it for now, but I want you to know. It's not that I won't listen to you, it's that I don't want to. I only take orders from those I trust, respect, and deeply care about. Raftalia rolled her eyes to look over to see the hurt Melty. What Naruto-sama is trying to convey is that he is beginning to trust you. Roxanne walked over and sat next to Melty, the fact he even shared a bit of his past with you, is proof of that. Keep trying, you'll get there. Yoruichi smirked as she crawled onto the bed with Naruto laid next to him. Though, she was wearing a rather revealing orange pajama outfit, don't worry, give yourself a few years, and you'll be able to get your shot with Naruto. Yoruichi winked at Melty which she easily caught on causing her to blush. Philo stood up and cheered, yeah, together with Naruto-sama forever. 
Back quote, back quote, back quote, back quote, back quote, later that night. Naruto opened his eyes in bed as he found Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Roxanne snuggled up close to him. Naruto looked to see Melty staring out the window, Naruto created a shadow clone and replaced himself with it. Which allowed him to sit on the edge of the bed, is something bothering you? Say, Naruto. Melty turned her head as Naruto looked up at her awaiting her question, is running away like this the right idea? As a crown princess, there are so many other things I should be doing. Naruto closed his eyes, you can't do anything if you're dead. Melty shook her head, even now, I still have yet to do anything. Worry about you coming back home alive and safe first. Otherwise, you won't be able to do your duties. Besides, I have no idea why that man still even has leverage, let alone your sister. Naruto looked outside the window. I had a nice chat with your mother once, she was very nice but astute and stern. She already denounced your father of power and striped your elder sister of royalty status. Melty's eyes widen as she turned to him, what? Okaasama did such a thing? Naruto nodded his head, I don't know what's going on, but your father's and elder sister's actions have been appalling to her. Not only that, but the decree also she sent out seemed to not have reached Melromark. Malti and Motoyasu know this, the question is why anything hasn't been done. Naruto closed his eyes once again and let a long sigh out, right now, you're looking pretty good from what I'm seeing for the future. Melty still stunned by this slowly backed up and stopped at the wall. She turned around and placed her hands on the windowsill. It makes sense, at least after what you told me what they did to you. Naruto raised an eyebrow and asked, your mother never told you. Melty back to Naruto and raised her eyebrow, tell me what. Naruto sighed as he placed his hand on his face, Malti lied and said that I raped her, and I was branded a criminal after she tried to play me. I never feel for her advances to begin with, but regardless your foolish father never listened to me. I was branded a criminal and was given no reason to not trust anyone. Melty was surprised, why didn't her mother tell her this? This even confused her, wow. Hearing that makes me even feel more pathetic. Naruto slowly stood up and placed a hand on Melty's head, don't beat yourself up about something you had no idea about. Funny considering it was considered a national-wide incident, how you never heard of it boggles my mind. Regardless, you should get some rest. Naruto watched as Melty hid her blush, she appreciated the comfort Naruto gave her. She went to bed and pulled the sheets up. Before she laid down, she said, Thanks for everything, good night. She then turned over and went to sleep. Naruto switched places back with his shadow clone, good night. Naruto lay down until he felt Raftalia shift in her sleep. Raftalia looked like she was in distress, and no, P please stop. Nightmare, again, is that the one back from when I first got her? Naruto wondered to himself as he reached over and pulled Raftalia closer. He didn't have to worry about Yoruichi since she was sprawled out all over the bed over his feet. Backquote, 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 morning. Naruto was in his outfit and ready to go along with Yoruichi and Roxanne. Yoruichi finished putting her bag on, and Roxanne her sword on her hip. Just then Raftalia shot up from her sleep, R-I-F-A-N-A -A Chan. Naruto shot his head over to see Raftalia in distress with her breathing labored. Naruto quickly made his way over to her side, Raftalia, are you okay? Naruto asked with a very worried look on his face. Raftalia went to speak, but Yoruichi interjected, guys we have a problem. She was looking out the window. Raftalia saw the Melromark soldiers taking Van away in cuffs. Just then one of Van's maids came in, Sir Hiro. You must get out of here at once. What happened? Naruto asked quickly as he got everyone to grab their belongings. A nobleman from the next town over marched in here and accused us of hiding you. The maid quickly showed everyone the way out as they ran through the halls, use the kitchen door and escape out the back. What about Philo and Melty? Roxanne asked worriedly. Suddenly the maid stopped them as two Melromark knights were talking about where to find Naruto. The maid whispered to them, follow me. Before Naruto, Yoruichi, Raftalia, and Roxanne knew it, they were hidden in the food pantry closet. Naruto could see through the lines of the door as two knights came bearing in. They shouted, you there, what are you doing? The maid acted normally, I am preparing lunch. 
Forget that. Get over here. The one knight grabbed her and Naruto grit his teeth. He wanted to move. What do you think you're doing? Naruto recognized it to be Melty's voice as she stood there at the doorway with her hands on her hips. I demand that you cease this behavior at once. The one knight looked at the other, the second princess. The other turned to him, the real deal. Just then another voice spoke up. My, if it isn't Princess Melty. Naruto turned his head to see Raftalia's eyes narrow. Her teeth were clenched together, and her tail stood on end. Yoruichi and Roxanne also looked at Raftalia with a worried look on their face. Naruto knew that look all too familiar, the look of anger, which stems from a painful past, hatred. Naruto saw Raftalia's hand on her sword, wait and see what happens. Raftalia looked up at Naruto along with everyone else surprised. They thought Naruto would have them initiate the fight. The man walked towards Melty and gave her a polite bow, I'm so glad to see you're all right. I rushed here worried for your safety. Melty was surprised, Idol Rabier, I've heard that you fought with Otusama in the past. Idol kept his bow, right. Melty looked behind her angrily, are these your troops? They are, Idol replied not moving from his spot. Melty turned back to him, have them withdraw from this mansion immediately. Idol opened his eyes and asked, before that, where is the devil of the shield? Melty replied, the shield hero isn't here. Idol replied with a, oh. Melty continued to look at Idol with her annoyance from his presence, I asked him to leave me and escape since I could trust Van Reichnot to keep me protected. Just like how the shield hero did the same for me, I plan to speak to Otusama directly about this matter. And I shall clear the shield hero's good name. You will take me to the capital as soon as possible. Idol closed his eyes and lowered his head, understood. He then lifted his head and opened his eyes, I'll make arrangements for your journey at my mansion. He then moved to the side and lifted his right hand, take her. On order his guards took Melty. Thankfully, Naruto so happened to stick a signal seed onto Melty. This was when this event broke out as he ordered one of his wood clones that returned. Everyone watched as they left and Naruto saw Raftalia's angry look on her face. As well as everyone could hear her labored breathing, Naruto turned to Raftalia, calm down. Do you want to ruin what Melty's trying to do? Besides, good things come to those who wait. Right now, Karma's just sharpening her nails and finishing her drink. She says she'll be with that guy shortly. Raftalia relaxes and sheaths her sword. Naruto and everyone ran out of the door and went in search of Philo. Naruto swore to himself, when we find that man, idol whatever the fuck his name is again, Raftalia, I swear, I'll make sure whatever he has done to you is paid back tenfold. No one messes with the people I care about, even if I didn't know Raftalia beforehand. If need be, I'll rid the world of someone like you, but not before I make you beg for death. Even when I finally grant you the gift of death, you won't get to rest, because I'll be right there in hell waiting for you. So, we can keep doing this forever. Thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to like comment and subscribe as well as checking out the author on fanfiction.net.